WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. International Pro. I'm uh, Matt the Waxer Janowski with True Styling, and we've got a great day ahead of action. We're starting off with the men's round of 48, and then we'll move into the women's after that. How are you this morning, True? I'm good, thank you, Matt. Really good. I'm excited to be underway with another. Um 
contest here at Below. Um, the waves look really fun this morning. It's clean, so it's good to wake up with some clean waves. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what the day has in store. Now we're on the eastern side of the island. We were on the west last week, and there we are in the Aurora region. We're in Belair, and that out there are some amazing waves. We're here on the beach break, and there's some lefts, rights. Pretty small at the moment. High tide coming in at 9:30 this morning, but a lot of these competitors that are coming from Korea, Japan, uh, China that we have out in the heat right now are relishing in the conditions because it's quite similar to what a lot of them have at home. True. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's um, a little bit smaller, I think, that we have today, um, but it's still, you know, super playful. Had a surf yesterday out here, and um, the waves are really fun. You mm -hmm. know, there's definitely a lot on offer, um, and it's nice to be here. We've got a different scenery compared to where we were at La Union. It's more of a beach break as opposed to a point, so we've got plenty of waves on offer. We're going to go down for the call with John Carby with Ty Sarati to see what the order of the day is. All right, good morning. Here we are down at the beautiful Belair Beach with uh, Australia, Asia Pacific event manager Ty Sarati. Uh, are you excited to be down here in the beautiful Belair? Yeah, good morning, John. Um, yeah, it's, I've only been here for 24 hours, but this place seems pretty amazing and uh, the waves look fun today, so it should be a good day of competition. Okay, so it's the first time down here. We have the QS3000 and LQ1000. Uh, what do you think? we are going to see throughout the week how do you think it's going to play out uh the swell looks pretty similar all week um i think the first two days of the waiting period will have slightly bigger waves so we'll probably look to run as much short boarding as we can in the first two days um and then yeah finish it off with the long boarding later in the period all right i'm going to get your thoughts just quickly on uh the region of asia picking up a lot with its qs and its lqs events uh must be exciting for you to see the development of surfing in places like uh, Belair. Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, we've had such a strong season here in Asia. It's probably had close to the most events of any region and um, in a diverse range of locations. So yeah, it's pretty exciting to see what the future of Asia surfing has. All right, so about the future of surfing, we've got the guys out in the water. So let's get back to the commentary team. You guys. Thank you, Kabi and Tai. So out in this heap, we have the two Japanese competitors. This is a three-person heat. We have Ro Kanazawa, and we have Alex and, um, Kizu and Takuru Nui. And we saw these surfers lining up just last week at the Union. That's us on the screen. My name's Matt, and this is True Starling next to me, and we're in the beautiful Coast of Pacific Hotel right out the front of the break. So uh, unusual that we don't have view of the waves in front of us, but the good thing is the waves are over to our right-hand side of the screen, so we'll be constantly having a look over there uh, watching surfers paddle out for their heats and getting the updates for you guys with our live eyes where we were tucked away at La Union last week in a beautiful air-conditioned room but sometimes our job gets a little easier when we can lay eyes on the ocean between heats a lot easier. Yeah, it's nice to be able to walk out of here and pretty much directly over to the ocean right there. Um, so, I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how today kind of plays out. I walked out of my room this morning and there was a little bit, a little bit of mist, so, you know, there was a little bit of drama in the air, but, you know, I think the surfing is going to be really exciting to watch. Roy, he's such a powerhouse of a surfer. He's got that beautiful, effortless kind of flow about him so i'm looking forward to seeing him uh in this heat he did pretty well over in india um he's got a brother as well taki kanazawa from memory um and yeah they both surf really great kizawa we saw him um in la union as well and of course taka he's a force to be reckoned with mm. both on and off the board he's great on short boards great on long boards so i think we've got a really great heat to start off the day and a bit of free surfing as well everyone's getting wet yeah, it's just surfers getting their feet in the wax, warming up. Uh, we had some pretty solid waves and a lot of the buses arrived two days ago. It was well and truly overhead high and you can look all the way up to the north there to the, the mountains on the outside of Belair and that's Aurora, the region there. And we just want to thank the Tingog party list, uh, ASRAI, UPSA, Department of Tourism. We are in Region 3, the Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee. We had a fantastic night opening ceremony where we had some great speeches from Mayor Rhett Angara and the Regional Department of Tourism Regional Director Richard Danos, some 
absolute words of wisdom and they're very stoked to see surfing come here um, we want to say thank you to Costa Pacifica and the BHRROA the local government of Belair of course House Speaker Martin Ramoldez uh, Begong Pilipinas and the Congressman Ramel Angara as well and Senator Sunny Angara so what did you make of last night's speeches and some great dancing from the local uh, high school community as well yeah it was really cool to see it was amazing to you know see the the performing arts and the um you know dancing and also the music as well that comes out of this region here in Belair and it was it was really awesome to know the passion from this region you know they were saying that this is still quite a young province established in 1979 um so you know still finding its feet and the fact that we have a qs 3000 here is pretty exciting mm. and i think you know a lot of the the competitors are excited to be here you know exploring the town of belair and where we're at and i went to a japanese restaurant last night and had some uh Udon, which was amazing. Um, yeah, the food is really good here, so it's exciting to be exploring. And there's so many waves on offer. It's a long stretch of beach, about seven miles. So there's plenty of ways to free mm. surf. Um, and there's definitely opportunities, you know, to kind of find the best bank for the competitors. But we are so lucky to have the best bank right out here in front of us. We are. And directly straight out the front, there's a rip bowl left and a right. We're going into 25-minute heats, just kicking this one off. And speaking off camera to Rizal Tanjong. I'm hoping he can come into the booth during the week. Uh, he definitely identified a few setups beyond beach breaks in this region uh, within an hour's drive north and south. And just to the south there, there's a couple of waves off there which are world class. And last night during that opening ceremony we were joined by the foundation surfers, um, the Dukes they called them. And those surfers were here in the mid-60s. Surfing did kick off here in the late 60s. A lot of it was brought almost like surfers who acted like missionaries with their surfboards coming in the late 60s with the American presence here in the uh, Luzon Island and introduced surfing to this region. And here we have our Chinese competitor Alex getting this one started and a nice three-turn combo, little foam climb to get down the line. You can see him opting for the EPS board, nice and light and poppy. And that'll be the order of the day, I'd imagine, today, true? Yeah, absolutely. I think if, um, you know, we get a surf this afternoon, depending on what time we finish, it's going to be epoxy weather out there for sure. It's a little bit smaller and that um, zippiness of mm. an epoxy can really make your surfing stand out and as well kind of add a bit of flair. Um, and it's it's great because a lot of the especially the shortboard competitors they travel with a quiver of at least four to five boards and at least one epoxy mm. in that kind of in that realm i think coming over mm. here to the philippines maybe a step up might not have been brought but um you know the epoxies it's always traveling with you wherever you go and i saw a few swallow tails in the lineup too and some what we would descri describe in California, or I'd say America and Australia, as uh, summer style boards. A little flatter rocker, a little more width up around the chest. And that is obviously this being a beach break, surfers intending to s most likely come up with some smaller conditions. But ironically, we are more open to swell here than what we were last week. Uh, tucked away in the West Philippine Sea there, it was amazing there at Union that we're able to get swelled down that far. And here goes Alex, second wave. Wow. And getting off to a very explosive quick start in three turns. Gets this one all the way through. And the judges will be looking for that combination of maneuvers. If you can carry that flow between the maneuvers and make it look critical without too much downtime in between, you will get rewarded, of course, with some uh, progression and some exciting maneuvers as well, as we saw our surfer in red on the outside. Roy and Tucker goes down. Yeah, that was one really nice turn from Roy out the back and looks like he's just trying to see if he can get a couple of extra bonus points or a few bonus sections mm. on this inside and yeah. looks like it might wall up for him, Matt. Yeah, we just saw in the inset, it was a nice... You got the fins really free there and a nice power curve on the inside, so I don't think we'll see too many people really engaging the rail out there today, but it'll be, it'll be Alex out to that quick start, the 3.5 on hill of a backup to be logged in. But Roy, I think, will get the jump on the competitors. You can see that beautiful drone angle. It's a bit misty and gloomy, as you said. But when that sun comes out, the water is glistening clear and blue. And 
There's a little bit of a patchy seaweed out there too, rope seaweed, seaweed, which makes it look really beautiful from above and it really trans it's very transparent as you mm. look down to the ocean floor. Yeah, absolutely. Roy is from Shikoku, on, which is on the west side of Japan. Um, so, you know, he's really refined his surfing. He's got that clean, beautiful style, kind of um, that back knee sort of drop that drop knee which is you know I love that it's it, that's probably one of my favorite styles in surfing I love watching that traditional kind of sense um so I'm excited to see how this heat Taki, Taka looks in that 2.9 he's from uh, Miyazaki but I believe he travels around Japan with his family and obviously the world as well on the um, WLT the world longboard tour and key that last wave, or Alex, as you were saying, a 4.5 for his second wave. So he's starting off with a good foundation. And the period of the swell today is down to nine seconds. We saw 10 second period two days ago and the swell was only marginally bigger in terms of size. But when it hit the bank, it was pretty powerful paddling out. So this surf is starting off with some pretty big airs when they got here. I saw some radical surfing with those big closeout sections. But today, very soft so to get a two turn, uh, three turns out there right now and a, a 4.5 and a 3.5, that'll be we'll set, hopefully not a keeper, but we'll have to go and see. That'd feel nice 20 minutes to go that you've got the jump in your opponents and Taka was just that 2.5 and a 5.5 for Roy. So judges looking at that progression, looking at the ability to release the fins, catch them again and continue momentum down the line. A bit of downtime, so you can't help but feel if there was a, a midsection on that wave, just how high that scores are going to go. So the judges really making their presence felt right now. And you can see down the line, there's a few peaks, but we are, there's a rip to the northern, the southern side and a rip to the, to the northern side as well. So this being a rip bowl, left and a right. But free surfing yesterday, true. If you're under priority, there are options on either side of the banks too. So it'll be interesting to see what strategy the surfers come up with today and get away from that priority in the last few minutes of a heat. Yeah, 100%. I think there was definitely options. Even sitting a little bit further in, there is a little bit of a rip bowl as well where you can kind of pick up even on your way back out mm. after catching a wave, which is great to have the, um, the op those opportunities. You know, sometimes where we were at La Union, you know, you had to be on the sets mm -hmm. to get good scores. Whereas here, you can make the most out of those little rip bowls, especially with a steep section. You can see the longboard is over there to the north. And that, there's another bank behind that as well. So we just saw Roy keeping his distance away. Yeah. And you're exactly right. You can take off on a mid-sized wave that might have an inside bowl. Something's mm -hmm. going to allow some more opportunity and you see some, well, they've got motors, but traditional style fishing vessels, just a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of sheet steel on top just to protect them from the sun. That don't know if it'd do too much for your uh, your body temperature, warming up with that thing just emanating. <laughs> and Tucker opening up the reverse spin there and carving this one down. Nice tempo. And Alex in the inset goes down. So Tucker's going to be looking for the inside section here. He's got those yellow rails. Looks like a new board or at least a spray at least. Pumping through. And he releases the fins and goes incomplete on that inside section. We'll see where that one falls with the judges. And why do surfers opt for an epoxy in conditions like this, Tro uh, True? <laughs> um, you know, it's one of those conditions where maybe the surf's a little bit weaker mm. um, than what it looks. It doesn't have as much push and you kind of need a board to overcompensate for that. Um, and you need something that's springy, that's light, that can really react um, at the exact points when you need it to. PUs are great when it's a little bit bigger um, and has a little bit more push, but you know, it you have to kind of work the board, whereas epoxies, they sort of work for you. Um, and Key is just showing that right now with a nice carve and out the back, that's Roy. And Beautiful backside surfing. Yeah, look at that, that drop knee, as you said, smooth transitions and this wave looking fantastic. You can see the comparison to an Alex really trying to manufacture a score. You can see him uh, working this one all the way down. But Roy just carried that momentum right across the bank. But Alex only needing to drop a 3.5. He'll be looking to, to do that in that wave. We'll see where it falls. But just the speed that Roy carried on that. It'd be nice to get a replay of that one so he can really dissect the technical surfing of Roy there. 
And that's something to be said if a surfer can carry momentum between the sections, especially from the beginning to the end of the wave and perform some maneuvers so hard to do mm. and to position yourself with that paddle speed in the first place. We talked about the epoxies just before yeah. doing a lot of the work for you. But being able to position that board to utilize every little bit of that power pocket is incredibly difficult. It's hard enough on a long board, let alone on a short board with... I mean, you'd have to say most of the surfers are on surfboards between 25 to 28 litres out there. Maybe the bigger guys are on 29 litres, but mm. everything under 30 litres. And for people out there who are tuned into their equipment, listening to those, that looking at the waves, most people are opting for 50 or 60, 70, 80 litres out there right now, True. Yeah, it's, it's one of those... Um those surfs or those conditions where you do need to be in tune with your equipment, especially, you know, if you're competing here at a higher level, mm -hmm. the QS 3000, there's a lot on the line, a lot of points. Um, and, you know, the ratings can really change up. We saw them kind of shift a little bit after La Union, but stay pretty similar. This is that replay of Roy and beautiful surfing. It's just got such great flow, really clean style. And I love how he just goes straight up into that. That two-turn combination at the end was really, really great to watch. And a 6.25 was mm. rewarded for that wave. It was solid surfing. Um, and I wanted to point out as well, you know, on epoxies today, as opposed to a PU, they, they go through those flatter sections. They go, th they move through those sections where maybe there's not too much power on the wave. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why we saw, I'm assuming Roy's on an epoxy. I might eat my words later, but, um, you know, he's making the most of that. His board was just flowing through every section. And there is a few moments where out the back compared to where it connects to the shoreline there's a bit of a dead section and you really need to work to get through that and the epoxy will just take a little bit of the effort away and will i mean even more of a testament to how skillful roy is mm. if he gets through this heat and it isn't an epoxy uh, obviously equipment being a major factor fins as well look forward to finding some information about the fins or perhaps the lack of variety a lot of these surfers usually just sticking with the same fins but i do find with epoxies especially in Australia and in California, a lot of them are putting in uh, bigger fins in the epoxies to counterbalance the erratic nature of the surfboard, yeah. the flex of the board. So they put a bigger fins in to hold in, especially so they don't overcompensate. They slide out. Um, and there's... We've got Key there, 4.5, 3.9. Did marginally improve his situation, 3.9, but he's down in a second with Tucker, just needing a 4.85... Not a lot of talking from the bench announcer at the moment. Maybe they have some... Uh, yeah, so that there is a technical um, glitch there with the beach announcer, we've been told, which is interesting because they were working previously. Very loud. Yeah, they were. So wondering, you know, sometimes it's it's the first day jitters. Everything's just kind of falling into place right now. But um, key up and riding on this one. Redirects it for a left. He's a little bit behind the section, but does super well to get around it. Nice carve, catching a little bit of rail, but recovers well and puts it up there for another nice connection. This one looking like it might offer him even a finish section, which it does, and he gets a completion. So he needs to better a 3.9. We'll see if it does. And Tucker needing a 4.85. I feel like Tucker's kind of, I don't know, I feel like he kind of threw away the finish on mm. that 3.55. He did. You'd have to say that would have maybe gone up into the fours. Wouldn't have been that 4.85, I don't think, if he was to complete on that uh, reverse spin, working hard. But a lot of these surfers relying on the beach announcer regularly, and it's up to them because the beach announcer is a luxury. It's, mm. It isn't always guaranteed that you can hear the beach announcer in conditions. Uh, things happen. You move off the bank. Speakers go down. Technical glitches, but the heats roll on. And these surfers have to be prepared to surf without those, those comfort aids like in an amateur event where you don't have all of those uh, efficiencies that you do get at the professional level. It even happens on the CT at times when you're paddling out, you're duck diving, mm. you see the surfers unable to get those requirements because they're in the turbulence. They get out the back, there's a minute or two left, they're asking for the requirement. Meanwhile, if they had just been able to hear, they may have been able to turn around and get a marginal score that they required halfway out. Yeah. They don't know at that point, so... Surfers need to keep a track of their own heat sometimes. I know some people write in their wax their waves sometimes with their, their thumb. The, the, um, the height, or the, I mean, I should say the, oh, there's oh. Tucker. Goes complete. He does have a foot injury. Wow. 
And he's working this one through. So a little bit uh, messy and sloppy this way, but he finds an inside bowl and he goes for another spin and doesn't quite ride out of that cleanly, but he does complete it. And he looks up at the judges, but a, a little bit manufacturing. We compare it to the smooth, silky style of Roy there. And that one, he's just bogging with the commentator's curse. <laughs> what did you make of Tucker's wave? Uh, like you said, I think um, manufacturing that wave, kind of manufacturing a score on that one, he needs a 5-5 five five now. Um, you know, I, I hope that we can see a little bit more refined surfing from Tucker. We know how good he is, and I think right now he's just kind of surfing to that 5-5, five five, whereas starting off with a good foundation is probably a better better role. But, you know, it's... It, it is difficult when you can't hear the beach commentators. And as you were saying, that's really where, um, you know, your own heat kind of strategy and, and heat surfing IQ needs to come into place. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of a lot of times, especially when I've been training um, and the coach um, that I'm training with at the moment, he's like, okay, well, you're going to go out there and you're going to mm. score yourself. Yep. You need to score yourself. You've got to keep track of where you think you're at because if you can't hear mm. the scores, then you don't know what's going Like, you have to kind of figure out what's going on. And I think a lot of the time I always deduct two points off of what I think mm. it's going to be because you can quite easily be like, oh, wow, that felt amazing. But if it doesn't look good, mm. it's not going to go score well. And understanding that criteria... Uh, well, sorry, I was also going to add language because a lot of these surfers, yep. they do understand English, but certain accents are a little bit more difficult. And I know some of them have been speaking to me. I feel like I have a very Australian accent, but some of them saying that I'm easy to understand, perhaps an international style Australian accent where other Australian accents is very difficult for them to process, especially quickly. So he goes, Tucker, this is that replay. Yeah, this actually came in at a 6.4. So I think, you know, Taka, he did manufacture a score, but gets the highest wave of the heat. So it worked out for him. I think, you know, he added a bit of variety. He definitely got above the lip. So, you know, adding that risk um, into that wave was, yeah, he, he was well rewarded for it. A 6.4 is um, enough to get him up into second place so it was smart surfing from Tucker but I still want to see him kind of mm. go to turns I yeah. want to see what he can do on rail you imagine yeah you just if he carried the flow and the yes. speed because there was no speed on that wave yeah. and it was purely just the maneuvers so and here goes the silky smooth Roy nice opening carve see carrying that momentum into that next carve and if he can unload in a section here he is front loading and that one not giving him anything but you can see the contrast in the styles, and that's where the heat IQ comes in. He knows that. He pulled out of that. He's not going to expect a score to go higher than the 5.5. Five. But I feel like with Tucker, international competitor, he's still working out his heat IQ. He's still mm. working out his scoring because often I see him get very animated, very excited for scores, and it often falls short because it what feels amazing sometimes doesn't score amazing especially with the drama that someone like Tucker is able to add to the surfing. Um, if it's not connection, if it's not carrying momentum from each maneuver all the way through, those little hiccups, the judges are really harsh on it on quality waves. I see places like Bells Beach and you can't just go out there and do what Tucker did at Bells Beach and expect a massive score. You've got to mm. do all those little connection bits. You've got to be able to set the fin, set the rail and use all part of the wave and oh nice wow. opening slash there for Alex gets a little caught up as he makes his way back around and here he is lining up down the line does he have an end section we contrast the Tucker goes tail high and that one an even better aerial for Tucker and Alex finishes off in the blue there and carrying this one through almost identical to his last wave maybe better carrying more speed and finishing this one up so that'll be a fantastic backup, if not surpassing that 6.4 true. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, you know, that 6.4 that he got with those two airs, I think for round one, it's going to pass. But I think when round two comes through with our seated surfers, you have to lift that level. Um, and yeah, that second wave from the brief moment that I saw looked like it mm. did that, looked like it was a better connection, um, looked like he got a little bit more tail high. Um, I'm excited to see kind of where 
this score goes and have another look at the replay and kind of see what he did before that if that was his first first turn but I really liked that opening connection for Key I think it was a great carve um, one of the first ones I've seen this heat where he's really laid mm. it on rail that was beautiful driving through the back half of it as well it was just unfortunate that he couldn't get a solid finish I mm. think he was on his way to a good score um, he was gaining a bunch of speed and I think, you know, the idea was right and he got, he did get the finish, but I think it was the flair mm. that he didn't quite grab onto. And then this was Tucker's one, just projecting off once again, just able to boost off a section where, you know, most people will normally try and project mm. through and get this, a better inside connection. It did go into his top two at a five, but it wasn't enough to take him to the lead. And that last way of key was a 3.8. So I think just for that, pretty much one carve. And he needs a 6.85 right now. So the judges really making their presence felt they want to see strong completions. If mm. we compare it back to Tucker's before, his best turn, his best aerial was his last turn. So mm. let's make a little dot point there, Truth, throughout the day. If there's in a dynamic end section, the judges want to see a strong finish. And yep. that seems to be the order of the day with... You know, Alex hitting at 3.8, one of his best turns of the heat, but unable to capitalize on that end section. So there we have it for this heat. At least the judges looking for something considerable on the end section. Uh, we saw Roy with that flow on his 6.25. He finished strong as well. So if you can find a wave that's giving you that size down the line, something to carry momentum, we just established judges are really appreciating that right now. And it's nice to see the fins free. This area is actually no stranger to aerial maneuvers and progressive surfing but they've actually got a world-class skate park around the corner the best skate park in the philippines wow. um just a few blocks back in the city there of belair and incredible we saw the drone footage of it next to the the local river that runs out uh just to the north of where we are right now so an amazing setup here we've got a river that runs through the town beautiful bridge a great city center with a tribute to apocalypse now carrying uh through the history of the philippines uh culture as well so lots to see down here in Belair and live action with Tucker Anui and <laughs> just spins to win on that wave just so loose and lively and he's reveling in these conditions right now I don't know if he's heard his update yet but he's feeling it just needing to get a 535 to move up in the lead thoughts true He's all about the drama, isn't he? Yeah. He loves it. He loves adding a little bit of, bit of flair. He loves, uh, you know, Tucker, to me, he's an entertainer. He's an yep. entertaining surfer to watch. You never know what he's going to do. You never know kind of what Tucker you're going to get, whether he's on a short board or a long board. Um, and I love watching sup. him surf. Or, or, or a, a sup. Yeah. Or, yeah, or every, a finless. Exactly. I've, I've just seen him on uh, a short board and long board. So I'm... Yeah, yeah, it's going to blow my mm. mind when I see him on another mm. piece of, of foam. But, um, you know, I think that last wave, and it's still waiting to lock in, but uh, I, I still want to see that flow. I still want to yeah. see him hit the lip. Too, I still yeah. want to see him use his rail because he has such a good rail game, game and it's good to watch. And I think... Um, well, we know he does because he's used to turning nine foot of rail. Exactly. And I want to see that from Tycoon. And I guess today, you know, it is a little bit small. It's a little bit fickle out there this morning. Um, so I understand why he kind of wants to uh, do airs and kind of use a lot of energy on the waves. But compare that to Roy's slow, clean yeah. surfing with a lot of flow. Um, it's very different. And I think the contrast is really cool to see in this heat. Do you think perhaps jumping on a shorter board... Tucker enjoys being able to release the fins, something that is pretty hard to do for his frame on a longboard. 100%. Yeah, yeah. it feels... He's, he's feel, he feels progressive. Yeah. Even though a slide is actually easier to do than a rail carve. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's, that's not arguably, that's just fact, right? Yeah. It's easier to yeah. stamp on the tail and slide it than it is to do a power carve. Yeah, totally. And I think as well, like, his... Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. But I feel like his specialty is a longboard. You know, he's on the WLT. He's a world-class longboarder. Mm. So I think when he gets on a shortboard, he can kind of have fun with it. You yeah. know, it, there's no, he's got no pressure, mm. you know, because his focus is longboarding. He wants to progress through that. 
it's funny you say that because I was chatting to him yesterday and his two sisters, Kaidi and Sakura, and he has, growing up, uh, Miyazaki, he had no idols really to look up to in person mm. and he saw on the internet there was an old uh, YouTube video uh, of Noosa Festival of Surfing that capitalized, that really it made him feel uh, like this is what he wants to do, surfing. And, and cool. I was in that video, he said, along with some of his idols and he's never had a, a bias towards certain boards. He grew up as an all-boarder. Yeah. He never grew up with that mentality of I'm a short boarder, I'm a long boarder, which is what we see here today. His sister, three-time world sub champion before she was even 18 and Kaidi also taking out the uh, world longboard tour event uh, world qualifying tour event back in La Union last week too so it runs in the family yeah and um, these surfers uh, no bias but we got Roy in red and Alex pumping down the line and he just slides the fins again so not able to get that dynamic finish but he's still going on the inside as we see Roy on the right in red our Japanese competitor looking for something, trying to consolidate his first place. And Alex does find a second connection way down. And we actually, and that time he goes tail high, he goes in complete true. Yeah, he needs a 7.05 at this stage as well. That last one of Tucker's was 5.2. So it went into his top two, that exciting surfing. It's being rewarded. Um, and yeah, for Alex or Key Zhao, uh, you know, he... A 7.05, it's a big score and needs to be the best wave of the heat. Mm. Um, and it was unfortunate that he wasn't able to ride out. Um, and, you know, the heat's coming down to a close, so it doesn't look like he'll get another opportunity as well. So it'll be Roy Kanazawa and Tucker Nui moving through in this heat. Um, we've got Roy's last wave just a 3. I mean, Key's last wave a 3.05, so that wasn't enough to move him forward, unfortunately. And we're going to... Uh, Go on hold while we fix our beach announcer and we'll go to a commercial and we'll be back for live action very shortly as we are in the land of the golden sunrise. But a little gloomy today, True. Yeah, it is a little gloomy, but um, I, I kind of like it. I like the moodiness of it and I think it's going to, you know, that first heat was a great way to start the day. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the day after this quick little halt. And we'll be back into heat two very shortly. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back. We're straight into heat two of the round of 48, the QS3000 in Belair. Aurora in the Philippines. We're on the East Coast and out there an all-Philippine affair. Eduardo, Arciso, Filma, Alipeo, and Kent Soloso and Ivan Nogalo. I'm the Waxhead with True Starling to call this heat. An absolute pleasure to be on the East Coast. The Philippines, True. Yeah, it is. It's nice to, um, you know, be embracing all parts of the Philippines. We drove pretty much straight across the country to get here, about a six and a half hour drive. But we took about eight hours to do it, stopping a couple of times. You know, we we had the chance to kind of enjoy, um, you know, the layout of the country and the views and, and seeing what it's about. I actually was speaking to Kian Martin in the surf yesterday and he was saying that he had a great time. He took his time across the country to kind of, you know, take in what the different part of the Philippines is about. You know, we're so used to seeing the ocean and mm. and the coastal side of the Philippines. So crossing the country in the middle and seeing something different was super cool. As we saw those beautiful drone shots earlier, this 
area is so rich in tropical rainforest, but there's a lot of the farmland. You see some uh, sugar cane, you see some wheat growing along the roads. At moments, I thought I was in northern New South Wales in Australia, and other times, uh, the pineapple fields in Hawaii. Then parts of Jurassic Park, when you're driving along the uh, east coast of Hawaii, and you have those, those beautiful mountain ranges as well. So a lot of variety here in the scenery and waves as well. Lots of different lefts, rights, slabs, beaches, of course, point breaks like we saw back in La Union. But we're in Sabang Beach down here in Belair, in the region of Aurora in the Philippines. Let me thank the Tingog Party List and Upsa Department of Tourism, Philippine Sports Commission, the Philippine Olympic Committee, and Mayor Rhett Angara with a great speech last night. And Ramel Angara, the local congressman, and Senator Sunny Angara as well. And of course, House Speaker Martin Romualdez, Begong, Pilipinas. And the Department of Three, which is where we are, the Department of uh, Tourism, sorry, Region Three. Uh, Director Richard Danos, who also had a great speech. And catching up with this heat, this is the legend, Filmar, who's been looking really good in the warm ups. That one, unable to capitalize. And two times. Going down Soloso with that, I love that uh, yellow tint with a, what is it, a maroon inset. Looks very captivating. Yeah, it's definitely um, not hard to miss as well. And I, I, I'm a big fan of spray on boards. I've got sprays on all of mine. And I think it's, you know, it's one of those things mm. where, oh, you know, what's what's going on there you know and it, it it attracts your eyes as well so makes the surfing exciting so for kent you know um a couple of smaller scores to start off his heat and also for filma but filma he's a great surfer we saw him do um a huge rodeo flip um over in shagao last year and it was pretty insane to watch i don't even think he needed to do it he was sitting in second and it was literally the end of the heat and he just pulled it out of his back pocket and um sitting there was kind of one of those things where you're going how wow did that just happen <laughs> it was really cool to watch so and you know he's he runs do you remember surf. what the score was it was high, it was a nine something okay. it wasn't so a it was 10 a, it was a critical section yeah it wasn't a small it was wave. huge it was huge and here goes Ivan. So the spray is the order of the day out there right now. And these surfers, green rash vest and green rails, and he goes complete as well. I'm loving the sprays, Drew. Yeah. Perhaps there, and the yellow as well. So every surfer, oh, no, that was the one from before. Wow. So there, there he is, uh, our surfer, Ken's able to capitalize on that one and feel more on the, feel more on the inset the, in blue. Nice. Uh, wrapping turn there, and he's going to look to finish really strong on the inside and doesn't Ooh. go complete. Those little hiccups can end up uh, really coming to haunt you at the end of a heat true. Yeah, it was important that he finished that wave because he got a couple of good turns out the back. Um, so getting that finish is a bonus. And look, there's a couple of lines coming through. It seems like the ocean's just coming to life this morning. And our CISO here, nice power carve. He put in a good showing. With his brother, uh, they both um, really impressed me in La Union, actually, with their lively surfing, their ability to be able to spring through sections and adapt to uh, the closeouts that we had there, on, especially on the bigger days. Unfortunately, going down in the round of 16, I believe, but it was really nice to get them on the camera. And it's always nice when two brothers are able to compete against each other and put in a strong showing, even if they're not able to progress through to the next round. But um, I think we're going to see some airs in this heat. That's what I'm feeling right now. The, the breakaway for our CISO and Filmar, as we talked about the radio flip, is that they can go to the air. And that's the element of difference that we saw Tucker actually progressing through that last heat. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, touching back on the on the brother thing, um, we've got both the Colapinto brothers on tour, yeah. um, which I think is going to be exciting. So to Well, be of course, everyone's to tuning in watching Belair right now, not yeah. Pipeline. Not Pipe. Yeah, this so is way more important. The, well, the QS3000... <laughs> As I was actually chatting to some of these surfers yesterday, we're talking about Pipeline and they're asking me, oh, who's your pick? Who do you think? Because I was just there a few weeks ago and watching some of the, the rookies prepare. And actually, Matt McGilvray had a great performance this morning. And I said Matt McGilvray because he really impressed me at Sunset as well and Pipeline. So he had a great heat this morning. But I said, you guys could be there next year. If the, everything goes right, you're on the Challenger Series this year, you qualify. This time next year, you're waxing up your step-ups and you're going up pipe today. 
and their eyes almost roll back in their head. And I said, that's a reality. This is the pathway system. Oh, as we just see Soloso going down, that is the reality. Mm. A surfer from this tour, or several surfers from this tour, in fact, five from this tour, could end up progressing and through. <laughs> and a wild card progressing through on the Challenger Series and end up on the World Tour. And that's what's at stake. The Challenger Series obviously being a regional um, amalgamation of competitors from all the different regions around the world. So five people plus the wild card go through from the Asia, re Asia region. And then for that World Tour, those surfers will, can progress onto the World Tour with anybody really. Well, so Kelly Slater might still be there. Yeah, probably. Yep, we'll see. Uh, well, on cool. the women's side of the draw, we, we'll, we're trying to find out who the best goofy footer was on their backside. And of course, we missed out on Caroline Marks. We couldn't yeah. believe that in history. But on the women's side of the draw, there's a lot of the power surfing we see, especially from the Japanese surfers, that I think could do really well in a heat up against, say, um, Caroline Marks. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of these women... Uh, eager to be on tour and Filma just showing that eagerness as well on this wave but he needs to find a finish just racing through this end section I was just about to say nice flow few hiccups if he can finish strong there we just lose him with the pole be nice to see if he completed that and Eduardo nice lively surfing and he goes incomplete as well so we'll have to see where um with that wave went, or Filma only leading 161 with that 3.7 to open up. Yeah, not a big score for Filma. I feel like he'll get that. Um, and for Eduardo, I think he'll probably nudge the 256 as well. He got two nice backhand connections, but it was unfortunate for a no finish. Um, this is a pretty good heat. If I could be wrong, and I'm sure Jerry or John will let me know, but I think most, if not all, of these competitors are actually from Chiagao. So I remember, well, I remember seeing Kent over in Chiagao mm -hmm. um, last year. Filmar's definitely from Chiagao, and I know Eduardo is. I think as Ivan well. might be a local. Oh, uh, that's exciting. So Ivan could be a local surfer. So maybe a bit of local knowledge playing to his favour in this heat. He already has that three, but Filma locking in a 5-5. Five five. Best wave of the heat so far. Still waiting on this last one of Eduardo. And it is an all-Philippine affair right now, and these surfers revelling in the opportunity to have two QS 3000s in their region or in their country. Keeps costs down, and of course, in terms of... Uh, Building a hotbed of talent in your country is no better way than to host events yourself. And I'm sure the Philippine Sports Commission and the Olympic Committee are very grateful for that opportunity with UPSA to be able to collaborate with the WSL and the relevant government affiliations to be able to have this event here. Because the reality is true. These surfers having an opportunity to surf against other international competitors, it just raises the bar. Mm, absolutely and you know that old saying if you want to be the best you've got to beat the best um, and it's one of those things where you know if you want to be here and if yep. you want to win 3,000 points you've got to beat the likes of Keijiro Nishi who's leading the rankings of Marama who is on a roll Kian Martin who's had really consistent results but is hungry for that win mm -hmm. um, and starting off in that round one you do have to rise to that level especially moving into round two and I think of all the powerhouse nations and surf culture areas in the world that have been dominant in surfing and comp competitions have not been too far away from that region here we have Nagalo nice flow on the inside section his feet a little closer together you can see him just carrying that momentum and it has been confirmed that, as you predicted, all surfers are from Sha Gao, true. So you'd have to say not too familiar with beach breaks. Um, all reefs and points over there. So this surfer's putting in a great show considering. And his Kent, nice, carries that momentum through. I love the style of both Kent and Nagalo. Their feet a little closer together. Doesn't have the, that, that, I guess you'd almost familiarize it with beach break surfing big wide stance for loading up for airs yeah 100% um, and this is Eduardo nice backside surfing I really like how low he gets to his board mm. going into um, into his turns and oh wow Ooh, redirects 
Ooh, nice finish there. That's the first change of direction that we've seen. And with the high tide coming in another hour and a half, we might see a little bit of that true going left, going right. And I was just saying previously, I think of an area where we're from the northern beaches of Sydney. Mm -hmm. It's coincidence that we are here, but that was considered one of the first surf cities. The first world surfing titles held there in 1964. The surf industry in Brookvale was synonymous with the development of the shortboard. It was synonymous with the development of the V-bottom. Uh, flex fins, multiple fins. Simon Anderson putting the thruster on on the northern beaches. And shortboard or well, surfboard development, not far behind contests. We had Lane Beachley. We had... Um, Damien Hardman, we had Barton Lynch, Midget Farrelly, Nat Young, Tom Carroll, uh, Stuart Entwistle in the amateur ranks. Uh, those surfers claiming world titles and multiple at different times of their careers as well, all coming from the Northern Beaches. And there's more world titles between Manly and Palm Beach than anywhere else in the world, simply because it's where a lot of events were held. They had the um, annual Coke Classic there. They had the, the Pro Juniors there for a long time as well. Uh, the surf about in the 70s and of course that first world surfing title was held there in Manly as well so you'd have to say board rider clubs which are being uh, I guess pursued and popularized around the world right now were synonymous with the northern beaches mm. and it, it really started in America but Australia took off it really took off in Australia that board rider club mentality and we see that here in the the local surf riders club at Belair Chargao have it as well they have a dominant um you know, they surf together in a club. Uh, La Union have that as well, the LU Surf Club. So those surf clubs are what gives that foundation. Then you step it up to the uh, Philippine Sports Commission and, of course, UPSA. Mm -hmm. Those organizations are what help the regions. This is the first WSL event in the region. So you'd have to say, like last year with La Union, like Chargao, having that international event held with the Board Rider Club in collaboration, those surfers are instantly going to improve their heat strategy, their board IQ, understanding what the next level is. And that's the pattern that we've seen through surf history. Hawaii obviously needs no introduction. Um, you know, surfers at Sunset Beach, Rocky Point, Pipeline, all dueling it out. Um, surfing the world's best ever since the 60s. Uh, California, Huntington Beach, Oceanside, uh, those places where they have international events held regularly. Those surfers, well, we look what's happening in San Clemente right now. There's three rookies from that area, along with mm. uh, uh, Griffin Colapinto on that world tour. And that's simply because they have the world's best surfing in their, with their, in their region. So good on the Philippines, good on the Philippine Sports Commission and UPSA for making this event happen with WSL because one of these four surfers or all four surfers could be on the world tour next year. Yeah, it's exciting. And, you know, it's, it's the unknown that I think for me is like, oh, you know, you never know where you're going to land and... Um, it's it's cool to kind of take a leap and, and move move through that. And like you said, you know, the foundations of surfing and I mean, in, not foundations of surfing, but I, I mean, in my opinion, mm. where you can really hone in your competitive surfing foundations is in board riders clubs. Yep. You know, it's in those monthly catch ups or meetups where, you know, Everyone has a rivalry. Everyone wants to win. And I know for myself, that's where a lot of trial and error mm. came into play in my board riders club of North Narrabeen and, and the competitiveness and the, you know, once you reach the top, it's like, okay, let's move somewhere else. Let's challenge well, yourself more. On the top of my head, Geordie Lawler, Chris Davidson, Nathan Hedge, Nathan Webster, the Bannister brothers, Davy Cathels, Davy Cathels, Damien Jordy Hardman, Lola. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Damien Hardman, of course, and then the women's side, Laura Anover, yeah, and your sister, mm -hmm. among many others that have come through, and that's just in the last ten years. The people yeah. that are regulars at the beach. Well, Belle Godfrey was on tour now. Belle Hardwick as well. She was on tour for a while. Not including the amateurs, yeah. as well. But these surfers will have all have competed against each other. Most importantly, they've surfed against each other, and now they're pushing themselves with the contest jersey on. A big thank you to their sponsors. I'm sure they're all tuning in right now back in Chargao. Uh, really stoked to see them in the in the vest, and it's a pretty close affair with uh, Eduardo just needing a four six six to move in the lead. But Filmar five five, he did must have finished that turn on the inside that we got caught off with True, and it was. Uh, it's Kent with a 5.53 required to move in a second and Nogalo needing a 5.2. So all these surfers are going to come right down to the wire. 
but it's Filmar out in the lead with priority. And I think it's no coincidence that in the Asian region, Rio Wider making the world tour just a year or two after they started having the CT in Karamas and they had the CT during COVID in Uluwatu as well. I don't think it's any coincidence that you see that development. And here we have Kent just looking to get started on this inside section, pumping down the line. This wave quite slow and he goes incomplete, unable to find a little connection. Tricky conditions for these surfers, but it's an even playing field, true. Yeah, it definitely is. Everyone's in the same boat. You know, you, there's moments where um, you can't, you know, there's parts in heats, especially in that first round where mistakes are, have to be limited. Um, but, you know, the beauty of this is whether it's big, small, windy, rippy, mm. perfect conditions, everyone is out there surfing the same thing. So everyone's in the same boat and that's the one thing where it's like, well, everyone has the same opportunities as what I do. It's just what I make of my opportunities. 25 minute heats, two waves counting and these surfers, well, their fans will be on the edge of their seats and uh, just heard from Jerry there that uh, Kent's mum, Edna, she's from Katagun, will be watching with the whole family right now. And here we have Ivan, just looking under priority, trying to build his total. And we have the, the, the Shargal expats, Jerry and John, they'll be coming in the booth throughout uh, John's acting contest director as well. He joined us for the union as well, but he's got a lot of information to shed on the Shargal surfers. Um, it's his first time here as well in Belair, and John has, hasn't been to Belair either. So yep. the first time for, for all of us here at the WSL and the first WSL event held here. And this is the birthplace of surfing in the Philippines, true. So what better place to celebrate an international surf event, a QS3000 and a longboard qualifying series of 1000 here at the birthplace of surfing in the Philippines. Yeah, very lucky to be here. And I know Eduardo is stoked to be here as well, releasing the fins a little bit there. Yeah, so he's... Looking lively, uh, that one. He's just looking to better a 4.5, so I'm not sure if that wave will be it. Looking for an inside connection. You can sort of see the rip bowl, the rip on the right side of the screen is coming around the left and comes around the top, and there's a rip on the left side of the screen that goes out to the north as well. So you can see that turbulence in the outside section making it difficult to see if it's a left or a right. And this one looking like a left, and Filmar, Heat leader taking this one in priority. Nice. Tail high spin there. And here he works where I like that flow between connection there. And he's going to look for an inside section. Pumping a little bit more. He's got pretty light body composure. And you can see him just pumping, pumping. Finds a little snap on the inside. He's be catching up right now with Kent. And his mum will be tuning in right now. Nice. Three, four little snaps there. He's going to go. He's going to go back to the left. Yep. And he's tiny little redirects of these, not really amounting much. And there's something of substance on the end. And he finishes right on the sand. So if he goes down at this heat, four minutes, 20 left, it's not because of a lack of trying. Yeah, absolutely. And that wave, you know, he did so well to kind of get a bunch of movement, uh, movements on that wave. And um, we're lucky to wake up this morning with, you know, some pretty clean conditions. I think we'll probably see a little bit of wind start to come into play a little bit later but I think it, that's going to be exciting when we move through to the round of 32 of the men's after the comp completion of the women's round of 24 I think we'll see some airs like you said you have predictions of that um, throughout the day Matt so hopefully we'll see some some progressive surfing roll through I know that the round of 48 has some great heats coming up as well um, and this one's been really great to watch Filmar is leading this heat with Eduardo in second but Kent needing a 5.2 that last wave a 2.45 didn't really didn't go into his top two so he needs a 5.3 sorry and Ivan chasing a 5.2 the judges will be looking at the replay of Filmar's wave doing the comparison to his 5.5 as well and we're just approaching a 9.25 high tide this morning uh, relatively high tide uh, 5.5 feet and we will see that Get a little lower throughout the week. Um, Wind-wise, yeah, the wind is due to come up pretty much any moment right now, true. So that may actually add to s some texture, might actually add some assistance for the waves, the wind spell. Tidal drop, and we'll see a lot of those rip bowl opportunities. For the longboards right now, this would be fantastic. 
but right now it's the short boards and I think it'll actually get a little better throughout the day. And here goes Eduardo holding on at second place. There's a nice fan of spray working it all the way through to the inside, a little off tilt there. And he's carrying some nice momentum, snapping the fins and goes incomplete on in the end. So you'd have to say he's looking a better that 4.5. I'm not sure if that'll be it with the fall true. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think with the fall, I don't think it'll be the score. He needs a 6.45. So I think that last wave of Filmar was a 5.5. Five. So um, yeah, I think it'll it'll nudge. But I don't know if it, if it will be that score, especially with that fall. You know, it's really important, especially... It's quite easy to identify this morning how important completions are just off the back of scores coming through. Um, and I think for Eduardo, you know, he'll get a decent score because mm -hmm. he got a couple of good turns, but completions are, you know, they're make or break moments. Yeah, it is. And you've got to go complete, but leaving the door open for Kent and Ivan's got second priority right now, but it's a heat leader. Filmer, who backed up his... Uh, what. 5.5 with another 5.5 to go in his total. So 11 point heat total right now. And up next, we have an all Philippine affair. And we have uh, Julius Isagiri, who is one of the locals. And he's coming up against Clifford Lumisak and Rahilio, J.R. Esquivel, and Noah Arkfield. So some fireworks expected in that next heat. A mixture of goofy and natural footers with one of the locals and some Lunion and Chargal surfers mixed in there. So some yeah, pretty hot heats. And whoever gets through this heat right now will end up meeting, uh, unfortunately, Kajiro Nishi and Rinta Utu. So that's going to be very, very, very tough right now. And the uh, person who gets second will end up against uh, Kian Martin and Neil Sanchez. Wow, yeah, they're... You know what? Like I said before, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And yep. they're putting themselves in these positions because they want to be the best. Hey, so you wipe out the favourites early on in the rounds. Yeah. Makes it easy for yourself in the end. Yeah, it's a challenge and you got to rise to that. And like we were talking before, looks like that wind started to come up a little bit now. I can kind of see a few of the trees moving through. You can see that texture um, on screen. Um that, and that front was lingering out there. I could see yeah, it. Yeah, it. Yeah, I saw that too. And here goes Filmar and Ivan on the right. Last ditch effort there for Ivan. And he's currently down in fourth looking for a 5.2. I'm not sure if that's going to be the score as Filmar whacks that inside section. And he's going to look for more on the inside. So a very consummate performance there from Ali Payo. And he'll be moving on to that next round, you have to say, with Eduardo Arciso, who is safe after a few mistakes and we're going to say goodbye to Soloso Nagalo. Good performances, but unable to capitalize at this event. We're going to go to a break and be back with Heat 3 very shortly. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Good morning, and we're back for Heat 3 at round 48 here at the QS3000 in Belair, Aurora in the Philippines. We're on the East Coast on the Waxhead here with Jerry, and we're back in the booth with Noah Arkfield, Rogelio J.R. Escobar, Clifford Lumisak, and Julius Isagiri. And it'll be Clifford opening up his account. 
And Jerry, how's the morning been out there? You've been cruising around, um, checking out the beach commentary, and what was the deal with the sound out there? Well, they just had some kind of glitch. They had a glitch overnight with some of the uh, wiring. I don't know whether someone rode their bicycle or skateboard over it, um, but apparently some was cut. So wow. they, they kind of had a bit of a temporary fix, and I think the fix didn't last too long. Started okay. sprinkling out there, so ah. um, they're going again now. They got it done pretty quickly. But, yeah, I had a bit of a, a shock. I looked up there in the tower and... Um, uh, Tim Padden was up there with a loud hailer, and I, at that stage I knew something was going wrong. But Yeah, because you know. it was working yesterday. I heard them testing it yesterday and the day before, might I add. So the preparation here was very much on cue. They've got a great setup here on the beach in front of Costa Pacifica, which is the hotel that are hosting the WSL right now. We're in the downstairs near the restaurant, and we literally see the, the ocean right up to the right of us, although it's not too pretty right now, but it's offering a few ramps. We're approaching the high tide at uh, 9.30. And the surf is out in this heat right now. It's an all-Philippine affair. We just saw um, the same in the heat previous. And we're looking like a um, pretty dynamic bunch of surfers out there right now. Isagiri, the local surfer, just opening up the 0.75. Um, J.R. Esquivel, the pride of the Philippines longboarding, who's been doing really good on the shortboarding. Made the quarterfinals there at La Union and nearly was able to get through the semifinals, unable to get a backup. And what do you make of this heat so far? Well, again, the wind's come up, so they're going to have to change their strategy. Um, so that's Julius, and Julius, as you said, is from here. Um, his nickname's Kim, apparently, so uh, I, don't, I haven't heard anyone call him Kim yet, but that's what Facebook tells me, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, this wind's up really quite early, um, so it's a bit of a surprise. Normally it doesn't puff up till around the 11 or 12 o'clock mark, so maybe it's just a local front zipping across mm. and, and might clean up a little bit later, but I think, um, again, the short borders, it does give them ramps, it gives them a chance. Um, interesting for me to see Noah Arkfield in this and uh, he, I know his mum, dad, Doug and Ada are watching and so hello to you guys. So he, Noah's from directly in front of Tuas on Point which is some would consider the best wave at cloud, around the Cloud Nine area. So he's just absolutely grown up with the only house in front of that spot. Wow. Um, so, you know, not only can he get barrelled on the left, he can get barrelled on the right. So Noah's uh, ranked 26 now after LU um, and uh, that's him right there. He's a really nice kid. Softly spoken, great surfer, loads of power. Uh, I really like to watch him surf. Yeah, he's got a really great smile as well. And as we see, working his way, Julius on that left. He snaps that one off. And Noah, nice little carve there. And uh, you'd have to say, Julius in green, the local from Belair, is used to these little rip bowls, uh, being a beach break surfer. But they have their, they definitely have their reef breaks around here as well. So a lot of these surfers keeping their cards close to their chest. And someone who's off to a great start, Filmar. We'll see if Filmar's been here before down in the glass with Camille. Okay, I am here with last heat winner, Filmar Alipayo from Shargao. Congratulations. Chipox, your board seems to have served you really well out there. Can you tell us if this is an epoxy and what made you decide to use this board? Um, yeah, this is epoxy. I am riding a 5.6, um, a little bit wider and thicker. Because for good for this condition, beach break, and it's a uh, fire wire designed by Kaylee Slater. Okay, so excellent choice. Can we flip it over? Let's see the spray work. Okay, so this was intentional. This wasn't here before. I remember this board. What makes what what ch made you choose this color? I love, I love pink. <laughs> I think you might have gotten the spray on the other half of your head. <laughs> oh, yes, um, Filmar, is this a strategy for you to be? visually um, appealing or striking so the judges could see you better perhaps or it's something that you just enjoy doing um, you know we don't have a beach break in Chargao so I, I love beach break it's fun but it's it's a little bit hard but um it, 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 it's it's okay you know can manage <laughs> and definitely the striking colors help you out there because you know for sure that the judges are seeing your scores so how does it feel that round one is out of the way and you can now proceed to maybe relaxing a bit yeah I, I feel good you know it's great uh, I made it to the next round so I'm so happy stoked um, hopefully I'll make it in the next round again but I'll do my best like always want to say um, a few messages or say thanks? Um, I want to thank my sponsor, of course, to KS Board Riders, Kudosurf and Vizsla. And of course, to my um, wife, to Happy Islanders, um, CBD, and Hakata Shergao. And of course, to uh, Base Inn. Thank you. 
Okay, that's it for Filmar. Um, back to the commentary box, box and the live action. Thank you, Camille, and great insight from Filmar. And I have noticed, Jerry, a lot of the surfers coming here with the same boards as what they had in Union with sprays. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure why the sprays are all coming out, but uh, the same boards, because, you know, La Union, we were on the point there, and it's a relatively flat point, mm -hmm. It's as in it doesn't stand up, it doesn't barrel, so I guess it breaks a lot like a beach break, it was a bit shifty at times as well, and, um, you know, I don't know whether Filmer has a full quiver, or he's only brought a couple of boards, he certainly has brought a couple of boards, um, Wilmar's been, uh, Filmar, sorry, has been, um, you know, a stalwart of Shargo surfing for quite some time, him and his... Um, and his brother PJ, um, you know, basically controlling Cloud9, you know, uh, taking it on and, and being the kings out there for a long time. And controlling it in more ways than one. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, they keep they keep the peace a little bit, um, yep. PJ especially. <laughs> Hello, PJ. I know, I know you're watching. Um, but, yeah, good guys, good kids. I still call them kids. They're not kids anymore. But, um, you know, they keep a bit of order out there in a, in a polite and friendly, typically Philippine way, you know, mm. so... Um, I enjoy surfing with those guys, and they are very nice guys. And their dad, um, dad and mum is there. Ipon, hello Ipon. He's there right in the middle of the Katunga next to uh, CFC. So Filmar travels and goes to all these events and gets some uh, pretty good results. So, you know, of course we cheer on the, uh, the Shargao boys. Yeah, absolutely, and it's an all-Philippine affair again out in this heat right now. And you said that about the, um, the, the attitude of the Philippine surfing community, and I can really attest to that. Very welcoming uh, very warm, a lot of them greeting you, regardless of whereabouts they're from, they're all meeting here, which is what traditionally what surfing contests do. They, it's a melting pot for people, Jerry, and they uh, have been very, very um, stoked with the presence of the WSL, very open arms, and what we received at La Union was nothing short of heartwarming. Yeah, look, and it's a big deal. I mean... Um, last night's affair here was... It was amazing. Yeah, there's Julius up and riding. So Julius from right here in Belair knows the wave. Nice little backhand off the top there. See if he's going to hang on, find something on the inside. He's going to chase a little right. Uh, maybe he can finish it off, garner a couple more points. Pump through, keep going. He's not giving up. I mean, you don't hear. So, you, you know, the judges love that last manoeuvre. Yeah, so. the last, the last manoeuvre has been really ju adjudicated very highly. Not that it's length of ride, but... If on that higher tide, we do have a shore break, a little bit of a shore break. So we saw in that first heat, uh, both our heat winner, uh, Roy and Taka Anui, both of them performing their biggest manoeuvre in the last one. Here goes Esquivel. Nice power carve, just throwing a fan of spray. Nice timing, front loading that turn. And here he goes. Can he finish cleanly? Nice snap in the white water. So carrying a lot of momentum on this wave. If he can get down the line and find something to tag, this is going to be a healthy score and groveling a bit through here see this little reform jerry this is what we're talking about and he, and rides out yeah he did well there on the inside that second last turn was um was pretty fiery and and he's going to get a lot of points for that so jr needs a only a 3.6 to move 3.76 to move on up and i guess that's definitely a 3.76 i've been watching the surfing i haven't been listening to the scores how have they been scoring you you feel what what do you feel if the, that, that score had a chance to go nudging excellent if he had an, ec an end section to hit. So in that first heat, uh, we saw uh, Taka Nui who got a nice uh, sort of like a reverse spin, tail high, and then pump, pump, pumped, and dead whitewash, nothing going on, and did a really flary uh, aerial on the inside, and he got uh, a mid-six. And in that last heat, Filmar, nice solid surfing, much the same as Esquivel. And he was getting um, mid six, mid fives. So, but it's the end section. If there's something that ramps up like JR's almost did, yep. the judges are really appreciating it. An element of difference, something just to really drop the jaw for the judges. Obviously, first section on a short board is going to be the most dynamic and the easiest one to hit. It's bigger on the outside section. We'll see more of that on the lower tide. But on the higher tide, capitalizing on that inside, if there is an inside, that's, and it's luck. It's like yeah. you, when you're taking off, you, you're just rolling the dust. You don't know if there's going to be an inside. JR had no yeah. idea if that was going to... He had to stay with it, as you said beforehand. So, uh, Flo, uh, Roy, uh, Roy, who was our Japanese competitor who took out the first heat, the flow between maneuvers is very important as well because it's too easy just to pump and try and manufacture a score. So, if a surfer's carrying momentum and speed, 
it's going to look good. And this is Ar uh, uh, Isagiri. So he's snapping that one off and carries his momentum through. So he gets a little inside and tags that as well. He likes it, looks to the judges. And 30 minutes 20 to Arkfield out the front and the local boy in second as we wait yeah. for a score for Escobar. Uh, correct, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to change. His, what he needed went up just a little bit while we were chatting. He needed a 3.76. Now he needs a 4.5. Um, and I think that was Julius's previous wave that uh, gave him. But we're waiting still for JR and for Julius's last wave. No, we're approaching the high tide, as I said earlier, and wind has is gone up, and it's come a lot earlier than predicted. Yeah, that's a bit of a disappointment, um, I think, for everyone around. But, you know, it's an event. They have to surf what the surf offers, and so, you know, they'll make the most of it and, and see what kind of scores they can get. I mean, no choice is Noah up and riding again. I'm um, just going to milk that one through and see if you can find a section right there. Oh, a bit overdid that. Just went a little too hard. Maybe the power wasn't there to bring him back down. Yeah, that was, that was a good opportunity to better that 4-2-5. And here goes Esquivel, quick answer back with a 6 on, his op on that last wave, sorry. And here is a two-turn, three-turn little foam climb there and engaging the fins. A little snap there. He's on his longboard preparing yesterday, so he's feeling light and lively on this shortboard. And a couple of tags there, so staying really busy. I think that one will surpass his 3.4. Jerry, thoughts? I think it will too. I think uh, he may well move to the lead. I think if that's a four or better, um, I'm thinking it probably will be. Um, here's Clifford. Uh, Clifford on the inside. Clifford's from San Juan. He's, um, oh, hang on, no, Clifford's from Belair. Clifford's from here, sorry. Um, so he knows the wave. He knows what to do. The wave's not offering a great deal at the moment. Here we go, a little section lining up for him off the phone was a little bit difficult. Now, tell me if um, I think JR's ranked 52 on the short board, which is not super high. Um, what if he won this, went to Australia, won a 5,000? Yep. Know, conceivably, could you do a Challenger Series and a World Tour longboarding? Could, you know, like, schedule-wise, would that be too much to ask? It, it, that's an interesting point, and f at first thought, none of them really... Because uh, longboard waiting periods are relatively short, so none of them do clash. And seeing as it is possible with a couple of the competitors, uh, we have Mara Lopez and in the shortboard and the longboard, and we have JR. We also have uh, Jo Marie Ebueza, and we also have Danny Widianto. And we have, um, on the female side of things from Indonesia, um, Daya. Novodasari as well. So let's just say they do qualify. The Longboard World Tour, I mean, it's hard. You pick the Longboard World Tour, the Challenger Series. Uh, you do need to compete in as many of the Challenger Series events, not just to get the experience, but obviously build your heat totals for the end of the year. Uh, I don't think they will clash. It'd be very unfortunate. A lot of traveling, though. There'd be a lot of traveling, a lot of expense. Yeah. Although I must say the US Open, uh, it's... The U.S. Open of surfing, if the longboard tour returns back to there, it's in um, collaboration with the, the C Challenge okay. Series as okay. well. Yep. So that's one, one in, event in, tour. Any others? Are there any uh, others? In the and his sister, Kaide Anui, they're doing well in both um, divisions. Taka made his heat earlier. Strong surfing from Lumasaka. See how fit he is. You can it just lively is. You can see that upper body just um, really mobile. And he's putting his whole frame into his turns. Very neutral footed, not front foot or back footed you can see him standing evenly on that board so a very balanced surf style there from Clifford he only needs a 5.36 I'm thinking it may be up towards the 5 mark he had a little rail bog there and lost some, some speed at one stage which judges will penalise him for but um, he certainly rode it all the way in and finished it off so they do like to see that You know, interestingly enough the other thing I was going to say is it says the water's 26.9 degrees which I think is far warmer than the air at the moment mm. so I, I don't know that's what it said online I'm feeling it's maybe not that warm today yeah I, d I don't think it's I mean it's also saying it's four to six foot faces as well yeah okay um, so I feel like it could be well it could be a little desensitized coming from um, Salvador to Hawaii to California to the Philippines so probably yeah, not so you so you ask. got no idea <laughs> no no I mean in California I'm wearing booties and a, and yeah. a hood you well know. I know in Chargao, um the, the surf the temperature gets up to 28 degrees. Okay. So sometimes it's quite similar on a cloudy day, similar inside and outside. Mm -hmm. And it's so warm that we surf this particular spot, which will go unmentionable, but 
it's about a 400 meter paddle and Warm up. you are sweating mm. coming particularly coming back you are sweating it feels like you want in the ocean in yeah well. and um Jeez, conditions really taking a turn for the worst, but a lot of opportunity, a lot of ramps, as I said before, and these surfers teeing off, and here we go. The local boy goes to the air, and he spins to win, so he pulls that one out of nowhere, and can he get down? He doesn't get down to the inside section, but wow, he really... Um I didn't expect that. No, Jerry. and that's going to open up the heat, I think, and um, JR's moved to the lead uh, as it is with his last score to come in, but that one from Julius, I mean, he only needs a six, so I haven't seen... A really good air at this stage. Um, I, th I did see one in the previous heat, um, but that was pretty impressive, and that was unexpected. And he seemed to find power out of nowhere, or at least speed out, yeah, of, nowhere speed out of nowhere. We'll have to get a replay of that just to see if we can dissect if it was more out in the face or if it was an actual critical yeah. section. Well, had he ridden through and got to the inside yeah. and finished it off, I mean, that would be definitely the best score of the heat, but um, he didn't, so I guess it's a one-wave... A uh, one-manoeuvre wave, and that's him paddling one more time there. I think that was uh, Julius. And I know you're from the old school and more about the rail calves and tube riding coming from Shargao as well and Cronulla Point. But in terms of the aerials is the where the surfer performs them at times, they can be, not that it's easy to do, but there's easier ones and then there's harder ones. The harder ones are in the bowl, much like we talked about Filmar getting a... a a flip at Cloud9. Oh, I'll never forget that one. <laughs> so Cloud9, obviously, a wave of consequence. If you're able to do an aerial there, it's always going to be critical, even if it's on a smaller wave. You're landing usually in the flats, and let's see if we can finish this one off. Um, yeah, you usually... He goes again. Oh, and he's going to get around. He rides out okay. as well. So two, two turns to lock in for... Two waves, yeah, to lock, Julius. lock in for Julius. So that could two, two really waves, help yeah. him. Um, yeah, Cloud9, it is it is a wave of consequence. I mean, here you can go up and down at sand bottom. It's f sort of fattish. Um, yeah, to do what Phil Maron, for those that don't know, he just pulled a miraculous, what, he, what was it, Rodeo? Yeah. Rodeo clown. <laughs> um, not quite the clown, but yeah, it was amazing. And it was unexpected, and it was in the last 30 seconds or something to take out the heat. It was just phenomenal, and, and people were just fainting. Well, it's just it's thinking outside the box and dropping the, the, you know, if everyone's doing getting barrels and doing power calves and you can go do something like that to break open and we'll still to see some scores to lock in for all surfers, judges looking at those replays right now and think back to last night's uh, opening ceremony, some great performances there and the local mayor for the um, Belair region, uh, his name being Rhett Angara, uh, talked about this event providing the economic perspective and how good it is for the tourism to be displayed and, and a surf event to be held here. Obviously conditions being a little bit lackluster right now, but it does have periods in the on season where the wind is offshore. Yes, well, you've got two seasons in the Philippines, essentially. You've got the Amihan, which is the onshore season, which is now, uh, but it brings a lot of swell, or you've got the Habagat season, which is the season that you generally get typhoons. So... During the Habagat season, you'll get a big typhoon situated off the coast and you'll get generally offshore winds with that. And um, it's, of course, we... It's hard. It's not a fair thing to say, but in Shargao, we love the, mm. the typhoons because they never hit there. Here, they hit more often, so it's more of a panic when they see a typhoon coming here. But, yeah, this time of year is the, is the onshore season, the army harm, which is offshore on the west coast, which is where we just came from, LU. So what I find in this season is the surf is actually far more consistent mm -hmm. um, because that onshore wind, wind is blowing and blowing. Sorry, the swell is far more consistent, yeah. Um, you know, the deal, you've got to deal with the winds, but if you can find those tucked in corners, this can be a great time of the year. And I think here in Belair as well, this is a quiet, during the week, non-school holidays, it's pretty quiet here. So when you talk about the financial advantages, I mean, this week we've got a bunch of full hotels which wouldn't, wouldn't be full. We've got a bunch of restaurants serving people which wouldn't normally have it during the week. I get that on the weekend it'll be busy as per usual, but this, it's a real boost in the arm for during the week in off-season here. Absolutely, and uh, three to four hours from Manila, and it took us um, six and a half, seven hours to get here from the West Coast where we are in La Union, so we had to go, uh, well, it's, a, it's an incredible drive. We talked about it earlier, but true, with elements, if anyone's travelled around the world, there was elements of the countryside of Hawaii, northern New South Wales and Australia, and the tropical... Um, rainforest that we're seeing over here in the Philippines as well. So a lot of variety in the landscape. Yes. There's the lakes, I don't know if you saw that massive oh, lake. We did saw the lake and there's one in town as well. Lumisak here needing a 571. 
a 5 8 1, sorry. And the scores are still being locked in for Julius in green. So um, I think they're in there now, um, oh, Matt. And he, he didn't get what he needed. So they, they weren't overly impressed with that first one in particular, which was only a 4.05. 4.75 was better for the second one, but um, they just didn't see enough in it to uh, give him a, a, into the goods. So disappointing, I guess. He'll be disappointed. I'm disappointed for him. Well, it's possibly the combination of manoeuvres that weren't there. He couldn't get down to the inside section. He wanted more, wasn't able to get it. And the judges will be looking at the area of the wave where Isagadi was able to perform that manoeuvre. If it's out in the face, it's more of a chop hop and it's into the wind. If it's in the pocket, you're ramping up at that speed and it's critical and you're landing in the flats, it's always going to be a very healthy score. So yeah, just the, the 4.05 and a 4.75 for Julius now needing a 5.71. And Lumasak and White needing a 5-8-1. But JR back in a second, just needing to get a 5. Noah Arkfield, a 5-2-5 and a 5-7-5. So healthy lead there, 11, similar to Filmar in that uh, last heat. And it's... Uh, I think they liked Noah's down-the-line work. You know, he, he was had plenty of flow. He constantly was doing something. You know, there wasn't a lot of flat sections chasing. He did... That last one particularly, he got all the way on the inside and he you know, finished it off nicely. And uh, you know, That's what the next competitors have to see. They have to see what the judges are scoring on and mm -hmm. follow the lead. You know? Correct. And at high tide coming, it's going to change a little bit. And throughout the day, we, we do see the six-hour tides returning to normal. We're not on the West Philippine Sea right now, so we are a lot more open to the regular tides that we're seeing. We saw 12-hour tides over there, I think hours. I think you said it was 14, 14 at one yeah. stage. Yeah, yeah. Which is... I've he, never experienced before. Here it's a little different than... It's, it's similar to, say, east coast of Australia, but I believe today's tide's seven hours or something. But I think it evens itself out back to that, you know, five hours and 50 minutes, whatever we sure. get at home, something like that. Um, okay, here's Julius again. You can see what he can do on the inside. Smaller wave. Doesn't look like a lot of potential at this stage, but um, uh, he's going to prove me different, I hope. Going to pick up some speed here. Nice little off the top there. So the camera just goes past the uh, scaffold there yeah. and, and you miss it. And this p camera you're looking at now is a bit further down the line. Yeah, there, he's a long way down on that left and we'll see more of that in the longboarding as they connect the inside sections up. But I'll tell you what, a good call from acting contest director John Carby to have the shortboarding today. I think it's a combination of him and Jet. Uh, Jet, yeah. They're both the two sort of contest directors and I saw them both up there discussing things earlier. That's a good call, I think, to have the shortboards today, especially with that wind coming up. This would have been very possible for longboards, but a lot more conducive to the section of shortboarding. Here goes the uh, La Union surfer, Esquivel. He's uh, from San Juan. He quarterfinal finished at last 3,000. And here he is milking this inside. He's going to have to tee off on something there. And he goes to the air, and JR comes out with speed. And he's got more to come. See how he rode through this next section. Yep, yep. And he's going to carry his momentum here. He's got another section down the line. You see him carving that one. He goes incomplete there. So the boys at home, the LU um, Board Riders Club there, uh, Luke Landring in there and the Alima crew, they'll be tuning in right now at uh, San Juan Surf Resort, tuning in. And I think we wound down the end of that. Heat. I didn't hear the hooter, but uh, apparently that's... So that's done wow. and dusted. So we've got Noah and JR, and I think we're going to go for a break. Yeah, I think JR will get close to improving in that five, and we'll wait for those scores to be locked in. But at this moment, it's Noah Arkfield and Rogelio Esquivel moving on to that next round. We're going to go to a break, and we're back for Heat 4. Don't go anywhere. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee 
and the Philippine Sports Commission. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're now into heat four of round uh, 48. I'm joined by with uh, John Carby. Hello, John. How's it all going out there? I know you're doing a fair bit of work uh, on the ground out there. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's pretty exciting being down here at an event of this calibre for the first time in Bel Air. Like we've had some national events and there's a lot of local events down here. Uh, I guess you can say the, the big show's in town, the circus is in town. Yeah, look, and, and people are super happy to have the circus here. And um, I, I think there's no one out there that's not proud of the fact that uh, they were able to bring the WSL in here. Um, it's something that I guess traditional and pure surfers probably don't want, you know, but I think as far as bringing in uh, finances and tourism, and that's what this place is all about, and that's how they survive, it's, it's pretty important. Yeah, that's it. And this is, it's a big picture. It's local economy. There's a lot more on the line than just ruining surf spots for, for a few that, that really like the, the what do for you me call? the hardcore so Jerry the <laughs> Jerry Deegans of the world who just want to go and surf and who doesn't want to go and surf a wave by themselves at any place in the world like this it's just this means a lot more for the local economy and local lives um, you know I mean dinner on the table and all that sort of stuff so yeah no it is it's very important for the town and, and they are ecstatic that we're here they are and it is great and you can feel the buzz in the air so just getting through those initial teething problems the first morning, the first morning blues. Tell us what happened with the sound. Ah, uh, we just had a cable just freak out for no real apparent reason. So, <coughs> shout out to the audio guys. They got it. They got a backup couple of speakers just to limp through until we can fix those horn speakers. Uh, you, that wind that blows, we need these special speakers to help get it past those breaking waves. How, the, the how are you going with the surfers hearing the sound out there? Because it is basically directly on shore. Uh, still good, I think. Not too bad. Enough to continue through. So for those who don't know, the speakers give those surfers all those uh, important updates. How long to go, what score they need and what position. So they need to get into the top two positions to advance through to the next rounds. So it's very important for the surfers, especially at this level. Yep. yep. I know we're in a QS3000 and as we can see... Um, Varun. Call it, Johnny. Uh, up and riding, nice little tail smash. Even with that wind, I don't mind that east wind because it keeps those faces nice and clean. As you can see, Veron just getting to work on this one. This thing's reeling all the way through to the beach. Be interesting to see if it'll give him a finish. Uh, it looks like it is going to ramp up here. He'll give it one more little tap there. Oh, it just Didn't. missed out there. That's a shame because that could have been certainly the highest wave score that I have seen. I didn't see fully the first two uh, heats, but no. that was a pretty good wave there. Um, you're right about the wind, the, the directly. And now it looks like it's it's laying down a little bit, the wind now, all of a sudden. So hopefully that's the case. And then it'll come back up at 12, which is the normal time. All right, here's White up and riding. This is Joe Marie Ebeweezer. And a, nice re couple a replay, tags. yes. Yeah, this is just a replay. So this was his wave earlier. This possibly was his 4.50 not possibly it was his 4.50 <laughs> and it went all the way to the beach as well and a he didn't bit. finish it off as well so okay this is the other replay of um, Green this is Jefferson, Jefferson. Uh, local boy I believe yeah Jefferson's a local boy um, and there's White out the back as you look for the notes old Green sort of wound out and then there's Surfer and White Joe Marie up and riding it's oh, a it's busy a flurry busy. It's, it's an absolute flurry, flurry. this is uh, Nikita Nikita Adev, he's our world surfer. It does actually say Russian surfer. I think we've got some um, yep. some um, political issues that sometimes if he claims he's Russian, we call him Russian. If not, we don't. Um, and you can look up why that is, uh, John, and tell us next time. <laughs> uh, that was him getting to work on his opening wave so, at 3.15. So much busy surfing action, and this is Varun's replay of his last one. So replay after replay, nice opening hit on that one. Nothing too major, but he's definitely going to put a score on the board, a 5.25 for this one. Just working it through to the beach. If he had got this finish, maybe he would have bumped up into that six. Yeah, it's a real shame he didn't finish this one um, because definitely it would have gone up yep. a point or two. But anyway, that's, that's all right. Now, you mentioned Jefferson before. Okay, let's just get more action. That's Nikita again. Um, oh, he's going to try to get through that section, which he is going to do. It was pretty good to get through that. It was pretty fat. Uh, may well not have been worth it. No, it wasn't. Um, no. And uh, after that wave of Nikita, I think we're going to go to Camille and have a chat to, was it JR that won the last one? Was it Noah? Noah. Oh, my memory doesn't go that far. <laughs> so we're going to go to Camille and um, have a chat with Noah from General Luna. 
Okay, yes, indeed. Noah Arkfeld is the winner of that last heat, and rain or shine, the Belair Pro must go on. I actually ran in and got got a jacket because um, a squall is really full force right now. But no stopping Noah Arkfeld from dominating that heat, and also going with an epoxy board. Uh, uh, what? Why do you think an epoxy board is an advantage for beach breaks? Um, yeah, I think the epoxy boards are like faster for beach breaks, so yeah, I prefer using them. So you're more used to surfing point breaks because your home break is um, Cloud9 in Chargao. Do you think it's more challenging when you switch you're surfing a shifty break? Yeah, surf a beach break because in Chargao we don't have a beach break there, so we only surf like always point break so that's why we when we travel we try to come like three days before the contest so we can practice and get used to it okay good strategy and it's also interesting to note that we're actually surfing a different now each compared to what we usually run the national tour on um, do you prefer this piece over like the last one more to the north um, yeah, on, during the nationals, it's always like over there, more to the left side. And now for the WSL, it's right here, like in the center. So I think the waves here are better, so I like it better here. Okay, interesting to note. So we'll, we'll make sure to maybe adjust also on the nationals. But for now, do you want to say anything, special messages? Um, yeah, I would like to thank all my sponsors, especially Bagtik Surfers. Happy Lenders, Kudu Surf, Harana Surf Resort, and shout out to all the Bagti coaches that just arrived here early this morning. And I'd like to say hi to my mom, dad, Sky, Shania. I miss you all, guys. See you soon. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, Noah Arkfeld, and good luck on your upcoming heats. Back to the live action. Okay. All right. Thanks, Camille. And thanks, Noah. Congratulations. And um, yeah, big shout out to uh, Doug and Ida, the, his mum and dad that are. And uh, to Kong Bingo also for sponsoring Big Tick Surfers. It's a congressman who sent a whole bunch of surfers here. He's a big supporter of surfers, so shout out to Kong Bingo back there in Shargao. Absolutely, absolutely. Big supporter of surfing. Uh, that was Nikita right there. Nikita is actually um, from from Russia. He's 23 years old. He's from a town called Yekaterinburg. <laughs> and it's... it's <laughs> that was ambitious, Jerry. I That's know. exactly how they Well, it's actually, it. it's actually down... In the middle bottom near Kazakhstan, so there is. I looked it up online, and there's absolutely no surf there. So I guess he's a bit of a traveller, and he, I know he spends his time he lives in Bali. Mostly, I think in Indonesia in Changu. Yeah, yeah, okay. So nice uh, little hot spot for foreigners down there. Expat. Well, what's the what's the thing with um, you know he's he lives there, but his hometown average temperature at this time of year, the average temperature is minus seven degrees C Celsius. So um, I'm not surprised he's living. I in would move to Changu. Changu at any stage, big shout out to everyone um, from Changu, probably watching, uh, along with a lot of Indonesians, my with niece, Varun Tanjung at the moment in the lead with a 5.25 and a 3.0. Yep. Um, yeah, Changu. My uh, niece, uh, Elise, is there in Changu. She's got a little cafe called Kind with some other people, so go and say hello to her. And while we're saying hello, I, I'm, I don't know if my wife and daughter are watching, but I love you, Susan and Lily, and I know you're going to do the same right now. Oh, of course, it's a good <laughs> opportunity. Christine, love you, miss you. And to the kids, Chili and Asha. Can't wait to be home to them. It's been a little little trek on the road, but yeah, life's good. We're watching surf events all day. Exactly. So uh, Jefferson's in the lead. Um, he is from Belair. He's the youngest of his family. They're apparently a pretty well-known surfing family here. And he's got two brothers, Saddam and Rocky, who aren't in the event, but will certainly be they're cheering him on. So good luck to you, yep, Jefferson. They're both known <laughs> competitors from Blair too. They used to compete a lot, um, obviously, as yeah, life goes on. Yeah, some things, things get change. in the way, but it looks like Children. Jefferson is actually representing the family well. So I like, I like the way that his name's it's Jefferson, but the Philippines often do the Fs as Ps. So his name's actually spelt Jefferson, yep. J-E-P, which is pretty interesting. F and P is very interchangeable here in the Philippines. You can say that terrible swear word, and it's not even a swear word. It's like a hockey thing. I'm still going to smack the kids for saying it. So. <laughs> mine's, uh, mine's 17. She says what she likes. Absolutely. Don't you, Lily? Okay, so we've got 14 and a half minutes to go. Uh, we have Jefferson in the lead. A um, bit quiet at the moment. Um, Varun only needs a small score, 3.45, to move up into first. 
Uh, Nikita only needs a 4.66 to move into an advancing position, and Joe Marie needs even less, a 3.76. Joe Marie has had a few nice-looking um, waves, just coming incomplete on a few of them. So if he can just get one of those together, he will definitely get up a little bit higher and into that. I saw him do a nice little layback slash before that he didn't quite ride out of. Yeah, do you think um, the local guys have an advantage here? I know in the next heat, the next round, sorry, we've got a lot of the Japanese guys that probably surf a bit of or surf waves like this fairly regularly. Yes, this is this is um, almost Japan 101. So I think the Japanese are going to have a huge contingent here uh, towards the finals. But that said, now we're going through that last heat even though that was an all-Philippine final, all-Philippine heat, sorry. Um, this next one, apart from Alan Magus and Troy, uh, two Japanese. So we're going to get to see the direct comparison. Alan Magus is actually from here, so that next heat is shaping up to be a pretty good, interesting little heat. Tell me why these heats are happening and there are some surfers not surfing in this round, John. I, just for people out there, something to do with the rankings? Yep, just for the seating, so... Every event needs seated surfers. Generally, generally, we're round one hand, we've got two surfers up and surfing. We've got green and red. So we have Jefferson and Baron up and riding. Jefferson, that's the local knowledge. Even though we fell off on that one, he sort of picked a better angle on that one. Yeah, it certainly was better than um, Varun. Varun just didn't do anything, no. unfortunately, for him. But I don't know, think I don't think they'll go towards two of the, any no. of their scores. But it's a bit no. rough. Uh, so, yeah, seated through. So generally in an event... There's a lot of entrants that, I don't know, they're not really that high-quality surfing. So generally round one, sort of just sort of weeding through the... Which of this one is called round 48, right? The round of 48, yep. So it's a smaller round, and it sort of seeds that next guy through to the next level, gives him a bit of a rest. Some guys like surfing from beginning to end. It's always a risk, though, and I think, and I say it probably every time I'm on the mic, that it's... QS is brutal. There's no second chances. You know, those that are watching uh, Pipeline at the moment in the first round... Um, you know, the third placer gets another chance. But here, the third and fourth placer, they don't get any chance. It's bye-bye. It is bye-bye. It's, there's no... Uh, there is Joe Marie. Nice opening carve. This is going to definitely throw away his one. I hope he can finish it. Two turns. He's going to look for that open face again, and he does. Third turn. Incomplete oh. on that one. Two strong turns. Will that be up that 3.76? I think it will be. I think it'll be close. though. two very, very nice turns. He's a lanky-looking surfer, you know, lots of leg. Um, but those two manoeuvres were really, really smooth. Lots of leg. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I like know what you mean. he might not even be tall, but he just he looks like a lanky, thin sort tall. of guy. He is tall. He is a longboarder as well. Um, he looks really smooth and long on that longboard. It actually adds a little bit of gray, so dual discipline. And that is all. Nikita, now. he's going to pull it off. Okay, is he going to try to get some more points on the inside? He's hanging on for now. He didn't see anything there. A little they bit didn't, scrappy? Yeah, they didn't score them very high in the last one. I'd be struggling to think that is going to be his 4.66. A very forced sort of reverse. I'd, I'd struggle to call it an air reverse. I'd call that more of a blowtail reverse. Yeah, no, he, really he needed it. a second section and a finish to, to, um, to get that. And again, we know that because of the scores in the previous heat on those smaller airs. Nothing got more than a 4.3 or something. He's... Is going to send it, just losing that back foot off the grip. Generally trying to slide up to the front of the board a little bit so you can ride out of that, keep the tail up as you land, but obviously his foot came a little bit far off and flipped out away how, from him there. How's your aerial <laughs> at attack? Oh, I'm like an eagle out there. <laughs> like an eagle. I mean, I mean an emu, sorry, an emu. A 90 kilo yeah, em yeah. emu. Yeah, yeah, emu. <laughs> yeah, I try to stick for to those For those Americans watching, emu. Emu, emu, or we'll go with ostrich just to keep you yeah. um, familiar. But yeah, Air game, I'm um, probably as aerial qualified as you, Jerry. Which is not at all. Well, the only areas I get is when I don't make the drop and I fall from the top of the lip to the, to the flats. Absolutely. You're not landing many of them either. No, I don't <laughs> land many of them at all. Not anymore. <laughs> Ten minutes remaining with those scores dropping in. There we go. Um, Joe Marie, the judges, really rewarding those two crisp turns. 5.40. Could you imagine where he would have gone with Had that it. exclamation point on the end? It would have been... It's already the best way, but he would have been almost making it very hard for everybody. Yep. And uh, Nikita was a, uh, what was that, a, where is he? He's there in the blue, mate, 3.15. So they didn't, yeah, they didn't like it. Um, they didn't dislike it, but he needed to do more. Yep. Um, yeah, now that wind, I thought the wind was maybe shuffling down a little bit, but it's come back with a vengeance. 
Um, I could be another squall coming in. Mm. We might have this sort of tempo all day with a squall. It's and then very a much an, e- an East Coast thing, and you know it as well as I do. In you know, in Shargau, you c- it can be glassy and whatever, and the rain that comes in just smashes you with the onshore wind. Whereas I know, growing up in Australia, when you get a bit of a storm coming through, it's usually an offshore storm. Mm. So here, you see those clouds coming, and you you know you're going to get smashed. I know we had the um, the Cafe Loca, which is still there. By the way, I'll give a little plug. Go and get a coffee at Cafe Loca at Cloud Nine. It's really fantastic. But we used to see the, the storms coming through 15 minutes away and pull the blinds down and prepare everything because it would come howling through at 30 or 40 kilometres an hour with driving rain. And then 15 minutes later, the sun was out again. Yep, and that's, that's sort of what you aim for, that little bit of glass after that before it comes again. Yeah, exactly. The cycle continues, and that's sort of what we're seeing this morning here already. We've had three great days of no rain just a bit of cloud cover which is helpful because you're out of that brutal sun Um, but today we woke up to wet roads and yeah yeah so what's happened here is yeah we've we've been sort of on the other side of the luck at the little at the moment here whereas in in La Union on our previous 3000 we were totally with the luck you know the surf was perfect everything went really well so far day one it's not what we expected but um, you know we've got six more days to pick and choose the best of the surf. So we'll see what happens. Joe Marie up and riding. Nice little foam climb to set this thing up. Uh, we're right on the high tide at the moment too. So these link-ups through the shorey is what these guys are looking for. It's a pretty good little bank out there. It runs left and right. From what I've seen, the, the left is a little bit more substantial than the right. But we can see um, white and green. Both getting to work out there. Nice little windshield wiper from green there. Will it, will it pace up? He's just waiting for this thing to go, and here we go. We're going to see if he can get that finish. Okay, he got it. Nice. There's Nikita chasing the ride as well. Nikita, ah, just... Tried a bit hard there, I think. You know, he probably saw not much potential further down the line, and there's Varun. Varun. So he only needs a 3.45, and if he can just... He didn't finish that, but it was close to a 3.45 in the first place. I know we're waiting on some other scores from Joe Marie and Jefferson anyway, so... Uh, that may well change what he needs. So Jefferson looking to improve on a four, which will make things a little bit harder. He may be around that area. It's like we sort of saw half of that wave with that split screen there. So yeah, let yeah. the judges, everyone waiting for a score at the moment. So let's not say too much because it's all around that sort of four. Similar scores, yeah. yeah. And that's what's been the whole way through. I mean, I think the deal is here is getting lucky and finding a linking wave. And that's what Varun needs to do. And it looks like he may well get back out there and get... Um, Priority, but you know, I don't know that priority really matters out here. It's a matter of where you are, where the peak stands up, and whether that wave's going to line up for you on the inside. And it's it's a little difficult. It is a little, a lot difficult. A lot difficult. A lot yeah. difficult. I had an opportunity to sort of sneak into one of the early rounds, and I said no, thank you. Yeah, I noticed your name wasn't on the draw. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And neither is our other um, commentator. Uh, True Starling. True Starling. No, like you guys had fun last time. And pretty nice waves, but. Yeah, look, I think some of the competitors are looking at that thing. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, but we have had we have got some pretty scores dropping in, and this rain, if it comes in, I think we're in for a better situation. This is quite strong now. It's probably blowing at about 20 knots out there at the moment. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of fun, um, but it's what it is. It well, is what it is. It is surfing. We can't pick and dictate every time we surf. We can't all get the dream tour. No. Pipe one's on at the moment, I believe. That's right. And look, if you don't make it through this tour, if you can't make it through these waves, you're never going to get to the Dream Tour. So you've got to serve every single condition there is. And you've got to be good or better than good in every single condition there is. Well, the cream always rises to the top. And that's that's the good thing about surfing. It's an even playing field for all competitors. Yep. There's yep. no advantage apart from that seeded through to the next round. But once again, for me, that might be a disadvantage, depending if you want to get used to the conditions and you want to ease through that first round. But... What I was trying to go back to before is, is there's no real bad surfers in these heats. If we had a bit more competitive, say the 64, the round of 64, then we'd probably see lower quality. But as it was in our last event, the high quality, every, every heat you can't hold back. You need to give everything you've got. Yeah, that's right. I, I sometimes over the years, um, some scores have come in. or We're just still waiting on Varun's wave, which is interesting. Um, sometimes over the years... Um, we've allowed anyone and everyone into the events um, and it's just made life difficult as far as really long competitions and first rounds that you know basically before they paddle out who's in and who's out. So um, 
I think it's a bit more difficult here because it's a lot more expensive for just anyone to join. You've got to join the um, WSL and then you've got to pay your entry fee as well. So you not you haven't got your, just your average weekend surfer that thinks, oh, I might just enter anyway for fun. You know? And it's not a wave like Cloud9 where you know one barrel could get you that eight to nine to ten point ride as long as you can get through the thing. It's Exactly. That's a very good point. It's Nikita, a little bit of a tail waft there. We might find some inside. That was a nice little uh, turn back into the power. Not much here. He's going to go right. No, he's going I'm to pull out of that. I'm going to say that's his best wave yet, though. He I am. Puts I am. Together. Agree, but I don't know that it's going to be the six point three. But at least if he can get rid of one of his threes. This is sort of his showing that he's beach. He's a beach break boy. This Jefferson, uh, just the way they can generate that speed and whip that tail so fast, it's like really noteworthy. And you'll see a lot of the Japanese. They just got this way of generating speed into a nice little whip turn that. Yeah. A reef surfer, as you'll see throughout, maybe some of the Shargo boys just don't have that ability to get that speed and whip it so far. So Jefferson really showing off that he knows this beach and he knows how to ride a beach. So really cool. Yeah, look, when you can, when you think of the three events at the moment... There it is, Varun Tanjung. That's why they were waiting. They were probably checking that replay and he dropped in a 5.70 for his last wave. Looks like he's getting the news there. Um, we might see a little bit of a splash, a bit of livelihood. There we are, a few little kicks. Yeah. He's put himself in a really strong position with two minutes and 50 seconds to go, and he still has another wave to drop in. And Nikita did get his best score, but it was only a 3.9, so um, he's got a lot of work to do at this stage. Um, Jefferson now waiting for a score. He's put himself in danger, needing 5.21, and here he goes. He's staying super busy. A div. Adiv, Adiv, Nikita Adiv, yeah. From that place. Uh, let me see if Russia. I can do it. Yekaterinburg. <laughs> Yekaterinburg. I don't think you did any better. That's better, Yekaterinburg. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'm not going to try to pronounce Russian. Well, there's certainly uh, no surf there. So I, I struggled over Adiv, so <laughs> that's where I'm at. Two minutes remaining. You know, what's Varon? Varon's only 19, is that correct? Uh, yep. He's, he is only young. And he's a Hurley team rider, I believe. He used to be, or he, yeah, I think I think he is. Um, he's about 19 at this stage. It's funny, I, I was looking, doing some research, and I know he's around that age, and his dad will come and tell me uh, before too long, uh, Rizal. But uh, his Facebook profile says he was born in 1974, so <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's correct. You've got a little bit in common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish I was born in 1974. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do you a favour. <laughs> One minute and 30 seconds. That last wave of Varun, a 5.20. So now he's throwing away fives, uh, which he's pretty comfortably, obviously, getting the knack of this wave. Yep, and he's not resting on his laurels. He's going again. Yep, out of second priority. Like you said, priority doesn't seem to be a thing. If you see the wave and no one's looking at it, you might as well swing because... This is rolling up, and there's Joe Marie out the back, not going. Um, Baron just taking this one to the beach, few foam climbs. He's another very tall surfer. Oh, we might be able to finish it off here. No, that's just run away from him, I think, with only less than a minute to go. He may or may not come in. I don't know. It's pretty easy to get out the back, whereas when on the big days at LU, it was taking them three minutes to paddle out the back. I almost didn't get out the back. I watched you duck dive <laughs> 25 or so waves in a row. I was laughing my head off. <laughs> I wasn't. I almost came in about 15 <laughs> minutes through. So different situation here. But this generally beach breaks are notoriously hard to get out. So it's, it's, there's, there's Sir from Joe Marie asking for an update. We've got 27 seconds. Um, I think it's like a seven or nine second period. So enough waves. Yeah, look, we've got seven waves, seven waves, six waves, six waves. Everyone's had enough waves, but ju they're just not all quality waves, sadly. No, and Joe Marie looks like he has third priority as well, but he's going to look at anything. But our surfer in second priority, he's going to lose it there. With five seconds, it's not going to matter. No, no. So we have um, Varon and Joe Marie. They will move on into the round of 24, or is it 36? I'll have to look um, because this was a make-up heat. So anyway... Um, that's uh, congratulations to you guys. It's a shame for uh, the other boys, but um, we will be back shortly after a little break.
The WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back to the Belair International Pro. We've moved on through to heat number five of the round of 48 up and riding right, ne right now is Aylin Magos. Alan. Alan. Just go with Sorry, Alan. Alan. Alan Magos. Yeah, no, he has we an eye in there. but yeah, yeah. Alan. Um, Thank you, John. Alan Magos. Great little Belair surfer. Um, good little air game on him too, so he knows how yeah. to throw in the reverse. And he's Super exciting. Just, I remember just a great kid. He's a, he's a legend. Yeah, I remember watching him uh, at La Union last year, Alan. Alan, I'm going to remember that from now on. A 2.5 for his first wave. There's also Takuto Ota out there. Aoi Oguri from Japan as well. And then Joe Kennedy from Madagascar. Well, that's exciting. One part of the tropical wonderland to the next. Yeah, absolutely. How to be him. I know. <laughs> Good to see this. Um, we've just had a Russian in that last one. Now we've got a Madagascan in this one. Mm. This is cool. People are starting to come to the Philippines. Yeah. Well, while there's a bit of a break in the action, we've got Camille down there with the last heat winner, Varun Tanjung. I am here with Varun, who just found your footing and you found good flow on that last heat. Yep. And yes, your new sponsor must be very happy. Uh, tell us about your new sponsor, Varun. Yeah, um, shout out to Pat Tenor. Stoked to be a part of the team. Thank you for believing in me. And yeah, this is just the beginning. I'm just getting started. Ooh. And it, it feels good, I guess, to be Ooh. representing a brand that is owned by a half Filipino. PM Tenor is actually Anna Ledesma's son from oh. the Ledesma family here in the Philippines. So, yeah, tell us about the conditions out there. It would be tricky, winds kind of blowing everywhere, but you found some nuggets. Yeah, definitely not what I'm used to back in Bali, like clean, perfect conditions. <laughs> it's been very windy, raining. Last couple of days, haven't been feeling that good, like a bit under the weather. But uh, yeah, finally just surf today. First surf in a couple of days. So it feels good to make the heat for sure. Yeah, all the traveling must be taking its toll on you. You were also in La Union, then you drove all the way here, and the weather's kind of funky. But good thing is your surfing's still on point. So Want to say a shout out or thank you to anyone? Yeah, um, thank you to all my friends and family for supporting me. I'm um, excited to surf again in the next round. Let's go. Okay, good luck, Varun. Back to the live action. Thank you, Camille and Varun and Takuto finishing that one off. Varun, just full of confidence there, just getting started. I love that. He's hungry. He wants it. He didn't yeah. have a great result over there in La Union, so he's going to reshape. And he said not even his conditions, but he ain't slowing down by the looks of things. No way. I feel. I was, I was talking to Matt earlier today, and he was saying, you know, everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's in, using has to make the most of these conditions today, and that's exactly what Varun did in that last heat and Takuta on that last wave as well. Aoi's first wave a two, and Joe Kennedy yet to take off on a wave. He's got that first priority, and um, the wind's kind of picked up a little bit, John. Yeah, it's sort of. In and out with the squalls of rain, I think. We've, looks like it was going to rain. It now doesn't look like it's going to rain, so <laughs> that could be bad news for the wind. It might hang around a little bit stronger, but generally I feel that it kicks up and then it sort of settles down a little bit, even with the same strength wind. It just sort of... Being an easterly doesn't really affect the wave face too much, uh, and some of the air boys prefer this wind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see, hopefully, some big airs later on today, 625, that last one of... Takuta. As, so, sorry, Takuto. Yep, as this tide starts to drain out, we might see a few little rip bowls starting to form, so they might be able to hit some sections. Yep. Hopefully. But fun morning, huh? Absolutely. We've had some great heats. I can't believe it's already heat five. Wow. Just powering through. And um, we'll have the women's round of 24 and then men's round of 32. Yes, no longboards today. So no longboards. LQS 1000 and up and riding is... Toki, nothing much there, our Madagascan surfer. 
Yeah, Joe, I think, is his preferred... Joe, sorry. No, no, that's okay. That's easy. Yeah, Joe. So, no, sorry to Joe. I was <laughs> apologising to oh. you. I was apologising to yes. Joe and his family. Yeah. So, Joe, Joe, out of Madagascar. Yeah. That's easy. He, I saw him over in La Union and then also in Tamil Nadu for the, the 3,000 in India. I met him there. Um, he had a good heat in his first round in La Union last week. So, hopefully he can... Um, you know, progressed with that same momentum. And Aoi, a bit of, he had a bit of a mishap in his first teat last event, having an interference call. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we won't talk about that, John. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but, um, you know, you got to rebound. It's, it's having it these back-to-back events, it, you have to rebound really quickly being a competitor. Well, it's also a learning curve. It really is. It's that sort of, he made a mistake, and it was it was an outright mistake. It was it was pretty hard to look at and and blame anyone. <laughs> but he he will rebound, and he will think about that, and probably will never do that again. So yeah, it's it's a big learning. It's it sucks to be knocked out by a forty two year old Australian <laughs> when you when you're winning a heat. Who will remain nameless? Um, that last wave sounds of, a lot like you. <laughs> of Taku, of Takuta was a six point two five. So showing out there that he has got it. Yeah, absolutely. Showing that, you know, he's able to make the most of the conditions. And, you know, even on those inside, we had a surf yesterday and it kind of, there's definitely moments where it starts to peak up, which is really cool. Um, so I think Takuto just finding a wave out there where he was able to, um, you know, find a steeper section. And it looks like this is Joe up and riding again. Nice carve through this one. He's trying to find a bit of a steeper face. Needs a three uh, a three point six at this stage, gets a nice backhand redirect there, and trying to find a little inside connection, but that one just fading out in front of him. So out there we have Takuto out in front and Alan Magos behind. One score to drop in for Green. There goes a two point seven zero. The judge is not taking too long. Pretty easy to sort out these average rides to the good rides at the moment, and getting almost towards the very good was Takuto there so mm. definitely potentially here he goes again oh second priority he's going to drop down into last priority or third priority depending on where Joe is mm. and it looks like some sets are going to clean them up it's interesting even some of these sets will reform so not necessarily a wash through set it could reform yeah and I feel like on a day like today you can kind of find yourself out of, like, if the sets come through and you're sitting a bit further in, you're out of position for the sets. But like you said, if you're kind of in a situation where maybe you're a little bit wider than everyone else, you can pick up that wider right. Yeah, and I would be sitting right next to Alan yeah. Magos at the moment. If I was a competitor out there and maybe I'm not really sure about these onshore conditions because yesterday was pristine. Almost throughout the entire day we had pretty much clean conditions and it, was, it made a lot more sense than what we're looking at at the moment. So I know Alan surfed this more than probably anyone else here, so I'd be sitting next to him and looking at what he's looking at because he's a, a pre-season little surfer here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of cool. I had a walk the other day and um, up the beach, like way, way up. And um, we'll, we'll get back to that because Aoi gets a float over that section. He needs to try and see if he can find a link up, but you can see the frustration there, just not able to get anything he waited quite a while for that one, and yeah. he you could see his body language there. He wasn't really happy with his choices. No, straight away locks in at a 1.9. He needs a 3.75. I think, you know, there's still plenty of time, 15 and a half minutes to get that opportunity, but here he is on a little inside one out the back. Nice carve. Gets a little snap in there, just losing a little bit of speed, but regains it here through the inside waiting for this one to stand up to get a good connection and he does that but doesn't get a finish it's, it's, it's always <gasps> painful to watch when he's he's done the work he's picked a great little inside runner yeah which was better than most looking waves out there which could be a strategy do you sit out the back or do you sit three quarters of the way out and wait for these reforms because at the moment it's more of the damage is being done on those inside sections yeah, it's a it's a tricky one to to figure out. A two point seven for that last wave, so he's slowly getting better and building that momentum. But he needs a three point zero six now, and it's yeah one of those things where do you bite the bullet and do you wait out the back? 
yeah. for a set and hope that you're in a good priority rotation? Or do you kind of pick up a couple on the inside, get your feet in the wax, and then go out the back and look for a five or a six? You didn't do my favourite. He's building his house. You're supposed to say he's building his house oh, at the yes. moment. Oh, yes. He's building his house. I'm Thank sorry. Thank you. He's building his house. He he's is. getting his points up. That's my favourite true styling sorry. saying. I know. He's building <laughs> his house. <laughs> and it was there for the taking. He is. But it is important to get that momentum. And you saw yeah. him wash away that 1.9 really quick with a 2.7. Mm. So that's going to make him feel a little bit better as he builds that house. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> He's setting the foundations <laughs> down. <laughs> exactly. There we are. The structure's there. There we go. This is true styling. <laughs> Professional commentator versus me. I just want to hear the magic whip out of her now. <laughs> Where well. are we? 30 minutes and 50 seconds. Takuto is out in front. Yep. Alan's in second. Um, Joe needs some work. Not much, a 3.06, but that could... It's hard to find, I guess. It's, mm. It is windy. It is wild out there. There's nothing really major coming in, so it's just wave selection, and I'm almost hoping that it steps up on the inside. A bit of luck. Yeah. I, I don't know what your take on this is, and I'm just going to put it out there, so shut me down if you think I'm wrong. With pleasure. <laughs> but I actually think threes today is a relatively difficult score. If you need a three, it can be a, a difficult score to get because you, you, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I can get a three on the inside. But I already had a couple of turns and only got a 2.7. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. And as that yeah. time gets smaller, that three gets bigger in yeah. your head. And I think the, the bigger scores in the five and the six range, I feel like they're easy to identify. Yeah. It's like those sets that come through and it is interesting because we have talked about it and um that last wave of Ali was was a smaller inside and it didn't get the numbers mm. but he didn't finish it so it's yeah. also he may have left a little bit in the in the tank there yeah it's real touch or go that was joe just coming off the back of that one um yeah it's it's one of those days where it's like you know needing a three you kind of think oh i only need a three and it's like well, I just did a couple of turns and got a 2.7 and you have to really readjust that and go, is it because yeah. I'm on the inside? Is it because I didn't finish off the wave? You know, how do you broach that mentality for the rest of the heat? Yeah, do you want to sit outside? Do you want to sit inside? Because like you say, normal heat scenario, you're going to go, a three is okay, but if you can see the scoreboard there, there's a bucket of twos and threes. Yeah. There's nothing that exciting apart from Taku Ta Takuto's... Um, five, six point two five, and everyone's mm. going. How did you get that? Yeah. But when it comes through, it's obvious that it's going to be a good score if yep. you can put those little exclamation points and finish every little maneuver yeah. to that to that level. It's doable. So totally, because the fives and sixes are out there. Every like they're out there in every heat in multiple opportunities, and I feel like making your surfing stand out on those waves is quite. It's not that big of a task because there's so much talent. Ooh. Like. Goes up and running. Yeah, Ooh, go. he's got a good-looking wave ahead of him. Nice connection here. Looks like it might stand up for him. Snaps it in the pocket there. And again, does he get a finish? He does. Wow. So kicking out on a high note for Joe. That was that was good. And I know some quality of the surfers out there. Joe's a, a strong surfer, but that was 100% wave selection. Mm. The wave did the work all the way through for him, and he had some really good moments on that wave. So see where the judges go with that one yeah well live action this is takuto nice connection in the pocket for the japanese surfer and again and this is where he's making his surfing stand out he's finding those moments those steeper sections to really capitalize on um just beach break perfection they japanese yeah. feel like just having a drawn out bottom turn on a two foot crumbly wave yeah it's incredible it really is like that takes so much skill to draw out a bottom turn when there is actually no wave face, mm. it's amazing. And he made that look really good. And I guess they're used to surfing conditions like this in, in Chiba and in Miyazaki. You know, it's a little bit smaller, pretty similar. So they're probably feeling at home. Well, their equipment's got to be dialed in for Ooh, this. These, absolutely. These conditions for sure as well. So they've, they've got the game. They've got the knowledge, experience and the equipment to yep. ride these things. Yeah, 100%. So 10 minutes to go. 3.25 for... Last of Takuto and a 2.95 for Joe. So yeah. Joe's still needing some work, but a 2.81 for me, that's definitely achievable. Oh, absolutely. 2.81 is something where, you know, he's back into that kind of realm, but I think he's... Oh, we go. Alan Magus, up and riding. Wow. Local. 
He's been sitting out there for a while. Nice Ooh, wrap. That's a good looking wave as well. He's going to rue that mistake. Wow. That was unfortunate. Probably won't throw away. He's 2.5 because of that mistake. Good wrap to start with. It was a good setup. He was building his house on that wave. Yeah, really was. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what happened there, you know? Was he overestimating the wave? I, I don't know. 2.1 for that last wave doesn't go into the top two. And he's really left the door open for jo Joe and Aoi right now. There's nine minutes to go, and I feel like those sets come through every couple of minutes, so there should be another opportunity. Yeah, and I, was he looking too far down the line and sort of just bogged a rail on mm. a simple... Simple as he was sort of setting up that next section because that definitely wasn't a normal mistake for someone like Alan to make out there. No, no, that was, yeah, definitely surprising, especially with the wall that was coming through um, on the end of that wave. He had every opportunity to better that 3 2 And five. you know as a competitor when you bog that rail Hot. and how, how bad it feels, especially when you're not living particularly in that moment, so it's yeah. horrible and everyone gets it. And even free surfing when you catch that rail, when you look at that section, it's like, Damn. Yeah, absolutely. And it's moments like that. I guess he was sitting out there with priority. He needed to better 2.5. That wave gave him every opportunity. And maybe in his head he's thinking, I can't fall. Yeah, I can't fall. Don't fall, don't fall, don't, don't fall. Don't fall. And then, and you then just, he falls. As soon as you say don't fall, it's like, <laughs> oh, wow. So changing that, hit the lip. Looks like Blue's <laughs> trying to get a priority update out there. Um, with this wind, he's sitting there waving like a... Like a bird, he's in fourth place, I can tell him, but he's not going to hear me, needing a 3.06. Yeah. Not much separating, second, uh, sorry, third, fourth, up into second, so. And I think this is where that, um, I guess, heat IQ comes into play. Um, you know, having to kind of score your waves in your head and think, okay, well, maybe I've got a couple of twos or I've got a couple of threes and then figuring out where you think you're going to sit in the lineup, but... Aoi, nice connections here. He's looking for a steeper section once again, rebounding back to the whitewash, but doesn't look like that one's going to do much. And there's that kind of negative body language again. Yeah, and once you hit, start hitting that pumping part of the wave, it also, the judges look at it and go, that's not that flow that we're looking for. Yeah. We want to see speed, power and flow. Rail to rail surfing. Rail to rail, and when you start... Um, I read an article a long, long time ago about pumping versus weaving. Mm. And apparently weaving can get you a lot more speed. Driving off those fins gets you a lot more speed. And obviously it looks better, but a lot of surfers will still go to that pump, I will. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's, it's e you have to work a bit harder to weave versus pumping. Like, I get it because you're going brake accelerate, brake accelerate, <laughs> brake accelerate kind of thing. But Joe, he's found a nice looking connection on his backside there will he get another few opportunities driving through this one he needs a two point a 3.01 sorry because Aoi goes to second and that was a good connection there and then Alan chasing a 2.7 kicks out of that one so Aoi's last wave a 3.25 he goes into second place with six minutes but we've got scores for Alan and Joe and I think we might see another change in the situation but we'll wait and we see. didn't see much of alan's wave we saw no. a bit of joe's wave. his wave selection joe's wave selection has been on point throughout yeah. this entire event maybe a little bit more commitment to the to the hits and the turns joe's dropping in at a 2.95 wow. so he seems to be stuck in that region now because of that last wave of oh, oh, it's gone up a little bit he now needs a 3.01 so if it had mm. been the requirement before he would have got there yeah. Um, now he only needs a 3.01, which will still be his best wave of the heat. So he yeah. has got a lot of work to do, and he's going to have to now think, what do I need to do different? Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a little bit more commitment to some of those turns. Totally. Uh, and then he'll be, he will be definitely in that range. It's within reach for everyone out there. This is a 6.25 of Takuto Ota. Nice start to this wave, John. Nice opening wrap. And I'm pretty sure... This is where that came from. Nice little fin drift there. And he might even get the rebound up onto the backhand whip. This thing just must keep going for him. So this is why this moved into the six point. He's done a lot of work already on the outside section. Not too much work. Just sort of patiently through it. And then a massive vertical snap finish. And it's going to give him another one, I was going to say. But yeah, that was, that's why. That's what set him apart. He hit every note. He hit it crisp. hit it clear. Even during the downtime, he was very relaxed and very cruisy. So that wave literally carried him through from out the back into the shore. Didn't miss a moment. 
No, not at all. He made the most of every part of that wave. Looks like there's a bit of puddling out the back. And this is Joe Kennedy up and riding, needing a 301. Redirects on his backside, but just comes unstuck, unfortunately, for Joe. And um, He did look like he gave it a little bit more. Yeah, he did. He, he's gone, okay, I need a three, and I need to just put a little bit of extra effort in. And he was so close on that last wave, a 2.95, 0.6 away from getting that score. But it was the requirement before that dropped in too. Yeah, so very, exactly. very, as he took off on that wave, he needed a, um, I think he needed 2.7 a 2.7. So, yeah, yeah so he, he did the work to get that and it just dripped out of reach for him, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, last of Alan Magus is, was only 1.10, so he didn't do anything. He's out there with third priority. I know the local boys will be willing him onto a wave and here he goes. He sees something in this. Yeah, a bit of a, a slow paddle onto this one. Oh, nice connection there. Really setting himself aside and oh, okay, again for another one. He needs a 2.7. He gets the inside connection. Again, another nice turn here and he really needs to get a finish. Releasing the fins. Not getting clear oh, of that. Doesn't get a clean finish. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate for Alan, but I think he got the work done out the back. I think that would have put that into actually a good score. I think he's still going to sneak through. I believe he's going to be close, but... He definitely got some good connections and local knowledge. Yeah. Uh, he's only 19, I think. 19 or 22. So he's, also, oh, wow. he's still a young young man. Yeah. He actually came through, I think he was 17 or 16 on the national tour. He had one of just those breakout performances and just took out big name after big name in the Philippine surfing scene. Amazing. And yeah, he ended up getting through to the semifinals on one of his first ever events. Wow. At, at the national level, so... Alan Magus, he, he rocked most of my surfers from Shargao. He took them out one by one. <laughs> so at one point, I, I wasn't a big fan of Alan Magus, but knowing who he is, he's a lovable guy yeah. and, and a great surfer. Yeah, well, that last wave, 3.6, he goes into second place. So that patience really paying off and also that local knowledge. It was a little insider one that he got under priority. Aoi needs a 3.6 to go into second place and Joe chasing a 3.9. Two minutes. The, the, the wind's backed off though, so things yeah. are getting a lot better than what we saw in that first 10 minutes of this heat. It was getting wild out there. Now everything's starting to make more sense again and Alan capitalising on that one. Yeah, very much so. He, he held the composure, you know. It's all well and good to get the wave, but if you fall or make a mistake on that, then that's on you. Um, so Alan just making the most of the opportunity he had, and this is Joe Kennedy taking off on one on the inside, under priority, a minute 30 to go, just about. That wave doesn't do too much for Joe Kennedy. This is Takuto Ota. Current heat leader, some crisp surfing from Takuto throughout this heat. Driving through this inside, finding a nice wall ahead of him, gaining some speed here. What's he got for this section? Puts it up there for another nice <laughs> tail slide and he goes, yeah, I'm not going to... I don't think he's going to fool anyone. No, I think that's a bit of a victory lap there for Takuto and Aoi out the back. A 3.6 is his requirement. Gets a carve in there. Once again, going back to the rail. Needs to find a solid inside connection if he didn't get anything out the back. This wave starting to wall up out the back. Behind him is Joe Kennedy and Aoi gets a nice connection there. Needs to find a finish, which it looks like he might just do that. And a 3.6 is his requirement. So 40 seconds to go. I don't think he'll get back out the back in time. If Alan, I'm nervous right now. He needs to get yeah. something. And there's only 32 seconds on the clock. Wow. Alan just hoping a wave to come through. I'm sure the Belair surfers are wishing for that as well. A 4.75 for that last wave of Takuto. Scores for Joe Kennedy won't be enough. Waiting on this pretty crucial score of Aoi. And Alan looks like he's taking a look. Here we go. Yeah, he needs to better a 3.25 right now to solidify second place. Nice carve. Bit of bouncing through the inside. Will this one stand up? And offer him a few more connections. He's had two nice turns out the back. Another whip through there. Bit of a foam climb. Carving back to the pocket on this one. But he won't get a good connection. Seemed like he was waiting for that wave to do something the whole way. He was doing some little little work on there. And that could be enough for it. And it looks like Alan's score is going to drop in. Not bettering his score. 
Yeah. All the focus is on Ali at the moment. Yeah, he needs a 3.6. Allen's, as you said, doesn't go into the top two. So, wow, it's going to be On the edge of really our seats close. right now. Yeah, seriously, it's going to be a close score. Will the local boy go through or will it be an all-Japanese upset? Yeah. Well, not upset because these guys shred. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this was a great heat to watch, unfortunately, for Joe Kennedy bowing out, needing a 3.9 in the end. But Takuto really just dominating this heat, a 6.25 and a 4.75 on his last wave. That 4.75 would have felt good. Oh, absolutely. Because he, he waited a long time to get another wave. He's yeah. only had four waves, the smallest amount of waves of everybody out there. Mm. Um, Joe Kennedy's been super busy with uh, nine, eight waves. Um, wow. And Alan also got really busy. So he's going to be sitting on the beach. They're going to be eagerly awaiting that beach announcer to let them know who's going through. Will it be local boy Alan Magus or will it be... Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, there it is. 3.4, not enough for Aoi wow. Oguri from Japan. Unfortunately, bowing out. But Takuto Ota and Aelin Magos moving on through. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Pink Six right after this. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippines Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back. Heat number six of the round of 48. The Waxhead back in the booth, the true styling. And three Filipinos out in this heat with Kosuki Amara from Japan. Jaywad, our sea service for his brother Eduardo earlier. Redin Espejon and Gabriel Larog, the uh, local guy. Yeah, he's already, oh, no, wow. Actually, Gabriel's from Chagao, and um, Redden is from uh, here. Oh, cool. It's exciting to have a few locals in Gabriel. Five, straight off the bat. That's a good wow, score. Wow, that's a solid in. score today, yeah. The condition's deteriorating, but that onshore allowing lots of opportunity for some progression if you are able to tee off with a section. But really, it's... Saying it's nine second period swell right now at 4.9 feet or something, and uh, it's definitely feels a lot weaker than that out there for sure. So, mm. conditions taking a turn for the worst, but the good news is we're at the peak of high tide, so this tide will be dropping out. Hopefully, that wind front well, the wind will be up all day, we know that it might fade off towards the end, but hopefully, that wind dies a little, the, r the sun comes out. And we'll see some more sections on the outside to capitalise on, True. Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing some bigger sections and some bigger turns roll through. And someone who had a great heat in that last one was Takuto. Locking in a 6.25, he's down there with Camille. Okay, I am here with Takuto Ota, the winner of that last heat. And how was it out there? Cold, windy, but seemed to like beach breaks. Yeah. Same like Japan, so yeah. Like in Chiba, that's where you practice? Yeah, always like this. Would you say this is a fun day for you, fun type of condition? Yeah, the waves, really fun. Yeah, same like Japan, so yeah, really okay, you, you look like you're surfing right at home with your 6.25. And you're actually doing really well here in the Philippines. Back in Cloud9, you had a fifth place finish. And so I also see that you're riding for Team Paisel Japan. Yeah, I, did. I ride Paisel. Yeah. 
Can you tell me about the board you used out there? So was it epoxy? What were the dimensions? Is it PU57 and to uh, 80.25? No, no, 18.5 and then uh, 2.25. So. Okay. All right, great. Great to know that PU boards also work in beach break conditions like this. So you want to say anything in Nihongo? Nihongo. Uh, Okay, thank you very much, Takudo. Back to live action. Thanks, Camille. Good insight. And enjoying the conditions. Fun. Uh, that we just heard then, uh, very much like Chiba, and it is. It is every time I have been over to Japan, it has been very similar conditions cleaner in the morning but if there's wind you can't really complain um waves are waves yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah waves are waves that's you know what we live for we wake up and if it's not flat we're stoked <laughs> that's it yeah hopefully you have the right board or you have uh some energy to be able yeah. to capitalize on those sections and here goes espigeon right now and i love the sprays all the surfers it must have just been a bit of a trend that they've just come out and he's got that Pizel there and he ramps up and he goes tail high and spins that one around. And behind him, this is Lirog here. And he's also got the deck spray as well. <laughs> so I just feel like since our, our La Union event, so many of these boards have had sprays in the last few days. Maybe they went to the hardware store, True. And it seriously does look like a lot of these surfers with the grovelers have got new color on their boards. Yeah, 100%. And um, I think... With the sprays, you can get a little bit creative, you can get crafty, you can add your own flair to the boards. And um, I like that. I think it's super cool. Um, so I love that they're kind of, you know, bringing their own personality onto the craft that they're writing. And, you know, you need to be able to gel with it because if you don't gel with your boards, it's not going to work. So I think it's cool that, that they've done that. Yeah, to feel inspired by the equipment that you're riding and a lot of these surfboards that under the surface feet, they're like the Ferraris, um, you know, they keep them in good condition, but they all look the same. A lot of them, team boards especially, that are a little cheaper, they come out clear, they come out that white colour, uh, and it's nice to put a bit of identification, a bit of creativity and a bit of personal flair uh, to maybe, as we saw Filmar who took out the heat earlier, he had matching pink spray to his hair, he's got green and pink um, coloured hair, which is pretty classic, so a little bit of personal style thrown into the equipment and seven for Okamura out there right now so it'd be cool to get a replay of that one uh, our CISO 4.75 and off to an early lead Larog with the five and the three so this heat judges judges scale really appreciating the completion of the waves we talked about th already this morning if there's an end section the surface can capitalize on you're going to go pretty big above a five if you can combine that with the flow if you can combine that with some power, because there's not a lot of power on the waves. But true, you know how you get power? Speed. Mm, speed, power, and also, how do you get speed in small waves? Flow. We talked about, you guys were talking about that earlier, about some people pumping, some people engaging the fins. Yeah. Flow comes from speed. Well, sp yeah. <laughs> you, you can't get speed without flow. Yeah. And you can't get power without speed. So it's all intermingled together. But today, very difficult. Hard waves, uh, a very big contrast to what we're seeing in the Pipe Masters on the Championship Tour right now. But these surfers, this time next year, have an opportunity to go through from this series through the Challenger and perhaps Surf Pipe this time next year, which is a really bright prospect for them. And here goes our CISO right now. This is Jayward. And you can see a uh, strong... Wide stance there as he pumps through the inside and unable to capitalize on that one with that 475 he started off on. So that'll go to his top two. And here we have Espigeon right now, fast surfing there in that green and pink Pizel. And you can see that board snapping back to the pocket. He's going to go past our CISO, look for something on the inside. And he gets that Huntington hop moving and unable to find something on the inside. And a flurry of waves right now. And heat leader wow. Larog at the moment yeah he did really get well to get onto that wave another nice connection here for Gabriel and then straight up wow for an 
air rev gets a clean landing and then a little uh, bonus section on the inside and then out the back. Oh. Ooh, big surfing from Kosuke. Yeah, and linking all these manoeuvres so far. Stylish on land and stylish in the water too. And you can see him here just ramping up. What has he got on the inside section? He's got some, he's carrying some speed and momentum and a nice whack in the pocket. Looks back at his competitor, Larog. Take that and that's going to be a fantastic score to go into Okamura's, or well, to go with that seven that he dropped beforehand. Yeah, talking with John in that last heat, um, getting those sixes and aboves, it's sometimes an easy task because if you get the wave and you make your surfing stand out and hit the sections um, as opposed to wrapping, that's where you're going to get above the sixes and into the sevens. And I think Kosuke is really um, articulating that right now. Oh. And Oh, nice connection for JR. So there's that snap there. And here, loading up into that next turn, a little snap there and another one carving it back. So looking for the lip line, loading this one up and taps that one with a bit of flair on the end. So judging by what we've seen this morning, that score should be received well from the judges, True. Uh, yeah, I think so as well. I think JR made the most of a bunch of sections on that wave. We, we had a flurry of really good waves from Gabriel, Kosuke, and then JR as well. Gabriel's wave was a four. JR and Kosuke still have their scores to lock in. But uh, yeah, that was a flurry of mm. probably the best waves that I've seen this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And the seven from Kosuke to start off with was a strong score. We'll have to see where that second one came in at. Um, currently down into fourth, but I think that'll change very shortly. You can see that onshore actually creating some sections out there, True. Um, tell us, compared to the glassy conditions when it's weak, Onshore, you can actually get some speed from some of the chops. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely can do that. And sometimes it's better, you know, especially if it's smaller, to be surfing with a little bit of wind. The wind can create a little bit more face. Um, it can kind of, as you said, create some sections. Um, and that's, especially when it's small like this, you can really make the most of that. And um, I think... I don't know. I like surfing when it's small and windy. Small windy snapper is probably one of my favorite times to surf because no one's out there and you can lots of waves too. Heaps of waves and you can just keep going up and down and up and down. And I think you know this beach break kind of zone as well. You can find those more critical sections. And um, wow, a six for the last of Kosuke is just showing that he's in tune mm. with those waves out there. Yeah, to go so a 13 point heat total, which is an absolute whopper today. So that's a, a seven and a six. That's for out there. If you've got something, a two fives or a six, they're going to be keeper scores right now. And Larog needing an eight to go into the lead. So you have to say Okamura right now is in a very safe position. And Espejon in white, he's got the priority, only needing a four five one. And our CISO, a four two six. We still have a score to lock in for our CISO in his last one. I expect it to be a pretty healthy one as well. Uh, he had that nice turn on the outside with a few wraps and finished cleanly on the inside. And we talked, touched on the criteria, speed, power, and flow. The judges, when I was speaking to them earlier, not much a change from the previous events. Uh, that doesn't help you viewers at home. It's up to us to uh, reciprocate what the judges are judging. To eke, oh, these surfers know, and a 5.8 there for our CISO. Three pillars of that criteria, speed, power, and flow. If you're able to execute your turns in the critical part of the wave, we talked about that just before. If you had to hit the lip line, and here we have Okamura said so like that, get it up and into the lip. This is a smaller, softer wave right now. And if you're able to uh, get the fins free and carry that momentum down the line and show a combination of today, they're going to be looking for those combos of radical surfing and strong committed sections there isn't many of them so if you can capitalize and flow between the maneuvers you're going to get seven like Okamura who third in priority before took that don't think that one we have three eight fives so that one just for that one turn so you'd have to say that's what the judges are looking at yeah that committed surfing um you've seen lots of waves getting going all the way to the shore not even getting a 3.85. Yeah, yeah, we saw in that last heat, it was really close between second, third, and fourth. And um, 
Yeah, I think uh, Oi in that last one, he needed a 3.6 and he started out the back and pretty much finished on the shore and he got a 3.4 because he didn't have those moments. Yep. And those moments are where you'll get the scores like sevens and sixes um, on days like today. And that is done by committed surfing off the bottom, off the top, mm. whether it's small or big. If you use your technique and you mm. have a section in front of you, low off the bottom and straight into that section is where you're going to get good scores. You can see uh, Espejon here, a lateral wave. You've seen there's just no face, no area for him to try and uh, generate some critical uh, turns. And there's a little snap there. And in the inset screen, that is the rog. He makes his way through the inside and he goes to the air as well. Bit of a bit of a chop up that one. Um, so the judges will be really looking at the position of where they do the aerials, these surfers. They're going to be looking at how steep the wave is because if it's a flat wave, tends to be more of a, a easier manoeuvre with a lot less risk. True? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, there's moments or especially when people have those those air reverses down pat, you can just pull it out yep. of the hat whenever you feel like it. But doing that on a, a critical section is hard to do and That's especially it. creating a bit of flair, whether it's tail high or getting super high in the air or whatever that is, you know, I think... Um, that's where we'll see that yep. difference in the score. And just the 3.95 for Larog's last wave. And um, yeah, the 5.8 for our CISO. So he's in second. Now the stakes are going up a little bit. Larog needing a 5.56 and Espejon a 6.05. So these surfers really starting to break away first and second in the pack right now. I'm talking about aerials. I can do little airs into the flats with very little impact on my body, but putting myself in a critical bowly section on a four to five foot wave and landing in the flats is a lot harder on your body to land than something, you know, a smaller, weaker inside section, for example. And the judges recognizing that the ability and the technique it takes to not only get into the air and get that speed, but to land a more critical air. Here we have ramping up down the section. Oh, nice display of power there. And Gabriel, a couple of turns towards the end. So we'll see where that one goes. The 5.56, nice carve, but pretty much the only turn on that. But yeah, back to the airs. The judge is appreciating uh, the landing on a lot of those big critical airs. And if you can get the pop from a critical section, that's where you'll get those points. Whether just the tail high manufactured airs, not so much true. Yeah, those manufactured ones. I mean, we saw uh, Taka do a couple yeah. in the first heat this morning and he, he was rewarded well for it in the sense where he got two on one wave. Um, and that can be pretty tricky to do um, because, you know, the make rate's probably not that high. Um, but, yeah, I think you'll see... Oh. oh, wow, that was a nice turn from JR just driving through this one. Wow, he's really come to the party throwing the arms up. Once again, just I love how he uses that front arm as like a bit of a driving point, a bit mm. of a pivot. Yeah, he absolutely. He puts it into the, into the wall. He pivots pendulums and swings it back around. He's looking, a, reminding me a little bit of a thinking of somebody briefly on the world tour, and I'll get back to that in a moment. And, oh, activated surfing there from Redden. He snaps that one back to the section and looking lively on this wave, but just nothing of consequence yet. No critical section. He's pumping down the line. He's looking for something. You can see him really animated here and he gets the connection and he makes his way through the inside and he snaps that one on the inside section. You know, chasing a 6.05, not sure if it's going to be there. It's a bit lateral, true. Yeah, yeah. Just there wasn't a moment. There wasn't a moment. We we're talking about that. You've got to have a moment to get into the fives and sixes, and there wasn't that moment where we saw Costa K have and even JR on that 5.8. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of opportunity, seven minutes to go, if he can get himself in a good priority rotation and find a wave that um, works in his favour, mm -hmm. then he can create that, that kind of exciting off the bottom, off the top. And both Lorg and Espion, very uh, very low there on the ratings, um, just having to compete in La Union and um, and Chagall last year. And nice power carve there from our CISO. He's looking to uh, go well in this event, a 33rd finish at La Union. 
needs to build some momentum if he wants to climb up those rankings. Of course, this is the QS3000, so a lot of points to to gain here, if you, especially if you're to move up into the quarterfinals. That big jump from the round of 16 to the quarterfinals is huge. Uh, for example, if you were to go out the round of 32, uh, you're actually going to be only placing uh, 17th with 480 points, which is pretty much nothing. Or if you come for 400, as we move through to the next... Uh, next through heats, we haven't got the seating obviously sorted just yet, but the points go all the way up to 3,000, mm. and then uh, 2,400 for second place? 2,200? I think it's 2,340. Okay. So, I mean, obviously the prize money doubles as well between second place and first place. So, yeah. extra incentive, not just the points to win. Of course, uh, the winner down there last week was um, where we had 3,000 points is, is, I mean, if you can bag 3,000 points before you go to Australia or Belair, and that's a huge uh, jump up the ratings and perhaps less pressure on you in the 5,000, which will be in... Newcastle. Newcastle, the Surf Fest event. <laughs> yeah. So. And the Central Coast one is 3,000 as well. Yeah. So my, and dual sanction, tuning in to everyone at home right now. Uh, s there will be two events in Australia on the East Coast that are dual sanctioned. So surfers from this region and Australia will be able to garner those points. But obviously the field, uh, competitive and very large as well. Yeah, yeah, super large. And the key thing though is that, you know, the Asia region, the points will just remain, you know, there. For example, mm. if Gossip... If Kosuke wins, he'll win those 5,000 points and no one yep. else will kind of, like the Australia region, no one will get that. Yep. So it's relevant to where you kind of sit in your own region. If that Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. So it, Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> if, if, an, if uh, let's just say, um, our CISO in this heat who comes in ranked 44, if he has a great time in this event, gets the 3,000 points, he'll f skyrocket up the rankings probably mm. 10, maybe 20 places. Um, and then he'll go to Australia. If he, do, if he wins that 5,000, uh, that'll just rocket him almost up into second or first place yeah. as well. And even a third or fourth there will be a fantastic result in Australia. So we'll see who, after Belair, this is going to be very interesting, the end of this event to see who... He's going to go to Australia and looks at the rankings and think, I've got a good opportunity here to climb up and perhaps get into that top five spot. There'll be a wild card as well chosen from this Asia region back onto the Challenger Series. Some of them are re-qualifying and others will just be looking to uh, jump on for the first time and get that opportunity to eventually qualify for the championship tour. Yeah, I had a look at the rankings before the event started when it was updated from La Union and I don't know if there was too much movement in the top five. I think everything was relatively similar, maybe mm -hmm. a couple of places changing. Um, so this result is going to be super important to determine whether they'll be uh, making an appearance in Australia or not. But I think altogether that's 8,000 points on the line. So it'll be a must go. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're in maybe the top 20. Mm. And I see so here. He goes oh. to the air, gets the grab as well. And incomplete, I think. Yeah. Thoughts true? Yeah, I think he, he he made it, but just didn't get a finish. Didn't ride out in front of the um, whitewash. Yeah. whitewash. So, yeah, that wave was incomplete. And let's see what... Oh, that was unfortunate for Gabriel. He looks like he was in a good flow. Yeah, needing a 5-6-1. He had that speed... He was carrying momentum through, but the wave just fading out. You could see the body language. He was dismayed, knowing he needs his best wave. He had a 5-6-1, and uh, Redden looking for that 6.10. Um, yeah, Larog had some good signs going to the air beforehand, but judges deeming it not overly critical. And 2 minutes 30 left on the clock. It's really going to come right down to it, but it's the surfer in fourth place who has priority at the moment. So he'll be looking for... The second best wave of the heat with that 6.10 with the 7 from Okamuro, second priority. He's put on a great clinic, starting early, a 7 and a 6, and just slowly dwindling uh, with his scores in the last three waves. But here we have a little bit of action, true, that onshore wind. Not looking pretty, but the, the rain has stopped, so a bit of respite. And here he goes, surf and priority, fourth, Ooh. needing a hefty 6.10. He's on his way. Nice snap there. 
And look for the lip line here. Another carving maneuver. And he's pumping. Can he get over the hump? And he can't. So unfortunately, unable to link together an end section. But some good work on the outside, True. Yeah, really good work. Those three turns, they were solid. He was driving through them. You could see a bit of aggression in all yeah. of those as well. So it was unfortunate that he didn't get that inside connection because I, I think he was on his way to that score, in my opinion, that first turn off the bottom straight into it and then two hard calves mm. after. If he could have got a solid finish, he'd be challenging for a 6.1. But Kosuke, he's just been on fire this whole heat. Wow. Yeah, using his priority on this wave and a clinical performance. And you can just see him staying close to the power source. A nice, relaxed flow. Definitely looks like a he's on a PU board, not an epoxy. You can see it's sitting in the water a bit better. Nice snap. And he pumps his way through to the inside section. And a conventional looking board there from Okamura as well. Not that smaller summer shape. So something um, maybe a little 2000s inspired. Yeah. Um, he's got a, he's stylish on land, as I said before. And he's got a great style in the water. So being able to piece together the choppy waves out there and finding those little reforms is an art form in itself. And the Japanese surfers looking on fire so far in this event with the... Um, couple of the Filipinos getting through as well, namely Filma with a strong performance earlier. And it was actually um, J.R. Esquivel had a, had a strong performance earlier too, doing a couple of nice aerials and having good flow on those longer lefts. Haven't seen him go right yet though. Mm, we saw a bunch of backhand surfing at La Union from him, so maybe he's craving a couple of lefts. lefts yeah. Maybe goofy footers will find lefts at Snapper, wherever yeah. they end up going. Yeah, it's funny being a natural footer myself like you, it's hard to look at a left-hand rip bowl, but if goofy goggles are on, they yeah. will always find those little lefts, but it looks like that hood is gone, so it will be our CISO and Okamura making it through to that next round. We're going to go to a break, and you can see those beautiful mountains in the background, but back for more. Heat 7, up next. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back to WSL Belair International Pro. We're at Sabang Beach in uh, the Aurora region on the Waxhead. I'm here with Jerry Deegan. Right now he's a, you could say, a Filipino expat from Shargao and he spent a lot of time over there the last 20 years uh, and had a lot to do with surfing over here in the Philippines and out in the water right now. We have an international affair and we actually have a surf from Sri Lanka uh, in amongst our uh, Indonesian surfer and two Filipinos, Christian Arakil and, well, one Filipino, sorry, Amade uh, Ariana Pucha, Hermawan, and Kailash Mason, representing Sri Lanka. I haven't uh, had much to do with Kailash. Apparently, he was in the junior series last year, mm. so um, he's a relatively young fella out there, but um, nice to have someone from Sri Lanka here. Absolutely, and some fantastic waves over there and um, the Asian region really starting to, well, the WSL and um, ASC really starting to hold some events in some unique places all around Asia. And here we have um, Amade right now, our goofy footer and Putra, natural footer, working his way through the inside. And he finds something, low body language, relaxed, and he's going to try and find something here just on that front foot Cherry and unable to capitalise yeah. difficult out there on some of these waves yeah yeah really tough um, there's um, 
Kailash, he is our Sri Lankan surfer. He doesn't really like that one. Uh, Putra has been coming to the Philippines for events for at least ten years. Uh, he's thirty-one years old now, and um, he's had some pretty good results in Shargar. He's had a couple of fifths. Um, he's had a ninth, but uh, I think the first year he came was two thousand and fourteen, where he had a fifth. Loved the place, you know. And he's been back year after year. Um, did okay, equal thirteenth in La Union. Um, so I think he's looking to get a better result here, you know, for his quest to get onto the um, Challenger Tour. And I think we're going down to have a chat with Camille and our previous winner. Okay, I am here with Kosuke Okamura, the owner of the best score of the day so far, a 7.0. So, Kosuke, how are you feeling today? Feeling good? Feeling confident? I'm feeling so good. Thank you so much. Okini. Okay. <laughs> okay, and I think one of the secrets to you, because you have such good flow, is because you're also a rapper. Uh, I'm surfer and rapper. Nice to meet you. Uh, my MC name is Big Human Jab. Nice to meet you. Okay, thank you for that. And it's actually so good to watch your reels on Instagram because you have an awesome soundtrack for your waves. I saw you listen to Busta Rhymes, Jay-Z, Lil' Kim. What kind of music do you listen to before a heat to get you pumped up? Uh, just Method Man. Method Man. Yeah. Only Method Man. Okay. Yes. Also, you have a crew or a squad, like a young squad. I saw that on your profile as well. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, my crew is five people, uh, one cameraman and four professional surfer. Young squad, check it out. <laughs> okay, I'm loving this energy, yeah, and it shows on your surfing too. So you got a big score, a 7.0, backed up by a 6.0. Tell me about the waves out there. Is it something you like surfing? Yeah, uh, I like this way because uh, same to same like Japanese wave, same uh, same to eh, same like to my home. Okay. Yes, yes. So good. I like wave. This. Thank you. Okay, feeling very at home here in Sabang Beach is Koske. You want to say a message in Nihongo now? Okay. Eto, kyouen shi kudasatta mina san arigatou gozaimasu. Kyou mo tabu mo ikka aru no de kono choushi de ganbaru no de ouen yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Shaka! <laughs> All right, so that's a tip for some of the surfers out there. Maybe listen to some hip hop, some really good rap before going out there to help you find your flow. So thank you again and back to live action. Thanks so much. Uh, so good. From Camille, uh, really enjoyed hearing that post heat interview. And uh, you can go onto Kosuke underscore Okamura's Instagram and have a look at his young squad crew, which is. Uh, yeah, for they've got uh, seven people from Japan there on that crew as they compete in the events, make some video edits and support each other. And with sponsorship being a lot harder to come by in the modern era of, well, in this current era of professional surfing, traveling with the squad's never been so important. And we've seen uh, a lot of the different countries represented, like the Brazilian Storm, for example, and Australia rekindling you know, their love for supporting each other. Um, the Americans, the San Clemente crew, who are couple of rookies on the world championship tour right now two percent that that's their crew and there's a whole whole bunch of those uh you know nations that are supporting each other all the up-and-comers i really think important. it's really important just for the support they travel together it's cheaper obviously as well they can have like one or two people organizing for everyone um but it's actually the support on the beach and all the rest of it yeah. you know we, i think it I guess it started with the Aussies and uh, Hedgy and uh, Hodgy, Hedgy, Hedgy, Hedgy yep. uh, running around with the Australian flag, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then the Brazilian guys, you know, followed up suit. And it's good. It's good to see, you know, a bit of uh, country spirit and a bit of uh, a bit of patriotism. Fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, patriotism. Sometimes people don't like those words anymore. It's got the, you know the world's gone weird. But it is good to see patriotism. You know, they they, they back each other and it helps them. Yeah. They know they're in their corner. And like Putra right now, the you know Indonesians that are supporting him do understand the the background. They they can familiarise themselves and they can feel um, a part of themselves through uh, 
Putra's campaign and, you know, they've grown up in a similar area. They understand um, the conditions that they've had to go through, you know, the waves that they've had to surf and they follow the journey and they're all riding it together. They are and they're travelling and, I, yeah, I really like it. Just a, an aside here, it looks like the wind has laid down just a little bit at this stage. That storm came through and after the storm it's a bit more quiet out, well, a, a bit less windy out there. Absolutely, good pick up there, Jerry, and that wind was really howling earlier, looking up to the palm trees little less turbulence and perhaps a local weather system that's moved off behind us into the valley, off to the north, off to the south of here at uh, Sabang Beach. There is a lot of variety. You can see some little bays and coves which you've been to explore further north and there's a few more just behind us and here is Araquil right now. So low center of gravity and we're going to catch up with Amade in red. Nice snap back for both of these surfers and great camera angles there. The split some open face surfing there for Christian. And he goes incomplete. And Ariana making his way through. And he goes incomplete as well. So just a four and a three puts Imade way out into the lead. A couple of marginal scores for the other surfers still to lock in. It's nice to see a, a peak, a split peak. You know, this... Given the banks here, we're pretty lucky. It's a relatively small bit on shore, but it doesn't mean we're not getting quality surfing. And that was an exact example of splitting that peak. And it was, they were both very nice waves, you know, lo loads of score potential there. Um, so, again, we're a bit lucky. And I'll give a bit of credit to, our, to Jet and John, our um, um, event directors, because, you know, you see that wind come up awful. You know you've got seven days mm. to go. It's pretty easy to pull the trigger and say, look, let's can it and, and you know, wait for tomorrow. But... They didn't, and, and the wind's up and down. And again, now we've got some uh, semi-good quality waves. Came up in that second heat, if you're joining us earlier. And so thankful to be here, Belair. This is the birthplace of surfing in the Philippines. Um, 1968 was the first time that they had recorded having waves ridden here. And they back then, they would have been on longer boards, um, not quite short boards yet at that period especially not in the Philippines, the Asia region. And there's Ariana Amade. Nice snap after an air reverse. So a three-turn combo. Snaps that one back, keeping really busy, staying in that pocket of that rip bowl. And as the tide drops, Jerry, we're going to see that rip bowl start to shine, both the left and the right, either side of, of uh, the peak right here, straight out the front of the judging uh, tower and out the front of the hotel. Complete luck that it's straight out the front absolutely yesterday i walked up and down the beach and there were some other spots but um yeah they've set it up directly where that um little bowl is on the inside and a little a-frame out the back so you know it's worked out pretty good for the organizers so far i mean yeah. it's early days so pretty happy that uh, these guys are out there actually proving that the organizers got it right and that win proving to be a little challenging but offering lots of sections and you can see christian there I like the it's a longer board. You can see him see that through his turns, but you can see uh, sometimes you, on a longer railed board, you can throw a lot of spray. You so can, yeah. Uh, Christian's a shark, our kid. Um, he's 23 years. Actually, he turned 23 on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. So I guess he gets the combined presents, which is a bit of a rip-off, but, you know, that's what happens when you're a December person. That's it. As I am. Big birthdays. Um, everyone's celebrating a birthday but it's just because it's holiday time and everyone's free but look at the sets rolling in right now right on cue that wind swell combining with this i mean this is looking a bit more what we expected this morning a bit more swell this could be the i know it sounds sounds a little bit uh derogative but this is the best set of the day the biggest set of the day the biggest set yeah, yeah yeah and going unridden so this is what we have today we are slightly out of season running this event uh, in collaboration with La Union, but the conditions yesterday were super glassy. The day before that, a little windier, but we did have head high waves, and we'll expect more of this throughout the week. And we are in this beautiful region of Belair. We are four hours from Manila, and um, a lot of different landscapes on the drive out here. We had some farmlands, um, tropical rainforest, beautiful winding roads as you make your way down into Belair, and you can see the mountain range right just in the distance that's our contest site to the right of the screen uh, beautiful coastal drives and a river situated behind here which actually uh, is released into the ocean uh, probably maybe a kilometer yeah not far not far down the south actually um, yeah look it's a beautiful place it's my first time here i know it's your first time here did you get a chance to look at any other waves as yet i did i went took a little bike ride to the south and had a look at some waves and best waves were straight out the front 
of the contest. I did the so, same thing. We, we, did, we dashed there late in the afternoon the other day when the wind died off and yep. had no idea where we were going or how to get there. Ended up just walking through the mangroves for finding dead ends, having to come back. Go, it's, you know, if you come to this place, find a local to take with you because there are uh, some hidden waves there, but looking for them on your own was <laughs> was a trial, I've got to say. I came back with cut feet, no waves. Wow. You know, it was, uh, I was just panicking. We weren't going to go, be able to get back in the dark. I went there with John Carby, who's just an absolute grommet. Can't, can't not surf ever. <laughs> he loves it. And there's the contest site there, the split peak, and catching up with Hermawa and... Herma one and nice opening snap and he goes a bit of a foam climb there and another one there keeps it tight in the pocket looking for a marginal 265 and he'll likely get that score in a little bit more with that 11 minutes 50 remaining he's, they were nice little snap snaps on little waves with with not a lot of power um, he was managed managed to um, really make that look smooth and you just have to get in these conditions you can't be too fussy you have to ride what's in front of you and here goes the Shagao surfer and he goes down so veteran move there from Putra to get that wave before he'll likely eclipse that second place go out and get priority or at least second priority and so you can see that rip running out there it's going to be very Perfect. helpful throughout the week there Jerry and that's the left that we're looking at yep yep looking to the north yep yeah no that rip's perfect um, that's what you want you want it to be able to get out and if you look there there's a little one on the other side on the right as well so mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty helpful. Yesterday, the rights seemed better than the lefts, but today, it mm. uh, seems like the lefts are better, or there's more scoring potential because they're going into that rip and they're longer. Yeah, we'll see what happens as that tide drops. And a big list of people to thank for this event to be possible, and it is laying the, the precedent down. It's the first WSL event in this area. As we said, it's the history of uh, the, the birthplace of surfing here in the Philippines, and there's a lot of history here. They filmed Apocalypse Now in 1976 here. We had the local legends, the Dukes of Valair surfing here last night, and some of them are down here on the beach right now. And here goes Imade. So that's a lively wave. Finishes cleanly on the inside section. That was nice, yeah. There's um, another another legend of the surfing here, Marco Villarreal. I believe he's going to come and have a sit with us at some stage and give us a bit more insight on uh, the local conditions and, and what's to be expected Great. and the local kids. So. Um, a big shout out to Marco as well, and um, some we'll of the cuisine maybe as well. Well, he's a chef, and yeah. he's a renowned chef. Um, I've and what he does, he specialises in uh, vegetarian, vegan foods. But of course, he can cook anything. But uh, I told him when he cooks for me, you know, I need some meat in that food. <laughs> um, so we'll get him down here maybe a bit later today, um, and we'll get him to sit in on a heat and um, give us some insights. And uh, we'd like to thank Tingog Party List, ASRAI, Oopsa and Department of Tourism, Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Olympic Committee who will be watching this very carefully. This event is laying the precedent and a platform for the Philippine surfers to see the best in the world surfing in their country and also allowing two 3,000 QS events, QS 3,000 to be held in their country is, you know, along with the Shargao, which would likely be a 5,000, just so important, so crucial to developing nations we talked earlier about some of the best uh areas in surf history have been dominating because of international events that have been held there sydney is one of those regions so many world champions north and south you know we've got newcastle surf fest coming up in a few months so many famous surfers from newcastle region i think yeah. of mark richards um, and I think of um, mm. right now Liam O'Brien's on the world tour, Ryan Callanan, Matt Hoy, Sibling, Matt Hoy, absolutely, um, Simon Law, and all of those guys are a product of their environment, and let's hope Philippine surfing, we've got Maramar, Mark John Takong, who took out the last event in La Union, who's making a big soar back up the rankings, he's going to try and jump into that top five, secure his spot back onto the Challenger Series, he was the first Philippine surfer to represent the area or well, the region on that uh, international tour. Yep. We hope to see him back there. Very proud of him. Everyone in the country was proud of him. And of course, um, uh, JR's exploits have essentially almost eclipsed uh, Maramas, but they're, they're in different fields. One's in the shortboard, yep. one's in the longboard. But yeah, incredibly proud of Maramas, young kid. I've known him certainly all his life. And, um, and both he and JR are just amazing representatives of the Philippines. They're the nicest people, they're smart. They, they speak well. That's a really interesting um, sure. shot there. That's where we're staying, and that's the blue. You can see the peak there. I mean, yeah. you can see where the, the, 
um, channels are. So we're, we're just behind the blue uh, roof there, right on the beach, which is where the judges are. Uh, we're in the hotel directly behind that. The Costa Pacific Hotel are also one of the presenting sponsors here. And Araquil looking for the, th well, a marginal 345, but you'd have to say perhaps a little uh, lack of heat experience there to take off on that wave and perform that maneuver at this point in the heat with the veterans, Ariana and uh, Putra. That's not the order of the day right now. And he's going to have to go back out and look for something. It's, he doesn't need a big score. That's the thing. He's only looking for a uh, 6.10. And it's going to have to be a, the best wave of the heat so far. Definitely. With seven minutes, I mean, there's a, there's a big chance. And uh, there's Omade just ripping it up. Um, he's found that little left. Will it link yeah. up? Okay, there's the split peak. So uh, that's Putra on the other side. Oh. A couple of Indonesians just uh, taking it apart here and at the moment dominating this heat. And these waves are certainly going to help. So Putra's last wave that for the backside attack, a 5.3. And the 6.4 was the best wave of Amade beforehand. So these surfers really capitalizing on the lefts and the rights. Uh, this is very similar to a Kuda Beach type scenario in Indonesia, in Bali. And you've got the headland there. That's a beautiful shot. The drone absolutely killing it. Coast Pacific Resort in front of us. And Great swimming pool here, by the way. Oh. Um, I've been doing laps in the pool on the onshore days, and it's 32 metres long. So, wow. you know, it's better than your average 25-metre pool. And up on the right hand there at the, the, uh, the headland, that's where Cemento is, is. That's a very famous wave here. Um, a really fantastic right-hander. And here goes Christian, and he's answer back. And this wave gets ahead of him. So coming from Shargao, no beach breaks over there and a little of, uh, lack of experience really showing in Christian's approach right now. We're hoping 5 minutes 50 can turn that around. And Kailash back into fourth. He's needing a 6.5 and he's got priority though. He's showing some good signs in this heat so far. The Sri Lankans got uh, a good style, nice pace to his surfing, but he's going to need something strong on a set wave. And that last exchange, an 8 for Amade, Ariana and Red. So he's extending his lead. And, and still waiting for Putra's, Putra's wave there. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be a strong one as well. I do too, yeah. Um, interesting, yeah, the, the Shargas surfers don't have a beach break, and it does make a difference. Surfing beach break, I find it far harder than surfing a reef break. You know, it's less predictable. So they're, you know, the guys that haven't done a lot of travel are going to struggle somewhat. And here he goes, the Sri Lankan, using his tall frame, and that one isn't going to eventuate. So both surfers, white and green, down in third and fourth, making some poor decisions with their wave selection. And the two veterans, the Indonesians, looking fantastic out there because Putra is still waiting on that score to be dropped in for him. But we have a sense it's going to be a strong one as well. Needing a 9.10 to go into first. Not sure if that's going to be it. And uh, the government, great performance last night for the opening ceremony. Some local school students, uh, Bagong Pilipinas and House Speaker Martin Romaldez. Also to thank the local government of Belair, of course, Senator Sunny Angara, Ramel Angara, who's the congressman, Rhett Angara, the mayor and department of tourism, Region 3 director, Richard Danos, who had some fantastic insight to give us. And it's an economic perspective that they're looking at surfing for the growth in this area. And your main commodity in surf tourism is this, the ocean. In front exactly, of us. yeah. Don't have to build much infrastructure. Utilize what's already here. There's restaurants here. There's great resorts. Uh, there's good roads we drove in on a fantastic beautiful scenic road yep and a seven kilometer beach break by the way so um you know it's like cloud nine where i'm from and, and i'm sorry if i keep harping on it it's more difficult for the beginners you know here it's a beach break so it's far easier to take them out there they're not stressed about that reef yep. it's sand it's soft you know um so yeah the the you're right the commodity they have here is the ocean and it's fantastic it's warm it's you know, there's no big sharks, things like that. I mean, it's, yeah. there's nothing to be scared of here, really. It's, it's uh, fantastic. And the, and the Filipinos or the Manila people race down here on the weekend and fill up the resorts and um, really enjoy it. Well, the seven-kilometre stretch with over 100 trained surf school instructors, you can guarantee you're going to get some empty waves along that stretch at some point. Although a lot of them are congregating here, you can get a surf guide, go to those different areas and... Get one of the local professional surfers. We'll introduce you throughout the week. We'll do some spot interviews and get you acquainted with some of the local um, personalities that, like we did in uh, La Union as well. There's a lot of surf schools down there and uh, it's important for those surf guides, those people tuning in right now, the next generation of 
um, surfers that are coming through to understand the craft, understand the art, and not just go to stand up for, a, for an hour and get that surfing experience, actually learn about the culture of surfing here, and um, knowledge is power. And I agree, I agree, and here we have another split peak. Oh, and he goes to the air, so current heat leader, Ariana, and that's Christian looking on the answer back, looking for a 7-5 right now. And he goes to the air and goes incomplete, but he needed to go big because Putra locked in a 5.85 to go with his 5.3. So the two Indonesians looking strong way out on the front at the moment. And those surfers, I mean, they're needing some good results themselves. They're here in the round of 48. Uh, Imade comes in at 27th uh, on the rankings right now. Last, Well, getting a fifth last year at the um, Mankawari Pro, and that was his best result, but... These surfers looking to go top five on well, the rankings. Well, yeah, obviously that's the um, that's the goal. Um, and and again, if they've got the finances and they're they're looking like making it, then there's a couple of events in Australia which are um, dual sanctioned that they will need to head to for sure. And sponsors out there tuning in, a lot of them are on the edge of the seats watching their surfers right now with a lot of support. And that that is the lifeblood. If you're out there and you're having a look at any potential sponsor for your brand or your company. These surfers out there are the next generation. You have Filipino, you have Sri Lankan surfer, two Indonesians right now, representing the Asia region. And this area is booming in terms of its surf potential, but also the surfers that are coming out of this area, or this region, and we should say, on the Challenger Series, are really looking forward to what these surfers can bring. And here he goes. This is our second place holder at the moment. Nice foam climb. He keeps it in the pocket again. And we're going to... Uh, catch up with last ditch effort from Mason and he goes to the air as well and Green goes incomplete you just see that cool tempo there from Putra yeah he's not stressed is he he's just waiting for the sections and he's, and he's using them um, you know that will probably be similar to maybe his 5.3 he's feeling good it's 30 seconds to go he's not bothered paddling back out there and at this stage you know Christian needs a 7.5 and uh, Kalash needs, uh, needs a 7.9. So it's going to be kind of difficult for those guys, particularly seeing yeah. um, Kalash just took a wave. He'll paddle back out. He probably won't get out there. So, you know, his prop time is probably uh, over uh, as far as the competition here. He's got plenty of time to go travel and check other waves and see what the, see the sights around. Um, so hopefully he'll do that. Yeah, unfortunate early knockout there. It's looking like for uh, Araquil and Mason right now. And you can see Ariana, consummate professional, just looking to come in and catch one using his priority. You can see the rip really starting to, to churn things up. And it's looking like an 8-point, a 6-point forward. So the best heat score and single wave of the day goes to our Japanese surfer, Imade Ariana. So he takes the win away from Pujara, Hermawan from Indonesia. And we'll say goodbye to Araquil and Mason. We're going to go to a break and we're back for Heat 8 very shortly. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Hey, welcome back. This is the uh, Belair Pro. I'm here with uh, John Carby, the event director. Um, well, pro, uh, assistant event director. I don't know whether it's you or Jed. It's a little bit confusing. We're, we're together. We between you guys. Local yep. knowledge with um, Jeff and me just running around pretending I know what I'm doing as, as I usual. Do. Yeah, yeah. So we have... Um, uh, Manojo Yahagi in red. We have Toby Espihon in blue. We have Troy Espihon, who's Toby's brother. So 
a 17 and 18 year old, I think. Uh, 19 for Toby, and I think 17 for Troy. Okay, and Marco Ventura from here in uh, Belair is in kids green. Of, of Dodo Espion over there in Shargau, so I'm pretty sure the Espion Dodo and Sandra would be watching from back home, so a shout out to you guys back there. Well, they're definitely watching. Um, I've had many a surf over my life with Dodo, and a call out to their mum, Corey. So I know Corey is incredibly proud of the boys, so um, call out to mum and dad, so Dodo and Corey. Uh, they're both there, they've got from um, uh, Sarging Sarging, they're just near um, Katungnan, very close to Cloud9, so uh, these guys have grown up with the heritage of, of a dad surfing and all his friends surfing, you know, yep. with all sorts of Yok Yok and yep. Dodo and all the boys. So Dodo, one of the most powerful um, goofy foot surfers you'll see in Cloud9? The, in most, the most powerful, in my opinion. One of the best backhand surfers in Cloud9 I think I've ever seen. Some went back when I first got there, the whips he could do, the commitment he'd put in those turns, amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, he's insane. He, you know, and, and these young guys watched him and, and have learnt from him. Um, but apparently we're going to have a chat with um, Marday and Camille. Um, yeah. Take it away, guys. Okay, I am with Made Ariana, who is advancing to the next round. Made, your nickname is Pajari, so I'll call you Pajari. Yeah. How are you feeling today? Feeling good. The way a little bit tricky, but I got some good way. Yeah, feel good. You didn't get some good wave. You got an 8.0, which is in the excellent scoring range. So, how did you find that wave? Um, what did you did you wait for it? Did you really wait for that set? Did you know Did you know it was coming? I just wait the double up wave. Yeah, just going the double up wave, and yeah, I got 8 point. So lucky. So the weather is kind of improving. You can see the horizon already. The sun's coming up, and hopefully we get glassy conditions later. Or we could get windy conditions still, but yeah. Tell me about your home break. Is this something you're used to or is this something to you? My home break in Bali, the name is Shangan. Yeah, not the wave is reef break, not like this. Yeah, sometime I'm practice on Alfe Kuta Beach. Some wave like this in Bali too, yeah. Okay, so looking forward to seeing you surf in the upcoming rounds. Do you want to say a message before I let you go? Untuk yang di rumah, terima kasih sudah menyupport saya. Ripkel, Ripik, Miyazaki, Akito Papa ya. Terima kasih. Okay, terima kasih Pajar and good luck. Let's go back to the live action. Thanks. All right, uh, thanks Camille. That was a nice little uh, chat there with Marde. Congratulations to him. He'll be moving on into um, the next round with Putra. So the um, two Indonesian lads uh, really dominated that that last heat, John. Absolutely. Quality, smooth, good surfing, and they got a really good score. Here comes Toby's 6.5. So Toby, the older of the Espion brothers, and now on to Green, which is Marco Ventura from here. Local boy, local knowledge, just going over the falls there. That wind has lined off again, so we're into that golden period again where things are looking a little bit nicer. Yeah, it's better. Um, I know that Marco has a bit of an air game, so um, you know, hopefully he'll find some ramps. Uh, see what he can do to represent the local area. And this is the replay, I believe, of Toby's okay. first wave. So the 6.5, the most of this heat so far, the only real substantial number. Nice combination of critical off the lips. This is a little layback there. This is competition surfing 101. If you want to hack away points, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, do this. Are you um, Toby's coach, John? No, Toby's a part of the Happy Islanders crew, okay, which yeah. is led by Filmar Alipayo. Yep. Uh, Toby's a part of the bag tick crew. Uh, Troy, sorry. Troy's a part of the bag tick crew. So brothers, and they've both got sort of different sponsorship. The exciting thing about Toby is he's up and running again. Uh, with Bagong, a little loose back foot there coming off. Um, with Bagong Philippines, one of our, Filipinas is one of our sort of sponsors and presenters here. A, a big thanker. And there may be a little project coming up in the Philippines featuring Toby Espion quite heavily. So okay, that's great. A little yeah. sneak preview. I can't really say too much about it. Well, you've said too much already because now I want to know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> so keep an eye out on that. I'm partnering a little bit of help from Flanagan Surfboards over in Indonesia. Um, we've just had 10 little boards enter the Philippines for some groms. So 
I've definitely said too much now. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You said you weren't going to say much, but you have. Good on you. Can't, yep. can't keep your mouth shut. But I know what you like, John. You, I like, also, you love to chat. I also want to shout out to Mike Rukner from CrossFit Shargao too, because he also helps a lot of these. We've seen these uh, bag tick surfers come in today, so we've shouted out to the Kong. I also want to shout out to Mike Bruckner from CrossFit Shargao. Mike offered a fair bit last year for the um, Shargao event too, so I had a bit of a chat with Mike, so thank you. Yep. Uh, very much. Yeah, CrossFit Chicago. If you get down there, get fit. He knows how to help train surfers. He knows um, specific uh, specific exercises to build like muscles that will develop your surfing and help you sort of maintain a nice, strong, healthy part of your equipment, which is most important. Your body. It is. It is. I must say, traditionally surfers just surfed, and, and now things have changed. They um, did. I blame Mick Fanning. Yeah, well, Mick Fanning is still, you know, to me, one of the best ever, regardless of the fact that he's retired. Yep, and he hit his straps when he hit that um, athletic side of it where he started really working. He had that major, I think it was major a Major injury, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ripped his hamstring from his bone and then refocused and rethought about life. We should be talking about surfing. There's Marco Ventura up and riding. A couple of nice little weaves. Looks like he's on a, quite a bit of volume under his feet there. Small looking lad, but may I just like say he's got a little board. May I just say we were talking about surfing. <laughs> we were talking. <laughs> I'm talking about the surfing in the water. At oh, the okay, okay, no worries. Let's see where the scores are dropping. In. We've got two to drop in as they come in. So Marco Ventura has a 2.7 for his previous to last, and a 3.10 for that wave there. Judge is not taking too long. Troy Espion yet to get started. Got a 0.75 for his first wave and a 2.75 for his second wave. Toby Espion at this moment. Out in front with a 6.50 and then a little throwaway one. And Monojo yet to get really started out there. One wave, not really worth what he would be looking for. No, he just dropped his second wave, which is a 4.50. There so there you go. He, he, um, we, we were waiting for that score. And here goes Troy again. He's super Toby. busy. Sorry, Toby, super busy. Um, let's see what he can do. Is this one going to link up for him? He's going to do something here, something big. Pretty nice. I guess that will get rid of his 1.0. I don't know that it'll be quite the 6.5 he got before, but um, you know he's uh, building on his score, which is what he needs to do. Absolutely. Numbers to lock in for both brothers there, the Espions, white and blue, Troy and Toby. So I gather Tr Toby would have... Um, oh, okay, sorry, we've got uh, Troy. Ga I gather Toby would have far more experience in other waves apart from Cloud9, Troy being uh, a fair bit younger. Has he done much travel? Uh, they've both travelled pretty well. Troy and Toby were sort of leading the junior rankings of the national tour, so they've both travelled pretty extensively. They're, they're best friends. They're the biggest competitors. Uh, Troy's goofy like his dad. Toby's natural footer, but more built like his dad. So okay. really interesting dynamics like in the, in the puppies of Dodo that have they're a little bit different, but also very similar. Have they had a chance to travel overseas at all? Uh, Toby, we went to Indonesia last year and had a little crack at the QS with the crew. Not last year, 2021, I believe, or maybe 22. I'm old too. No, um, well, it just depends when COVID was. It's, it's a bit of a blur. So we had, yeah, it was, it was towards the end of COVID. It must have been 21. So we had crew, we had Nias in that tour. So that was good for Toby to spread his wings. And I think he's also been over to India. He's really starting to get around with that Happy Islanders, which is cool. Yeah, that is cool. I'm just looking at the uh, temperature here. It's 26 degrees Feels in like the air four. and 26.9 <laughs> in the water. <laughs> but it does feel cold. It's windy. I mean, look, it's it's just a miserable looking day out there. I mean, the surf's great, but the, it's miserable. It's dark, it's cloudy, it's rainy. But 26, to most people, sounds pretty warm. But here it's feeling kind of cool. You know, it's wet, it's windy. I like it, you know, because normally <laughs> in the Philippines, I'm sweating my second shirt by now. There's Troy up and riding again. Your shirt looks amazing, by the way. My shirt is from Test Pig, so I'd like to shout out to, uh, to Robbie Schaefer from Test Pig. Thanks for the shirt. There's Troy. He is looking to throw away a 0.75. Definitely done that, and I think he may have also improved on his 2.75, but I could be wrong, 2.20. I love it when I'm wrong, just before I'm wrong. I love it when you're wrong too. Um, so, Manojo is an accomplished surfer. Um, is that the Hyoga Pro in Japan? He came. He was the came first in that actually. So he's had a win this year, um, and he came equal ninth in La Union. So he's certainly capable. Um, and he's sitting there with a 4.5. Here we go, of course, with Toby again, who's 
Just going crazy on every single wave. Surfing like the Grom that he is. Well, priority with red, so Marco doing the smart thing and not crossing paths with Absolutely. Monojo there. We've, we've had our fair share of that. And on a beach break, it can be really tricky because it's easy to get an interference because you could be on a whole separate section not realising you're actually interfering with that surfer. Here comes Marco on what looks like might have been a better choice anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about uh, Monojo's strategy there because he, was, he took off on the shoulder. He did get a couple of little turns and he will get rid of his 1.0, but um, yeah, wondering if he should have waited for a longer wave. 12 minutes and 45 seconds, sort of the halfway point of this heat. 25 minute heats out there, Jerry? Yeah, we had, what do we have, 35 minute heats in um, LU? And they were long, long heats. They were, but that was also a long, long paddle out. That was a seven to eight minute paddle back from right down on near the rocks all the way to the it, other lineup. It, but on the big days, it was a long paddle against back. Against the yeah. current, um, I believe they surfers done two heats of that 35 minute in those conditions, and they were absolutely exhausted. Yeah. So yep. there was talk of mainly from Jerry Deegan just to finish the comp that day to put him out for 12 <laughs> heats and... <laughs> 12 five-minute heats. 12 five-minute heats, but two 35-minute heats at this level, it's it's taxing and takes its toll on the athlete's body. So not used to it. Usually um, athletes will prepare on the QS for a 20-minute heat. Uh, 25 is a bonus, 35 is unheard of. So Yeah, yeah. So And we got it done and, and everything worked out really well. But yeah, they were long heats. <laughs> so you're hard, more, you're more sit, complaining. It was, was hard to sit and talk to you for a full 35 minutes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know. I know, we're hitting records. So you've had a few surfs since you've been here. I know I went out with you. I went with you to um, Cementos, but you went back the next day, and what was it like? Uh, it's the spirit of adventure that I'm chasing, Jerry. Oh, we had an adventure that first day, that's for sure. Well, Jerry called, I've got great instincts for this, and we walked up and down the beach for about 20 minutes, and then... <laughs> I found out the first track that we looked at that... Was the one we should have gone was up. Was the one we should have gone up. When so. you say walking up and down the beach, just so people know what we're talking about, it's all mangroves. So there's a beach and then there's like 200 metres of mangroves and you've got to get through that mangroves to get there. And we had no idea and very little light left. <laughs> well, you did say get a local, a local guide or someone to go with you. We blatantly refused and told everyone we'd be fine. Turns out we were not fine, but it was, it was definitely good fun. It was an adventure, that's And yeah, sure. I've, I've had some good surfs. I... I like, you know, I mean, the search is what it's about for a lot of surfers. Coming to a place like this, we have a beach break that you could surf day in and day out, but then you can go and find that little little quality. piece of reef. Yeah, that quality little, reef, yeah, by that, the way. That little piece of reef that's, that's going to work for you. And let me tell you, this Belair area is full of it. Yeah, and so I've heard. Um, I haven't had the experience yet, only that where we went the other day. Look at this set out the back. It's actually going to almost close out on them. Well, these are the ones that we're running through. As this tide drops out, I'm guessing they're not going to reform as well as they were doing. If you had to been particularly wide on that one, it might have been okay. Yeah, it depends if it runs into the channel. The, the, left, the channel to the right of your screen there seems far deeper than the channel to the left of your screen there. So the lefts may start getting a lot better as it runs into that. You know, the sets may hold up and run through the lefts may end up better as the tide goes out. Well, that's what I'm told. Here goes Minojo, up and riding. A little bit of a boggy rail on that first turn. But he's just waiting for this thing, and it's, it's one of those wait and see what happens sort of ways. Looks like it is going to stand up for him, so he's going to get back to work on this inside section. Hopefully he's going to get a strong finish. He's racing towards it. That's definitely what he's been waiting for. What do you reckon, complete? Full, full fins free. Was it complete? He did nosedive at the end. He, he seemed to have landed and then nosedive. That, that one I'll leave to the judges. Um, personally, I think that it's going to almost get... If that's complete, I think it'll pretty much go to the 6.65 he needs. If it's not complete, you know, it, could be, it might not even go into his top. So um, hard to tell, you know. What do you think? I was, I was with you too. I, on initial thoughts, I saw him look like he made it, but then he dug in. Was was he clear and out in front of the wave before that nose dug in, or was it all a part of the same move? Yeah. It'd be good to see a replay, and it'll be interesting to see where the judges sit in. It'll be very obvious. Oh. Well, I did say Marco had an air game, and there it is. That's one of the better airs that we've seen throughout the morning also, from what I've seen anyway. Yep, and he's going to hang on and see if he can nothing left for him there. So it's a one-manoeuvre um Score there, but it was a pretty nice um, air. That was. It Ed, was crisp and nice. It landed well, you know, was totally in control. Here we go. We're going to get the seat again. Call us into it, John. All right. So, little opening wrap, and he sees the section straight out, just gets that speed. 
Nice turn, came down smooth, not a wobble out of place, so kept no, his speed. He was above the white water as yep. well, so... I think it's going to be a good score. Yeah, I think you're right. And we're going to see where judges are setting airs because we've seen a lot of blow tails. This is the first one of... Looks like it's already in. No, still waiting. And Minojo got a 3.9. So they did not score him on that yep. last manoeuvre. Pretty safe to say, and you called it pretty well. Mm. So a lot of downtown on that wave until that very last section. And yeah, like initial feelings were he rode out, but the judges want to see you clear in control in front of that whitewash, and he just must have dug that rail. He'd be spewing about that. He would, he would. He knew it wasn't right, and he was probably paddling out thinking exactly what we're thinking. Are they going to pay me or yeah. not? But Did the I judges, get away with it? Did I get away with it? They yeah. know. They the judges know. are pretty critical um, on that particular thing, and I think if you do finish off the wave well, they score you quite well. If you don't, you know, they give you nothing. Yeah, was it? It's a low Ferreira who'd done it on, on a major CT event. Massive air reverse. And landed so crisp, but then couldn't keep the momentum yes. as the whitewash ran him down. And he didn't get rewarded for that score. And it, was, it, it ended up causing a lot of controversy. I'm not... Probably yeah. not. And it, it's one of those things that does divide what's a clean ride out. And it was really hard to say because he couldn't have stayed on that wave. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I trust the judges and they, they're scoring everyone equally, we hope. And... Um, you know, if you don't fully ride out with some speed, then you haven't really made the way. Yeah, you know? and so when the whitewash caught him, it did mow him down. And, and that was definitely not the same standard, but it is that clear, in control yep. ride out that the judges are looking for and consistent from QS to CT. Look, sometimes I watch these things and think, rather than take the manoeuvre, oh, oh, okay, so, okay, Mark, I got a 5.9 for that one Maneuver. So Changed his situation. Moved him into second place. Uh, made it a little hard for Minojo now, who needs a 5.16, and Troy, who needs a 7.15 to move into second place. I sometimes think when they get to the end there, I'd like to have a time machine and have a guy not make the last manoeuvre, get see the score, and then do it again and have them pull off and not even try the last manoeuvre. I almost sometimes think they're penalised for, for not making that manoeuvre rather than just not getting extra score. I have no idea what you just said. Well... <laughs> I, I just I think, I think I did. I just sometimes think <laughs> that was a long way to say it. <laughs> yeah, well, I you know, um, I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder on that last manoeuvre, you know, like, are you better off pulling off rather than falling off? Yes, yes, but I think there was nothing much on that. Oh, which one are you talking about? See, that's anyone? How, no, I'm that's how much you lost me. I'm talking about any wave. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because I sometimes think they're actually penalised for bogging a rail or nose diving uh, on that last manoeuvre because the judges just waited, didn't make the last manoeuvre, didn't. And it kind of puts a, a bit of a downer on the whole wave, if you know what I mean. It does, it does. It, yeah, we have seen it throughout um, these other, like, last event. It did, it did feel like it came into play. And is it just that taste that lingers in your mouth that I it think was it a is. fall? So. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. You've got to remember it's humans judging and at the end of the day, that's, it's, it sticks in there, like it or not. Five minutes remaining on it. Uh, Toby Espion waiting for a score. Probably won't go to his top two, I don't think. There wasn't anything really substantial on it. Uh, Marco Ventura with that last air, a 5.90. It was a nice air. Uh, would have been interesting to see if that wave had a run again, if he got a few more where he would have gone on that one, if we had that time machine that Jerry loved so much. Yeah, well, we didn't even don't need the time <laughs> machine for that one. But, yeah, had it run, he would have definitely... Um, possibly gone up into the excellent if he could have finished it off and got a couple more and he's done enough slashes. to put Monajo into third place I reckon Monajo would have been there he'd be kicking himself about that last wave um, he's going to have to reset he's sitting there with priority and this is current heat leader at a second priority Marco getting to work on a left hander I think he's coming in second at the moment but um, hopefully moves into the, the lead oh, sorry my bad there we go there you go just sit here calling each other out <laughs> Um, that one's not going to go towards his two No, scores. that was pretty disjointed. Um, it was a difficult wave to ride, and he, I guess he rode it to his best ability, but it, it wasn't uh, his greatest yep, moment. Yep, and a lot stronger on his right his right hand as well, the looks of things, compared to his left, which is always interesting too for these beach break guys. But yeah, you wouldn't think that was the case. You totally understand it for a point point guy, but um, okay, he's he's gonna, what's he going to do? Get some speed? No, Kick he's out. straight out. Good move. That was There was nothing there for him. And he knows what he needs. And Troy needing a lot. He was in priority. I believe he may lose that depending on where the other competitors are. His little looks priority like hasn't dropped off yet. No, it looks like there's no one else out there. So nothing to lose for Troy there. Um, three minutes and 30 seconds. It's Toby. 
He's looking to throw away 4.0. And Troy on the right sending an air reverse. Not an air reverse. He didn't quite get the rotation on that one. Probably the cause of that fall as Toby keeps working. Probably went out a little wide on that wave. He could have cut back into that. Maybe there was a little section. But uh, again, we do not have the time machine to find that out. <laughs> the, hot, the hot tub time machine. <laughs> Shame. We'll get the WSL guys to work on that. Yeah. Make for a long event though, Jerry. Time machine. I'd go back 40 years and I'd be in the event. <laughs> <laughs> Two so minutes. Sadly, I still seconds. wouldn't be in it. <laughs> <laughs> but surfing has come a long way here in the Philippines, so it is great that we are where we are, when we are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, up and riding. We have Troy. He needs something big. And that won't be it. I want to say thanks to uh, Teodoras, our, our technical team, our audio guys, and Sam, of course, in there, who's, who watches every single heat. Always, um, forever. So thank you, guys. We much appreciate it. And, of course, our judges um, and technical teams. Big and international oops, oops field are. out there. Big international field on the judges. We've got, we've got everything. Indonesians, Japanese, Australian, Filipino. Yep, that's not quite everything, but that's, oh. that's at least four <laughs> nations there, mate. It's pretty good across. <laughs> across. Trues not helping in the background, laughing at Jerry's bad jokes. <laughs> well, you know, we are um, in the Asian region, and, and apart from the couple of Aussies, it's nice to have the um, Asian uh, judges and commentators, and I'm not really sure why someone's looking at me over there. <laughs> because of what we're talking about. Yeah, Gabs, big shout out to Gabs who Gabs. helps a lot. Thanks, Gab, Gabs. Gabs, Batalonis. Um, so anyway, with one, just over one and a half minutes to go, we still have Toby in the lead. Um, we have... Monojo, up and riding. He needs a 5.16. Still waiting for this one to stand up for anything worthy of that. And, ooh... This has been a pretty smooth backhand wave. Yep. Not many left-handers in this heat like this. That's definitely going to ask the judges he a few He finished questions. it off nicely. There was one really nice slash in there. Uh, was there enough? Well, that's 50-50, but um, he's given it a go, and it may well be his last chance. So it'd be really interesting to see what happened the there. The judges might need to look back at maybe some of those 4.75s mm. from his last wave or a 4.9 from what Toby got on his exactly. second wave. So they're going to maybe take a little bit of time to lock this score in because it will be important, and they want to make sure that it lands somewhere where it needs to absolutely in absolutely. relation to the scale of this heat. Yeah, now it's interesting to know that they can go back and look at other waves and compare things and, and you know take their time just to get it right, which is just incredibly important, not just to us, but these guys out here that are you know, putting their, uh, their futures on the line, travelling, spending money. You know, they want to get through. Uh, Troy up and riding. Needs something huge. He's going to want an air. I know he wants an air. A little bit of nerves, a little bit of pressure. Watch him out at cloud nine. He'll hit that left at cloud nine and hit air after air. Manojo just, oh, great little whip. And Manojo got the 6.10 to move into second place. So Marco is now relegated to third and he needs a 4.96 with only a few seconds to go. And uh, that was an amazing finish there from... Um, Manojo, who got the score he needed with a minute or so to go. We weren't sure he was going to get it. The judges loved it. They gave him a 6.10. So um, that's incredible. Marco is waiting on a score, but I don't think it was anywhere near what he needed. So I'm going to venture out and say that uh, Toby and Manojo will be moving through into the next round. It's pretty cool to see Toby Espion from Chargao, um, young fella. Um, giving it to these guys and take, um, taking on Monojo out there and getting the better of him in that heat. That's going to be a great little confidence booster for him. As we watch these last numbers from Monojo, that little backhand reverse that he sort of threw out there. Yeah, it's going to come in around the three something and I believe we are going to head to a break, John, and I'll talk to you in a little while. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippines Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air 
and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines, and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back to the Belair International Pro. We've moved on through into the round of 24 heat one of the women. Kaede Inui out there representing Japan. Kath Leva Casals for the Philippines. Angelina Longos also from the Philippines. True Styling and then joined with John Carvey. John, we were talking about that ad before with the Belair... Um, showcasing I guess Belair and the songs and we were I, w I mean I was loving it last night it just shows how beautiful this place is that ad for me I, you can't get sick of that and that's what this place really encapsulates it's mm. beautiful it's like it's green and beautiful a lot of people may have this image of the Philippines and it's all about Manila and the city and the traffic as soon as you get out of there it's beautiful and that yeah. video you were dancing along quite avidly at the <laughs> opening ceremony last <laughs> night when they showed that yes. song <laughs> <laughs> I love when that sort of thing, watching you at these ceremonies is one of the best things that highlights my <laughs> night because you just genuinely love it. You just get excited. I it's do. So good to see. It's the best thing ever. I love, <laughs> I love getting myself excited for things like this. I mean, everyone is so passionate about their town and it's hard for me to not feel passionate about it as well, well. it overflows and bubbles out all over everyone so <laughs> i'm sorry watching the I'm song's good enough <laughs> yeah. and watching you watch the song is also a, a highlight oh i'm a terrible dancer <laughs> though so apologies to, to you all <laughs> well you didn't leave your seat so it wasn't too dramatic yeah exactly. anywho jolena longos out there from shargao i'm super excited to see her in this heat mm. she comes from a place called pacifico in shargao and it's okay. actually a pretty nice long left hand point break um, reef point break mm -hmm. um, this is like a girl got the yeah and and it's just she got a 4.0 so it's amazing how good she is on a beach break it's it really is incredible for me to watch that she doesn't come from this environment but she takes to it like a duck to water yeah it's exciting it's a different I think we we're talking about it in the last event it's a different mindset surfing a, a beach break compared to a point and this is the four she's on her forehand going left got the goofy goggles on and one big turn for Jelena that was a nice connection getting the fins a little bit above the lip there as well yep she's one of the bag tick crew I believe sent here from Chargao so they came in I think yesterday oh so wow. they didn't give themselves a lot of time to get it in practice a lot of them do the nationals tour though so they're not new to the area mm -hmm. just you, you sort of want to get that feet in the wax beforehand and sort of wash yeah. off the the reef style waves and feel yes. out the beach break just to get that power different difference yeah yeah well it looks like we have camille down there with the last heat winner toby espion take it away camille okay toby espion the national juniors champion looking really good here in belair how was the conditions during your heat um the condition now is so I'm not good. Um, <laughs> so choppy. So you not you you need to keep busy for that way, yeah. Okay, I like what you said. You need to keep busy because everything's always changing. And contrary to what you just said, uh, it's actually clearing up. Medyo umu okay na siya ngayon compared to earlier in the morning. We lost the rain, we lost the wind. And in the women's right now, the girls are finding more walls to carve on. So what kind of equipment did you choose for today's heat? Um, it's stock nga eh. Kasi I get 6.5. So um, second wave, I wait like good one to back up score. So yeah, stock to... Got four backup store. Is this the same board that you used in La Union? Yeah, same board. Okay. So interesting that you can really ride um, yeah. a board no matter if it's a beach break or a point break. And kind of sucks that your brother didn't make it. But were the two of you communicating? Were you making signals? Were you talking and watching his rides out there? Um, no, um, just like, laro lang ba? Yun lang. Um, thanks din pala sa may-ari ng board. Um, Tinshi, Iwami, thank you so much sa board. So good. 
Okay, so yes, we heard about that. Tenchi Iwami donating a bunch of boards to the Shargaonons um, last year during the event out there. And looks like you're making good use out of it. And <laughs> yeah, so it's every man for himself out there, brothers by blood or by water. It's your score that you have to keep watching. So congratulations. You're still in this competition and want to say a few words of thanks. Um, Binabati ko yung pamilya ko, um, auntie ko, mama ko, papa ko, um, kapatid ko, Silias, um, sponsor, Happy Islanders, Chipox, um, Bagtik, CBD Siargao, um, Hakata Siargao, maraming salamat. Okay, that's it for the round of 48 for the men. US right now we have the women's round of 24 so on deck Katleya Casas, Julina Longos and the winner for the longboard event in La Union Kaide Inoue back to live action. <laughs> Toby brutally honest yep. how's the conditions out there horrible <laughs> but he's used to pretty pristine conditions at cloud nine. Yeah I was gonna say coming here it would be tricky to adjust um, <laughs> Even at at Cloud9 last year, it looked super fun. And um, transferring that to here, it's completely different. It's a beach break. You've got to adapt. But that's why we're on the QS. Nothing's going to be the same. Every day is different. And I'd love to be on a board from Tenchi. You, know, yeah. you know he's surfing these conditions a lot. So that epoxy version might help yep. something secret in these beach bikes. Just a little bit more float across the water. Help mm. to get from section to section. So... Toby's stoked that he's on a, a board from Tenchi for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's super cool, Tenchi, donating a bunch of boards to all the surfers from Sha Gao. It means, it means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to see him, you know, backing the talent in that area. And speaking of, Jelena, a 4 and a 2.9 on her last wave. She's in the lead. Kathlea, she's got a 2.3 and a 1.9. And Kaede Inui taking out that LQS at La Union last week. She's got a two. She needs a 2.26 right now to move up into second place. And there's 17 minutes to go already. She's a threat in the water too. She's, she, I guarantee she would have been out there these last three days only on the longboard for yes. sure. She's, that's her discipline. This is more what I'm here. Why not? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And this is Kaede bangs it. Nice connection there. Driving through Ooh. again. Gets a nice re uh, redirect. And tags it for two more. So, Kaede and Nui just finding a nice little reformer. We'll see where that goes in. We've got a new scale set for the women. Four heats of the round of 24 and then moving to the round of 32. Busy day, yes, I believe so. If the conditions remain like this, there's no reason we're not going to continue surfing. Mm. Um, we even had that wind blow quite hard for a while and we are still bringing in sixes, sevens yeah. um, and a whole bucket of fives. So very, I hate to say the word contestable, but it is. it's not just contestable, we're bringing in the scores, so it's, it's highly contestable. Yeah, absolutely. And the wind's backed off a little bit since earlier as well, it looks like, which is nice to not have that strong wind. And this is Kathlea, the local girl. Young. Yeah, driving away through this one. She's super lively on her feet and we'll catch up with her in a moment. She's taking this one all the way through to shore, just driving through, but unfortunately not able to get an inside connection. Just maybe too light to get <laughs> that board down the face of that wave. Yeah. She's another one to watch as she gets older. She was also a junior, done really well in the junior rankings here in the Philippines. So mm. she's a future, the women's junior division is really strong also here we've got Mara Lopez and we have her so Mara's up next I think so we're going to see two of the youngest young guns wahinis um, in these next two rounds yeah. heats sorry heats rounds yeah. <laughs> I'm excited actually to watch Mara she performed really well in the longboard and in the shortboard so I'm looking forward to seeing how she goes out here in a different kind of stage compared to La Union but at 475 for that last wave of Kaede, best wave of the heat, she gets into second place. Needs a 2.15 to challenge for first. And Kathlea looking for a 4.46 at this stage, which is not out of reach right now because it seems like it's starting to link up from out the back to the shore. Yeah, it's sort of being consistent. I think it's more to do with that wind at the moment. Mm. When that wind really blows up, it's sort of 
harder for it to stand and reform because it's sort of being maintained by the wind behind it. Yeah. But that last wave from Katie was definitely a very nice smooth wave and she just linked together everything really nice. I think that rebound with that redirect was actually sort of a roundhouse with a little tail slide. It looked really nice. The judges would have loved it and then she kept going and put a few more stamps on it. Yeah, she had a couple of good sections and just really uh, setting herself aside, creating a few moments. Let's have another look at it, John. All right, so once again, so she just took her time. This first section, this looked like it was going to be a one-hit wonder, but then she found this little redirect with a little bit of flair there the judges like, and then this wave just perfectly set up. little foam climb, another little foam climb, and then she got off. So that was compared to Jolina's... Um, 4.0 for that one manoeuvre. So the judges are liking that little bit of extra work. Yeah, definitely. I think um, the scores are reflective. I, Kaede got a few more bonus sections, but they're still rewarding that one turn with a four. And I think that's um, a huge feather in the cap for Jelena. 2.4 for that last wave of Kaede. She goes into the lead. Jelena down into second, needing a 3.16 to go back into first. And I... I want to see, <laughs> I mean, not that she can hear me right now, but I'd love to see her on her back end and see what she can do. Yes. Who? Jolina. Jolina, notoriously from a left left hand point, yeah. so she's very comfortable on the left. So we'll see her with her goofy goggles on. And she's a, yeah, she's a goofy footer. Every goofy footer I know will try to go left, yep. even when it's right, but you might get your wish. Here we go. Jolina up and riding, nice. First backhand slice on this wave. This one starting to wall up. She's super whippy. That board looking really responsive under her feet. But unfortunately, that wave just... She was a little bit caught behind. That second turn just kind of putting her out of rhythm. And Kaede is having another look on this little inside section here. Nice carve to start this one off as she's driving through. Trying to find an inside snap section here and she goes straight up redirecting it for the left and gets a finish there great instincts to sort of see the way that one was going i was sort of eyeballing down the line to the right and she actually saw that left i was thinking she went a little bit far away from the power source but she was actually every intention of running back to it and hitting it so nice effort from from kaede see where the judges lock in that little exchange jolina not much with the 2.75 as expected she sort of mistimed it, got a little bit stuck behind it and never sort of recovered to get that smooth open face that she was looking for. And Coyote sending a message with a 4.0. Yeah, setting some good foundations for Coyote, 4.75 and a 4. Just applying that pressure to Jelena and Kathleen, the local woman, just a little bit quiet right now, holding priority. You can see her out the back waiting for a set. She needs a 4.6 right now, which I feel like is... a pretty good idea to kind of um, find herself on one of the bigger waves and you know really lock in a good score yeah 100 percent. so interesting to see her approach will she wait for that right wave or is she looking for something in particular we'll just have to wait and see here she goes there's a good set coming towards her now um, i'm sure she'll be able to do right to lefts coming from here yeah absolutely there's a little rip bowl left, a rip bowl right out there, which I love surfing rip bowls. It's probably one of my favourite times. And here we go, the goofy footer. Oh, nice opening start to this wave, dropping that back arm. Moving through this one, she needs to find a finish, which she gets it. So she needs a 475. That was a well surfed wave. We'll see where it goes. So Jolene is showcasing her power there. Mm. She just drops that. That's one of her trademark turns, that sort of layback version um, of that carve. And this is Kathalia using her priority, unfortunately, just getting a little bit hung up and that wave just dying out in front of her. And behind is Kaede. She'll jump off the back with 10 minutes to go. I'm going to be interested to see where Jolina's score drops in because she is... Um, there's not too many women out there throwing that turn either. Mm. The Japanese have a great variation. That's a little bit of a different flavour, even from other competitors and other Filipino competitors. It's almost uniquely Jolina's turn. Yeah, it was super cool to see. So 3.75 it locks in as. Not the 4.75 she's requiring, but she's extended second. 
Kathleen now needs a 5.45. And I think for Jelena, if she could do that on a bigger wave, then she'd really challenge for that 4.75. Yeah, that plus the finish that she had. And this is what she'll be doing in her head that, okay, so I know I can do a four if I do mm. that one section. And I know I got most of my points from that um, sort of layback jam. Um, just improving that technique and getting those two linked together and she knows she's going to go into a good spot. But she also knows the requirement is that uh, 4.75. So she knows she's going to have to up it a little bit either or, what it, whichever way she goes about it. Wave selection, I think, is going to be, again, pivotal out there. It's just choosing the right waves. Yeah, I guess finding either one of those sets that rolls through and if they don't kind of, they're not consistently coming through on your heat. I feel like this heat, we haven't really seen that many good sets. Um then, you know, it's finding those good inside ones that offer at least one or two good sections. We saw Jelena get a four off one turn and a four, seven, five for Kaede just for, you know, really making the most of the sections in front of her as well. So there's opportunities out there, that's for sure. Yep, now Kathleen is just wanting to get herself into a place. She's obviously she's moved down the lineup a little bit. She's looking for those waves that are going to run into that right-hand shore break. That'll move a bit further in. She's not sitting all the way out the back where Katie is sitting. Um, Katie's obviously moved back to the position where she's got a 4.75 and a 4.0 from. So she's very well and very um, experienced competitor. She's locked into her strategy and she's just going to sit into it. Where I'd almost recommend a young lady like Kathleen should sort of mimic her and see what she's doing. Help learn and grow. Yeah, totally. There's more... You know, she's because she's so young, she's got... a whole life ahead of her of, of learning in, in heats I mean you would know there's <laughs> you learn from every heat whether you win or you lose yep um, absolutely I think the saying is um, every loss is just that step towards victory yeah because you can learn and grow from every loss and that's where you do most of your development yeah. and understanding of what happened and why did it happen mm. and what did the other people do in my heat that I didn't do yeah it's finding that that sweet spot in heats as well and knowing what works for you it's going to be different for everyone else coming down to seven minutes remaining Kathleen 545 right now needs to be the best wave of the heat so she's going to need to make a few moments out of that wave and Kaede she holds that first priority and the lead she's sitting in a pretty good position right now just in the driving seat for this heat yeah it's and it's six minutes 51 how do you think there's still plenty of waves. The, the girls are going a little bit slower than the guys were. They were around about eight or nine waves. But with six minutes, we could still be up here as Kaede gets up and riding again. Yeah, that was one nice connection for Kaede. Trying to get around this one using... The longboard technique. Yeah, longboard technique. Sometimes it doesn't correlate over to the shortboards. You need to be a little bit more um, ruthless with it. And this is Kathleen. Nice connection. Driving through this one, finding a good wall ahead of her as she drives again. Another nice connection there and unfortunately coming off the back, but that was a good looking wave and she definitely made the most of the sections. And it's good that she gets to show that she can surf. She deserves mm. to be out there and she yep. has got a game that um, will, as we saw in La Union, I'm sure she wants to impress the home break crowd because yes. I wouldn't see her in La Union, did we? No, didn't Sorry, see her in La bad. Union. We saw Mara Lopez in La Union. Yeah. She's here. Um, but Kathleen, uh, so she gets to show off. She can surf. Look yeah. at me. Well, 2.75 for that last one of Kathleen. She's needing a five now. That was the best wave. Her best wave in the heat. Sorry. Jelena staying in second place. And Kayede, that last wave, not going into the top two. And five and a half minutes to go. Next up, we're going to see Daisy Valdez, Mara yeah. Lopez, and Paula Acuta. So, an interesting one. We have Daisy, who's dual discipline, longboard and shortboard, and she's quite good at both. So, mm. interesting to see how she goes out here. Similar power, I'd say, in this size to what she's used to in La Union, and Mara Lopez also from that region. So, another Filipino stacked heat next as Katie goes again. Yeah, we'll catch up with that nice opening carve we just caught the end of it as she drives through another one this is a better looking connection and she drives again for a third there were three pretty nice carves and she goes straight up and over for a finish for Kaede so that was a good looking wave I feel like that could be her best one how's this Anui family they're oh. amazing aren't they yeah they're everywhere they're everywhere and in everything 
waves. Yeah. And on every wave, as it turns out, she's got six waves for this heat. Yeah, that was um, pretty, pretty good Seven surfing. waves for this heat. Seven waves, wow. Just making the most of everything. I feel like, you know, when it's conditions like this, it's you're almost better off just turning and going on waves. And, you know, if you're catching waves, you're catching waves. And obviously, you want to be catching good ones. Yeah. But finding a bit of a rhythm can definitely help. And she wasn't in priority, I don't believe, at that stage no. either. It was with Jolena. So the curse of the priority sometimes slows you down. Being under priority can sort of free you up. And a three-woman heat also gives that little bit of freedom that you've got a bit more space between everybody and you can sort of pick off your own little, the ones that you're looking for, which is nice. A little yeah. bit more freedom out there. Yeah, totally. Well, a 4.65 for that last wave of Kaede goes into her top two. It's her second best wave. And she is slowly starting to run away with the lead with three and a half minutes to go. Jelena still holds priority. She's trying to defend second right now. Or challenge for a 5.4 to go to first. And a five is what Kathleen is looking for to move into second and go through to the round of 16 and take out maybe some big names in that next round it's a seeded round for the women we've got some Amura Suzuki there Sarah Wakita Kana Nakashio who took out the event in La Union last week so you know it's exciting this first round and seeing who's going to match up with who it is and it's exciting looking at that second round mm. because because now getting into the pointy end of the Asia regional tour towards that challenger series it's it's starting to get defined it's nice and it's exciting because the quality is so high Jolena yeah that was a nice backhand carve as she puts it up there for another little whip straight back through for another one just really extending she's got a bit of patience on her backhand for and someone that's grown up at the left and power uh there is also a lot of a lot of a lot left of right. hands a lot of rights oh okay we've got everything it's a mixed bag yeah over there in yeah. Chicago, so pacific goes the draw card she's out the front of her house ah okay um but there is a few left so with a little bit of effort and there's a few new bridges around so things are getting easier for her too good <laughs> well this is kathlea she's trying to find an inside connection driving through that one using her rail but once again just getting a little bit hung up there john yeah she's she's not quite finding that rhythm that i know she wants but once again at a young age there's no there's no losing for her she's she's feeling what it's like and she's just gonna grow and develop into a seasoned competitor and all bit for the better now because she's at such an early age getting experiences and and living it it's cool what time did when did you start the big stuff uh i didn't start surfing till i was 12 yeah so i reckon maybe like 14 14 was your first major event yeah that's the grom titles and all that sort of stuff yeah. water riders clubs a little bit different over there. Maybe in I would have been maybe 13 doing like board riders and yep. things like that and then didn't really go to like regionals till I was like 14 maybe. Yep. So yeah, different different tracks for different regions yeah, and different areas. Totally. Um, Kathleen is in the national tour, which is it's just pretty big. We've got the production. We've got all the all the cameras and everything like that. Judges, towers. They're all the, all the mod cons of a, a modern event. Mm. Um, so she's no stranger to it, but this is definitely level up. Yeah, absolutely. It's... Probably the biggest event that's been here at Belair ever. 100%. Um, and it's exciting to have it here. We're inside the final minute of the first heat of the round of, thir of, ra sorry, round of 24 for the women. We've got four of these and we'll move on through to the round of 32. And Kaede, she's just really dominated this heat, a 4.75 and a 4.65. Jelena holding on to second right now. Kathleen needs a five. We saw her have a little paddle there flurry of waves coming through right now that last wave of Jelena didn't go into her top two and with 30 seconds remaining will we see another wave ridden looks like out the back Kaede she's having a look at this one a little bit caught behind and she has to kick out but she's had a pretty great heat Kaede well she's not going to complain she's going through that next round yep. like almost certain at this stage with 10 seconds to go and not any opportunities out there and that last flurry nothing so 100% relaxed now uh, she's going to be wondering when the long board's on, when's the short board on. She's got a lot to think about for the next yeah. few days. Yeah, after this heat, she can sit back and relax. 
It looks like Kaede, she's just going to come in because that is the end of that heat. Kaede Anui taking out the win. Jelena Longos coming in second and Kathlia having a great heat, but unfortunately bowing out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for heat number two with Daisy Valdez, Mara Lopez and Paula Kutun are out there next. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back. We are straight into heat two, the round of 24 of the Blair QS3000 International Pro. I'm the Waxhead back in the booth with True Starling. True highlights of that last heat. Yeah, we saw Kaede Inui take the win, which was um, no surprise there. She kind of dominated from the start, but Jelena, she had a four off one really solid turn, and we saw the only female surfer from Belair, Kathlia, in that heat as well. She put up a great fight, but was just kind of out of rhythm. But, um, yeah, super cool to have the locals supporting her here as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, about 12 years old, and we have another 12-year-old out in the water, Mara Lopez from La Union. And we have Paula Kuta, Czech Republic, and Daisy Valdez out there, the veteran of Philippine women surfer, the oldest uh, female in the draw, and has been a stalwart for female surfing over here in the Philippines. And here goes Mara, opening up with a strong opening carve. She's got a very powerful style, surfer from La Union. She's the uh, um, UPSA junior women's champion, and she's put in a great performance throughout the national tour last year and doing well in the longboard second the women's in the longboard as well yeah she uh, she blows me away i have no words for mara lopez i was taken away by her surfing both on the shortboard and on the longboard um at la union last week i was super lucky to share a heat with her and i was paddling out watching her catch wave just being like wow this she's got something there and for being 12 years old and being so in tune with what's going on mm. it's you know it's super inspiring to see that yeah she's definitely got some facets of a future champion that's for sure she's a child prodigy but uh, very mature in her style and she's very i guess a lot of people would be laughing back in low union shout out to everyone back home but she doesn't smile a lot and I've seen her teeth actually quite a lot in the last few days and she's stoked to be here. She's free surfing, she's enjoying the camaraderie, really getting to know everyone else from the other countries and somebody else who's travelled a lot, knows a lot of people from the countries, is a very happy Kaede Inui down on the glass with Camille. Thank you so much, Matt. Yes, indeed, I am here with Kaide Inoue. Congratulations for winning that heat. And these are conditions that you are familiar with. You like waves like this? え、ありがとうございます。そうですね。波は朝練習した波と違って温泲で、え、でも温泲の波は私得意なので、え、まあ、いいライディングできて良かったです。How uh, are you liking Belair so far? It's your first time here. Um, what do you think of Belair? えっと、初めてバレルに来ました。え、バレルのご飯美味しいし、え、波もいい波もありますし、いろんな波があって、え、大好きです。and congratulations again because you won the longboard QS in La Union and now you're ripping on a shortboard. So what kind of preparation or training do you do so you're just always 100% out there? Uh, <laughs> you just keep surfing. Uh, only this. <laughs> 
right. By nature, she is a water woman. So congratulations again, Kaede. A big wave to the mama out there. Hi, thank you always for supporting your children and to your siblings as well. So you want to say something in Japanese? Eh, Thank you again, Kaide. Good luck on the next round. Okay, back to you guys over at the commentary. Thanks, Camille. Always great to see you stoked. Kaide Unui took out the Longboard Pro QS1000 uh, at the Union and multi dimensional surfer. She's also three time world sub, ch sub champion. Stand up paddle boards, that is, across the three different categories, which I was not familiar that they broke up the categories between longboard, uh, they break it up between, I believe they call it the shortboard category, and there's another category as well. Wow. Yeah, so very s smart, high heat IQ. She knows a variety of different boards. And out there in the water right now, it's Paulo opening up two waves, and, and Mara, which is that 2.5. And here goes Daisy Valdez and our surfing red popping along on this wave, ramping up. She hits the lip and comes down with it too. So uh, used to longer boards. Look how sure footed she is. Snaps that one back in the pocket and goes incomplete. So break down what happened on that wave, True. Yeah, she had heaps of speed. She's a, you know, powerful surfer. And I think that last one maybe just getting a little bit hung up, um, overpowering the wave, I think, towards the end, that wave kind of flattening out in front of her, a 2.3 for Daisy. Um, but I, I still really like that first turn, you know, coming down with the lip and rolling through mm. um, to that next one. And Mara Lopez, live action. Yeah, she is pumping down the line. She knows the, the drill. Foam climbs that, trying to looking from the inside section. So these surfers, really not familiar with beach breaks, although on that national tour, both Mara and Daisy have surfed Belair, mm. and they have surfed some of the other beach breaks as well in Samar and are familiar with this scenario, although they're used to a little more power coming from the Union. Not much more power, but a wave that's running down the line, a reef break, obviously you can use different speed pockets and generate more speed. So how, what's the transition in your approach, True, when you're surfing, say, a beach break like this to a point break? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, point breaks, it, you kind of are living, like, right in the pocket, whereas beach breaks, you've got that wall ahead of you. You can see what's coming, whereas beach breaks, it kind of changes a little bit depending on, you know, the banks and what's going on, and I think you have to be more ocean aware and wave aware while you're surfing a beach break and kind of if there's a lip in front of you you have to make the most of that section and really adapt to mm. what's coming next and you see that one of the biggest waves the heat so far all surfers out of position so perhaps a little bit of that wave awareness catching these surfers out being slightly out of position uh, you'd like to have thought that they could capitalize look at the section and that one as they'd go under it under it so even playing field for all these surfers right now, just the 2.1 there for Mara, but I'm hoping something can capitalize. There's some good waves out there right now, just um, when I was out of the booth having a chat to some of the competitors who have both made it through the heats, been knocked out, and are coming up. Really stoked. The, the winds are nearly back offshore again. Uh, you can see a bit of a front out there. There's a bit of dark, gloomy water out near that fishing boat. A bit of rain, but conditions looking great out there and super contestable, very consistent. There's a set wave every few minutes, so keeping things really interesting. Yeah, it feels like it's maybe um, gotten a little bit better since this morning as well, which mm. is super exciting. We're almost halfway through the day, um, I believe, so it's exciting to have, you know, a bunch more heats and a, a bunch more surfing. We'll see all the seated surfers in round two um, take into the water for the men's round of 32 after the completion of this, which is going to be great. Um, but yeah, my, I, I just, I, I love watching conditions like this. Some of my favorite surfs are in little rip bowls mm. like this. So I love watching, you know, what's, you never know what's going to happen. You can kind of predict at a point break, you know, off the bottom, off the top. Whereas when the wave changes a little bit and not all the waves are the same on a little rip bowl, it's, it's fun to kind of be sitting here going, okay, what are they going to do next? It's the surfer <laughs> inside us. Yeah. Although it is visually not that entertaining for somebody who doesn't know how hard it is to surf these waves mm. well i might add it's very easy to go out there and paddle around of course there's not a lot of risk but for you the surfers if you really dissect how some of them are surfing especially 
uh, some of the Japanese competitors today looking really fast, really crisp, and they're able to utilize what little speed pocket there is. And I think just the connection between the board and the wave and their body is incredible. And I look at it so soft, but some of them are able to really generate speed and it's showing their professionalism. But out there now, it's out in the priority. It's uh, Paul Akuta, currently heat leader right now with just the 3.25 and the 185. Uh, the surf from the Czech Republic, and they've made, you know, it's an international affair here. It is a qualifying event for people in the Asia region, and there is lots of internationals here. Surfers from Russia, we've got Czech Republic, Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Australia, and of course Indonesia, Philippines, Korea, and Japan. Where else am I leaving out? Malaysia. We've got a well, yep. Malaysia, and we've also got uh, Singapore. Singapore as well. Chinese. Uh, Chinese Taipei, and yeah, lots of countries represented here in the region. Nailed them all! Wow, yeah. that was great memory. <laughs> oh, I just I'm fascinated by the different regions. At yeah. the longboard qualifying event last year in Kuda, there was 11 countries represented, and that, as far as a QS is concerned, in a region, uh, that was mind blowing to me. Just showing the global reach and the cultural evolution that surfing has uh, eventuated and accepted into. And here goes Daisy Valdez. The neutral-footed queen of La Union goes down on that one. Interesting, Daisy's very short, very different style of technique and very short-footed. When she does those turns, she goes a bit straight-legged, I've noticed, and that's something a lot of longboarders do. So perhaps Daisy got to bend that back knee and maybe look to some of the... Here she goes again. That one was a little bit better, bending the back knee and pumping down the line. And there she extends off that one, nearly goes complete, and you can see the body language perhaps wanting a little more out of that wave, true? Yeah, absolutely. Just trying to find a, a finish on that one. It was unfortunate that she didn't quite get that. Um, and like you said, bending that knee, that knee and kind of um, loading up yep. into that turn. You know, you, bottom turn to top turn, it's not high, low, high. It's low, high, low mm -hmm. kind of thing. You know, embrace go release it and then embrace for an impact. Um, you know, we see a lot of people approach like that, especially some of the top guys. They so but let's break that down again. So let's, okay. let's <laughs> no, no, I love that analysis. So let's get a little more technical. Let's imagine someone's taking off on the wave, uh -huh. explain to them where their eyes go and explain to them when they, when is the right time to load up. Yeah, well, you're looking at when you where you want to hit, right? So if where we'll come back to that. Yeah. This is live action with Mara just driving through that first carve. Wow, strong. Smooth. Yeah, strong and smooth. Wow, and there's a connection with the lip. The judges will appreciate that. The 12 year old, um, she's quite big for her frame for a 12 year old Filipino. The Lopez family, they are um, a larger breed. Strong brothers and sister as well. Really strong footed family. Ashley Lopez and Warren Lopez as well. And that one is going to be maybe the best wave of the heat. And I noticed she was getting low through her turns at times. Yeah, and driving through it as well, I guess, you know, if you're lower, you have that more stability. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're high and you, you're, you're straight-legged, you can quite easily fall off, yes. you know. It's like when you're embracing something and you need to have that stability, mm -hmm. you, you stay low. Yep. And it's harder to be pushed off. Soccer players, football players, if someone's... Uh, dribbling the ball along the ground and you just go in for a tackle, you're always going to knock the person down if they're straight-legged or in yeah. between a running. But if they're bracing for it, it's going to be a little bit harder for them. Their center of gravity is lower. And same with uh, a conventional NFL or rugby league tackle. And there it goes. There's That's straight better. over the top of the board. She compressed, extended, and got over the board again, which yeah. is the mistake she made on that first turn. So stakes have been raised. 4.5 for Mara Lopez. The Union 12-year-old, and he goes back down into third. So this is uh, Paula, because Daisy locking in a 3.75 in her last wave, and she's got another healthy score to be locked in. So it's really, I mean, we're dissecting technic technique in the round of 24 of the women's here. So <laughs> we're getting pretty technical, but these surfers need that because they're going to be potentially vying for an opportunity on that Challenger series, and we've got some very talented Japanese surfers coming up into the next round. These surfers are going to have to bring their A game if they really want to match it to them, because at the moment, the top 10, it's a clean sweep with the Japanese surfers. 
Yeah, those top 10 women um, in the Asia region, they're a force to be reckoned with. And um, we were talking about it in La Union. It's, you know, very similar to the Brazilian storm. Mm. The Japanese women are coming through and they really don't care about the wake that they're leaving. You know, they're here to win and they don't care about anyone else. Except, unapologetic. Yeah, very Whoa. unapologetic. And that, wow, that was a really nice turn for Mara Lopez, who's unapologetic yep. as well. You know, I feel sorry for the oh, waves that she's, she's on. certainly not saying sorry to this wave. Yeah. Ripping that thing apart and she's making her way through into Look at the tenacity of the competitor and she doesn't capitalize on that end section, but that'll be a really nice score there. But she needs a daisy locking in a 4.65. So... She doesn't have an earpiece out there, but it was right on cue to what True was explaining. And if you want to look up our, our analyst, True Starling, check her out on Instagram. <laughs> Some great reels there, great technique, a oh, professional surfer herself. You, and on the women's side of the draw, um, it is Sky Brown, ninth, equal ninth. Above that and below her, all Japanese affair. So up until 16th place, Sky Brown coming in ninth is... The Seoul, she's, well, she's got the Great Britain flag next to her, but she's competing in the Asian region as well. And below that, Jasmine Studer from Indonesia. And um, Kailani Johnson, Indonesian, 21st. Thinking down then, you've got the Korean, Im Soo Jong, 22nd. Linda Kaito from Indonesia. Kaide Anui, 24th. She's rocketed up the rankings, 28 positions. Wow. And there's the, there's the below the rank. So there's where the other flags start coming in. And that's a great vision there. So very tight from, you look at Camille, who's coming up in, from Singapore in a future heat, 1,345. You have to think, if she was to have a good result, even a semi-final finish, she'll go into that top 10. Yeah. But the alarming factor is in that top 10, nine of the Japanese surfers are there too and they're not looking like slowing down. No, yeah, and that's that's what I mean. You know, they've got a wake and they're not stopping. Yeah. And for any competitor coming up against them, um, it's it's nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. You have to bring your A game. There's no, there's no questions about that, which I think is great, um, especially for the co-sanction regions because that's where we see such great heats come into play. And for the men as mm -hmm. well, you know, the Indonesians and the Japanese surfers, the Philippine surfers, um, the Swedish of Kian in there, same thing. There's no stopping them. They're, they're here for a sole reason, and that's to qualify for the Challenger Series, and they're not letting anyone stop them. No, exactly right. And they're training hard. They're very diligent with their process at home. And I'm looking forward to at least seeing a few of them on that world tour. It's looking very comfortable for them at the moment. Uh, there'll be three women with the fourth as the wild card being selected. And seven minutes, 20 left on the clock. It's Lopez chasing a 3.91. Uh, her last one was just a 3.8. So if she went complete, you'd have to say that would have been the score. Judges really enjoying the dynamic end section. But Daisy would be pretty stoked right now, um, leading the way in this heat. Paula of 5.05 would have to be the best wave of the heat, and there is a set on the way. Yeah, it seems to the set seem to be getting a little bit more consistent and looks like Paula up and riding. Oh, she's got a section and goes incomplete, so a missed opportunity there. There's not too many of those sets that are actually opening up for a section on the outside. There is a lot of waves, but at the moment, it's most of the inside section and the mid-sized waves that are allowing those combinations of maneuvers. And that's just based off my vision, walking up and down the boardwalk there. And here goes heat leader, Valdez, up and riding right now. She opens up the hands there and lines up that section and rides out as well. So stable surfing there from Daisy. And I think that 3.75 might be eclipsed. Yeah, I agree. I think the wave selection on that wave was spot on. It was going to offer two connections and she surfed it to the better I think than the waves potential mm -hmm. 4.25 straight away um, for Daisy so really starting to solidify first place Mara needing a 4.41 and Paula chasing a 5.05 to get to second we're just under six minutes there's still that opportunity for a few lead changes we'll see but um yeah Daisy just really starting to kind of get better and better after each wave and this is Kuta here up and riding and I'm sure she's been to Indonesia and surfed Kuta her beach herself and wiggling around and really in, like the way she sets her fins. And this way, not able to generate much speed. And it's Lopez on the right, rifling through the lip on that one. 
and she rides out with a lot of speed. It's amazing how much spring and pop that she can get through her turns. I've noticed that back in the Union too. It generates a lot of speed. Yeah, she definitely does. She's got, you know, a lighter frame so she can kind of fit herself in those pockets, mm -hmm. um, which being of a smaller stature, it's, it's good. And she uses her technique. And of someone that's 12 years old, she's got such great foundations for something that could really, she can build on that. Yeah. And you see a lot of the surfers at that age struggle with the power element. She has that already. Yeah. And some great signs there for Lopez. Uh, she wants to pursue surfing, which I think she should. She's on a round tail, Smith surfboard shape with a great green and blue spray. If Smith surfboards are out there tuning in right now, um, you've got a fantastic prospect on one of your a piece of equipment right now. Let's get us some more boards under her feet. Yeah. And more opportunity. I'm and a she huge looks in a sorry. A, oh, judges aren't too reciprocal with that score. Maybe saw the bobble and didn't think she rode out cleanly. Mm, yeah, potentially. I think that wave dying out in front of her. So doesn't look like it'll go into that top two, but I'm a huge round tail fan. That's all my, all my boards are round tails. So wow. I don't have anything else. So I love that she's on that. Um, yeah, it looks really good under her feet. And she goes again, quick rapid fire, little uh, bank off the top there, that open carve, no connection to lip yet. She gets low in that turn and that wave just backing off. So under priority, just keeping really busy and looking to build on that 3.8. I don't think that'll be the score. What's been your favorite part of Belair so far? So far, it's actually been the surf. I had a really fun surf yesterday. Um, it was, I was actually very lucky. A couple of long boarders called me onto a few. I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been having a good time. I went for a long walk day before yesterday and, um, you know, had the opportunity to kind of see the different banks up and down along wow. the beach, how which far, was really how cool. How far up did you walk? Um, like pretty much the whole way, all the way up there. What? Yeah. To, past the river? Um, to the, like, to, to the, the river. river. Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah, didn't cross the river. And then I came back this way. I was way. thinking that's a seven kilometer beach. So I was like, whoa, all the way there, it's 14 kilometers. Yeah. No, no, no. Right. Yeah. I, um, went back down that way as well and saw a few little banks, which was, um, looked super fun. So it's cool to have all these different options along this break to, you know, to put the surfers in the best conditions. Yeah. And coincidental that straight out the front of the coast yeah. Pacific is where the bank is right now and... Uh, there we have our surfer Paula Kuta up on the left and Daisy on the right making her way through. So heat leader in the red, just you can see her getting forward on that board looking for the inside. That's not going to, both surfers not going to give them an inside connection. And I've enjoyed the food here so far for the Philippines. Uh, not that Lunion was um, by bad by any stretch of the imagination. Lots of variety, but the fresh ingredients here, especially at the coast of Pacific, a lot of uh, different dishes they offer for dinner, lunch and breakfast. And we're certainly not uh, we don't have to promote the food here. We are staying here, but the food, I've enjoyed the food here. Uh, up and down, there's a lot of bars. There's some um, um, yellowfin fish restaurant just up the road. That's pretty cool. Walked into town, you said the museum, an amazing tr uh, shrine to the apocalypse now and showing the, uh, like a visual history of the Philippines and um, showing the colonization and uh, unfortunately going through all the different wars and it's a reality and it's really a nice if anyone's in the Bel Air ever find yourself here go into the town center go to the museum and step outside to the um, municipal center there and there's a, a great shrine to uh, Apocalypse Now you can check it out wow that's super cool maybe I'll have to go do that if we have a have a lay day or if we finish early one day Korean uh, it's a Korean restaurant there you said you went to a sushi restaurant or a Korean shop there as well um, a couple of expats in town, so a bit of a multicultural town as well. Yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah, I had delicious udon last night for dinner, which was awesome. I was stoked to have that. And um, yeah, I know all the surfers are really immersing themselves in the culture here as well. And this just a four hour drive from Manila. And of course, our sponsors would be stoked to have everybody here right now. And we had some great discussions last night. Mayor Rat Angara. And we had the Congressman Ramel Angara as well, Department of Tourism Region 3 Director Richard Danos. Um, lots of words of wisdom from these surfers and it's the land of the golden sunrise, mm -hmm. which was my favourite quote from last night. We thank the local government of Belair and Bagong, Pilipinas and the Olympic Committee of Philippines, the Sports Commission, Department of Tourism, 
UPSA, who's the uh, governing surfing body here, Coast of Pacific, of course, and uh, House Speaker Martin Romaldez, Tingog Party List, and ASRAI as well. A lot of people to thank for these events to be held possible, but also Daisy Valdez, Mario Lopez making their way through. And this is the foundation, true. This is what having events in the Philippines provides the platform for these surfers to push themselves against some of the world's best and at least challenge themselves and see where the bar has been set. So we'll see these two surfers lining up into the next round, but we're going to go to a break and we'll be back into Heat 3 very shortly. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippines Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back, straight into Heat 3, round of 24, the QS 3000, the Belair International Pro, Camille Spakatoral from Singapore, Sakura Inui, and Kyla De La Torre. She's the um, daughter of um, Daisy, who was out there earlier, and here is Carla, um, Camille, just a slow start there for Camille. Um, yeah, Kayla is Daisy's daughter. Um, she's just about 18 years old now, I think. Um, and they, all they do is surf. Her husband, Jeff De La Torre, they, they've got a surf school there in LU. Um, and they're a true surfing family. I mean, that's their whole mm. life, 24-7. Um, very, very nice people. Spacaratella. Um, says Singapore, sounds Italian. I don't really have much information on her. She went to the India, the comp, the yep. Tamil Nadu, came equal ninth, so she's got some, some skills. Yes, yeah, she's so. had some, some travelling experience as well, and this is her region. The, she'll get points for the Asian region, and of course not just open the Philippine surface, so it's an international qualifying event for the Asian region. So we, have, we talked in that last heat, lots of countries represented, uh, Malaysia, Taiwan, um, China, Korea, of course, Japan, uh, Indonesia, and some Australians were competing as well. Uh, we had in that last hit Czech Republic surfer as well. Had a Russian surfer earlier. Sure did, and even a Guatemalan Korean who's coming up in the longboarding as well. So a multicultural affair here at Balair, and I look forward to hearing. Actually, we've got an interview from one of the sole female surfers from Balair that we're going to bring to you very shortly. Camille's going to catch up with her and hear what it's like to grow up here and what the surfing community is like from the uh, women's perspective. 22 minutes remaining, you can see the conditions cleaning up a lot, a far different lineup to what we saw two hours ago with that onshore wind blustering, that easterly wind, uh, very strong, stronger than predicted, but some nice rip bowls out there now, the tide an hour after the, the high tide, and uh, Sakura Nui out there with 1.5 to kick this one off, and uh, looking forward to seeing what these two surfs in white and red can give us with the set waves, although they haven't necessarily been the pick, Jerry. Some of the mid sized waves have offered those dynamic end Yeah, sections. the sets have been semi shutting down a bit out there and then coming through kind of fat. The smaller ones, um, you've been able to line them up a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's a matter of picking them, getting a little bit lucky. But, um, yeah, I've seen some pretty good insides. So, hopefully, these girls can find them and, um, you know, get some pretty high scores. I believe Sakura is only 15 years old. She's in her teen years. Uh, I can't keep up with the, the Inuis. They're How many are there? So much. There's three, but they just are traveling and doing so many events. She is the youngest one, I can tell you that much. Carving that one back in the pocket and a little unstable in that wave, so incomplete as well. And I must say, 
I was just talking with True about what my favorite part about this area is. And the reason these events are here, as you can, be a, uh, and a, you can attest to, is Department of Tourism being a major sponsor of this event and UPSA showcasing how dynamic their surfers can be on the national level. But now having the first time a WSL event here, an international event, and how important that is. We'll catch up with that in a moment. And here goes Camille. And she goes incomplete as well. But yeah, how important is it for these surfers to not just compete nationally, but have international surfers here? Oh, I think it's, it's everything for them, you know. It, not just for the place and the news, but, you know, I think you were discussing it uh, not that long ago that if you surf with the same people, the same country, you end up surfing like that all the time. And this yeah. way, these kids, they really get to see how other countries mm -hmm. surf. And um, that was Kayla. So... Yeah, I think it's super important. And what was interesting there, I don't know if we caught that one before, but um, uh, Kayla had priority and Camille was on the outside. And Camille committed and Kayla actually could have changed that then by taking off. I think, you know, maybe she wasn't thinking or that wasn't, she doesn't want to win that way. I don't know. But that was pretty interesting. And I, I, I was surprised that, um, that it went that way, you know. That could have changed the heat right at the start. One one surf would have lost their uh, yeah. priority. So it was really an uh, interesting little paddle there. I don't know if there's a replay of that, but um, here goes Sakura now. No, she's not going to go for that one. She's sitting out there with priority. Um, and um, I think we're going to go to that interview yeah. now, Camille with Daisy. So uh, off to you, Camille. Let's tell us something interesting about these uh, people. Thank you very much. Yes, I am here with last heat's winner, Daisy Valdez. Congratulations at the Daisy. So you're pretty familiar with Belair because Jeff, your partner, is from here. So do you think that played to your advantage today that you're used to surfing Sabang Beach? Uh, yes, I think it uh, gave a little bit of um, advantage for me. But for now, it's kind of uh, the waves are more better than this morning with the men's uh, round of uh, 40 or 32 so the weather now it's more uh, better than this morning and is this the same short board you used in La Union a few days ago yes it's the same board uh, Chile um, would you change your equipment in any way knowing that you've been out there and you got to check the conditions and the waves or would you go exactly the same setup I will go exactly the same setup because um, I use uh, uh, kind of board and more bigger than my other board so I'm gonna stick to this board. Okay, I love that it's that surfing is a family affair for Daisy. Um, she just said that this board is actually her daughter Kyla's surfboard and is Kyla surfing in this heat right now? Yes yeah, she's in heat three now. Okay so I'm sure you really want to watch that heat and catch Kyla's waves so before anything else uh, would you like to say a few thank yous? Yeah, thank you to my sponsors, uh, Manong Ronald Singson, maraming maraming salamat sa laging pagsuporta. To Kudu Surf, to Ian Zamora, Zamora Surfboard, Carla, and uh, yes, to Kudu Surf family, thank you very much, James. And shout out to Chang Chang in her ever first uh, competition in Palawan. Oh, yes, that's right. There are a couple of regional contests being held at the same time over at the Philippines' next surfing frontier, Palawan. But okay, thank you so much, Daisy. And before we head back to the commentary, I think we're going to catch up with Katlea Castles, the local girl. Over there. Okay, so we'll move to a different location. So for now, let's go back to the live action. So local experience coming in from the husband of Daisy Valdez there and she takes that heat win for before and and that is Camille there and uh, interesting that Camille is actually looks like she's dating uh, Kailash Mason who we saw coming up uh, who came up earlier in the men's division um, and she's a strong powerful surfer you can see on her Instagram you can check her out at, at Cam Spacker and she says she's the surfer from Singapore and we have a lot of mutual friends there as well so a world traveler you can see she's traveled all through Bali and that's probably where she does the majority of her surfing um, check her out on Instagram currently looking for 0.95 a couple of scores to lock in from that last exchange and we saw in the inset that's pretty cool Kyla De La Torre was up and riding while her mom was doing the post it interview I don't think I can recall any instance in my commentating career in fact, surf industry career 
where that's ever occurred. Yeah, I, I think that's probably pretty unique and it's pretty cool. And uh, Camille was well aware that mum wanted to get back down there and watch it, watch her daughter um, rip it up. So, yeah, that's, that's super interesting. And then it was interesting, Camille also talked about um, Palawan and there's a, a local event mm. down there. And I've done a little bit of surfing there. And she mentioned New Frontier and I can assure you that's what it is. Wow. I look forward to hearing more about that and... Department of Tourism always open to some new ideas and, and hosting different events and world scale events. So lots going on in terms of surfing in the Philippines and a great segue to thank the Philippine Sports Commission, Philippine Olympic Committee, all the Department of Tourism regions here. We're in Region 3 and the director is Richard Danos. It's a great support from Richard and of course the Mayor, Rhett Angara, Congressman Ramel Angara, Senator Sunny Angara. So it's a family affair and the local government of Belair. We're going to go down to Camille and catch up with our local Belair uh, women's competitor who was knocked out, but we're going to hear some more and put her on the map. Okay, and I am here with Katlea Castles, the only surfer girl representing Belair Aurora, and she's only 11 years old. <laughs> Smile, Katlea. <laughs> Uh, how are you feeling today, especially after you just surfed your very first WSL heat? No, I'm so very happy to join in WSL by Pro. Do you spend a lot of time watching the WSL? Do you try to catch as many competitions? You watch it on your phone, you watch it um, on your free time? Yes. So who is your favorite surfer to watch on the tour? Jan Jan Florence and Car Car Caroline Marks. Okay, so big shout out to John John Florence and Caroline Marks. Um, we're having the Lexus Pipe Pro happening simultaneously with our event. So yeah, maybe chances are they could catch her little message for them. So how old were you when you first started surfing, Katlea? I'm five years old. Five years old, so you've been surfing almost seven years now. And which is your favorite? peak here in Sabang Beach, where do you usually surf in front of? In front of Cajeas Lodge, yeah, okay. in the beach break. Okay, so good that you mentioned Cajeas Lodge. Cajea is the hotel that your grandma runs, right? Yeah. And so your grandma, um, Ate Evok Namoro, is actually the pioneer, the OG woman surfer here in Belair. And your grandfather is? Edwin Namoro. And Edwin Namoro is also a legend, one of the first locals to surf here in Belair. And as you know, Belair is the birthplace of Philippine surfing. So Katleya right here comes from the family of the Filipinos here in Belair who really set up a culture and a community for surfing here in this town. So do you want to say anything? Do you want to greet your friends, your schoolmates, your other relatives here? Thank you. Thank you, Baller Surf Team. Yeah. And are you happy that the WSL is here in your hometown? Yes, very happy. And would you like them to keep coming back here? Yes. <laughs> and is there a spot that you want to share with some of the WSL staff aside from Sabang Beach? <laughs> okay, maybe we can't say that on air, but yes, there are a lot of of good surf spots around here not just a beach break and thank you for your time Katlea and you know keep joining the competition and maybe we'll catch you in the next event thank you okay back to the commentary uh, great to hear from Katlina there and uh, very uh, very mindful of the surf spot she was going to give away didn't give Camille too much there so I think we have a uh, a future surf guide, I keeping love it. those little secret yeah. spots close to home. Yeah, no, uh, a young lass of few words, but um, congratulations for being the one local that went in the comp, and um, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of her over the next few years. And a family of surfing heritage here. This is the birthplace of surfing in the Philippines. 1968 was the first year that surfing was introduced by some American uh, military and I think they brought boards up here, surfed, and it wasn't until 1976 that some of the locals decided to pick up boards and start surfing themselves. And they were there with us last night. They're here on the beach. Some of them are still tuning in. Uh, they're walking the boardwalk, checking out this big uh, international surf event, the biggest event ever 
they've had in, re- like in regards to surfing. They've also got an amazing skate park that they've had events at as well. I believe there's an event starting tomorrow at the skate park. Wow. So, um, you know, if we get some onshore afternoons, maybe we can jump in the car and go down and watch the skating event. Can't wait. I skate a little bit myself, but I, uh, I think the... Uh, I saw the I saw the park and it's it's pretty radical. So. Yeah, look, I think it's a bit too much for me. I used to skate plenty when I was a kid, but my bones are brittle now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not prepared. I can you know I can wipe out in the surf, but wiping out on cement sure. is a vastly different call. Ten minutes twenty five remaining, and it's a newie, very low scoring affair. But none of these surfers really able to capitalise. So it's it's a journey of whoever can really surf this wave all the way to the inside and get an end section. Here goes. Torre here and she's unable to capitalize a similar style to her mum but just that upper body rotation her eyes and her shoulders not following with the turn so kind of fighting the board a little bit maybe she needs a coach like you or maybe yeah, yeah well, I think that's what she probably does need you know yeah, a coach. Yeah, I mean yeah. her mum knows what to do that's for sure she's very different she's a lot taller than a mum she's probably 10 inches taller than a mum um, and I noticed when her mum was in the um, interview the board was quite tall that was her Kyla's board exactly so and Daisy stands under five foot tall. And here we go. Here's some momentum. And also goes incomplete. So it's an even playing field right now, right now Jerry. One section where somebody can actually hit the lip, connect and ride out. Uh, that's definitely going to be the best scoring wave of the heat so far. But it was nice to hear from Kathleena. And what did you make of that documentary last night with the uh, Surfing Heritage? Oh, I really enjoyed it. You know, I, there's nothing that went on last night that I didn't enjoy, That's to be great. honest. And and I, you know, I've been to quite a few opening ceremonies, things in Shargao and in, in Lunia, and they do fantastic jobs. But being a f- different culture, we saw different things last night, yeah. and that was really interesting for me to see a, um, an opening ceremony that basically does do different kind of dancing, different kind of culture, yeah. different part of, and the language is different. I mean, people would be surprised how different the Philippines can be and, and as a plane if you get in a fast plane it would only take an hour to get there but the culture is just you know decades away if you look, decades different, different. Not, be, not better nor worse but um, it's nice to see a different culture and this is um, Sakura she's yep. going to make it through to the inside hopefully she can do something there finish it off a little bit not a lot happening so far and there we go so we finally had a wave finished off on the inside yeah, so goes so, complete it was a very mild turn and she goes complete though and that's important It'd be cool to see if we can get a hold of that video that we keep referencing last night that I'm sure we can. It was a, uh, a Belair and, and Upsa collaborative video on the surfing heritage here in Belair. And I really enjoyed the evening, the opening evening where we actually went to dinner at the um, local restaurant and saw some surfing. There's some uh, vintage boards up there and most of them are from the 90s. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. that doesn't sound very vintage to me. No, but, no, but in terms of <laughs> surfing here and comparatively... Uh, there was surfaces since the 70s, but of course, uh, didn't really get super popular until the 90s. And there we go. There's a completed turn from Kyla, and she rides out of that one as well. So, Sakura, 2.2 on her last wave. So, she goes, extends her lead. But wait to see what that one from Kyla locks in at. And yeah, she only needs a 2.21. And to me, that, that one maneuver, yeah, that's a solid one that's broken out the back yeah. there. Uh, washed Great through. Longboard conditions right now with that dead inside section. You can see look at that. I'm mind surfing that one now on the longboard. Not so much on my shortboard, yeah. but I was saying earlier to True, it's a testament to uh, the technique and the connection of the equipment of some of these competitors that have won their heats and their ability to gain momentum in these waves. Cause it's very tricky right now. Oh, I, yeah, speed I agree. Pockets. I know what I'd be like. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm older and whatever, but I'd be struggling to get through to the inside, and yep. you know, I'd be bouncing up and down. And yeah, they they can find the power, even when there's not much power there, and link things up. So, I mean, that's why they're there. Absolutely, and they're vying for an opportunity to go through to that next round. It's going to be difficult. There's some pretty strong seeds uh, on the Japanese side of the draw. And How do you see that going? I mean, the Japanese women dominated, absolutely dominated in the last event last week um, yeah, as so a Union International Pro. Well, it's an all-Japanese affair. Um, so this is heat number three, and whoever can get through this heat and win will go up against uh, Sumomo Sato and Amuro Suzuki, who's an Olympian, and she has taken out numerous events. She's been on the Challenger Series herself and the CT uh, Minami Nanaka in the next one and Im Sujiong from Korea so that one maybe not as competitive as that Heat 3 so if you come second it's going to be m- just on, on ratings just a slightly 
um, easier heat, yep. but yep. not by much. So we've got the J J Japanese and the Korean surfer uh, inserted into heat four and two Japanese surfers into heat three. Uh, of course, Sarah Wakita, who is the ratings leader, she'll be in heat number two. And then um, Nanaho Suzuki as well will be seated into heat one. Lots going on. That next heat coming up, uh, we'll have uh, Susan Escania and Ella Jane Malaka, both Filipinos. Dea Novodasari from Indonesia. Just three-person heat, it looks like, coming up for that one. Just like this. And that's like a seeding round heat, just to see you can make it through that next round. Yeah, well, I, I know uh, Susan's surfing very well, and uh, here we have Camille trying to link this up, certainly not able to, And but right behind her we have mm -hmm. Kayla, um, bouncing around, hoping to get to the inside, unfortunately can couldn't do it. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Yep. I know how Sakura can surf on a longboard. If she took out her longboard, I feel like she'd be doing bigger turns. That's really interesting, yeah, because because of the wave or because maybe she's just not as, as sound on her short board or because of the lack of power. I think the there. lack of power, yeah. just the general speed and momentum that you can get with a long board with a lot of rocker, she could, I mean, there's, not, there's no rules against that. You can do that, of course, you can take out. In the long board, you can't ride a short board, but you can ride a longer board out there if you wanted to. You can ride a fish, a mid-length, whatever you want. Oh, okay, I'll be honest with you. I hadn't really thought of that because I, I figured there was never any advantage, but... Um, I guess if you took a longboard out there, um, that'd be, that's an interesting call. Well, connection with the lips, one thing the judge has been looking at. And of course, with a nine foot plus longboard, it's difficult to go vertical, but not a lot of people are going vertical. No. They're just connecting no. and getting momentum down the line. So there's a curveball for you. Mm. And I feel like if it continues to be small, we might see, say, Sakura Inui or um, maybe her sister Kaede do that in the women's division especially well and in, in, in saying that you could take you know a mid-length board or For something sure. with a bit of drive with, you know that got you through the sections the yeah. yeah and here she goes oh, this is Carla so um, Camille looking for that 1.55 and unable to ride out of that one incomplete so just marginal scores required yeah she's really struggling and I can see from her previous results she I mean she knows what she's doing she does she's just struggling out here on this particular one yeah I know I'm watching that inside one thing there too There's some good waves out there it's just these surfers unable to be in the right spot yeah. at the right time I, mean, I is guess it, this it, one looks alright is it possible all three are nervous oh I don't I have no doubt there's some nerves out there but um, I don't know I, I mean they've all been semi in this position before um Especially um, Kayla has been there. I mean, you know, Sakura has been yeah. there. I don't know much about Camille's background except for the fact that she did get that result yeah. in India. Well, on, yeah, and on her um, social media, she does surf well. She's she got some great clips of her surfing, and um, you just have to say that maybe there's some illness or just lack of preparation as they get here. But regardless, just a one five five required to move in a second spot. Marginal score there for Camille and Kayla, just a three point zero one. But that might change. Sakura, perhaps with the wave of the heat. Yep. Goes completed. She just got a 3.15. So she's just made it a little harder for the others, but way doable. Yeah, and I mean, Sakura, I see, I know she can perform some big turns. She charges, she goes hard. She also rides all styles of surfboards like her brother and her sister. Um, she's Maybe she just needs a bigger wave. Yeah. You know, if there's no power, it's, you can't get power back. So, I mean, I was watching the guys with speed being able to hop over the top. Sure. But maybe, maybe these girls just need a bit more power in the surf. Yeah, I, know, I know it sounds ironic but they could just be slightly bigger wave surfers and but regardless two minutes 20 remaining um Sakura doesn't improve oh she does a 3.15 so marginally improves and yeah just a 3.01 for Kyla just to or at least get better that 1.7 that she's got in her score line and she may have lost priority on that wave I have to see nope the judge is keeping it that way so um holding the priority Kyla she's safely in second right now mum Daisy who just won that last heat. She'll be watching this intently, just on the edge of her seat. And same with a lot of the uh, Union surfers that are up there in the cafe, in the shade, um, yeah, away from the elements. Uh, it's pretty cold right now. A lot of them are shivering. And well, uh, you know, we talked about, okay, so up and riding Camille. She needs only a 1.55 to move through. I mean, that wave's got away from her. She did do a nice little turn back into the power yeah. source. We'll see what the judge... I mean, for me, that's a 1.55, but I'm no judge. Oh, um, Kayla trying a bit too hard there on that section. I guess she realised there was only one section to do something there on. That's right. And weight was in the wrong spot to do that turn. But yeah, if she were to ride out of that, put some pressure back on Kayla. So we'll see where that one logs in. And it, Camille, sorry. And it's loading up right now. And 
It's a 1.9, enough to move her into second spot. So now Kyla needing a 2.06. And we'll see where she's in the lineup with under a minute to go. So that's, that's really just one strong turn. 1.9 for Camille was enough to put her in a second, but 50 seconds remaining. Uh, a lot of these surfers would love to put this heat behind them. Yeah, I think they're going to come in and, and analyse this and, you know, yeah. figure out where they went wrong, what they did wrong. Mm -hmm. um, be all of them, you know, not just the one that doesn't unfortunately make it through. Yeah, even Sakura, we know she's capable of more, but she's safely in that first place. And it's not looking like Kyla will get out there in time. And a missed opportunity, you'd have to say, for Kyla. She had the opportunity, lots of waves ridden. Uh, what's that? Eight waves ridden. And Camille, nine waves ridden in this heat. So... Um, maybe these surfs just struggling to find location. And here goes heat winner Sakura. Well, leading the heat so far. Ten seconds remaining. And it's just looking like she's on a victory lap here. And she works her way through the inside. And uh, head down. So, I mean... Maybe she doesn't know where she's at. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, it's enough to get her through. And again, you know, like, that, like they talk in golf, you don't take well, pictures. You just get the results. Yeah, so... Maybe not understanding the requirements and thinking she had a bad heat. And a 5.35 heat total to win is the lowest heat score of the day. And you almost have to feel for the surfers knocked out in heat one, heat two, thinking, why couldn't it be in this heat? Exactly. exactly. But we're going to move into heat four very shortly. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back shortly. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippines Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're now into uh, heat four of the round of uh, 24. We have three surfers, two will go through. I'm joined by uh, the famous <laughs> and handsome John Carby. Good to see you back, John. Just, thanks, Jerry. Good to be back. Been down on the beach. It's pretty fun down there. We just had another bit of rain. Yep. Things are cleared back up again. Bit of a glass off after each yeah, rain. It's, yeah, it's holding up pretty well. Good. So we got... Um, uh, Diva Navadasari. Oh, no, we got Su Oh, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm reading it the wrong way around. We still have her. Diva Navadasari from um, Indonesia. We have Susan Escanella from Cloud9 in the Philippines. And we have uh, Ella Jane Malaka, who is also from the Philippines. Uh, she lives in Shargao, but she's originally from Malban, which is actually a town um, south of here on the same coast, protected by some islands. I, I guess they get some waves sometimes, but she's... Um, uh, repositioned herself in Shargao so that she can get as much surfing done as possibly as, as she possibly can. She's 20 years old, Ella, by the way. Nice. Exciting. Yeah, look, the, the last heat, uh, mm. Susan's already got a 4.25. Um, essentially, that plus a one would have won the last heat. So the last <laughs> heat was a real low-scoring affair. The girls just couldn't get the right waves, and once they got them, the section sort of ran away or it was all a bit slow. So... Um, again, I can see this is going to be a slightly more exciting heat. Uh, doesn't matter what you get in the long run. As long as you get first or second, then, you know, you've made it through. And um, in that last heat, it was Sakura and Camille that did make it through. Absolutely. I was watching Ferravanti this morning on the WSL CT happening over in Pipeline. Uh, good time difference from here, so you can almost watch 24 hours of surfing. Uh, yeah, if was, you're that way inclined. I did get up early and watch it. There's where we're at. We're in uh, just down the left there, and that's the swimming pool. I've been doing my laps in, Susan. I'm just letting you know that I have been doing laps. Next time, leave the Speedos at home, Jerry Deegan. No oh, one wants to see that. Yeah, they love the Speedos. People here. are eating breakfast next to here. We're in the beautiful <laughs> Costa Pacifica. Um, as you saw, great resort. Swimming pool, good breakfast, good everything. It's really, really nice. Look, the rooms and everything are 
top class. Yeah, no, everything here is good. Um, the, the, the breakfast, you know, I normally don't eat a big breakfast. And when I walk in there and see such a massive breakfast, I walk out there bloated after breakfast and think... I didn't need it, but it's so good I can't stop myself. It's everything. It's Filipino, international. I've had a cheeky bacon and eggs myself. You get to yep. make it yourself, which is pretty fun too, so I can I not love hold those, back on the bacon. I love the ones where there is someone behind the pan and you know you can ask for a ol- fresh omelette or a fresh egg or fresh whatever. Um, you know, that's, it's unusual to see in, in a beach area, uh, a surfing beach area, I guess in, in Boracay, places like that, they've got it, but um, it's really good. Really enjoying it and getting fat. Oh, here goes Ella Jane. Okay, I know who Ella Jane is now. Sorry, shout out to Bogsky. Um, Ella Jane, Bogsky, the crew down there, and Shargao obviously watching also. Um, there's Ella. She's one of the surf instructors down at Cloud9. they got yep. a little position there just to the right of the Cloud9 Tower. If you're down there, go check out Bogsky and his surf school down there. Yep, and that wasn't uh, a great wave there from Ella. She's bouncing around to get to the inside, but um, she did get there, and here we have a Susan bouncing around as well. Uh, nice little turn. What more can she find here? Pretty fat little wave, pretty flat little wave. She gave it up fairly quickly. I think she's uh, taking a backup. Like you said, another one, and she would have won that last heat. She's probably seen that and gone, all right, I'm going to back this up as quick as I can. 20 minutes on the clock. Yep. She's going to be... In the driver's seat. Sets out the back, shutting down. Um, yeah, interesting. You hope that the people in the next heat watch the previous heats and see what the judges are and aren't scoring and see where if the girls are in the wrong spot or they should or shouldn't be trying to get through to the inside or just trying one big manoeuvre. It's, it's a learning curve, and I think to not watch the previous heats and to not know what the judges are doing is a mistake. It is tricky, though, that, that last heat. Because And with the conditions here, they are changing quite a lot through, from heat to heat. But you've got your warm-up to do. You've got to get your headspace on. You want to have one ear on what the judges are doing. Yeah. You want to have one eye on where the previous competitors are sitting. So, And then you've got five minutes where you've got to paddle out. So you really have a lot going on, particularly in that last 20 minutes. Yeah, and I guess some people don't want to have anything going on. They just want to be quiet and either listen to their music and psych up. But you wonder what... If there's more value in that or more value in, you know, taking note of what's going on, I, I personally don't know. And I guess it's different on different days and different at different surf breaks, you know. So um, I believe we're going to go down to Camille uh, and we're going to talk to Sakura. So take it away, Camille. Thank you, Jerry. So congratulations. Yes, I am here with 15-year-old Sakura Inoue, the younger sister of Kaide Inoue, who also won her heat previously. So in your heat, the scores weren't really in the high or weren't even hitting the mid-range. How were the waves during your heat? Uh, Good that you still managed to get a couple of good scores because you know you only need two best waves. So interesting to note that your sister, your older sister Kaide, is also advancing. What if in the occasion that you have to surf against your sister, like are you competitive? Is your sister pushing you to be better? Okay. So it's always interesting to see some sibling rivalry during these competitions, but beyond that, I think with the Inoue family, it's a family affair when they really push each other up so they keep improving. And even your brother Taka is still advancing to the next round, so congratulations to everyone your family and you want to say something in Nihongo. Okay, so round one nerves are out of the way for the Inuis. You can take a quick break and enjoy what Belair has to offer. So good luck and thank you again. Okay, let's watch the heats in the live action. Three from three for the Inuis. That's Pretty cool. Very impressive, yeah. Especially considering two of them are predominantly longboarders, so well, they're everything. They're all everything. Susan, getting to work on that left. We've had some pretty good little scores dropping in. 
Um, yeah, one big score to drop in for Dia, I believe. We were watching during that interview her on the little split screen. She yes. was getting to work and it looked like a really good wave. Yeah, it looked like, uh, to me, it looked like the best wave so far. I, I guess we'll, oh, there we go. It's coming at 4.75. So it is the best wave of the heat so far. Um, with her 2.25 backup, she's sitting on a total of seven. Susan's got a wave to come in, so she could well get that 2.76 on that wave. Yep, Dia's dropped into the front, but I believe Susan is going to, here's that 4.75. Nice opening wrap to get things started. Another wrap, sort of waiting for this wave to stand up on the inside. Third wrap. And it's these wraps are making a little bit of a difference out there at the moment. It's hard. You can it see that full wave, sort of, she's trying to get from section to section here, doing a lot of work. And it's nice when it's worth it on the inside. So, finally, is a right-hander now. Yeah, look, I, I t watching it during the interview, I really thought maybe it was going to score a little more than that. But I guess there wasn't a lot of variety there. She started with three wraps that look, all kind of looked the same. Um, but she was in control. She's, had, she's got the highest score now. So yep, And a wrap's not really considered a major manoeuvre unless you're doing oh, something it is very explosive. <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> if your back's still in place at the end of manoeuvre, yeah, it's yeah. not a major manoeuvre, Jerry. Oh, no, like I said, <laughs> for me, it's a major manoeuvre. Any manoeuvre is a major. Going straight is a major manoeuvre for me. So Susan also getting a nice little left-hander at the end of that interview. Um, looks like a oh, little bit of a foam climb there for Ella. Yeah, that might have been a bit of a mistake taking off on that one. It, it didn't look like it was ever going to do anything. And the score's dropping in at the moment for Susan and we'll see Ooh. her surpass the 2.7. It will. Will it be the highest wave? There's judges across the board. We've got a four. We have as high as a 4.9. So we're going to lose those two high and low scores depending on where this last one lands. Um, will she get up looking? Who knows? What do you reckon? Above or below? I'm going to say the same score. <laughs> Your timing's <laughs> impeccable, Jerry Deacon. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say that anyway, but uh, yeah, the same score. So it looked similar and, you know, we'd seen three judges' scores drop in, so <laughs> it was a 50% chance essentially it was going to be a 4.75. But anyway, a 4.75 and a 4.25, so she's sitting comfortably up there with 14 minutes, to 14 and a half minutes to go on a nine. Um, and then as they progress and... Oh, cracking hit off the lip from Dia, just... A little bit mistimed. Yeah, a bit late. A bit yep. late to the party there. But, um, you know, they're just going to make it harder and harder at this stage for um, Ella Jane, who, again, with plenty of time, you know, she, she can do it. Um, yeah, so it's, I, I haven't had a chat with her for a long time, Ella Jane. I'd be interested to see how much surf she gets in her hometown. Um, because I know there are waves there, but you need a really north swell to, for the waves to get oh, back, back in her hometown. She's been in Chargao now for quite a long time. She's actually... One of the few female instructors down there, which is also great for... Which also Susan is, by the way. Yeah, Susan and these two girls are both surf instructors, so sometimes the women prefer to get taught by women for particular reasons. Yeah. Um, they're two of the best down there in Shah so. Yeah, without question. Oh, the, a lot of the times the girls like to be taught by a girl. Yeah. Um, and there's... I'd say there's 10 women instructors down there, would you say, now? Yeah, let's say 10. Plus, plus, we got some high-end ones. We got the Agudo girls doing some pretty high-end longboard stuff. Um, I'm just trying to think a few. We got yeah, there's so many. Yeah, get down there, and if you choose that you want a female to help you learn surfing, then by all means, find one. They're everywhere. Yep, they're everywhere. Same in the Onion. You have got Daisy Valdez. Um, plenty, plenty, plenty. So great to see. Yep, go down there and we'll get your coffee at uh, Cafe Loc. <laughs> this once um, dominated sport. <laughs> get back to yourself, promo. I love it. Yeah, well, I'll say hello to, to Charles and the boys down there and Jerry and, and the crew that are maybe watching and listening. Um, they're probably out surfing, actually. But um, 12 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Uh, Susan also has quite a... Um, oh, I'm not exactly sure what the word is, but she's pretty big on um, Instagram and all the rest of it. She's got a lot of followers. I think she's got a couple of different accounts and... Um, you know, they post things almost every day, fashion things, surfing things. I'm not, you know, I'm old school, as you know, but... You're um, a Facebook man through and through. Yeah, yeah. No, I still write letters to people, <laughs> so... <laughs> you were stuck on, what was the original one? I don't even know. MySpace or something like that. MySpace, no. I'm even too old for MySpace. Yeah, me too. 
but yeah, so um, check them out. Go down there, say hello to them. They're super, super lovely, friendly people. Um, Deer is a long border as well. I believe she is. Yes, I think she. I first uh, met Deer in the 2019 Southeast Asia Games in the Philippines. Okay. And I know she did really well. She's a great person and a great surfer. Mm. Um, might be adjusting with his conditions. I'm not even sure whereabouts she is. Here she goes again. But yeah, very cool surf. She looks like she's on a. What's she on there? Surfboard? <laughs> Shortboard. <laughs> she's got a wetsuit on. I mean... Uh, I believe it's like long long leggings. I think she always wears that. That's her That's her thing. Keep the sun off, maybe. Um, yeah. I was talking to Matt and he... And the previous heat, you know, we talked about it was such a low-scoring heat. I didn't realise that um, you could actually... He said you could actually have taken a longboard out there because the waves are quite suitable during that heat for a longboard and win it on a longboard in the shortboard section. That yeah. would be an interesting strategy. You might ruffle the shortboard judges' feathers with that one. Well, you would, but Dean, and then we talked about you could take a like a mid-length board or something like that. Yeah, well, I guess you could, yeah. A little, a little mid-length, the mid-length craze that's going on at the moment. We went through the mid, the, the 20 phase, and now it seems like we're into the mid-length yeah, phase yeah, of the world. I think Tim Padden's uh, got his mid-length. He's pretty happy with it. I know quite a few mid-length riders out there. Big shout-out to Matt Powers over in Indonesia good friend great photographer and he's also on his mid-length he loves it too and hey if it suits your surfing and it keeps your love in the game then by all means well get the, other, the other issue is you get a lot more waves you know you've got a lot more foam underneath you and you get a lot more waves but and you also might get smashed and break your board a lot more because it depends on what waves you're chasing who cares get out there if you love surfing find a craft a long board a short board a mid-length a fish and enjoy it a bodyboard Yep, yep. Oh, I've got loads of bodyboarding mates coming from Cronulla. Yep. Yeah, um, well, you've got Shark Island out there, one of the most notorious bodyboard waves across Australia. Well, you say bodyboard, it you know, traditionally wasn't a bodyboard wave, <laughs> and, and then the bodyboarders <laughs> came and, and took over. The deal with that place is they can surf it in different swells, you know, whereas when you're on a stand-up, um, and here's Ella Jane, see what she can do. When you're on a stand-up at, at um, Shark Island... a oh, nice little car from Ella Jane there. See if she can get one on the inside here, pulling off... Would be nice to hear that section. And Suze, a goofy footer, also getting that. Seems to be standing up a little bit more on that inside for this heat too. She's looking for that reform. Bouncing That's around. not going to be good. No, the judges don't really like that. But nonetheless, she might be able to finish it off nicely. Well, I believe oh, she does. it'll be interesting to see will that pop in as two scores because technically she's laid down on the board and she's had to stand up again. So from what I understand, which I've been wrong before and I made some pretty bold claims in the past. But I believe that will be judged as two waves. Yeah, but okay, interesting. We'll see, because I could be wrong. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, but um, I'm keen to find out exactly what they there do. There we go, now. so a two's dropped in, and I'll say that's the opening part of that score. And then she's going to get probably another two for that second part of that score. Mm, wasn't that Susan that laid down? Um, it, oh, sorry, it was. Okay, so, so that was just the two for um, Ella's score. Yeah, my bad. Uh, I'm interested. Now I'm interested in... Yeah, yeah, well, I'm interested in ...calling as well. myself out. So I was just going to say previous year, the, the Shark Island, um, you need a south swell for the stand-ups, you know, so they can get in out the back. The bodyboarders, they can just take off anywhere and get, get shacked in any swell. And then, yeah, it's... So, yeah, bodyboarding, it is a completely different sport. It really is. It's Obviously, you're laying down for one and, and you've got flippers on, but... Their, their air game is just insane. If you want to treat your body bad, go become a bodyboarder. Just send it. Well, there you go, a 5.15. So I'm thinking maybe... I could be wrong. I'm, and I'll, I'll be interested. I'll, I'll fill that in later because I want to go talk to one of the head judges about what the actual rule with that is. Yeah, well, I, I guess the question is, if it was two waves, would there be two scores? Or would they only score the second one and they gave a 5.15 for that one really good manoeuvre on the inside? But I think it's going to be worth a chat to the judges and we'll, yeah. cl we'll clear that up. Yeah, because, yeah, I, 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 that's interesting for me because it's not something you see very often. No, and I've always thought it certainly is frowned upon by the judges. Um, but I don't know. She's five point one five. Here we go. Look at let's look at this wave, and yeah, I'll good takeoff. Yeah, late takeoff. She done well to get out in front of it. Actually, sometimes that'll bop me on the head. I hate being touched by whitewash. Here's the first manoeuvre. Nice wrap. Good bit of spray going off the back there. And she can see here. She needs to get to that section. She may have got there anyway, but um, it worked out pretty well for her. Good hit. Real Smashing hit. little hit. She might have just... Yeah, good timing. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested. I can't wait to get out there and talk to him about that. 
He's Thankfully, you're in the next heat and I'm not, so I'll go out there and find out first. <laughs> so I'll have the info. Yeah, well, send me a message. I will send, send you a message. Send me a message and I'll update everybody. As we move into the next round of 32 for the men, heat one is actually going to be um, semi uh, finals, sorry. It went up against Marama Tukong in La Union and Kian Martin. Uh, local hero, I dare say, Neil Sanchez, who's going to be holding the, the flag high for the Philippines and Belair. And then there's Roy Kanazawa and Eduardo El Ciso. So. Pretty stacked looking heat for that. Um. Yeah, we're, we're moving into the stacked heats now, you know, and um, I think we'll see the quality. Uh, not zoom up. I mean, this is this is a good, pretty good quality heat, actually, we're watching at the moment. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty keen to see the guys, see what they can do out there, see the power they get. Yeah. And it hasn't, it's, like you said, um, even Ella would almost be in contention of that last heat. She needs at seven at this stage. going to be a pretty big ask for her. As she gets up and riding, all she needs to do is commit to some of these turns. She has got it in her. She she's got a front foot very forward, um, and a real low centre of gravity. And uh, she's trying maybe a little too hard. Would you say she's pretty short? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it is hard to it's like s just that distance of Susan's legs. She got quite long legs, Susan. Yep. Um, it gives you that little bit more tweak and torque where Ella's a little bit shorter, as you said, and she's can't really pivot around her hips and her legs so much so definitely you can see the style difference definite, definite and, different and Susan style. has that advantage of just being to get a bit more drive through her body her hips and everything sort of helps keep that momentum for her through turns in particular yeah well nice to hear coach John yeah um, what is your role now with um, Philippine surfing uh, still the same thing I'm I'm one of the technical directors of the national tour and also into the coaching um, we just sort of come off our big year uh, at the moment, there's a Puerto Rico event that we're trying to get the athletes to, but it's very hard also with uh, Philippine passport. Trying to get around the world can be a little bit tricky. Um, so, yeah, I'm still involved in the coaching along with Luke Landrigan, Ian Suguan, Manuel Melindo. Shout out to Wilma Melindo out in Chagao. I think he's actually at another local event at the moment. He's so in Palawan. Yeah, over in Palawan. Shout out to the crew in Palawan too. You guys are running an event, but I know you'll also be interested in your surfers from the Philippines and how they progress here. So shout out to Palawan. They've got a great thing going on down there. They do, and there's a lot of good waves there. And, and funnily enough, the swell at this time of year comes from the nor'east winds. It goes over the top of the Philippines. And so Palawan is actually getting the same swell, or it's originated um, from the same place this swell is. Uh, whereas during the off-season, you'll get low pressures or typhoons, and, and they won't get any of that swell. And they get them there, and they're completely separate swells. But... Um, the nor'east winds, the trade winds that howl down underneath Japan and to the east of Taiwan, they push waves down this coast and down down the, the back coast or the the West Philippine Sea coast. I believe it's known locally as the Amihan season. It is the Amihan season. The Amihan specifically is the wind. Yeah, so a little bit of... And the other season we have is Habagat. Habagat, yes. Which if you're on the east coast, you're loving Habagat. If you're on the west coast, you're not so much loving Habagat. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, the Habagat is the season that brings all the typhoons. Some, unfortunately, are damaging. Some just give us great waves. Yep, the best typhoon is one that sits out in sea and doesn't cross the land. That is the best one. It's yeah. good for surfers. It's good for the communities, yep. um, unfortunately. And, and the good thing about the typhoons is generally they give us offshore winds as well. So mm. it pumps the swell in and gives us offshore winds. So that's the time when you see that beautiful cloud nine, perfect, you know, four to six foot barreling which is what everybody kind of lives for. And, yeah, then places like Belair in the north are usually in danger. They're in sort of that typhoon highway at that time of year too. So with good comes bad sometimes, and we wouldn't wish bad upon anyone. No, so. but we do see them form out in the in the um, Pacific Ocean. And generally, if you live in Chaga, you're pretty excited. I guess as soon as you see them form, if you live here in Belair, you start to worry a bit. Yeah, especially that um, September, October time of year. Um, and then as... The year progresses, the low pressures tend to go a bit more directly at the Philippines and then they sort of start going under and then we hit the summer where there's not much action out there. Yep. So if you're not into surfing and you just want to come and check out some of the beautiful landscapes, I recommend that June, July period. Just bring an umbrella and some sunscreen. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> yeah, the umbrella's for the sun, not for the rain. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the beautiful coastline there, it's absolutely picturesque here in Bel Air and it's great to be down here. Oh, I love it. And here we go with D again. Smaller wave. She's going to have to work hard to get in there. Um, she needs a 5.15 or 5.16. There's a nice little turn there. So can she do something on the inside? 
She's getting quite good drive out of that tiny little wave. I'm surprised she's going to go left now. Go the goofies. <laughs> and finish. It uh, doesn't really finish it off. I don't know that that's going to eclipse either her 4.75 or 4.25. I don't think it is. What do you think, John? No, it seems to be in that same region. She seems to be locked into doing same similar surfing. And why not if you're dropping in 4.75 for so that? Yeah. She probably needed to lie down for a while on that one. <laughs> <laughs> take two takes at her <laughs> and see where she goes. I don't know. I've just get out there. Send me a message. Let I'll, me know I'll what's going that, on. Yeah. So Ella's got a lot of work to do at this stage. She's sitting out there with priority. Um, she's going to have to pull the trigger with one and a half minutes remaining. Um, and she's going to have to get a 6.95, which um, I haven't really seen um, for quite some time. So Susan's going to be happy. It looks like that last wave of yeah, dropped in at a 3.80. Susan with the waves dropping didn't look like too much, but with 1 minute and 18, there's Ella. Here we go. Let's see if she can find that magic and get a 6.95 on this thing. A lot's going to have to happen as Susan's taken off on another wave. Ella just missing that section. Yeah, no, this always wasn't timed well. I saw that Susan did actually quite a nice turn during that one. But um, I'm going to be thinking now that it's going to be virtually impossible for Ella to get back out there in time and get us almost a 7. Um, so you don't want to call these things too early, but and I also most there's been a lot of these inside runners too, so I wouldn't call her out of it yet. You can see her in the middle of the screen there. Uh, that's the wave zone, in my opinion. There's been plenty of good that's waves. That's where they're getting the points on the inside. Yeah. You know, from the outside, they're just basically cutting back into the section. Yep, cutting back, cutting back. But she's going to need to turn around with 30 seconds, maybe on this next one. Mm. Yeah. So as you can see, Dea is actually thinking that also. Well, she's got no priority, I guess. Um, no one actually has priority yet, but El this is Ella's last two row. If, they, if she can... Uh, this is Dea. Dea's coming in, saying thank you very much, I believe. And here we go, last chance. Get down it. There she is. She's, she's in the game. She has an opportunity, but this thing does not look like it's going to give too much. And I hear the beach cam commentator counting down, and that's yep. all she wrote for Ella in this heat. Uh, we have Susan Escanilia making it through that round. She's going to be really happy with that. I was out there in the water with her the other day and she was having a fair bit of trouble with the lineup. Um, so good to see that she's sort of, and they are going through that round. So I guess we'll take a short break. I'll be back with True Starling and Jerry Deegan's going to go find out an answer about what happened out there. Let's get that commercial break. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippines Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back to the Belair International Pro. We've moved on through to the men's round of 32, heat one, and we got a bit of a split screen action. Roy Kanazawa in the white, just tagging away on his backhand, unfortunately coming unstuck. Eduardo Alciso finishing one off, and Kian Martin and Neil Sanchez also getting their names in the ring nice and early this morning in this heat. We're ploughing through the day, John Carby. Well, how good is it? We were, we've were we been up to 25 knots out there, and then we're back to about two knots. I know, and blue skies are starting to show through. It's going to be a nice back end of the day. It is. I think we've just hit that hurdle. We've gone past the lunch break hour, so a little bit of food and another coffee. I think we're good to go for the rest yep. of the day. Yeah, absolutely. First scores for Kian Martin, a five. He gets himself back out there with priority as well. We have moved into the seeding round for round of 32, which is super exciting. We'll see the likes of Keijiro Nishi and Rinta Utu um, 
rankings number one and two, I believe, come up in that next heat as well with Filma, Alapeo and Tucker. Inui first of Neil Sanchez, a 4.15. Scores are starting to filter on in. And I'm loving these events. Here's a replay from, yeah. who's that, Ken Martin. I talked with him yesterday. He, he felt it out and there it is, little blow tail reverse. He has that on. He mm. has that on call. He was out there, and this is, sorry, Neil Sanchez, local boy. Nice opening wrap. He knows how to get speed from nowhere. He's the most Japanese-style surfing Filipino out there. So super strong start. And it'll be good for him to know because he's also got an air game. And this is Tata Eduardo El Ciso getting started um, from Shargao. A nice little exchange from these surfers. Tata showing his power. He's a really strong fast vibrant surfer mm -hmm. and also really good instinct when it comes to what to do in what sections wow big numbers for this one for roy kanazawa huge backside surfing 8.25 for roy just going to town on this one i love his backhand attack just really unleashing in all those sections and Gets a fall off as well, 8.25. Did the damage. Did the damage, absolutely. Well, there's another thing we were talking about earlier, that last last manoeuvre. How does it feel when they go off or how does it feel when they stay on? 8.25 shows it did not come into play with that one. I believe that Su um, Camille's down on the beach with Susan Escanilia, the winner from the last eight. Down to you, Camille. Okay, thank you guys. Yes, I am with Susan Escanilia, one of my favorite goofy footers to watch. And you're really showing determination out there that you really want the scores that you need. And talk to us about that one interesting wave you have where a 5.15, where the wave kind of starts slow. And then when you felt it losing power, you went back down on your board, paddled and got up and got a good tag on the end. So how was that like for you out there? It was a really nice wave. It was a good one. Um, actually, I didn't, uh, I never thought that I can catch that wave and I'm gonna get that score that I needed. So I'm very happy to do that. And then I was like, oh shit, I have to do this and stuff. So yeah, I did it. I love it. That's really the kind of energy that we need here that, you know, you won't stop at nothing just to really get what you want. And you're actually one of the hardest working surfers on tour. I see you attend all of the legs, whether it's the nationals or the internationals. And I'm wondering, do you miss home sometimes? I do. I really miss home now. And I'm very excited to go home because I miss my family. I miss the waves there in Shaigao and all of my friends are there. So I really miss them. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them are cheering for you right now. Some of them are also here watching you and waving. You have the fans on the beach. And yeah, so congratulations to you. A lot of girls and even boys look up to you. You want to say a few words of thanks? Um, nagpapasalamat ako sa lahat ng sumusuporta sa akin and to all who um, sa lahat ng tumutulong na para makapunta ako dito sa Baler and yung sa La Union din and I'm very thankful na also some uh, also the other locals from Shargao is here with the bag tech. I'm so thankful kay Kong Bingo Matugas na binibigyan din kami ng chance to join this event and bring all the, uh, no, hindi naman all, pero most of the locals from Shaigao and I'm so very happy. Thank you, Kong Matogas. Okay, thank you, that is sweet. Susan, full of confidence. Um, really love watching you surf and congratulations again. And by the way, I just want to point out that they are giving out free massages right here where we're doing the interviews for the athletes. So yeah, if anyone has a, a bit of sore mu muscles from paddling, you can drop by here, their massage bed set up. Okay. Back to the live heat. Is Thanks. it just for the athletes or do you think we can get down there? <laughs> I was just thinking that. That sounds delightful. I can do this job from a massage bed, I'm sure. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Roy Kanazawa backing up that 8.25. Just with the 2.8, we saw a 5.75, that last wave of Neil Sanchez. And um, yeah, I was a huge fan of that 8.25 on, of that left. Um, Really solid surfing, up and down, uh, really making a mo making the most and kind of ticking all those criteria boxes, speed, power and flow. 
And it looks like there's a score to lock in for Kian Martin as well as Eduardo Alciso. All right, and while they do, I might just bring up that little from Susan Escanilia's last heat where she won, where she laid down, stood up. It still counted as one wave. A lot of debate. Uh, head judge actually reminding um, that the rule has been changed and it was no longer considered two waves. So I was wrongly right. <laughs> Hard to say sometimes. Well, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was wrong. Head judges, that's why we have them. Yep. Because they're good at it. They're good at it. They know what's going on. They know the rules. There's that big book. It's a big book of rules. So mm. that's one of those weird, you won't see it very often rules. And it's good to know because technically it is the same wave. But mm. was it two? I don't know. <laughs> Obviously not. Yeah. I won't bang on about it any longer because <laughs> there's hot action in the water. Yeah, well, 5.2 for that last wave of Kian Martin locks in. We got a score. For Neil Sanchez, he needs a 4.45 to go back up into second. And Eduardo Alciso also has a score to lock in. A 6.65 is his requirement. And wow, he's really going to nudge that. A 6.5 just misses the score. He needs a 3.7. This is a really back-to-back -back heat. And it is so close between first and fourth place. Wow. On paper, oh. it was, and yeah. in reality, it is. So I think Roy has taken that sort of controlling position, and he's surfing really good, and it is that experience on waves like this, like a rap like that, um, where most of us would be struggling even to get moving. It just shows how, how good he is at this beach break, and just amazing high speed power flow on a wave that's two foot and not so powerful it's just amazing it blows my mind yeah that was really nice to watch he's got that effortless kind of flow about him when he surfs kind of like parko-esque you know when parko surfs and he's yeah. like he makes it look so easy that you get annoyed <laughs> yeah yeah but then you become in danger of making it look too easy yes and the judge is actually um just knocking you down a bit because they want to see a little bit of effort yeah so it's weird but that was like some really great turns mm. really smooth surfing and I believe this one will definitely replace his 4.1. Oh, sorry, what's he on? He has a 5. Point, oh, where am I? It has flipped so much, hasn't it? Yeah. He's going to replace a 2.80 for, for sure, sure and probably catch the lead. He only needs a 2.95 to get in front. So I'll shout out to Ralph Texan also, who's here, one of the organisers of this event up on the upper management level. Uh, he's in a hotel room here watching it. He's just taking a break oh. in the aircon. Love that. Well, this is that last wave of Eduardo Alciso getting a spicy finish, and he needs... 6.50, he got that, Sorry. So yeah, good. There's so many scores locking in. That last wave of Roy was a five, which takes him up into the lead. And then this is Kian Martin taking to the sky again. He's, as you said, he's really got those on lock. Yep, I'd have to put that in that same range of his five. The judge is going to be looking at that. They're going to be watching now to see what he does on the inside as Roy gets to work. Wow. <laughs> this is this is on. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Kian got a pretty solid finish. Uh, there's that classic look back at the judges <laughs> Kian, being the like, Kian look. What, look. More do we, well, yeah. what more do you want? What more do you want? <laughs> and that might have gone from good to very good mm. uh, with the finish on that wave. Well, that was... A nice turn as well to finish that wave off for Roy Kanazawa, who just looks in form right now. Good um, time to be hitting form, like even though it's the early rounds. If he can keep this momentum through, and there's no reason he won't. Uh, this looks like Neil Sanchez paddling into a nice-looking one. Yeah, Neil trying to uh, consolidate second position. He needs a 7-5-1 to go to first. Nice float. Unfortunately, just unable to really find a finish. A little bit behind on that whole wave. Yeah, I, I thought that he was going to take to the air as well to show the boys that he has that air game too. Mm. Uh, and he does. He's got them on point out here. It's the, it could have been a little back-to-back-to-back -back -back air reverse comp. All right, this is a replay of Kian's. So this game, Martin, his opening manoeuvre, similar to that opening five that he started with, the point of difference is he managed to get back out onto this end section. So... He did the work. He could have pulled off, but this thing stood up for him again. Gets another nice spray with a little backhand rebound. Looks at the judges, <laughs> Keon style, and Love said, it. here I am. And there's Roy, not to be left behind in the air game. Throw on a very similar, maybe a little bit smoother. Just done that with that little bit of like super crisp style. That low sort of stance, arms down the line, looked really good. And he's waiting for this thing to stand up again. A little bit 
smaller on the inside compared to Kian's. But here he goes. He's doing the work and gets the finish. So I think two more great scores dropping in. Yeah, well, Kian's locked in at a 7.5. So that takes him into second place. Roy's still to lock in. Needs to better a five. So Neil Sanchez right now, he needs a 6.96. And Eduardo Alcizo needs a 6.21. I just feel like with the trajectory of this heat, it's definitely not the door's not closed it's still pretty wide open very open uh even for first as well kian needs a 5.76 so uh, yeah it's anyone's game right now to progress through to this next round in 12 minutes there's enough time to see a couple of lead changes yep so roy's last score dropping at a 4.55 so that smaller inside he didn't get anything really critical or any major maneuvers compared to kian who had that nice slap buckets of spray off the back and then followed that up with a rebound and a stern look at the judges. <laughs> so he was asking the question and they did answer with that massive 7.50. Yeah, I was talking with Kian after his second place at La Union um, and I was there when he got second place at India, the Tamil Nadu 3000 and he was like, second place again. Doesn't want to be the bridesmaid anymore. Yeah, I know and I was like, Kian, there's one more event, you know, you just got to keep that focus and keep that aura around you because it's working for him here we go got a bit bit of a split screen we'll stick with eduardo he needs a 6.21 and kian also finishing one off on the left eduardo this one's starting to really wall up for him it is so tata is going to be looking for that end Ooh. section also has a great air game yeah um nice powerful surfer too I don't think that wave really gave him two couple speedy transitions like lip line floats there just to get to that open water. Unfortunately, it didn't do as the others did. Um, that did seem to be like a wider wave. As we can see our surfer in white out there asking for an update. He probably won't get one until those little last scores lock in for our surfer in green and then the beach commentator will let him know where it's at. But Kian and Eduardo, Kian only a 2.50 for that. Nothing really, just for Kian being Kian out there. <laughs> he won't just do a turn, he'll give that flair almost on every turn, even though he knows it's not going to be that major number that he's looking to, a 5.76 to get in front. And there's these two little transition floats from Tata. He's just trying to get down that line. And unfortunately, he just didn't hit that inside bank, as we've seen some of the other ones. Yeah, I thought it was going to start to wall up, and then it really just teased him here and faded out into nothing. That was unfortunate for Eduardo, but he'll have to regroup. Just under 10 minutes to go in this one. A 6.21 and Neil Sanchez up and riding. He's chasing a 6.96, John. Oh, gets... Oh, that was unfortunate. I clicked. <laughs> it was unfortunate. Uh, with that, didn't look like it was going to run down the line. And uh, Keen Martin really has set the, the score in the judges' mind now of... If you're doing an air reverse, then you can do an add-on and get the rest of this. That one didn't look like it was going to go that way. So you're going to have to send a pretty big air reverse to go above uh, that five mark where mm -hmm. Kian sort of set the standard in the first one on that first wave of his with that 5.0, and that's where the judge's mind's going to be at. So we have several air reverses in this so far, and we sort of know where they're at. So these competitors know that. Neil's was looking good. But it didn't look like there's going to be much more on that wave anyway. So get back out there. He's only looking for a 696, and I know he's very capable of that. And being the local boy, I wouldn't be giving him too much space either. Even at this stage, with 8 minutes and 45 seconds, I'd start to lurk near him if I'm Roy. But that said, Roy's in a pretty commanding spot, looking to get rid of a 5. And Kian's super busy. Look at that stall. That's a usually an air boy's... There's a there's a little shove it from Kian. It's a standard airboy setup, that big tail slide. Um, I don't know if that's going to go huge. That's more of a parlor trick when it comes to these guys, unless you're sending that about three foot above the lip. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that would go to his top score at all, and they might not even give him a completion by the looks of those <laughs> scores dropping in. Yeah, doubtful it will change the situation at all. I think he was trying to just make something out of nothing there, um, but still would love to be able to pull that out of my back pocket whenever I want. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just, just shows how much skill he's got. And, yeah. And you can imagine what he's like in a free surf. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone out there. I mean, I think everyone was out there when we were surfing yesterday and it was so good to watch. And once again, that left just fading out. When, he, when is the decision going to go back to the rights? But wow, Roy Kanazawa 
good looking turn, but kind so, of just, yeah. So much flair just yeah. on something so simple, like not putting in just at 12 o'clock is enough. He's also throwing that tail like three quarters of the way around. All right, here he is up and riding again, needing to back up a five. Goes over on that one, the lefts. They look really fun, but I think, um, I don't know, I feel like when those eights come through, like we saw Roy get, maybe they're a little bit few and far between and you do need to kind of identify. Yeah, but it wasn't a huge wave he was on on that left either. So yeah, it was a mid-sized little one, wasn't it? And he it? just went to work. It just looked good and it felt smooth and he just worked it all the way to the beach. Mm. So he knows what he wants. He knows what an 825 and I'm pretty sure that's what he was hoping for on that little one. Kian yeah. staying busy, just under priority, sniffing around everything, which is a dangerous Kian. Yeah, it is a dangerous Kian when he's doing that, especially when he's in an advancing position, but I know that he does not feel safe right now. No, and yeah, Tata and Neil, uh, Eduardo LC, so definitely capable. Um, both needing sixes, six plus, or basically getting towards a seven, um, with Roy throwing away a five and Kian with a five in his line. It's pretty tight out there, very tight. Yeah, it's really close. There's pretty much three. I just look at that separation. Eduardo is on 10 points, 11 points for Neil, 12 for Kian and 13 for Roy. It's, you know, there's it literally sixes and sevens in it and then we can see a leader change and things like that with six minutes. Um, it's exciting to see what the back end of this heat will bring. Eduardo has first priority. He needs that 6.21. And Neil has second priority, needing pretty much a seven. Um and they're attainable scores out there. We've seen, we saw Kian do that 7.5. We saw Roy get that 8.25. And Neil and Eduardo can do exactly that in their sleep. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, with five minutes and 40 seconds, they want to maybe wake up and do it soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, here we go. This is live action. Roy Kanazawa. Oh, nice connection there for Roy. Driving through that one, staying nice and close to the power source. Another nice carve out the back. Looks like Eduardo floats that section but gets caught behind. And Roy, he's going to see if he can finish this one off, which he does. That was a pretty good-looking wave there for the current heat leader. I could watch Roy surf all day. Yeah. It's buttery smooth. It is really good to watch. And if you are a young, inspiring surfer, this is what gets points. Mm. It's just he's hitting every moment almost perfectly. He's not overdoing anything, which can be a danger in these smaller beach breaks. You sort of oversell stuff. He's just... Hitting everything perfect as it needs to be hit. Yeah, just that timing and the flow um, as well for Roy. It's, yeah, as you said, could watch it all day. was unfortunate for Eduardo that he didn't get a better connection down the line. Once again, I want to see him sort of sending it at this stage. I know yeah. he can. Uh, that he went for that floater. Instead, I reckon he should have maybe sent it because he's very capable. And he could have thrown a grab or something just to give the judges that little point of difference over the air reverses but he went for that floater and then had to kick off on that second sort of floater well scores are in for last of Roy Kanazawa a seven so he well and truly goes out in front now it's a bit of a battle for second place I mean Kian is looking for a 7.76 which he's well and truly capable of doing that but second place is a little bit more up for grabs. A 696 for Neil Sanchez. Eduardo Alciso needing a 621. Kian Martin takes <laughs> to the air. Yeah, there it is. There it is. It's a crowd pleaser for Settle sure. Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> he would. He would. Yep. Um, again, interesting to see where the judges are going to send that. It was, it was pretty high. But it's mm. also pretty hard to tell how high it was because it's a... I don't want to say parlor trick, but historically on CT, it hasn't scored very well. Yeah. But it's a pretty interesting thing to bring to um, a QS in the onion. Here it is. It's definitely going to be a highlight. It's definitely going to the highlight reels. The Superman Air, and there it is, board away. It's a good size air. I almost would have would have liked to see the straight air, but it's the judges. There we go. They're liking it. They're loving it. Wow. And it was high. I believe this is going up there because of the height. Yeah, well, this is... Eduardo Alciso gets the reverse. Wow, that was pretty <laughs> pretty good to see. An 8.25 for Kian Martins. Last wave, he goes into the lead. That's going to be heartbreaking <sighs> for Tata Eduardo Alciso, who just locked in a nice reverse also. Um, his requirement now has jumped up to a 
I don't think that was going to be more scoring than Kian's Superman hair, but here it is. Look at that. He hit it well. Wow, that was clean. So clean. So it's going to be probably the best air reverse of the comp, of the comp of this heat. <laughs> it is a comp. This has been, has been busy. These guys are up around yeah. seven waves to eight waves each. Wow. Two I minutes like and I've 20 seconds. I just sat down to talk to you. <laughs> this has been, this heat has flown by. There's been so much action. This wave of Eduardo is coming in. It's going to be potentially his best number of the heat. So it could make his campaign a little bit easier. And two minutes to go. And he hasn't wasted too much time. A 7.40. So he's still in it. Still needing a 7.86. Now he knows. Wow, here he is up and riding again. Gaining some speed. Unfortunately, that one just not cooperating. Neil Sanchez down into fourth. He needs a 9.5, which needs to be some pretty big surfing to get to that. Both Kian and Roy holding an 8.25. Kian's back up a 7.5. Has him in the lead. Wow. And wow. This, well, what is going on right now? Kian Martin bringing a Superman air. And I was saying, from CT, I've seen it, and it hasn't ever really hit those major scores, but that was impressive. He was high. Yeah, he, he did. He got a lot of height, and I think as soon as he kind of landed, he knew where... I, I just felt like he knew that it was going to come in a pretty good number, and you could see him just... You know, <laughs> yeah, pumping come. his hands and he's like, settle down. Like, I need to slow it down. And I think he's saying everyone can settle down because everyone's cheering on the yeah, beach for that right that now. Too. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the showman. <laughs> yeah, the showman. And the show must go on. So he's he very doesn't, animated. He doesn't want to settle down. He wants to ramp up. No, absolutely. It's exciting to see. I think, you know, he's here for a, a trophy and we all know it's the big one. And that is Roy Kanazawa taking to the air as well. Out behind him, Neil Sanchez getting a good hit. 30 seconds to go. Wow, this heat has been back-to-back. There's been so many big scores. Three we, sevens, two eights. Well, Roy was in control until Kian also took that off him. Now, Roy's got a score to lock in. He needs a 7.5. I don't think it was there. I'm going to call it pretty early. Neil's body language on this one's not looking good. Mm. Eduardo's got himself back into contention, but now he's behind. He's throwing everything as we can see him going. He needs that seven. He's going to be working as hard as he can for this. He knows he needs a big moment on this wave. There's no question about it. And Kian's off on the left. Tata's off on the right, waiting for a moment. I don't think he's going to get what he's looking for on this thing, and it's going to run off into the shore, True. Yeah, that was unfortunate for Eduardo. He was surfing is there. It was just the waves. They weren't really cooperating with him and all four of our surfers have scores to lock in that was a big heat with big scores and big surfing from all four of those surfers and I think to start off the round of 32 that's your benchmark that's the level now they've be, said it I'd be worried oh I would be too that <laughs> is that could have been a final that was insane wow yeah that was really solid surfing and um you know I've regardless of whether you're moving through to the next round or not, I'd be pretty stoked to be a part of that heat. Yep. Well, yep. Kian Martin and Roy Kanazawa moving on through to the next round. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with heat number two. Some big names in that one right after this break. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. 
Welcome back. Straight into Heat 2, the round of 32. And there we have Filmar on our screen there, the Filipino surfer. Coming in ranked for number 42, looking for a really strong result. And this left, and sun's out, the wind's gone still, and offering lots of opportunity right now for the surfers. As soon as the men hit the water, they hit the ground running, and you can just see some of the scores locked in that last heat. And this heat already starting off with some fireworks. So that'll be a nice completed wave there for Filmar. And I think... Actually, these surfers would have been inspired from what they just saw in that last heat trip. Oh, yeah, that last heat was super exciting to watch between uh, Kian, Roy, Eduardo, and Neil. It was, um, yeah, it, it, exciting surfing between all four of those surfers. And like I was saying to John and in the break, that's a benchmark. You yeah. know, they started off the round with some solid heats and some solid surfing. So it was super exciting to watch. And um, John was saying that Kian felt like in his free surf yesterday, everything just fell into place. And I think when a Kian feels like everything's connected, it's really dangerous. Absolutely. Especially in these choppy conditions, finding those little speed pockets has been so crucial. Some of the women were struggling, but these conditions really improving in the last hour and up there in this heat right now this is always going to be one to watch we have ranked ranking leader uh, Nishi out at number one and Utu number two after uh, their well he came third uh, Rinta over in um, La Union so that pushed him up the rankings number two Filmer 42nd and Tucker way down the rankings right now just looking to build some momentum and he's got nothing to lose he has an injured foot though so we do have to be careful with that um, that front foot he's been surfing with that little booty on at La Union as well and out here, beach break, no rocks, no sea urchins or anything like that to be worried about. But risk in the air, landing in the flats or something like that, there's still always the chance that you can hurt your ankle or mm. have a knee injury. Have you had any injuries surfing, Drew? Um, well, Matt, you're going to jinx me now. Because no, I haven't had any injuries while I've, yeah. uh, while I've been surfing. So touch wood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, Good. yeah, I've been pretty lucky so far. I've broken a few boards, creased a couple of boards, but I've never really had... Oh, I've had a few, but nothing major. Nothing that's kept me out of the water for more than two weeks. Good. And a lot of that goes down to preparation too. When you prepare right and you're able to get your body and your equipment dialed. Here we have Taka, the man with the injured foot, and he's not surfing safe at all. Goes straight into an air reverse. And so Filma. does Filma. Wow. wow, he's already locked in a 7.1 on his first wave as well. That was solid. Yeah, and he's backing it up right now. So you can see this wave actually starting off with his... Uh, well, I can't even remember what he did in that first turn because it was taken away by Tucker's. But Tucker had nothing left. That left ran all the way down through to the inside. So here goes Tucker again. And pumping down the line as he got something on the end. He's linked up to the next section and just a little... Snappy Rio, and interesting to note, Tucker out there on a small board. I think it's a 5-3, but he's got some really unique fins. So in the post-heat interview, if he ends up winning this heat, really cool to have a look at those fins. They're, um, well, I mean, it's hard to describe without using my hands. So when we come to the booth, I might be able to describe them. <laughs> but uh, they're, a lot of fins are just relatively upright with a little bit of um, toe on the fins or... Um, and the inside of the fin sometimes has a little bit of concave. Let's have a look at this replay. Yeah, Filma straight to the air. That was really nice. I think that was his last wave, and then he's able to find some inside connections, gaining some speed. Nice carve for Filma as he goes a little up and over on that one and then driving through that section again. Backing up that 7.1 to start. Really great way to start this heat. And this is that last one of Tucker's straight to mm. the air. Like you said, not safe surfing by any means, even with an injured foot, just putting everything on the line. So I think for 25 minutes, you know, it's 100%. And I was watching that last heat from the beach. Can you tell me, what did that air compare to, say, Kian Martin's first one, that one where he just projected out into the flats? Didn't get a lot of height, but it was just one of those real stabby kind of airs. Uh, Tuckers. Yeah. Um, it was pretty similar, I think. So Kian got a five just for that one air. I think Tucker might get a little bit more because he got, you know, he was able to link it through to the inside. But yeah, there it is, a 5.5. So not too much more. Right. And let's go catch up with Kian, that heat winner, as we're comparing airs right now. 
All right, so conditions have cleaned up just in time for the round of 32 for the men's QS. And taking it away all the way to the top is Kian Martin. Uh, Kian, how insane was that? South Shore Roy posted an 8.25. You answered back with an 8.25. He got a 7, and you did one better on him and got a 7.5. So tell me about the kind of energy that you have bringing it here in Bel Air. Yeah, first of all, out of everything, I want to dedicate that heat or that win to my friend Febri, who passed away last year. It's his birthday today. Ever since I woke up, he gave me the drive. He gave me the, the will do it. I was watching his videos. He's like, you know, like I'm trying not to cry, but like I did that as much as I could for him to make him proud. But yeah, just especially like, you know, he said like Roy started off with an eight. So I was like, same kind of situation I had in La Union. They can do it. I can do it. So he they kind of pushed me and it was crazy because the whole heat everyone was surfing so good the locals you know they, they know the spot a lot more than us me and Roy I think got lucky with better waves but it was you know anyone could have won that heat so I'm happy I, I took the win because it was actually a good heat for me it was a fun heat of like learning and practicing so let's definitely try to bring that momentum to the next one so yes I'm really sorry to hear about your friend that passed but yeah, you dedicated this win for him, and definitely you could feel some of his spirit out there. And you found you found the gems that end the ramps to take you higher. So, tell me about winning second in La Union. You think with Belair, you have more clarity, more confidence that you could perhaps really win it this time. Hundred percent. You know, the goal is obviously we're here to win, but you can't think too far. You know, we take it heat by heat. I'm happy the first one is out of the way because for me the first heat is always like the scariest. Like for me the first heat's the final, but starting like that, you know, having a good result in La Union gave me that 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 feeling of like I can do it. And I came up so short, second place kind of hurts, but I'm here for the win, so I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I feel good energy. I feel good. I feel happy. I'm just happy to be here somewhere new for the first time, and it's so far so good. My friend Varun made the first heat in the morning. I made one. Then we got Oni. The team is good. Everyone's here. Everyone's present. Everyone's happy. So I think that's what it's all about. You know, like we got to keep the good vibes and just do what we have to do. And let's see what, see what we can do next in the next few heats. Awesome, man. You had a good birthday week run in La Union, didn't you? Yeah, La Union was actually the time of my life. I had I had a good, good result. I got to meet some special people that I'll bring with me for the rest of my life. I had my birthday celebration. I turned 22. I spent it with the best people I could possibly, like, couldn't have spent it with better people. Thank you to everyone that made it so special. That was a trip I'll never forget, and let's make this one a trip we'll never forget. Okay, electrifying energy right here on the beach with Kian Martin. So let's see where this goes, Kian. Congratulations, and yeah, best of luck. Thank you so much. Back to the live heat. A very soulful post heat interview there from Kian Martin, surfing with drive and passion, and also capturing the hearts of many women along the beach and maybe even in the commentary booth <laughs> as well. 15 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. True, what did you make of that? Oh, I thought that was beautiful. I'm a, I'm a softie at heart. and um, yeah. I think you're a softie on the outside too, True. Yeah, definitely. I'm a, I'm a big softie. And, um, you know, for Kian to dedicate, you know, that heat win to his late friend mm. February was... Um, yeah, very special, and I think, you know, that moment in time was, was pretty difficult for a lot of the Indonesian surfers, so for him to still be carrying, you know, his friend's kind of energy with him is, is really mm. special, and, you know, the way that he spoke throughout that whole heat, uh, that whole post-heat interview, the fact, you know, he's here and he's taking everything in his stride and he's feeling confident and he, everything's connected and he's here for his friends as well and yeah how can that not touch your heart i mean yeah. really no it was a, it was beautifully it was eloquently put yeah. and tying in the good vibes in the union and carrying off that second place uh where he's he's moved up the rankings now and he's looking good to potentially jump into that challenger series qualification spot before he goes to australia uh, it'd be nice to go there already in the region's you know top five and just to extend because that'll this will be the last event in the Asia region for those points. So they'll go over to Australia looking to build on their momentum. So that it's always a good feeling, you know, getting a good result and coming in, having a great heat win and winning a really tight battle. 
as this one is shaping up to be at the moment. But this is um, Nishi at the, at the moment, and Kajiro's really struggled to gain some momentum in this heat. Down into fourth place, only needed a marginal score, but that won't be it. And Rinta as well, 6-2-5 just to kick things off. Um, looking to add to his, uh, well, add to his total with the backup. But Tucker, a 5.5, second priority. And Filmar, out in the lead. Couldn't see this one coming uh, so early in this heat. Such a, a dominant performance from Filmar. Already a 12.10 heat total, which wasn't enough in that last heat. We had 13.9 um, from Eduardo Alciso, which wasn't enough to get him into second. So you'd have to say we will likely see all of these scores replaced by the end of the heat. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, number one and number two on the Asia rankings right now aren't really sitting in, you know, the usual place mm. we're sitting them in, which is in that top spot. Uh, but I think, you know, 13 minutes is still time to kind of regroup. And for Keijiro, we can see him off to the left of screen. We can see Rinta as far away mm. on the right of screen. So, and a little bit further in than yep. Filma and Taka right now. Um, so both, I mean, Rinter's in a good position with the 6.25, but Keijiro, he needs to get some work done right now. And it could be a little bit of added pressure for him because maybe he's not used to kind of mm. being taken aback right now with Filmar 7.1. Wow. wow. I was just about to say, I wonder if he's going to go back to the left or go right. So he does opt for almost a defensive move to perhaps take that wave off his other two competitors who were sitting there uh, which was Unui and Nishi as well. Probably not a smart idea considering you've already got two really strong scores to use that priority at this time of the heat. Uh, did go down, was on his way. So that board he's riding, that is that, that Slater design. So it's got a little flyer in front of the front fins, which basically means uh, his turning arc has reduced quite a lot. So the board may be about 5.9 to 5.10, but it's going to turn a lot more erratically, uh, perhaps like something in the like a 5.6 or a 5.5. That's what a little flyer will do in the rail line. Uh, so an interesting designs to speak about. So far, heat leader, Filmar, with that 12.10 on an interesting Slater designs. And Tucker out there with some unique fins on his composite material. Nishi's board, uh, relatively stock standard. I didn't want to pick it up. Didn't want to touch his equipment beforehand. It was all these little blades. You've got a JS sitting there in the... Um, it looked... It was all carbon. And I don't know if it was a... I can't tell what material it actually was. Could have been a dark arts, but it had a real carbon, um, a vacuumed carbon look to it. So I'm not sure. We'll have to have a talk to him afterwards. But this looks like a conventional PU board that he's on right now. Mm. Um, may have been epoxy. Don't think so. I had a look at it. Did sort of look PU. Uh, but he was motivated sitting there on the promenade here. And if you are anywhere around Manila or you're down near Belair or somewhere and you, you want to come watch some good surfing this week, come on down. It's beautiful here in Belair. We've got some amazing homestays and some amazing hotels. We're here at the Coast Pacific, uh, the, the largest hotel of the lot right here on the beach. Sit on the promenade. You can watch the pros. And it's all very open and everyone's communicating, and giving shakas, and it's heartfelt. And there's Nishi there. So um, that one looking... That's a blue board. Okay, I did see that lining. I didn't know he was going to opt for that one, so I thought it might have been his clear one. So... That is a PU board, and he makes his way through to the inside section. And he gets a completion, so that'll go into his scoreline, but only looking to, to drop a 1.465. Yeah, I wonder what he did out of the back. He did get, like, the fins free off on that turn prior mm. to kind of seeing what he did out of the back. So hopefully he did something pretty good, and he can get himself back into this heat with scores to come through. Um yeah, I mean, this heat, it's a little bit slower than the last one, but we still have some good mm. scores and obviously some good surfing um, as well up until this next 10 minutes to go. Yeah, I think Nishi might drop something pretty considerable there. May not be the best number of the heat, but it'll definitely put him up into that uh, decision. But Utu, just a 6.25, he's looking to get his second wave. Uh, these surfers may be starting to feel a bit of pressure knowing that this result's going to be very important to determine how far they've got to really push themselves over in Australia. Obviously, travel is um, not desirable if you don't have to do it and chase all those events. It's just a bonus if you can go over there and uh, secure some better results. But Nishi at the moment looking pretty good. If you get a strong result here, that would make him feel pretty comfortable. Um, you'd have to say moving over to Australia and 
surfing in that Van and Surf Fest, the 5,000 and the 3,000 over there on uh, Atavoca Beach. Mm. Um, that's going to make life a little bit easier for whatever competitor decide to go. And do you know in the women's side who's who's going to go? All of them, All I'd of them. say. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. I think um, if you're there, then there's a chance, right? And yeah. Wow, Filma, just one turn. Yeah, I think a lot of them will, will be heading over to Avoca in Newcastle because anything can happen. You don't want to sell yourself short and not give yourself the opportunity. Especially with the 5,000 there. And... Filmar still hanging out there, falling off in two waves, but a great start. It's always going to going to help. But 42nd on the rankings, uh, seeing some of the Filipinos above him um, may not feel great. He's a bit of an elder statesman to a lot of those surfers. They look up to him with a uh, lot of respect, and he'll be looking to show them how it's done. And so far in this heat, he's looking really strong. Strong, powerful, goofy footer. And he, there's a lot of um, that rap that he's got. It reminds me a lot of... You know, some surfers on tour and uh, Yago Dora's got a similar wrap back into the pocket. I think of some taller, goofy footers, uh, even Owen Wright, where they really leverage their frame in their turns. And small wave approach looking, I mean, that's a pretty big compliment, right? Yago Dora and Owen Wright. Yeah, absolutely. Huge compliment. Well, okay, Jiro Nishi, 565 for that last one. That's his best wave of the heat. He's got himself back into it in second, but third and fourth, small scores. They're still. Scores to drop in as well. Rinta has what looks like it's going to be his second best wave. Five comes in. So Keijiro down into third again. And Taka has a small score to lock in. So Keijiro and Taka needing a five. Six one for Keijiro. Taka a five seven six. And um, yeah, wow. Seven minutes to go. Filmer is just really dominating this heat right now. And up next, it'll be the two Japanese surfers, Hiroto Ohara and Shohei Kato, up against Jomari Eboiza and Noah Arkfield. So that's going to be fantastic to watch the Japanese and the Filipinos battle it off. Uh, we lost two of them in that last heat, so they'll be motivated and they'll have seen that, that first heat of the men's and been inspired by that. And they'll be inspired by Filmar's performance. And here he goes, under priority. So a little cut under the lip there, a little foam climb, just looking to drop a marginal score of a... Five-point ride, and that one isn't going to be it. Staying busy, perhaps taking some opportunity of some of the other surfers. But Anui, needing a 5.76 now. He's been very quiet. He's uh, opened up with that 5.5 five and just had a couple of marginal scores so far. So, yeah, a consummate professional, Taka, uh, often lets his emotions dictate his performance, and more often than not, his emotions are pretty active, and uh, he's he carries that adrenaline through his heat. So you can see him asking for a requirement there, wondering, is that him? No, that one is uh, Rinta in blue. See, he's just waving that hand there. Yeah, I I kind of like how Tucker's got that, you know, real um, shows, like he wears his heart on his sleeve. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of vibe about him. I, I enjoy watching that. I mean, it's, it's difficult when... He's a bit frustrated because you go, hey, like there's still a bit of time left. You've yeah. got time to regroup. Um, but that's the same for any other surfer that you'd see. But I, I love when Tucker's, you know, he's in the spirit. He's showing out his passion. And, yeah. you know, it's one of my favorite, favorite things he's to animated. see. Animated. Yeah, animated. One yeah. of my favorite things to see in competitive surfing. And we saw earlier Kian Martin get that uh, amazing. Well, he started off with that projective air pumped through the lineup and had a nice hammer to finish i don't know what score that logged in at seven five okay seven five yeah i was on the beach and i was thinking that it'd be close to excellent i didn't know if that was the a25 or the seven five but the way he claimed to the judges was the the no claim claim where he just looks up yeah. at the judges the foundation of that is actually um ocean beach in 1966 and that young was the first power surfer that we really saw in competition uh Coleroy's nat young Got a fantastic wave, stepped off on the beach, looked up at the judges, hands on his hips, <laughs> and it was like demanding that score. And it's just that confidence that he really let his surfing do the talking. He didn't claim until he was up on the beach. And I always think back to that moment as a, a pretty iconic... Cause before that, you didn't claim because uh, 
you started off with the perfect score and it was up to you to keep that score through the wave. So if you bobbled, if you got caught behind the whitewash, if you dropped in on someone, grabbed your rail, lost your board, you would lose points accordingly. So it was actually up to you to perform like a, a routine, like a performing art. You had to uh, position yourself in the critical spot, be on a set wave, and all these things were adjudicated. But if you look good doing it, you'd maintain a really healthy score. No kinks in the armor, just really good style and flow. And if you could... Um, perform something in the pocket that they hadn't seen all day, you were more likely to be able to keep that high score. And it wasn't about scoring points. It was about keeping points. Wow. And I really like that, that mentality because we're seeing that in uh, performance waves on the world tour at the moment where everything's just placed accordingly. Everything's flowing between the maneuvers. The aerials are radical. They're landing with speed. And like we see at the wave pool, they're coming out with momentum. And anytime the surfer has to grab the rail or regain their balance, it's almost like a, a, a deduction, right? Yeah. Anyway, a little history lesson of claiming and where <laughs> it came from. And 1966 was the first time that... And I've watched a lot of the old footage. It's the first time that I've ever seen a claim in a contest. Wow, that's... Wasn't you, I wasn't there. I'm not yeah. that old. <laughs> I was going to say, can you uh, remark about the day? <laughs> I'm yeah. Uh, I was born I'm 20, 22 years later. <laughs> um, but two minutes 40, this, second, this, this heat's really flown by. Filmar... A really strategic heat so far, keeping really busy. And a 7.10. Be looking to drop that five, but fourth in priority, Anui. Very minimal waves ridden in this heat for him. Usually he's up around the six or seven or eight waves surfed. But knowing he needs something pretty radical, a five, seven, six, but all of them need a mid five. So this is going to be a fantastic ending to this true. And look at that. This reminds me of the vision when you look along Noosa heads towards the headlands up there. Very yeah. beautiful. But instead of right-hand reef break, point breaks, we've got some uh, right-hand reefs out there. Yeah, that's exciting. The amount of waves that there are on offer is, um, you know, super cool. I feel really lucky to be here and adventuring and finding different waves. Um, but for right now, with two minutes to go, it's interesting to note that Keijiro and Rinta are number one and two, and they're about 100 points separated. Mm-hmm. So this is a big event for Keijiro right now. And if he gets knocked out, it's, he needs to make up some points in Australia. Absolutely. And uh, as I said, perhaps a few nerves sneaking into this heat. Uh, ratings leader. He came ninth there at Lu Union. And uh, Rinta came in with a third place. So he'll be motivated. That would have hurt. Yeah. And here we have some action. There we have... Who we got? No takers. And there's someone down on the right-hander. It looks like Filmara up and riding, and it is. He hammers that one off the top, looking to drop a five just to secure his first place. A little a mid face snap there, and this one just manufacturing the score a little bit. And here we have a little inside section. Ooh, and gets a little bit stuck there. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Well, that little flyer I was telling you about in the rail line, sometimes that can work against you at times. Yeah. 40 seconds remaining. I'm really looking forward to another exchange. I've been waiting for these backup scores. It hasn't quite uh, popped off like we had hoped. Mm. Well, looks like K-Zero might even have a score to lock in right now. I don't know if he got anything amazing done. I didn't. We didn't get to see the wave. But, um, yeah, it says he's got a score to lock in. So we'll see. 25 seconds to go. This is a real nail by to finish right now priority there with Tucker but I can see green out there and nothing's coming in right now so it's looking like Filmar securing his lead and no score there for Nishi so it'll be Rinta Utu and Filmar that are moving on the Filipino this is a huge scout for him right now ranked 42 in the rankings and he takes out ratings leader Kajiro Nishi who goes down in the round of 32 and we'll go back We'll go to a break and we'll jump into Heat 3 straight after this. WSL Belair Pro 2024 
is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back to Heat 3, round of 32. We're at the Belair International, and this is the QS3000 out in the water right now. Hiroto Ahara from Japan, Shohei Kato, Noah Arkfield, Joe Marie Eboiza. So the two Filipinos and the Japanese surfers. This is going to be a great matchup with ratings leader. Kazuro Nishi getting knocked out in that last heat by Filipino. You'd have to call him the older statesman of the lineup with Filmar winning that last heat. So he'll be taking some momentum forward. What will that mean for a lot of the other surfers coming up? Oh, look, to see him do that. I mean, traditionally, it's uh, Murama that's doing all the, mm. the, the giant slaying. Um, although Murama is considered a bit of a giant himself now. But yeah, to see Filmar do that is really good because he's been sort of on the tour chasing things but hasn't had a lot of luck. Um, of late, uh, that's our surfer Noah Arkfield just taking off. He's already scored a 2.75, but it means a lot to them. And and I can s I'd like to say hello to everyone there in Katungnan that's watching Filmar. Um, I said it earlier, his brother and his sister. Um, sister's married to a, a lovely Australian guy, um, and they're right. I mean, they are, you know, like a regal family in Katungnan. Mm. They live right in the middle of town. Uh, it's them and the Catalyze, Max and crew. Hello to you guys as well. Um, Look, I keep thinking of names and I can keep saying them because I know everyone in that town. But, yeah, no, they, they are the, like surfing royalty in that town and, and everyone's watching and everyone's cheering him on. Uh, he helps the kids a lot. You know, he organises boards and does this and he, he's got his own little uh, gang of happy islanders. And, um, yeah, he's, I'm certainly proud of him myself. You know? Yeah, well, shout out to Happy Islander crew. They'll be tuning in right now. And, obviously, the, the Japanese contingent back home will have their supporters and the La Union guys be tuning in watching if they're not already here Joe Marie right now and he made some good headway there making the semi-finals of the longboards and he put in a pretty solid performance as well there at Union, but going down in the shortboard division pretty early on uh, he'll be looking to build on some of that momentum he's yeah, a strong sure. goofy footer yeah he got a th equal 33rd which he won't be happy about um, so he needs to make it through this one, you know, to get some uh, some joy and not get another one of those ugly 33s. So um, all the best to him. And, of course, there's Noah right there, who is another one I've known since for his whole life at least. Uh, he's a great surfer, great kid. Noah, every time he comes on, I say hello to his dad and his mum. So uh, Ada and um, Doug, hello, guys. I know you're watching with bated breath. He's got f four brothers and sisters. Um, so and again, they live right there, right there on the spot. Couldn't live closer to the. Well, you could live closer to Cloud Nine, but not closer to Tuason, which is a really well known, uh, really well known way of Tuason left. So that's Hiroto O'Hara. Uh, was just up and down, didn't do much with that one. I think he'll be throwing that away. And there's uh, Joe Marie. Again, I guess at the end of the day, he probably won't want to keep that wave. And I was just um, Hiroto is. So he won the U.S. Open of surfing. Is that correct? Uh, he did quite a number of years ago now, and he famously had um, he won. A, it was a lot of money. It was two hundred thousand dollars, I Maybe think, two, back then. Two thousand sixteen. I guess I should. Put yeah, it was up, some, around that time. It was. Um, it, it was the biggest prize pool at the time of the U.S. Open. They were giving out a lot of money uh, around that time, and his famous quote was that, "What are you going to buy?" And he's like, "I'm going to buy a car." <laughs> And he ended up buying a car. But um, <laughs> it, was, it was just funny. It was just such a, a funny post-heat interview. That's what he was well-known for back then. There he is there. Uh, that's Shohei Kato on that black JS looking super strong, a surfer in blue. And he rides out of that. So we'll wait for those scores to be logged in and look at some replays. In that meantime, let's catch up with John Carby. He's going to catch up with Filmar on the glass. All right, here we are down with the last heat winner, Filma Alepeo. You started that one probably the best way you could have, huh? Yeah, yeah I got so lucky on that wave, so I just got to do what I, got, I have to do. Just ask us lucky. if they turned it down uh, on us. Few I turned it down a bit. Get a score. 
Uh, it was, you were representing the Philippines, the only local competitor in that heat. Uh, I know you give a lot of credit to the guys you were out in the water with, so you didn't feel safe throughout that entire heat? No, no, not at all. Uh, I know Taka, um, KG and Rinta, they're so good. They're one, they're one of my favorites from Japan and like my idols also. So even though I got a uh, saving point on the beginning of the heat, I was still so nervous, so nervous, but uh, it worked, you know. It did work, and you are, you've got a lot of history in surfing. Obviously, you're a big name in Philippine surfing and have been for a long time. Talk to us about, a little bit about what's Happy Islanders and what are you trying to do uh, with that brand? Um, Happy Islanders, it's, uh, we have a YouTube channel, and now we're, slow, we're slowly to make it a bra as a brand. And though we do have a surf school also and a surf cafe. And we are supporting also uh, a local kid, a talented kid in Chargao by our surf club. Yeah. And you've also got a Vizsla sticker and a Kudo Board Riders uh, on your board there. So a little bit about them. Um, they are they are our my, they're my main sponsor. Uh, thank you, Kudos Kudos uh, Kudo Surf KS Board Riders and Vizsla. Thank you so much. Uh, and just finally, you are doing wonderful things uh, with the Happy Islanders crew there. You are Kuya to a lot of guys over there in Shargao. Uh, I know you want to shout out to your wonderful wife Andy back home and your kids. So take time, bit of Shargon and shout out to your family. Um, hi Mahal, Tana Langita Kokuman, Salamat Karajo Saimo Sporta. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Blushing filmer Alipeo, congratulations. And I can't wait to see you in that next round. Back to you guys. The insightful interview there, and everyone tuning in right now will be stoked. That was a huge win, not just getting through this round of 32, but just considering the competition that he was up against in what any of us would say were challenging conditions, and especially not his forte, as he said in his earlier post heat interview. Uh, no beach breaks around there, so he's relishing uh, the challenge. He didn't come here with any huge expectations, but moving forward into that next round, that'll be uh, a lot of points garnered for him, and he'll climb, he'll skyrocket up the rankings. But just in this heat, uh, O'Hara, a four to open up, and a couple of other scores will be locked in for everybody else right now. Uh, Ocean, pretty small. A lot of the Japanese competitors have really been drawing comparisons to their conditions back home. Uh, but like anywhere in the world right now, this is elements of East Coast Australia as well. Without question. And I think when we looked at the predictions that we knew that this would really set up well for the Japanese, uh, both men and women, um, because it is similar to what they have to surf a lot. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, I, I surf this kind of stuff in Cronulla as well, you know. So um, you've got to be able to surf it. Um, you've got to be prepared for any waves. Um, and you're right about Filmar. Yeah, no, he doesn't have a beach break. He does do a bit of travelling these days. Um, but there's no beach break there. And funnily enough, every time someone mentions that, I remember when I first went there, I thought I thought Shargao would never blow up because it didn't really have a good beach break. I mm -hmm. thought, no, nah, this one's not going to be popular. It's not going to be like... Everyone used to say, it's going to be like Bali. So it can't be because we don't have a beach break. Well, how wrong was I? The place has uh, exploded. Um, we have Joe Marie up there riding. Nice first turn. Ooh. And goes to the air, tries to hang on, just loses the tail. Doesn't get around. Right behind him, we have O'Hara. Loads of action going on. I just can't get around that section. He's given it away. Um, bit of an off the top to finish. But yeah, I, I was um, completely wrong. And when I first went there, you couldn't get a plane into Shargao. Um, and thanks to some, some people, uh, Nicola Rambo and, and other people, they got a flight in there. And I remember I freaked out about two or three years, maybe four years ago, when I saw two planes on the tarmac. I thought, oh my God, there's two planes on the tarmac. Well, that now, as it stands, is about 14 flights a day. Wow. It's gone from nothing to full speed. Um, and it's amazing. You can fly to, you know, Davao and Manila and Cebu. And for a while there to Clark, I guess they're going to bring that one back on. Um, but, yeah, it's just absolutely blown up. And I've got to say, you know, I, I think it's blown up probably more than any other destination in this country. Um, and, and that's why we've had the surf contest for a long time. And I know that the politicians here would like the same to happen here. This has always been somewhat popular, but I mean, I th I'm sure they want it to blow up, and by having a surf comp here, certainly gets the name out a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. It's great for tourism, that main commodity, and they don't have to really put any infrastructure up. The beach is there already. It's a natural um, amphitheatre here. They've already got the promenade, they've got the hotels, and to be able to draw surf tourism here, and obviously just go walk about. There's some amazing beach breaks up and down, brief breaks, point breaks. Uh, just spend a bit of time here, check it out, and... You know, out in this heat at the moment. I mean, coming into it ranked 11th, um, you'd have to say, I mean, O'Hara really needs to get a wriggle on in terms of his 
his rankings. He's going to go over to Australia with a with a big push. But if he can get a good result here, uh, a win has eluded him this season. He's um, done well over there in Chiba, and both surfers Kato and Ahara have had pretty strong performances in Shagao. So you may have been familiar with those surfers over Definitely. there in the, in the past. Certainly, um, um, Hiroto has been there probably since the. You know, 2015 or 2014. By the way, it was 2015, which was the um, US Open the win. US, yep. Um, I think he'd been there before. I think he's 27 or 28 years old, and he's been coming there since he, at least he was 18. He's one of the stalwart Japanese that has been coming there for a long time. As a matter of fact, we had a pro junior. He might have even been at the pro. The, we had a Billabong pro junior, I think, two years before that, and I think he was there at that one. Um, so he knows Shaga well, and I'm certainly familiar with him. And, yeah, he got a third last year in the 3,000, won at Chiba. And he's also surfed on the CT. He's had a Challenger Series experience. He's been, yeah, well-traveled all around the world. Great style. Uh, really clinical in his approach as well. Uh, but small lead at the moment. Uh, the other surfers just needing um, mid-range scores to catch up. Uh, Boyzart really hasn't capitalized at the moment. He's going straight to the air. You saw his intentions before. Uh, he really respects his opponents, and he'll actually take a lot of inspiration. Uh, we actually saw Filmar go to the air beforehand too, and here goes Kato, and he gets vertical well and truly over his board on that one, and you see him just very neutral-footed, and that one just snapping that one off the top. So a real work, workers type of wave, that one, a real journeyman, just trying to chip away at that score, and all he needs is a 4-3-6, oh, and that yeah, in a four-man heat, that's what you've got to do. I'm calling he's going to get it, to be honest. That yeah. were three pretty good moves. Um, he's certainly going to get rid of his 3.75, but, but my call is he's going to get a 5 or something around that mark, um, which he needed. It's early days, um, but, yeah, he did really well on that wave. There was no downtime, three nice hacks. Um, so, yeah, I'm giving him the points whether he gets them or not. Yeah. No, no, it was, it was, and it was well-timed. Midway through the heat, it's the art of four-man heats. And here goes Ahara, rapid fire, two-turn combo, sweeping cutback for the third and he's just maintaining his momentum and a beautiful wrap there on the inside section. This is the form that he won at the US Open back in 2015. A very similar looking wave as well. And he's on that front foot there and hammers this one shut. So the consummate professional, Hiroto Ahara, jumping ahead. I mean, that wave there is going to surpass uh, most of those waves in the heat. But Kato, a 6-2-5. Um, Judd is really enjoying... His backside approach, yes, I think O'Hara's is going to go higher. I think I agree with you there. I think given that that was a 6.25, mm -hmm. I'm thinking a point or so more. Um, that was a fantastic wave. And it's, uh, you know, we talk about small wave surfing Japan a lot. We talk about where we are in Belair compared to the point break of La Union. And a lot of comparisons being drawn to a lot of the beach breaks, Korea, Japan as well. Uh, but the US Open, one of the... Whether you like it or not, it's always there on a CT or Challenger Series schedule. Uh, all those surfers in California cut their teeth at that event at the school events, the Pro Juniors. And there has to be a beach break on the tour at some point in time, whether it's a you know, CSQS you know, uh, championship tour, where Australia has Narrabeen or Manly, for example. California's Huntington and Hero to get that win over there. It's the, the richest event in surfing history. Um, a huge accolade for him and very difficult when you look at the depth of the draw and how many well, good the draw is there are. just everyone i mean yeah. it's absolutely everyone uh kato with probably just a throwaway there uh yeah 6.50 um hiroto so just over uh the wave of um shohei i'd love to I get a replay of kato's yeah i thought it was maybe going to be a little uh a little bigger but um kato's yeah just linked three moves together mm. very well right from the start um, Shohez was, uh, sorry, um, Hiroto's was longer, um, and he finished it on the he inside, did. which th which the judges like, but there was some downtime there. Cardo did go vertical in one of those turns, though. Remember More really than vertical. Yeah, he went yeah. In, in, inverted, so that's where probably a lot of the extra points are. Here goes Oboiza, and he springs into this area, oh, and he just off tilt a little bit, perhaps the front foot sliding a little bit. Last time, he was too far away from his board. Uh, where he was pushing outwards. That time he was relatively centred, but unfortunately that front foot moved in the air, but it was looking good. He had plenty of height. Had plenty of height and he landed. If he was on the board, it would have been a great landing because his board, it was almost a full rotation as well. So good but signs for a boys up, but now netting 815, 
you can't help but feel if he were able to tap out a couple of nice turns, he'd be well and truly in the mix. But he wants to win this heat. Doesn't just want to scrape through. Yeah, look, I think he's... Anyway, we'll see Here what he, he does Back now. Back to turns now, nice maybe. nice to see him get a five, you know, to build. And then, then he can do... Then he go berserk or whatever. But, I mean... Ooh. He's going for the 10 in one go, where he was. Now he's getting back to turns, which is typically what you see in the first few minutes of a heat, something like this. And nice flow. This wave just running all the way down the inside. It might give him something at the end. So that'll be, a, that'll be his best wave yet, but it won't be the 815. And at least reduce that requirement for him to ha perhaps go to the air in the next nine minutes. So, for sure, plan B, for sure. plan so B, to speak. Exactly, yeah. And you have to be, a, you know, dynamic. You have to be able to change. You have to be able to think on the run. Yeah. You know, if it's not working, do something else. Absolutely. There's Noah up and riding. Big off the top here. Oh. Nice little waft there. Again, little floater there. He's going to get to the inside, like down this section. Oh, he's found it. What can you do, Noah? Make it big. A bit of a wonky wave here, but let's see what happens. He's certainly not giving up on it. Okay. A bit of a stall almost here. Get some speed up. Go into the air. Oh. Oh, oh. And incomplete. That would have been a nice finish there for Noah. He didn't have any single moment that stood out. That first turn was really nice, though. Uh, but looking for the 6.4, probably a, a... I mean, at this point in the heat, he did just need to go complete and perhaps... Reduce that requirement because he has a 4.35 and a 2.75. So I feel like if you just did a safe turn there, you yeah. may have logged in a 5. I hear you. And I think he's going to get maybe similar to the 4.35, which in the long run is not going to help his quest. No, no. And that's the, res it's the respect for his opponents. Where you look on the other hand of the spectrum, Kato, who was surfing really well within himself, finished his wave strong, knowing that he had that nice opening turn. And he logged in a 6.25. So the two Japanese running away with this at the moment... And the two Filipinos, a little lapse in concentration and just yeah. not as experienced as the two Japanese surfers in competition. Correct. Um, and we talked about the US Open before. It's Vans. And I'd like to say hello to Wendell. Yep. Uh, Wendell Cunanan, who's from the Philippines but has Vans Philippines and supports a lot of these surfers. Um, and he's an okay golfer too. I played golf with him oh, the wow. other week. So good on you, Wendell. Um, thanks for your help. And, of course, James and Marge from Kudo Surf. Uh, thanks, guys. I know you support all the local guys as well. So, um, good on you. And the bag tick surfers with uh, Congressman Matugas, who Noah is one of them. So, um, they get a lot of support. And these, mm -hmm. these are the people that are supporting the young local, or the young Filipinos, not necessarily local from here. Yeah, it's a, I mean, there's a lot of support for these surfers coming from the small surf towns, the communities that are looking to grow in tourism. So, we're better poster boys or what better marketing than to have some of your homegrown heroes yeah. um, going to represent your town and they're all tuning in right now the Leunion guys the Shargao guys and of course the Japanese with their competitors right now are we with their their uh, fans back home and their supporters yeah and, and support also from we've got to give uh, Upsa some love the United Philippine Surf Association Gino and Ralph and the crew um they're supporting surfing itself through the country, and, and they've great job. They've managed to just open up so many places and and expose so many people to mm. you know competitive surfing, and um, that's their goal. They're doing a terrific job at it, so um, we appreciate you guys. Yeah, absolutely great work for sure. I'm very impressed with what I've been seeing with them uh, over here. The way that they operate, running their events, are tune into the national tour, the Philippine national tour, uh, occasionally on YouTube there, and. I've I, s I listened to Camille do a post eat interviews. Fascinating. And getting her respect. That's our commentator there, there on the beach. Uh, she's getting better with each interview as well. She, Camille's great. And, you know, she asks, she's asking the right questions yeah. at the right time. Um, and getting info out of the surface. The other thing is she's a little bit like you, which I'm not like. She's got a great memory for what happened and, and what they were writing. And, you know, I kind of, uh, I guess I just don't have a good memory, but she's really good. So she can remember previous details of previous heats and question them on it as well, as, as you do. Yeah, and that's um, just part of the engagement. People surf for different reasons and people are in the industry for different reasons. And I'm a, f I'm a fan of the, you know, the facts and figures are a one thing, but I'm a fan of the storylines as well. And when you're invested in it, like you are with the Shargao guys and the events, I'm sure you could recall a lot of the events there at Shargao and high-scoring rides and stuff that happened 5, 10, 15 years ago as well. So, And you've been around a lot longer than us. Yeah, look, uh, there's a lot that I remember. A lot more to remember so, and a lot more to forget. And <laughs> here goes Kato, so a nice driving 
cut back there on that square tail JS. Um, I believe it's carbon. Things looking like an absolute blade on the shoreline there. I was checking it out. And um, see that. Needed a 5 on 1. Not sure if that'll be it. I remember one in particular. We, uh, the Chicago event used to be a, um invitational. And they invited Jamie O'Brien who came and he got in late. We actually put off the first heats to wait for him to get in and it was nasty six to eight foot heavy cloud nine. He paddled out there like he'd surfed it his whole life and he got something like an eight on the first wave and the second wave he just switched foot into a crazy barrel mate. It got a ten and it was in his first heat. It Switch, was, wow. Switch at cloud nine. So like it's a heavy takeoff as it is. Oh, he's up oh, to the air again. Boy, he just incomplete. didn't make it. And this is Noah. Ooh, nice snap there. And rapid fire, but unable to find an inside connection. So um, we'd have to say, oh, boys, that 3.05 in his wave before last. Now netting a 7.7, .7, so still going to there. Reduces that requirement a little bit more. Noah after a 6.4, uh, but a 4.5 and a 4.85 in Kato and O'Hara's scoreline, respectively. So yep. you'd have to say, with priority, first and second, the two Japanese surfers, as far as the statistics Odds go. Odds on at the yeah, moment. They, they will improve if there is sets for it. So yeah. I think Noah's going to think back at that uh, little reverse yep. error on the inside that uh, may have changed everything. But, you know, he can still do it again. Yeah. But you're right. He doesn't have priority. Yeah. Um, earlier in the, th in the day, when it was seriously on shore, it seemed like priority wasn't such an issue. There were just waves popping up everywhere. Now it's definitely more of an issue. They're more sitting together. Mm -hmm. And it's more lined up. It's more settled. And I look forward to hearing from co-contest director John Carby, uh, who's dealing with Jet out there, I mean, the last couple of heats. And it's so clean. I'm wondering if we're going to shoot through after the men's round and get a couple more of the round of 16. I'm Maybe hoping we do, to be yeah. honest. Um, you know, because we, you can't guarantee the wind here. And the fact that it's still yep. nice. I can see a bit of a line on the horizon there, though. True. I'm wondering if there's a bit of a push out there. So we should know before too long. Here's Noah again, inside priority or under priority. No, he's given up on that one. Um, I'm wondering if Noah should paddle away from them, you know, head down the beach, head up the beach, um, isolate himself and see if something comes his way. Because uh, as fourth priority, you know, if something's coming, it's not necessarily going to be his unless he gets incredibly lucky. You can see that line up there, lower tide creating a lot of opportunity. Here goes Ahara, of course. Beautiful wrapping carve there. And silky smooth style, low center of gravity. No downtime, just milking every bit of energy out of this wave. And a oh, classy, classy snap there from Ohara. And he works through the inside as he go complete. He doesn't, but all the hard work done on the outside. And, I mean, that's a healthy score. You'd have to say that that 4.85. Oh, I'm with you. It's gone. It's gone, yeah. I think it would be similar to his 6, maybe a little under that 6. But um, that's going to help him. That's pretty much consolidating his position. Um, but Noah and Jay Marie still have a chance to um, take that second spot out, although they're not holding priority. Um, I'm, I'm cheering for Noah. <laughs> I can't, can't help but get a bit excited, but um, he needs to do some work and he needs to do it quickly. Yeah, the, um, the wind is... I mean, it wasn't meant to lay down like it has, but it also wasn't meant to be that windy at 8 a.m. in the morning as well. So you can see that front on the outside. Yep. No idea what's happening on in the... Yeah, you can see it's, it's getting, getting closer. closer. So you'd yep. have to say it will be a pretty messy four heats coming up, um, mm. but we'll have to monitor it to see if we're going to move forward. 50 seconds remaining. And of course, O'Hara, a 5.5, that uh, 485 long gone. So O'Hara, Red's coming into it as a favourite. Um, Shohei Kato in second spot right now, looking to drop a 4.5. Uh, Oboiza, though, has priority, needing a 7.7. It'll be the... the Biggest uh, heat score of the last few heats, but I don't know. He's, he's possible. He can stick one of those airs. It's going to have to be a pretty big set. Here he goes. Surfing green. And he misses that wave. They all miss it, actually. And it looks like that'll be all that yeah, she wrote. 20 else, seconds remaining. Nothing else there. Sadly, we're going to say goodbye to the two young Filipino lads. Um, well, there's a p wave. They're paddling 10 seconds. Um, well, jamie has got the... Th the pro no, he's paddled over it. He's not going to get to the next one. That's... That's it. So congratulations to um, Hiroto and Shohi. They're going to go through to the next round. And a um, bit of a hands on the head there for, for one of them. A bit happy. A bit sad for Noah, I think he was. Um, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. And I guess we're going to a break and yeah. we'll be back shortly.
WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Okay, welcome back. We now have heat four, round of 32. Um, we've had one wave ridden by Varun Tanjag and he is our tall, young Indonesian lad. Um, I'm here with Johnny Carby, who's our co event director and how's the future looking for today John? Yeah I know you guys were talking about continuing through that is not the case at all Jerry Deegan um, we, by the time we get through this round of 32 it's already 20 heats through the day so that's a lot of work for the team out there the judges and to keep nice crisp and, and everyone attentive we'll sort of call it off after this uh, round of 32 uh, as per the schedule this morning we're sort of going to stick to it and honestly, we're, we're sort of blessed to have these waves throughout the day like this. Oh, I agree. It was looking a bit uh, of a worry there for a while. That's right here. Um, right just here. out of that one. Right here. That was J.R. Esquivel. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, that was, it was too. So, yeah, J.R. Esquivel in green out there. Blue and green should never be seen. Anyway, I get a bit confused. <laughs> there he is. Hang on. That's what I meant to say. Oh, that was an epic turn. Can he get out of it? Y yes, he can. He's clear of the whitewash. That is going to be a good single... Single manoeuvre wave right there. That was close to the best uh, non-air manoeuvre I've seen I'm today. I'm going to say that is probably yeah the turn of the event. The turn of the event. Um, I'm still going to give Keon that Superman. And like I said, I'm, I loved it, and the judges loved it. I didn't see the Superman. I was I was oh, on, I was on a break. That was an amazing. Hit. I was I was eating the lunch that you didn't get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. That was beautiful chicken too. Yeah. So shout out to the Costa Pacifica for giving us all our lunch, our rooms, beautiful location down here in Belair. Who's in this heat? Jerry, I think you've mentioned Varun. Varun yeah, yeah. We have J.R. Esquivel, who we all know and love. We have uh, Daiki Tanaka and Rahia Ono, who just got... Well, there's only a 3.65 for that manoeuvre, so I thought they were going to bust it up a little oh, higher. I loved it. And as a surfer, that's the move you want to do. Uh, yes, exactly. I mean, that, for me... Um, as a free know, surfer, I should clear that. As a free surfer, if I hit a section like that, I'm, I'm going home. Yeah, I guess they maybe thought it was a bit soft and he didn't get any fins out the back, maybe, I, I guess. Um, but either way, we're just going to go back and we're going to have an interview with the winner of the last heat. So bring it on, Camille. Hey guys. Yes, I am with last heat's winner, Hiroto O'Hara, who happens to be an Olympian surfer. You represented Japan in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And I think you also won the Bonsoi uh, Chiba Pro last year. Yeah. So that's a lot... Um, lot of experience for beach breaks so do you think this is similar to the waves in Japan? Uh, definitely yes uh, it's a beach break and um, in Japan it's a lots of times like this so um, yeah I'm used to this condition so yeah but it was very hard out there yes. You like Belair so far? Uh, yes uh, when I get here it was, was like big on shore but still surfable and it was fun so and actually no one else um in La, La Union was so many people always in the water so it was nice to not surfing with no one out and yeah I like here and do you want to say anything to your wife your kid I, I know that they're watching you right now and they're also your inspiration for winning events like this uh, 今年一発目の Okay, thank you so much, Hiroto, and uh, good luck on the upcoming rounds. Uh, looking forward to seeing more of your Chiba-style surfing. Okay, back to the live action. Chiba, Chiba Beach down there, that was a great interview. Thanks, Camille. Uh, we're getting some scores dropping in now. We're starting to see a bit of a clear situation. Veron just getting another wave then, so we've got a second score for him to drop in. Um, Rahia, ra, ra, say it for me, surfing blue. Rahia. Rahia, sorry, I got tongue twisted on it. Has got his two scores. He's dropped in a really good backup, which now becomes his high score. So a 3.65 for that single wave, and a 5.35 for his second wave up and riding is J.R. Esquivel. Also has a really good whippy backhand attack. 
and used to this style of beach break down there at La Onion, at La Onion. We have a little beach bay there, so I know JR's also spent a lot of time on waves like this. And say hello to Luke Landrigan, who oh, looked yeah. after us the last time there at Lonion and was the event director. But um, JR's backhand attack is phenomenal. You know, he really gets his board up and over the wave. Um, he's amazing and does it on his longboard as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just an incredible waterman, basically. Um, there's, if that, there's that fluffy wind. Sorry to interrupt. There's no. that fluffy wind just starting there. I uh, don't mind a bit of a fluffy wind. It sort of gives a bit of texture, but we've had some really nice clean waves. Our surfer in... White, Varun, Varun yeah, up two and really nice, well-connected moves. He's going to try to get through to the inside and finish this off. Um, this could, well, will I think it's beat his three already, but um, he's just just couldn't find any more power on the inside. But two really nice moves linked well on the outside, so I think he'll he'll uh, have a nice back up there. And that was just uh, Rahia up and down. Uh, decided he'd head back out. Didn't want to lose his second priority, I guess. It's hard on that angle to see where the other guys are. Yeah. Um, so Varun is also um, from a pretty thoroughbred family of surfers. Obviously, Rizal, um, one of the, I dare say, the first Indonesian to really make a statement in Indonesian surfing and go real international. Yes, I remember for sure. as, a, as a grom watching him, uh, Loose Change, I believe, is one of the videos he's in. Uh, I remember the first time he came to the Philippines, and um, uh, Manhala Rizal, by the way, but yeah, I was pretty excited to meet him. You know, I, I thought I would meet all these surfers, but uh, he was the man, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to get to meet Rizal. <laughs> it's cool, and here he is now at a Philippine event. He's been to plenty of them, that's he for has. sure, and he brings the family, and they make it a holiday, and um, it's pretty nice to see them all yeah. here. Loose Change, if you haven't seen that movie, download it, look it up. Loose Change, he's amongst the best of the best in the world and holds his own great little cameo acting role in there for him too. I think he's selling watches, it's brilliant. <laughs> Back when surf videos was super fun. Back when surf videos were surf videos, I and mean, it seems to be there was a lot of them. But I guess it's different um, distribution and things these days. I don't know that the money's there in it. Maybe I think it's Instagram was. clips now. It's it's that short. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, like Insta Insta glory, getting the yeah. dopamine up instantly on Instagram with a twenty second clip or a thirty second clip. Yeah, because we used to go and buy changing. them. We used to get them or rent them. You know. Uh, Mad Wax and, you know, all those crazy ones in the, in the meantime there. <laughs> I remember you used to get uh, some surf mags and you'd maybe get a free video with yeah. them and like, oh, yeah, that exactly. was a good old days. Wait when, for when tracks. We, when we had the surf resort, back then, that's what you did. You watched surf videos at night time and I've got to say, I got so sick of watching. Because when you live there, you know, all year and people only come in for a week and they watch the surf videos. Oh, my God, I got sick of watching surf videos. Everyone, everyone just trying to get their froth on for that morning Slater. session. Don't know how many times I've seen Slater in black and white, you know. <laughs> So Varun out there dropping a 5-0 for his last wave. He's got a 5-0 and a 3-2-5. Currently in second position. He needs just a 4 to get up into first place. JR, he received a 4-9-5, so that backhand whippy attack definitely impressing the judges down there on what wasn't a very special wave. So plenty more from JR and our surfer in red, Daiki. Finally up, up and riding. riding. Oh, oh, how? Did his foot come off then? That was crazy. Um, Daiki's hand, how is that possible? He's, he's a really accomplished surfer. He was on the Challenger Series last year. Um, Daiki's a 25-year-old who's, who's been around the traps, been to Shago a couple of times, but, yeah, made the Challenger Series last year, and he's um, yep, making and he, a nice fist to this one. He's going to finish it off. He's finding a little more power, and bam. He buddied up with Marimar Kong a lot um, in that Challenger Series. Like I said, these regional boys... Stick together really well, really yeah. tight. So at the moment, you'll see the Japanese boys with the Japanese boys, the Japanese girls with the Japanese girls, Filipinos will hang with Filipinos. When you hit that next level, we become Asia region, and you Correct. see those yeah. things sort of link up He's, together. He stayed with them when um, we dropped him at, uh, where was it, Newcastle? Newcastle, yeah. yeah. So I drove him up to Newcastle and um, dropped him at the Japanese boy's house. Yep. You know, so, yeah, Dagazan is, is one of his good friends, um, also with a few of the others. Um, I know Tenshi's always a big fan, favourite of the Filipinos. Yep. They, they love him because he does wonderful things. Up and riding is... Say it. Riha. Raya. Raya. Jerry's got a little link to the Japanese language and the name, so his wonderful wife, Susan. Shout out to Susan and a shout out to my wife. The Christine. irony would be if I'm actually getting it wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I, but I think it's right. Um, yeah, yeah. My wife Susan, half Japanese, um, half Austrian. Funnily enough, born in Australia, so she's quite the mix. Oh, we're on giving a bit of spice on the end of that one. Yeah, that's that just one of those confident turns. 
to get that extra little bit from those judges, make it a little bit more critical and confident in Yeah, well, hopefully he can dump that uh, 3.25. He only needs a 4.01 to move into the lead. Um, we're waiting on waves, though, for um, Rahia and Varon. Rahia, I think, may also... Oh, we'll see if he'll get a little bit more. Looking to drop a 3.65. We'll see. Yeah, the, I think I think they'll both drop them personally. Um, but I say it over and over again. I'm not a judge. <laughs> so. And so it was interesting. The lay down before we found the answer, and I guess you yeah, that was a that bit. was that was pretty cool. And yeah, like and I I was definitely wrong, but it's a new addition wrong. Basically. You were right. You're right because that was a rule. And what we're talking about out there is um, when one of our surfers previously, I think it was Susan Escamilla. Yep, Escamilla. Escamilla. She. Um, Took a wave, did a couple of turns out the back, couldn't get to the inside, laid down on her board and then did a nice turn after she stood back up. And I think in the old days, and it wasn't even that old days, but apparently that would have been scored as two separate waves because she laid down. And that was our question mark. But yeah. I went and chatted to uh, one of the judges um, who said, no, apparently that's not the case anymore. And they had a discussion out there when it actually happened and the head judge said... No, this is the way it is now. So. And if you are a QS surfer and you're watching this, as uh, we'll see Daiki san get up and riding with a 5.10. That was a nice turn. Unfortunately, couldn't ride out of it. If you are an up-and-coming aspiring surfer, it's important to know these little rules because someone who may have thought from the old theory may have sat down and and maybe not continued that wave, whereas Susan got up and absolutely smashed it on that on the last section. section. Yeah. So that sort of closed the picture for those surfers. Yeah, that's right. That, you've got, judges, it's yeah. like with every sport, you've got to keep up with the rules, new rules and old rules, because, um, you know, take make a new rule, it may be something you can take advantage of, maybe your opposition hasn't understood it or listened to it or learnt it. And, but so, you know, there's no reason these guys as professional surfers shouldn't be on top of every possible rule change. And I know the rules don't change that much in surfing. You know, for example, rules in golf, there seems to be a new rule every year <laughs> about how high you drop it, you know, once you're out of bounds and or whatever. And um, But nonetheless... It's very important for these guys and their coaching staff or their coaches yeah. to make sure they know what the rules are. And especially if something interesting comes up in a heat also. I know the priority rule, there is a lot of little things to keep an eye on on that priority rule. And every time something interesting happens, it's definitely worth paying attention and doing your best to understand what unfolded, why it unfolded and how you can use it in yeah. maybe one of your heats if that particular situation comes up. Correct. Zveron paddled hard for that one. And can he get around it? No, he's not going to get around that He was one. in second priority. Currently in first. Um, Rieha only needs a 3.80 to move up into first again. 3.91 for Daiki. And JR needing a four point. And JR, not JR. Oh. Right here, up and down. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to really love that one. What do you think? He's looking to get rid of a 3.65. I say... Around that. Line. I say around that too. I yeah. say a little improvement maybe into the fours. Yeah, okay. Just a hunch. You can see that wind is blowing up, so the golden moment has passed. Yeah, well, what happened? Well, what's happened three times today is <laughs> we've had a wind blow up, we've had a, a bit of a storm, a bit of rain, and then it's settled down again. But I don't see too many rain clouds out there at the moment. Actually, the first lot of blue sky all day. 11 minutes, yeah, it's quite nice. It's gone, we've almost done Melbourne weather down here. Four seasons, it was cool earlier, now it's quite muggy and warm. But still, enjoying it. There we are, the numbers dropping in for Riha there, a 3.65, so not even enough I to throw away. I, I should have said what I was going to say. I was going to say, it's going to come in at around what he had. <laughs> I thought <laughs> that's what we were saying. I thought it might go a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, just from the previous airs throughout the um, this round in particular of 32. We've had several. It's one of those go-to moves now in surfing. If you can't do an air reverse, don't bother paddling out. But that yeah. said, there's a lot of guys still hacking that power game. Um, Cole Hausman is a big, powerful surfer who's just recently qualified for the CT. Yes, yeah. Um, and I think you looked like the last heat, although the wind wasn't quite the same. Um, Hiroto wasn't going to the air. No. And some of the other surfers, Joe Marie tried to go to the air and just didn't work out for yep. him. Japanese have a really good rail game. There's no need for them to go to the air when they're dropping numbers like that. Just sticking rail to rail, which is, I don't know, I'm old school, Jerry. I don't know if it's that. I can't I'm do it. I'm airs. old school. Look at Oki. You know, yeah. Who doesn't want to see <laughs> surfing like that? <laughs> I don't know. It's because it's I can't do airs, but yeah. I do enjoy a bit of power surfing. And not saying that it's disappearing, but 
less dudes are doing it. But watching John John hack one of those eight foot, nine foot, ten foot bombs in Margaret River and oh, yeah. and just putting nothing but rail and power on, it's it's a huge display. Yeah, well, like you, I'm a huge fan. So I don't know about that one, Vroom, whether that's going to go better than his 4.15. He's certainly um, uh, taking a few waves, taking chances, and when you don't have priority, you may as well. He did it a very nice first turn, but there wasn't a great deal after that. Um, so let's see if that's near or better than his 4.15. I'm probably going to predict it isn't. Did you say that as it dropped with a 3.50? Well, I wasn't actually looking. I was going to look at our list of sponsors, which doesn't seem to be there anymore. Um, oh. Someone's run away with it, but I do know I'd like to shout out to the Ting Ug party list, uh, Honourable Speaker Romaldez. Uh, I think we have Pal on board with us in this one, the Philippine Airlines. Um, Costa Pacifica, the hotel we're in. Uh, Split Peak, here we go. Surfer in red, Daiki. Kicking off, I wonder how our surfer, Rahi, went on the left. Uh, green, actually, that was JR on his forehand. So I'm assuming he would have done a turn by that stage, and it looks like he was just trying to get back out in front to make sure those points went into the bank. I'm sure we'll get a look at that. That wind's really starting to, to come up now. Um, that's Reha. It'll start a bit of a wall on it. Will he get through to the inside? It's really fattening off there. Yeah, it's not uh, not much chop. So we might see what we were seeing in those earlier rounds where the guys were just and the girls were just going battling to get out of the three zone, and then someone would show up with one of those eights or sevens out of nowhere. We might end up in that sort of rotation again for these remaining four and a half heats. There's plenty of skill out there, and as we always say, the cream rises to the top. It does. Um, and I guess it's if you're in the next heat, you're probably a little bit disappointed looking at what's there now, but um, you just have to make the most of it. And there is Daiki, who is making the most of it. Can he get through on the inside? Looks like he, I was going to say will, but... Um, and he will. Was it worth it? That's the big question. He gets to finish off the wave, find a little bit of speed... What do you think? Worth it? He's still going. Oh, never say never. Well, he's only got to get rid of a one, so yes, it was worth it. <laughs> you know, that may have given him a half a point extra, so I think hanging on was probably well worth it, given that he only needed to get rid of essentially nothing. So um, he only needs a 3.91. He may well move into second place. Uh, he didn't. He got a 3.75, moves into third place. Uh, pushes Roger, JR back down into fourth place. But no one needs anything, really. It doesn't change that requirement for Daiki. He's still 3.91 mm. to get up into that advance into the round of 16. So plenty on the line for these guys, too. They are the top of the pile. Well, yeah, I mean, and when you say it doesn't change anything, if you come third as opposed to fourth and, and the points is critical, um, then there are some more points there for you. So that would be the only advantage of coming third over fourth. But given that... It would be a 33rd anyway. It would know, be an equal 33rd anyway, wouldn't it? I don't know. Do you, I know as you move up into the other ones, yeah, maybe. I, I know, think it's it an equal 33rd. That's all it is, I is don't it? think, yeah, I don't think there's too much point differentiation between 33rd if you're third or 33rd and oh, you're fourth. No, and there's another rate of them, so it would be uh, 41st or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> Remember when you used to? You used to know everything. Well, I used to be able to bluff my way through. Yeah, now, now I'm <laughs> bluffing my way through. Uh, six minutes remaining. Situation is the same. Varun in first. White, our current leader. Varun trying to throw away a 4.15. He just wants to get himself safe. Yeah, that's exactly what he wants to get safe and get through. Yep, it's not about really winning, but everyone likes to go through because it helps you with your sort of positioning into that um, next round. You may get a little bit of an easier because you're going to come up against the second of the last next one. Last one, wherever I am. It, it's, it's set up to assist the person who wins the heat. Put it that way. Yeah. Even though when you're going against some of these names, it's not going to matter too much. You're going to have to bring 100% every time you hit the water from the round of um, first round. That well, we're from in. the first round, exactly, yeah. That's right here. Nice turn. A bit of a foam climb. He's going to try to get outside there. It's not going to happen for him. So I'm going to climb that foam one more time. And he's going to stay as well. Very impressive to get those vertical foam climbs. Like, that's another element. It's like, how can you make foam a critical section? Yeah, yeah. I don't know that the judges love it. <laughs> but So a 3.8, couple of turns, one turn of foam climb. I don't know that that's going to take him to first. It's hard to be critical in a foam climb. It really is, no matter how you look at it. 
But I it, like it. I it, like the look. I, th- I sometimes think they're underscored, you know. I mean, and I, and I guess it's only due to the fact that I struggle to do it. So I realise that it's not just a simple manoeuvre. 3.75. So he's edging his way up. But 0.1 of a score through. So definitely doesn't get him that. Uh, what's he need? He needs a 3.80. So he's he's sniffing at the heels of it. Yeah, that was pretty close. Um, again, he's not going to care in the long run if he gets through. But you're much safer sitting in first than in second because then if one of the guys has a good wave behind in third and fourth, then they're going to take... They could go to first or second, but you're still in the progressing yeah. um, Well, position. the joy of that is also put the requirement up for Daiki and JR. Yeah. So now they need a 4.01 and a 4.15 respectively. Um, see how they go. Three minutes, 55 seconds. Um, next JR's heats. out there with pretty priority. exciting. Pretty exciting next team. Uh, uh, Marama, yeah, John to look at it. Uh, Robert Magaluna, uh, Takuda Ota, and Jayard El Ciso. So, Jaywood El Ciso. Jaywood, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a big uh, Shargao heat, that one. It uh, is. We'll see how we go. Obviously, apart from... Sadly, I'll have to walk away and I don't, don't get to call it. I'd be watching it on the beach, though, for sure. That's going to be a hot one. Uh, Marama fresh off his win in La Union. And that together with his Chargao 3,000 points, he's building quite a nice little purse. He's sitting 7th or 8th on the rankings, I believe. Yep. Uh, he had some pretty bad results, I think, in Korea and India. He hasn't hit his straps, basically, until uh, Chargao, where he got a, a win. Um, nothing really to pack it up so top four um, events well Shargo and LU yeah so your top four events go towards your total that's your top th- four yep. is it okay. and you throw away uh, anything under that have so you got any idea of what kind of number like for example what was last year that got in there is it you know 12,000 points or is it any ideas on the number um, there? no but there was also less um, events last year okay. So oh okay so it's hard to compare yeah it's sort of hard to compare oh JR nice opening whip into a foam climb, and another wheel. He's just so on point with those turns. If this thing stands up, he is looking the goods on this wave. Nice and smooth and composed combination there. JR really giving everything on this one. He's going to get into that inside section, once again doing the work, as Jerry would say, trying to get that little 0.5 of a point, but that was a really good, well-ridden wave. He I don't think there was a, a f- one particular fantastic manoeuvre, but there were a bunch of nice turns, and yep. they haven't been for a while, so you've got to be thinking that um, a 4.16 is more than possible there. Yeah, the flow on that one, I believe, is what the judge is going to be looking at. There's no, nothing big like that. We can see Rahia going there. Rahia uh, and Van Nuen. <laughs> yeah, um, and Verona at the back. So this is a flurry of... Activity at the end, and uh, Rahi has had a call there. He's had a claim, so he really liked it. He also um, knows this is a close heat. He knows JR just took one to the beach, so he's was wanting to tell the judges, "Yeah, that was that was my best one yet." Three very critical scores to come in here with one and a half minutes remaining. I don't uh, know if they'll get back out there for another opportunity. It's more standing up on that outer bank now, as opposed to where it was sitting on the inside earlier. So they're going to be scrambling to get out. And Daiki only needs, at this stage, a 4.01, but we don't know what those I scores are going to be. I think it's going to go up. I, I really do. Without question. Um, who's going to be at the top? Is going to be Flip anyone's coin. guess. Flip a coin. Yeah, I've got no idea there. I, I haven't even got a coin. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Daiki. All right, so he's pulling the trigger. Oh, it was um, sort of like his first one where he lost that front foot. Um, almost exactly the same. Yeah, but on the first one he made it though and then rode through and got a 5.10. That one, he didn't get his foot back off. on. Yeah. yeah. But an interesting thing, I'm pretty sure he okay, should. Okay, so JR managed to slide in there with a 4.6, which has taken him to the lead, but we're still waiting on uh, Varun and Rahia's score. So still anything can happen. So now a 4.55 for Varun to get on the front. Oh, and here goes Daiki again. This one looks a lot better. Ah, oh, but. Only two turns as opposed to what's been going on, unless this thing stands up again with 14 seconds. Waiting for two scores for Varun. It's still anyone's heat at this stage. This is going to be down to the wire. Jerry, with, keep your eyes peeled. Without question. Yeah, look, I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. I thought Rahia had a really good wave, so I'm thinking that he's got a pretty good chance. Um, the judges are out there just looking at the replays, so... I mean, it could be a, okay. a minute or so before we find out so anything. So Varun looking for a 4-5-5 five, five to take the lead. 
I I think he might get there. And then Raiha needs a 3.80, but I believe that requirement will change when Varun steps up in t- if he gets that 4.55. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I forget what happened, but yeah, this is yeah. this is coming down to the wire, and the judges won't get this wrong. They will have that next heat on standby because a very important exchange. As we can see, JR making his way in. Jumped into first within about the last two minutes. That's correct. It is, is it temporarily? And I see Varun's wave coming in at 4.3. So that went into his score, but it wasn't massive. It still means Rahia only needs it at 3.95. It's all but guaranteed JR into the next round. Well, dikey has got a wave too, so we've got two waves. So they could both... Dikey needing a 4.2 on those two manoeuvres. Yeah, I'm, really. I'm not disregarding him at this stage, but for me that wasn't one of the stronger waves of the heat. Correct. I think, I think Ray is going to get there personally. Um, it was a pretty nice wave, but like I said, we'll And leave. that will also put that requirement for Dikey up again. So a lot happened. Well, there you go. Ray has come in with a 5. Where is he? Ray, yeah. A 4.75, which was enough to take him into the lead. So we're waiting for Dikey's wave, which neither of us think necessarily are going to be a 4.45. And sadly, that's put Veron back down to third place. And I'm so. pretty sure the beach announcer is holding until all this drops in because he doesn't want to give anyone false hope or information until all the numbers are in. Yeah, it's a long wait. This is the longest wait I've seen in between heats Yep, um, for a while. And the cameras are on JR because he may be moving through to the round of 16. There's his little crew on the beach. And he is. Him. So the wave came in and sadly, Varun's gone down to fourth, Daiki third. So Rahia and Rogelo or JR have moved ahead. That was a pretty exciting last uh, minute or two. Good finish. Great finish. Not for everyone. Not everyone's going to be happy about it, but it was a great finish. And I believe we're going to go to a break now and we'll be back. Uh, with heat number five. Aurora, the greatness of its best stood for its beauty amidst events that that's never again. It's your best outstanding a town so rich in splendor from a province that's a breath away from heaven. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. We are back down here at the Balea Pro. Super. And looks like that wind's easing off again. It's such an interesting day down here in the wonderful Balea. And there's John Mark Maramat Takong getting things opening. John Mark in red. Robert or Raymar Magaluna in blue. Takuto Otta in white and Jaywood also Tata El Ciso in green. So a couple of Shargao boys and they're the ones opening this heat. See Jaywood go to the air. Wow. Unfortunately going over the handlebars. You could see his back foot come a little bit forward. And he sort of um, fell off that one. As his foot came forward on the front of the board, his back foot, and he sort of rolled over. There we are. Um, True <laughs> Starling and myself, John Carvey. Fun day, yeah. huh? It's been a great day. We've had some great surfing. We've had some great heat. Um, and we've still got more. It's exciting. We have got more. We've got another three after this. It's a long day. 20 heats of surfing. And it's been really good. So forecast was it was potentially going to be a windy afternoon. Mm. Uh, to get through day one like this with this quality of surf, epic. Look at that location. Yeah. Look at that coastline there. Can you imagine how many waves are going unridden right now? Oh, yeah. I could. <laughs> so could. many. Sometimes it keeps me up at night. You know, when you're <laughs> expecting a pumping swell and you're sitting there going, oh, no. Oh, it's horrible, isn't it? It's yeah. horrible. Here goes Raymar. So Cloud9 boy, so he knows how to attack a backhand wave more than most. And great forehand surfer also. And there's Jay Wood up and riding behind him again. So Raymar looking for the reform and Jay Wood getting to work out the back. 
Jaywood, oh. uh, brother of Eduardo El Ciso, younger brother, um, dynamic surfer. It's the instincts that these guys have is one of their strengths. Can react to any little situation out there and just put the right move on at the right time. Sometimes he can look a little bit erratic, but as he sort of settles down into it, he looks really good. Yeah, and this is Marama. Oh, big oh. turn <laughs> for Marama. That was a good-looking turn and a pretty exciting heat in that last one. Camille is down there with the heat winner, Raiha Onu. Thank you, True. Yes, I am here with Raiha Onu, the winner of that last heat, and it was such a suspenseful, nail-biting heat because the scores were just going up and down, up and down. So how were the nerves out there? How are you feeling that, you know, you weren't sure if you locked in a first or a second place? So, yeah, how are you, Raiha? Yeah, I'm feeling so good. But, like, condition is a little windy condition. But, yeah, I catch the last good one. It's so happy. Okay. And I think you recently turned 19 years old, like a couple of days ago. So yeah. happy birthday to you. Thank you. How are you liking Balear and the Philippines so far? Yeah, in Balear, it's a good place. Uh, amazing waves, so yummy hood. Yeah, everything is so good. And were you one of the guys who joined the local folk dance last night? In the, yeah. Did your feet get caught in the bamboo dance? Yeah, it's so hard, but so funny. Yeah, it's, it's so, yeah, I'm so excited. Okay. So I love this energy full of confidence and full of appreciation for anything that is on offer really by nature. So yeah, Raiha, you want to say anything in Japanese? Say thank you to your friends, family, supporters. えっと、スポンサーやまあ、I just want to say ski. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Raiha. And good luck in the upcoming rounds. Thank you. Back to the live action. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. That's what surfing's about and we get in danger of competitive surfing losing that fun and that yeah. joy and I loved that he I have showed it right there. I, I win and that personality. I watched uh, their table last night. They were having more fun than anyone. So yeah. stoked that they bring the stoke, so to speak. Because, yeah, it, it is a fun sport and that's the personalities that we love. A hundred percent. Yeah, Rai Hai, he's, he's one of those people where he just, you know, he's always smiling and he's, yeah. always, he's always got, you know, this really cool, happy-go-lucky energy. And he turned 19 a couple of days ago, so he's probably... Still riding off that, off his birthday <laughs> vibes. Um, he's been traveling a bit with Shohei Kato, which is super cool. And yeah, they're, they're quite funny together, actually. I think it was the two of them it that was, were doing they the were dancing. dancing. Yeah, yeah. We were, I, was, I was sitting there like, just laughing at them. They didn't pull back. They were having a ball. So. I love that. I was watching it and I was thinking, if I was doing that, my ankles would get snapped in that bamboo because I'm not that quick. <laughs> yeah, they, they were also dancing at their table most of the night when, oh the, when we had the symphony strings sort of playing around oh, as yeah, well, so they yeah. were dancing along to that. Uh, they, they were the highlight. I was, like I said, when stuff like that goes on, not only do I enjoy the show, I enjoy people who enjoy the show, like yourself <laughs> and like them. So bring the stoke. Always bring the yes. stoke. It's what it's about. Have fun. That's how you do an interview. Yep, absolutely. And here we go, Raymar. Trying to get around this one. Bit of a split screen with Jayard as well. And a bunch of waves in this heat. Both trying to These boys are going turn for turn. Wow. This split screen is insane. Bang. Both of them going all the way and just Whoa. just going to town. Good luck, judges. They're going to have to watch some of that. We're going to have to wait for those ones. Yeah, there's so much going on right now with all the, all the waves coming through. I feel like there's plenty of opportunity. That last heat seemed like it was just constantly changing. That was incredible. That was exciting. That last five minutes, it was nonstop. Uh, Marima, Mar John Mark Takong. Dropped in a 5.25 for that nice little, what would you call it? Nice little lip line snap sort of came through that critical yeah. section. 5.25, so pretty high single maneuver for a turn. We've seen airs go to that level. Uh, we saw Kian's 8.25 mm -hmm. go as an air, but that as a turn, I think might have been one of the highest turns of the day that I've seen anyway. Yeah, I agree. That was a really good turn. Timed it well. Finn's... 
kind of free a little bit as well. And got <laughs> the tail kind of really free high. a little bit. He yeah. did. He sort of got he messed did, up right? in our phone yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. Of, we lost him for a moment and which, I was like, which where is he? The judges appreciate because it gives it that critical nature about it. Yeah. And for him to stand through that pretty confidently and comfortably was why we locked in that. We didn't do anything. Yeah. Why they locked in a 5.25. Yes. Thank goodness we don't have to lock in anything. So yeah. I am very happy about that. <laughs> they, um, Here's Jaywood. This is his long, drawn-out right-hander. Oh. Yeah, nice snap. Like, just a whippy surfer. Good on the rail, too. Mm. So he didn't bog anything there and just kept that, that speed and flow the whole way through that turn. And then a nice little zippy finish. I think he hits it with a little rebound on this, too, from what I saw. Also with a little bit of snap. Yeah, a bit of pizzazz about it. And then Raymar, this is his one. They were pretty much going, as he said, turn for jerk. Turn for turn. Raymar took a little bit longer to get into. He had nothing until now. Mm. So I think Jaywood's going to get the best of that exchange. Raymar didn't actually really get any good exclamation points until that last manoeuvre. Yes. 3.05 for Raymar or Robert Mangaluna. And then a 4.35 for that last wave of Jayard. Jaywood. Jaywood, sorry. Yep. Jaywood LC, so. Jaywood. Also affectionately known as Tata. Here he Tata. is again. Tata, yep. So him and I think he's got two, three, two other brothers. A shout out to LG back home. Uh, they're all nicknamed Tata, which makes oh. it super helpful, especially if you're the parents. Just nickname your kids all the same. Guarantee you'll get one show up when you call them. <laughs> My, yeah, Not I, a bad technique. I do sometimes get called Jesse in the household, and I think, <laughs> wrong wrong daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but if you're all nicknamed the same, then you're going to show up no matter yes. what. So a good strategy by the parents of the LCSOs. Absolutely. Well, 15 and a half minutes to go. Marama going out to an early lead, a 5-2-5. We saw him take the victory over at La Union last week, and also at Chargao in cloud nine. Yep, we're talking about that before. So he's got two 3,000s in his pocket. Not much else, though. Here he goes. He's probably going to look for that ramp and a little bit behind the eight ball from the get-go. And Raymar on his backhand. Really good advantage to be as good on your backhand as your forehand. Mm. It's very helpful uh, and rare because most of the time he spent is out at cloud nine. But little known, there is a right-hander on the end of cloud nine. So goofy footers will often sneak over to that and get some really good little waves. And there's plenty of other waves there, so... But I know Raymar loves Cloud9. And his pig dog style into a massive set is amazing to watch. Really? Yeah, Filma Alipayo has like probably the best backhand style and he's sort of helped Raymar sort of hone his style, learn how to sort of drag that front leg and sort of set your body into a position. And now Raymar's just like, you'll see them scoop in under the lip on some monsters. Oh. So fun to see. So oh, shout out I'll to Raymar. That. Shout out to Filmar. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, backhand pig dogging. That's one of my. I love watching it. Yeah. No matter who's doing it, I love watching that technique and just watching how you sort of dragging your body. I've seen some use guys use their back. Uh, I've seen someone use their hands on the front rail of their board to do a stall before laying back, and they're just like Clay Marzo is also one of those. Wow. Well, those yeah. guys you want to. Yeah. Actually, backhand, he's not a forehand. He's a monster. Mm. He does stuff what people can do on their backhand on his forehand. So, yeah, yeah. just watch techniques. Watch surfing. Wow. Enjoy yeah. it because everyone has these little tweaks and things that works for them but not, might not work for you. So, I love it. It's good Hone everything. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I love surfing. Refine everything. Love surfing. Keep going. <laughs> it's exciting. It's one of those sports where you can just keep getting better and better and better and better. Like, there's no... There's no level. There's no roof that's going to stop you. And wow. Marama just really showing that as well. <laughs> Taking to the air. <laughs> and here he goes. He's going to get the reform. Wow. Really choosing these sections. Releases the fins again. And once again, finds another little rebound. And I'm loving that he's gone to a turn because I was thinking three for three. That's a lot. But anyone can do it. It's going to be Marama. And he's <sighs> going to get out of that one. He's also setting a statement to all the other competitors. So this is his first heat of this event, uh, seeded into the round of 32. Uh, Kian sent a message. This is Marimar's answer back for sure. Mm. Nice. Air reverse, just smooth. Didn't miss, a, didn't miss a beat before he was up looking for this uh, reform. And he gets it. This, this air was a little bit more scrappy. <laughs> just more of a blow tail, I'd say, than an air. Uh, Would have been good to see him reverse it around, but... Did enough. Definitely going to be the best of his little outcomes, I think. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that'll definitely surpass that 525. Five. Well, not definitely. I'm, I'm yeah. assuming that it will. I don't actually <laughs> well, no, know. No, I'm with you. I think there's some safe calls, but everyone, yes. <laughs> everyone waiting for scores to drop at this moment. So yeah. while Marimar was taking that thing from start to finish, three other riders got up and into the game also. So nothing from Jaywood by the looks of things, just a throw away. He mustn't have got to his feet. Um, as we can see, Takuto, he's on the beach there, so he must have a decent number to follow. And Raymar, I'm not sure where he is, but he also got involved out there at some point. Yeah, everyone's got waves to lock in. And that's, you know, that's why I love beaches because there's so many waves that roll through. There's so much going on, many opportunities as well. And we saw Takuto this morning in one of the first heats. He had a great heat, just kind of really um, dominating and setting himself apart, Yeah, I think, in the sense where it was just... he. I think he just only got a 6.25 and a 4.75, if my memory serves me correctly. Trust yours and mine. <laughs> and, you know, he didn't do too much out of the ordinary, but he did what he needed to do. And in round one, it's, you know, that's a good way to kind of stick to the recipe. So wondering where he got in that last one and scores are looking pretty good for this last wave of Marimar. Oh, there we go. Those boys split in the peak. I think Raymar was very careful not to get an interference, just making sure Takuto went on the right, and here he goes getting to work. Uh, and remember that the judges are going to have Marimar's wave in their mind. S looking for that open face a lot there, but it definitely yeah. put some good hits on it. Uh, definitely a bit more critical in nature off that lip line, a little bit more than we've seen some of the other competitors. And this is going to be Raymar heading to the left, I assume. And he's in an air reverse. Wow, he gets it. Maybe even a bonus section here. Yep, looking if this thing stands up. So this is why the scores were taking a while to drop in because they weren't just waves. They were some waves of consequence. Raymar just getting to work after that air reverse. Body wow. language good on him. He can feel it. So we have a heat. Here we go again. Yeah, well, 7.9 for that last wave. Marama, we got scores for Raymar and Takuto to lock in as well as you said that last one for Jay Ward. Jay, Jay Wood, yep. Jay Wood. Wood. Jay Wood? Yep. It's going to take me a while to get that. Jay Wood. Yeah. It, 0 there's, 0 a, there's a lot of, lot of letters in there. <laughs> okay, scores are in. A 5.3 for last of Takuto. And we got a score for Robert or Raymar to lock in as well. He needs a 5.75 to go into second. So we'll see where that locks in and Jay Wood now Jay needing Wood. a 481, but yeah, yeah. Raymar with that score to drop in. I think Raymar might shoot himself maybe close to the lead. I don't know. It's going to be, I think it's going to be around there. Yeah, you can see Joe Azuchi preparing for his next heat on screen there, as well as Kosuke Okamura. Great, guys. And that's going to be a very exciting heat. All Japanese up against the local kid, Alan Magos. Yeah, Oni Anmar from Indonesia. Oh, sorry, I didn't see Oni at the top there. <laughs> Shout out to Oni. He's definitely not Japanese. He's 100% Indonesian. Yes. And proud and great little contingency from Indonesia. All the boys out there just always out to have fun and enjoy themselves and always happy for a chat as well, which is super nice. There he yeah. is, doing his stretches, going through his motions. Got no. two boards on the beach there. Yeah, interesting. He might... What do you think? A bit more volume in one, possibly? Yeah, maybe an epoxy and then maybe just a backup of that. One um, looked like a rounded tail, one looked like a rounded square tail, so yeah. maybe something in the tails that he knows. I'm sure he's very in tune with his boards. That was Raymar finishing one off. His last wave was a 4.65, so he needs a 4.51 to get into second place because Takuto's 5.3 has him sitting in second place. Pretty nicely right now. Yep. Ray, uh, Marimar quite comfortably yep. out in front. Um, seven nine and Takuto a five needing five. a seven eight six to get up to him. So Ray, uh, Marimar's on his fourth wave. So all the other guys getting a little bit more busy apart from Takuto, who's on his third wave now. Yeah, trying to find an open face on this one. Nice connection there. Just trying to make the most of these sections. And wow, weaving through. Gets a little link up. Redirects it for a left. Nice connection there. Driving through this inside section as he's hoping to get a solid finish. Puts it up there and whips it around. Nice. Smooth surfing. And I was talking about Raymar's um, natural, and uh, sorry, forehand and backhand. Um, goes hand in hand with what Takuto can go out there and do because he's used to beach breaks. He probably goes 50% of the time right, 50% of the time left. 
And we just saw on that wave he did 50% of the wave right and 50% of the wave left. Yeah. And didn't miss a beat on either his forehand or his backhand. So I'm sure that'll be a nice number dropping in. Probably going around that mid-range as well. Might lose his 3-8-5 is my guess. And maybe push up another score to get closer to back up his other wave. Yeah, I agree. I think we'll probably see a flurry towards the back end of this heat. We're already seven minutes to go. Raymar up and riding right now, or Robert Magaluna, 451 is his requirement in that wave. Just he was moving well for a wave that wasn't a wave. Yeah. <laughs> he had a lot of speed to transfer through to that next section, and that never happened. Super cool watching these guys and how much speed they can generate off a ripple. Yeah blows my mind every now and then and I'm thinking that's actually not a wave and you're gaining speed I've seen you do pretty well out there too <laughs> you can get yourself from section to section thank you <laughs> I don't know about that yeah <laughs> humble humility is a, a good a good asset to have true so <laughs> I can hands down say that I can't do that <laughs> where, where you're in another world so you're definitely um, going good going good you're not in this event no I'm spectating this event ooh here we Loving go. It. Jay Wood El Ciso. He has the tools to get it done. He just needs the scores at this point. He needs to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, that last score, 4.40 for Takuto, dropped in. So still within range. And Jay would get, oh, nice rebound. He's spent as much time going left as he has right also. Going back to back again with Raymar. Wow, it's getting it's getting pretty close. That last wave of uh, Raymar's is to lock in. Yep. So Raymar just got Marimar one. Got Jaywood one just got well. one, and Marimar got one, and he's out the back. So my guess is tried to throw an air out there. Yeah. At the moment, he knows where these airs are landing. He probably wants to see where a single air is going to get him. So he's, yeah, he's in a comfortable place right now. So he's probably just feeling out the judges. He's got the wiggle room to do yeah, that. Yeah, and it is fun being out in front. And he's probably just saying, all right, I just want to get comfortable, but I can mm. play a little bit. Yeah. And as we saw with Kean throwing Supermans, it's, it's fun when you can play a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was cool. That was really cool to watch. That was an 8.25 earlier on. First heat of the round. Yep. I'm going to get out there after this into my room, chill out, put some music on and probably watch some of those replays because it's been really good morning surfing. Here goes yeah. Maram again. Wow, just throwing the tail on that one for John Mark to Kong. Once again, answering back to maybe Kian's, you know, <laughs> staple of a Superman and getting that 7-5 as well. So Marama's like, hey, don't forget about me. I, I won the last one. Yeah, and it's just how smooth that Marama can do those things. Mm. Like just effortless is why he can just pop out. He's probably going to pop out another 5 plus for that maneuver. Just, yeah. just effortless, which is... Super nice to have in your back pocket and to pull out in those critical times when you need it. So three scores still to drop in. These athletes not giving the judges any chance to actually punch these numbers in. They just keep riding waves. Yeah, there's a lot going on towards the back four minutes of this heat. Scores to come through for Marama, for Jay Ward and also for Robert. That was better. Jay Wood, you got Jay that Wood. one? And then Jay Raymar, Wood. yeah, yeah. Jay Wood. Jay Wood. Jay Wood. <laughs> 4 for Jaywood. Jaywood, great. 3.0. for Raymar. Not the scores that they're looking for. A 5.35 for Jaywood. And Raymar's looking for a 5.06. Yeah, so Marimar did throw in a little 2.20 out there. That one that we didn't quite catch wasn't worth the replay, so we didn't miss anything spectacular. Yeah. Um, but this next one, I think, will be worth a mention. Yeah, scores to lock in for this next one for Marama and Rayma out the back. Oh. Just getting out of that one, unfortunately. A little bit late. 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 I could see in the mind he he wanted to send that one. Mm. Just got a little bit late behind the section. Better to just get back out and reset. Knowing what he needs to do with a 5.06. 4.40 for that one manoeuvre of Marama. Yeah, it doesn't go into his top two, but that's okay. He's... Yep, and, it, and he will take that in. He will take that on board and go, okay, there's a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. So later on in the rounds, he knows where he can throw a 4-4 four, four, yes. roughly. The scale does change and adjust, but he's going to know that manoeuvre is going to get him into that range. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, he's got those on lock now. It, whatever yeah. wax he's using, I'll <laughs> steal that off him. <laughs> yep, and that's a part of that challenger series that 
he's been through those big moments. Um, and then you can bring it back and be a lot more confident in this QS to hopefully build more confidence if we get back to that CS. So it's an incredible mind game, and it's a ch- it had the level changes in this ch- qualifying series to the Challenger series to the CT. It's not small steps. It's it's intimidating and it's overwhelming at some points until you sort of get into that rhythm. And it's, and it's good what they bring back because they build on themselves. Yeah. And it's, you know, mo- graduating to that Challenger Series Tour, you've got to work twice as hard as what you did for the QS. And then graduating from that to the Championship Tour, it's three times, four times as much to really keep up with the best of the best. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand how elite those guys actually are. Guys and yeah. girls, sorry, and I'm not missing out on the women. They're the ones also setting that huge standard and taking that sport into the next level. I can't wait to mm-hmm. see when they get their time at Pipe because that's an exciting that's an exciting part of the world, watching the women out there at Pipe. Yeah. Terrifying for most, and they're taking it on like nothing. Yep, they're ready for it. They are. It's been a great like development in, in women's surfing over the last and the progression now like the last few years has just been open slather for the women it's epic to see and the next generation are taking it even further can't wait it's really cool you're seeing uh you know girls as young as 12 years old yeah like mara lopez right now just pushing the boundaries yeah in qs 3000s it's exciting to see the maturity and how young that starts to develop but right now for the man, Marama is once again just showing the fact that, you know, he's he's here and he's got a job to do and he knows exactly what he wants and he wants to get to the finals and get that 3,000 points. And Takuto Ota is hopefully going to solidify second place. But Jaywood and Raymar... They've got the priority to make a difference and we'll see how this last little set wave rolls in. Is it going to stand up correct or is it going to be unfavorable? Let's see. Yeah, this is Raymar. One nice backhand snap, a 5.06. He puts it up there again for another one. They were two pretty good turns. Gets a third and a finish, redirects it, and then out behind him, Maramar just, yeah, doing what he does. <laughs> Maramar doing Maramar things. Yeah. As this event really, like Maramar's doing what he does, but it's about what Raymar did. That's yeah. what it's going to boil down to on this one. Uh, where do you think? It was three pretty strong turns. It was well linked together. Those first two were mm. super critical and super nice. Um, there hasn't been too many waves like that either. Yeah, five zero six is what he needs needs to get to second. I think he's going to come pretty close to it. I think there were three really nice turns. Oh, we're going to get to see these numbers drop in. This is what we get to see on our screen every yeah. time. So it's great for you guys at home to see these numbers as they drop in. So they'll be watching a replay right now down there uh, just to make sure that their numbers are correct. Just their own heads. Um, the judges, as you can see straight away, you can safely say that Smash, it doesn't take long. That yes. was that was good surfing from Raymar and he will be stoked. I haven't heard the beach commentator yet, but you can probably shout us off to an ad. Yeah, well, it looks like Raymar and Marama are moving on through to the next round. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Onyanma, Joe Azuchi, Kosuke Okamura, and Alan Magos right after this quick break. WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back. We are 
Going through this day at a rate of knots, heat six of the round of 32. This is the QS3000, the Belair International Pro. Matt Chinoski joined by True Starling, Tony Anwar, Joe Azuchi, Kosuki Okamara, and Alan Margos from the Philippines. International affair out there, True. Who have you got your uh, $200 million lottery ticket on? <laughs> Myself. <laughs> no, I think um, Oni, he had a really great run over at La Union last week, getting, I think, equal third from memory. Um, but Kosuke, he's already had a heat out there today, and we saw that momentum working really well for a few people uh, this, uh, in this round. We'll talk about that um, lottery. It's been the word on the streets. A lot of people buying up those lottery tickets. It's a big lottery be drawn tonight, I believe. And Azuchi just opening up the three-turn combo on this one. And there's Alan trying to spin to win, as a lot of the Filipinos have been trying to. And it was Maramar in that last seat who did get the win. But a lot of them just really go into the air and not really with a lot of success. Yeah, which was unfortunate. We saw um, the change in the leaderboard in that last heat. Rayma or Robert Magaluna getting up into second place with a 6.5. Three really nice uh, backhand snaps. There was not really much downtime in between them as well. Really clean in between turns. Um, but yeah, all four of our surfers, wow, they got scores to lock in. And that last heat, it got really heated towards the last five minutes. And Oni Anwar comes into this as the undisputed favourite, although he's number 19 on the rankings, 30 years old, veteran, lots of experience. And here he is there. He's going to be channeling not so much his Lakey Peak experience, but his Kuta Beach experience out there. Just a uh, very common, um, commonly surf beach break down there halfway. A shout out to the halfway board riders who will be watching this as well. Some of their surfers coming up. In the draw, we've got Danny Widianto coming up in Heat 8 as well. So no stranger to the beach break scenarios. Uh, standout result, yeah, third over there in La Union. And that'll climb him up the rankings quite a lot. He was down there in the 30s or 40s, I think, below that um, last, last week. So he's skyrocketed up to 19. A good result here. We'll see him go even further up in lead. As he'll go back to Australia, where he's very, fam very familiar with and mm. um, look to put on some more points for the Asia region there. We talk about those dual sanction events, one in Newcastle, the 5,000, and the one in Avoca, the 3,000. Those points will only spread to the Asian region. And that's super crucial for people to understand. So they, it's not a pointless exercise to go there. Joe Azuchi, uh, two events he did on the Challenger Series in 23, uh, as did Oni actually, he had three appearances. Unfortunately for Joe and Oni, both of them uh, not overly successful. But here he goes, Azuchi, a nice backside hammer. And super precise. And somebody who was putting on a clinic and was some showing some precision themselves in these beach rate conditions was last heat winner, John Mark de Kong, who's down on the beach with Carby. Yep, thank you, Waxhead. I'm sort of everywhere at the moment. I sort of caught Marima on the way out and thought I would come down for a chat epic start to this event uh you must be pretty high still off your win in the onion but i can see you back to business out there in this round of 32 and you took to it how was it oh well so fun like the beach break i also love it so i have a plan also to be you know busy and pick the right um spot where i should be sitting down and yeah so confident and just focusing right now every heat so back to work you know and pretty excited Busy on the beach? Is that one of your favourite sayings? Busy on the beach <laughs> and relax in the reef breach. <laughs> but you were pretty, um, I'd say quiet out there. You didn't get too busy. You made some smart choices. Uh, and obviously taking to the air, it's one of your favourite things. Uh, did you catch Kian's heat earlier? Oh, yes. I saw I've been watching him. Oh, he got eight point something and a 7.5 doing... Um, a rotation and a superman. I was like thinking, oh, should I do a superman? It might be good <laughs> because I'm really confident also doing a superman in um, back in Shragal. So yeah. Yeah, and that's what I sort of bring it up for because I know you feed off other surfers when they're out there ripping. Uh, how's your free surfing been? You got out there, had a few fun sessions. Yeah, I feel good. Like just trying to get used to it. Where's the you know the proper beachy? Like where's the waves breaking? So. So just trying to get busy and then keep surfing, fill it out, what waves and what board also need to, you know, good, like been using this one in, since in La Union. So I try another one, a little bit more volume. I was like, oh, I'll stick on this one. I think this one, it's a magic board. 
Stick with the flavour that you know, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, and lastly, you've got the same support network, same support crew with you, travelling with your family, your sister, your daughter and your girlfriend. How's that going? Oh, oh doing so good. Like, we've been travelling around and we went, um, yesterday we went somewhere south and we went to the um, lighthouse something and then searching for wives. Um, something good there and we really want to go, go back there after the call finish. Okay, so don't forget to invite your friends when you go for that surf and keen to get out there. Uh, you want to shout out to your sponsors and the people that help make this possible for you and a shout out to your family in Charlotte Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, shout out to my family, to my sponsor, to my friends, to my fans, all the people that are watching in this event. And um, yeah, thanks. thank you guys so much for your support. All right, so back to you guys in the live action. Let's see what happens. Uh, activated uh, Marimar, uh, carrying that energy that he reserved, usually catching a lot more waves out in the surf, but he didn't catch that many in that heat. It was a really clinical performance. What did you make of that? Uh, well refined. That was a very well refined heat. He, as he said, he was busy in the beach breaks. I mean, he was busy on the good waves mm. out there, and that really makes a difference. Um, he looked confident. He looked glued to his board. And I think he was ready to kind of answer back to Kian's heat at the early start of this round as well. They had a really great final over in La Union. And I think, yeah, Maramar just wanted to remind everyone who took that out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, feeding off that energy. Alan Margos uh, just making his intentions clear, trying to do some radical surfing, perhaps going to the air. Uh, Okamura, we saw him earlier with a great performance. Um, part of the young squad he's a rapper and it's good to see him traveling actually with some of his japanese uh, cohorts but um, putting in a great strong performance this morning only needing a 2.7 jump up in a second this heat really hasn't got started yet a couple of marginal scores these guys are waiting for sections that aren't quite there i noticed that tide is approaching low those sets haven't really got a corner on them true really difficult mm. out there to locate some of those ways perhaps the left going against almost against the wind but it is relatively straight on shore so kind of hard to get any, well, trying to hard to find which direction is actually the preference, left or right. I was trying to find some corners out there, mind surf it myself. Pretty difficult right now, and that's been the order of the day. Some heats seem to have been uh, blessed with a lot of opportunity, and other heats, same conditions, but just maybe a little lackluster in those corners. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I have for sure. There's definitely been moments where... Um I've seen even in that last heat, Raymar was on a few waves and I'm, I was thinking, oh, wow, this is going to do something and then just kind of fades out. Um, so like you said, finding those corners, finding those ones that also link up from out the back to the inside, that's, yeah, that's, it, it's a task that you definitely need to identify and I think spending a bit of time uh, figuring out where to sit, figuring out which waves are probably most likely to hit that inside connection is super important when preparing for heats. Yeah, as that tide does drop, another hour still to go. We will probably see less inside connection. You can see the bank's quite shallow right now, not a lot of push in the inside. So I think that could also be the change. That tide has dropped out, not allowing for any bonus section. So it's, I mean, Marimar made it look really good, but it was tricky out there towards the end of that heat. Um, but a 5.5 five and a 4.5 for Azuchi, some uh, crisp surfing from Joe and Anwar in second, just two marginal twos. And uh, two events in the 23 uh, Challenge Series, as I said earlier, a second in Sha Gao, uh, fifth in La Union. So he's got some, I mean, Azuchi's had some great results. He comes in ranked fourth. He's in that, that sort of cusp, I guess you'd say, not quite confident moving to Australia yet. If he can climb up the rankings, perhaps get another fifth place finish here or even a semi, even better to win it. Uh, that's going to really go into his, into his score line and a couple of thousand points would be very beneficial right now. Of course, these surfers are vying for that opportunity on the Challenger Series, which will be coming up in April. The cutoff. Oh, and a big backside fan of spray there for Mr. Anwar. Yeah, that was really nice. Super well timed, rotated um, perfectly with his body as well. And um, yeah, Oni's got a great backhand, as we saw on that wave, just demonstrating how much spray he can throw. Um, I liked it from Oni. He needs a 735 to go to first. It's not going to be that, but it's definitely going to mm. better his 2.65. Yeah, sensible surfing there from only Anwar, and just knowing he's not going to try and get that. So, yeah, a 4.15, so straight up there, third best wave of the heat. Uh, that consolidates. We talk about, to, about 
you know, earlier rounds, four-man heat, the strategy is a little different to a two-person heat uh, with priority and obviously just a lot less waves on offer with four people. Keeping busy exactly like this is the key. So experienced QS competitor on that Cabianca board. He's, had, he's brought a few boards here. He's got a round tail. I believe he's on the square tail right now. And he had a, a carbon stringer and a slightly different composite material down there in... Uh, uh, over there, sorry, in La Union. And this one, I'm sure you'd be riding a single to a slight double concave uh, just to suit beach breaks a little better. With that single concave, which we saw some of the surfers opting for in the clean conditions of La Union, is very sticky in beach breaks. Uh, do you have any preference with the boards or you just get whatever your... Who, what boards are you riding? The edge, oh, Luke Short, Luke LSD. Short, yeah, so right he'll LSD. be making you single to slight doubles through the fins, no doubt. Yeah. And they feel lively, twitchy, at the same time controlled, right? Yeah, I've and got, round tails. Yeah, round tails. Yeah, I got two. I yeah, I've got two magic boards at the moment. Um, so thank you, Luke. And yeah, today if I was going for a surf, which I probably will at some point, I'll be on the epoxy for sure. Um, yeah, the, it's a it's li the epoxy more my epoxy. It's lively. It's a little magic carpet, very responsive. And I think when you can find a board like that, it's hard to let it go, and you want to replicate that, but. You know, obviously, you can't always get a board and it's going to be exactly the same. It could be, you know, glass when the yeah. weather's a little bit different or, you know, things can Little flex can differences. Yeah. And, uh, even the way the machines are set, if you're getting a board, the same model made in a different country, sometimes the machine settings can just be ever so slightly out. And that extra eighth, sixteenth of an inch around the whole perimeter of the board can actually add... Um, half a litre or a litre of two levers of difference. And it's the same dimensions. Mm. Uh, the glassing as well, certain... Um, uh, glassing methods, some people leaving more more resin on a surfboard than others. Uh, if it's a, a pro glass job, super lightweight, it'll end up being a little different to someone else's glass job. So still variables out there. If you have a magic board, it is difficult to replicate even with machines. So it's never been easier to do that. That's why a lot of surfers are bringing multiple boards. You see them lining the boardwalk here. Surfers have got two, three boards here uh, just in case conditions change or they snap one or you know break a fin out. And uh, so far out in the lead, Joe Azuki and Oni Anwar in second. Alan Margos looking for a 5.35 and Okamura a 5.25. So he's a cruiser and with that priority, he'll be looking for, I mean, you're probably not a long wave, but just something to tee off on the lip. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like we were talking earlier, you know, finding that moment, mm. finding that commitment off the bottom, off the top. That's where you're going to see yourself kind of separate from everyone else if you can get one big turn we saw that from Oni on that backhand snap 415 for that one turn um we saw the same in that last heat a 525 for Maramar and wow look at this set coming through wow. looks like Joe up and riding so uh Okamura over there on the left and Joe on the right nice foam climb fan of spray he's going to try and look for something on the inside he's way over to the rip so he may get a little connection but yeah, it's, it's that tide drains, making life a little tricky. Uh, but that'll be a nice backup wave to that 5.5. Might eclipse that 4.5. Thoughts? Yeah, I think so. It was it was a good-looking wave. And here we go. Costa K up and riding. Once again, nice slash there. Straight off the bottom. Oh, that was a good connection. And that's about it for Costa K. And uh, Method Man, the music that's going through... Okamura's head right now, the rapper. It's always, uh, you should see his steez on land. Like I saw him the other night at the after party for after the closing ceremony. He had those 90s super baggy jeans on, some uh, black TN style Nikes with a baggy shirt and a chain. He was, and he had a uh, hat on as well. Can't remember what baseball club it was, but it was a new era hat, of course. Wow. Uh, he was looking really. Um, yeah, he was repping hard. It was pretty <laughs> cool. He was very cool. Good, cool dancer too. And um, yeah, it's always nice to see the personality of these surfers outside of the competition jersey. Akabi uh, mentioned earlier, it's it's just nice to see the personalities come out beyond the the numbers game that is professional surfing. Because behind behind the competition jersey, there is a personality. There is a lifestyle beyond competition. It is one of the few sports, if you even want to call it that that you get knocked out, but the first thing you do the next day is check the surf. Mm. And there is not a single other sport in the world where you go check the playing field the next day. Can you relate to that? Absolutely. Even 
20 minutes after a heat, I'm checking the surf. Or going out to wash it away. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's an outlet. It's a, you know, it's the one thing where, you know, there's moments where you go, I'm so angry because I've just lost out there and surfing. But you go surf to yeah. surf it out. You have your, your session where you get everything out and then you come in feeling way better than what you did. And there's, I'm sure any competitor can relate to the fact yeah. where you've lost needing a... 5.21 for example and you go out there and on your first wave you get what you think is a 5.21 yeah that's it yeah, it is just uh, making yourself feel better but hey if there's no waves you can always go to the dance floor <laughs> yes you can join Costa K over there yeah I, I didn't see you on the dance floor actually mind you so you got some making up to do after oh, this gosh. event yeah you, you don't want to see that Matt I'm not I've got two left feet <laughs> uh, well if you have two left feet I have you know, four left feet, but <laughs> it's all in the hips as we see Oni Anwar taking my advice and uh, pumping his way down the line. He's someone who's very stylish on the dance floor, might I add. And here he is tapping this one off, getting some momentum. And that uh, Kabianka board looking good under his feet and finishing cleanly. So a groveling, real, uh, real journeyman type wave there, but only needing a 3.11 to move up in a second place because 5.25 for Okamura's last wave was enough to push him forward. Yeah, that was a good-looking last wave. A 5.6 is what he needs to go to first. But Oni, a 3.11, yeah, I think he'll, he'll get that and challenge for second place. Um, but I think Oni needs to get in the fives right now. Yes, yeah. yeah, for it, sure. He, he needs to get into that if he wants to... Um, find himself in first and in a more solid position. But I feel like in this round, in a lot of the heats that I've been watching um, with yourself and with John and also um, when I've been, you know, kind of walking around, you're never safe. There's never a moment in nah, these heats where, curious. yeah, it's like there's never a moment where you've gone, oh, he's he's safe in first. Yeah. No, that you're 100% right, and that's why Oni's just trying to, he gets the score there, so it logs in at a 4.9, and I think with those seasoned veterans on the QS, what you'll see in the earlier rounds is them just trying to better their scoreline as they progress through the heat, and if they're able to do that, um, they're giving themselves the best opportunity as the heat un unwinds, so it doesn't really matter where the bar is set, as long as you're improving, because here we go. I mean, of course, if someone opens up and all three surfers opening up excellent range scores, well, then you're kind of boxed in. But often the case, it's just one surfer who runs away with the lead in the QS. Uh, in, in, in terms of percentages, I'm pretty safe to say it'd be about 90% of surfers uh, are all fighting for second spot, where it's always just that one person who's got a clear lead from the beginning. Could just be the wave selection or the way that they're in sync with their board. Uh, but it always just seems like in a QS event, doesn't matter where you are, the light it could be sun, it could be Haliiba, it could be sunset, doesn't matter. It always comes down to the last five minutes. And if you're building upon your heat total, you're putting yourself into a good position towards the end. Um, only you'll sit out there now, try and probably get third priority, and look to improve on that 4.15 and just make that 3.8 for Okamura in third go out of reach a little more. And Margos needing a seven right now, so he hasn't improved on his scores. He's got well, he has. He's got a 1, a 0.9, a 1.9, a 2.05. So you'd really have to say that Alan hasn't got started in this heat. He's overestimating his uh, task right now. I think breaking that down into a more attainable four and then building upon that platform will allow him to go for that six or seven towards the end of the heat. But five minutes to go, he's laid his cards out and he's going for the big, big maneuvers. Yeah, he's been really patient in this heat. I think he was, I th I'm pretty sure he's a local he is. from here. Um, so he's got the support. He had a heat this morning. And, you know, like you said, he wants those big turns. But, uh, you know, risk versus reward. You've got to ask yourself that question. Is it worth getting a four or a five and putting yourself in the mix and then kind of needing only a three? Um that way, last wave of Costa K was a 3.35 and he needs a 3.8, so it wasn't the score. And when he took off, he was just looking to um, better that, you know, he was just looking to better a two at that point. He wouldn't have heard that requirement from Anwar. So it's just the way it works at QS. He is improving his total, but unfortunately 3.35 wasn't going to be it. Uh, but you're right, I do like appreciate Margot's um, attempt to go big. 
because in these events, he's probably his, his Belair teammates here are saying, look, it's a QS, you've got to go hard. It's a World Tour event. The first time the WSL has been here in his hometown. He's 18 years of age. Uh, he's got the world at his fingertips, and they're all here right now surfing his local break. So he feels like he's got to step it up. When actual fact, 10.85 heat total, a pair of 5.5s would be enough to take the win right now. Um, so hopefully he doesn't look at, look at this as a mistake and he can, in his last four minutes, prove us wrong. Yeah, I hope so as well. Here we go. This is Costa K. Unfortunately, that wave not offering too much out the back. Alan, up and riding. Yeah, here he goes. The local fella snaps that wave, hopping and popping his way down the line. And see, just a four-stage cut back there, getting back into the power source, pumping along the line. And there he does a little... Little reverse tail, a little spin kind of slidey thing and nothing of major consequence there, but he goes complete. I mean, those, that type of surfing was manufactured. You can see mm. him pumping down the line and Okamura there just keeping his rail engaged. That one a little bit of a separate uh, three-stage pump and here he is just on that front foot and teeing off on that one a little nicer, carrying some momentum. So needing a 3.8. It's a bit of a manufacturer's score. We might have missed something on the outside section, but under priority, three minutes to go. This is the classic grind of the WQS. But Anwar, second priority, looking to drop a 4-1-5. Yeah, I, I wonder if Kostke got something out the back. Um, well, Marcus is a 3.3. That was his, his best wave. Yeah. Now he only needs a 5.75 to go in a second spot. So he spent 15 to 20 minutes looking for those major maneuvers. When in actual fact, if he'd have just surfed a regular heat, it may have been enough in this heat to get him through. But I think back to heat one, the one that you were commentating, I think, with Kiar Martin. Yes. I mean, that was fireworks. It was a 15-point heat total. Yeah. And the boys from the outset were going crazy. Look at that low tide there. You see the bank to the right. Pretty much closing out on the outside section. A lot of those reforms, a lot harder to find, a lot of mm -hmm. downtime, but they are there, a lot of scoring potential. Yep, they're definitely there. Well, that last wave of Costa K, 3.45, not enough to get him up into second, still needing a 3.8, but like you were saying, you know, just building that house. He was probably trying to find something where he could, you know, get a good connection on it, but right now, Oni is sitting in a good position with two minutes, and mm. this is the current heat leader, Joe Azuchi. Yes, he doesn't know what's going on with all the people surfing uh, those waves, but here he is, uses his priority, and he's going to look for an inside section. And when he was checking the surf an hour or so ago before his heat, there was a lot of those inside sections. Tide dropping, it's testament to having to read the conditions. Poor wave selection for Azuchi. Not that it's a mistake, he is in the lead, but in these Q QS events, as I said, you only need marginal scores to go into the lead. So... Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt him because in the driver's seat is uh, Anwar looking for a uh, Anwar, sorry, looking for a 595 to move up into first, or at least better that 4.15 to make those requirements uh, a little more um, expansive. Look to the red. Look at Oni paddling down, a cr well, to the left of screen. He spots something. He doesn't know. <laughs> Perhaps what's going on, you see a surfer in green, Alan, paddling to the right of the screen. Wow. And he's leaving Okamura out the front. <gasps> or perhaps Oni is chasing Okamura, who's made a, a jump to the left. And here goes our local surfer from Belair. That is Alan Margos. And that wave, you'd have to say, isn't going to be the 575 required as he's pumping his way through. Going to come right down to the end. A lot of uh, gamesmanship in this heat so far. Not a lot of critical surfing, but hey, that's what the waves are dishing up out there, True. Yeah, you've got to make the most of what you've got. And um, Alan, he's definitely done that. Just unfortunate that he wasn't able to uh, get the best of it. But right now, Oni has the first priority. Kosuke has second priority. And I don't think Oni's... Okay, wow, Kosuke needing a 3.8. Got a nice connection. I'm wondering if he did anything... Out the back. Mm, well, body language kind of says no, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully, it wasn't just that single turn, but it could have been. Yeah, uh, looks looking like for it that is. redirect. Yeah, so uh, coming in for that was just a, a 2.25 there for Kosuke. So well done to our heat winner there. Um, 
And that was it, just the single turn, unfortunately. So Joe Azuchi takes the win away from Oni Anwar, the veteran. We say goodbye to Kosikai, who will be regrouping, probably doing a rap about this event, and Alan Magos, who the local boy who comes in fourth place. So a grindy heat there, concluding heat six. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back for the final two heats straight after the break. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Welcome back. Heat 7, a round of 32. This is the Blair International Pro, the QS 3000, the first time we've seen a WSL event here in Blair in the uh, Aurora province. And out in this heat, Minojo Yahagi from Japan, starting off the three-turn combo, just back from his foray over there at the World Junior Championships in Oceanside where he finished ninth. He put in a great performance at, at losing to uh, Jet Schilling, I believe. We ended up winning the event. And I'm with Jerry Deegan, the waxhead here. Tenchi Iwami, Japan. Riaru Ito and Amade Ariana from Indonesia. How are you, Jerry? With conditions out there, what's, give us the update. Oh, it's, it's pretty much like it was an hour or so ago when that wind came through. Um, it's still super rideable. Um, lots of fun. They've only got this heat and the next heat, and we're going to call it quits oh. for the day. Oh, that was... Uh, Pretty nice whip around there. We rode out of it, so um, he'll be very, very happy with that, my day. Um, one of our Indonesian surfers. And what have we got here? We've got uh, uh, Japan, Japan, Indonesia, and Japan. Yep. So uh, I think the final heat might be almost the opposite. Indonesia, Indonesia, yeah. Indonesia, and the Philippines. So, um, yeah, look to look at that. It's, I mean, the surf's rideable. There's still plenty of swell. Wind's not killing it at this stage, so... I mean, I thought the wind would be up a fair bit stronger, so I think we're going to survive yeah. the day, and um, it's been a pretty epic day of waves. Yeah, it's been not too bad. There's less inside reforms. That's the one pickup from that last heat compared to the previous heats where that lower tide's really drained out right now. We've got a very, very much an A-frame out there, except it's spread across two rip bowls. You can see there the right, there's a left down the beach. And here goes uh, Tenchi in Wami, who's... Been very generous with his um, his time and his equipment as well, donating a lot of boards to uh, the Happy Islanders. And I saw the the load when they came in. I happened to be there. Actually, oh, wow. it must have been twenty boards, maybe fifteen or twenty boards. Amazing. Um, all with a similar colour, big star on them, and yep. um, they were very happy. And you know, the Happy Islanders are the group that are going to spread the boards around. You know, they're not selling them. They're not whatever. They're they're giving them to the the kids that need them. Jump onto Tenchi's Instagram there, Tenchi Awami, and you'll get to see a little video that he recently posted up about uh, the, where those boards are going and some of the next generation of those kids, including um, some of the Arciso brothers who are riding one of those boards as well uh, over there at La Union. And that's uh, Riaru Ito. He's uh, number five on the rankings right now, so this is a crucial event for him to build some momentum. Uh, this will be the last event in the Asia region, going straight across to Australia, where we'll have the... Uh, Avoca event, the 3,000 and the 5,000 points on offer at the Newcastle Surf Fest, which is an event that's been around since since your day, and in fact, probably yeah, earlier. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Um, I went there last year. Uh, I think I'd mentioned it earlier. I yeah. took Marama there, which was, was nice to take him there. Um, and that will be the last event before the um, or for the for the Asian region. That's it. And a 6.25 for this one. That's impressive. That's a really good start from my day. I mean, that's exactly how you want to start mm -hmm. with deteriorating surf, tide going lower, you know, 6.25. You, you're going to think it's probably going to be a yeah. keeper at the end of the day. 
it's funny. It's what usually happens. We see a, a really solid heat like Marimar, and then the next heat's expecting similar waves. It doesn't always go that way. That last heat was a real grovel, and these, those surfers struggling to really capitalize throughout the heat. A classic QS workman's-like heat, and I have a look at this heat already, and these surfers have lowered their expectations, perhaps taken out the... The real small wave equipment, the epoxies, yep. given the wind. And it's just no inside connections like we saw earlier. So, so the, those combos aren't really there. So big maneuvers out the back is the, the name of the if game. If you can even get a section, riding lots of waves, just trying to lower those expectations and just get combos. We saw in that last hit, the local boy, uh, Alan Margos, was looking for the big airs at the beginning. In the end, he needed a marginal mid-five to, to make it through. He got one mid-three. And he, he needed just a mid five. Had he not gone for the eights, gone for the, the classic build your house, threes, fours, fives, he would have got through like only Anwar. But, I mean, it was the, the, it was the consummate professional of Anwar and Joe that was able to garner that win. And Ariana, lowering those expectations on that lightweight equipment. And yeah, we said, he's got an all Indonesian affair coming up later on. Danny Widiano, Ketut Agus, and... Uh, what do you think? On, I know you um, ride long boards and short boards very yep. well. Um, you prefer the epoxy? Like um, in this kind of way? Yeah, epoxy would definitely be of an assistance, but I'd be going for a little more planing area and a wider tail. A lot of the surfers are pretty limited. They know their, their, their literage, but in, in terms of the other stuff, they, they're quite limited. So I really enjoyed the board selection this morning of um, um, Filmer. He has yeah, yeah. one of the, ca the Slater designs, and it's got that little flyer in front of the fins. I think that's great. Something with a bit more width forward and a tighter tail. And somebody who looked pretty, um, I mean, on generic equipment, we'll catch up with Anna Morgan. Here goes Tenshi. Beautiful backhand wrap there and a little fan of spray. So two-turn combo there. And that seems to be the order of the day with Joe Azuchi. He's on the glass with Camille, just getting his two-turn combos, and it was enough for the 10.85 heat total. Take it away, Camille. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I am with Joe Azuchi making it through to the next round despite these challenging windy conditions here in Sabang Beach. So, Joe, um, did you get some practice free surf before your heat? Uh, so you seem to be doing really well in the Philippines. You had um, good results in La Union and you also won second in Shargao um, in that final with Marama Tokong. So what do you think of Baler so far? So, あの、シャルガオで2番になって、ま、今回ラウニオンではクォーターで負けたんですけど、ま、今回しっかり優勝してバランキング上げて、CS勢いを頑張ります。so, which one's your favorite so far? La Union, Baler, or Shargao? Uh, every good wave, yeah? Yeah. So, Joe Azuchi liking all the waves the Philippines has to offer so far. So, Joe, do you want to say a message in Nihongo? Again. It's <laughs> Okay, thank you and good luck in the upcoming rounds. Looking forward to seeing you surf more here in Bel Air. Okay, back to you guys in the commentary. Thanks, Camille. Um, what did he say, Matt? What, how's your uh, Nihongo? Uh, it's, it's, it's below, very below par and I should know more. I have a Japanese uh, sponsor and I'll be going to see them um, at some point later in the year. But I can tell you that he is from the Shonen region, I believe, and very small waves over there, so this would have actually been very common for him. In fact, smaller than Chiba generally. So, uh, junky waves, uh, perhaps similar to what he practices in at home. He feels comfortable um, carrying on some good results. A fifth over there in um, La Union, a second in Shargao. He's looking to really uh, build some momentum and jump back on that Challenger series where he had two events last year and his equipment's looking good and I can attest to that because it looked fantastic and happy to get through that one and I'm going to go home, recharge, watch my heat analysis and I'll be back tomorrow.
Okay, that, that's, sound? that sounds exactly like what I thought he said. I can call my wife and ask her. But um, so why were the why did he only have two waves on oh, two two surfs on the Challenger series? He, he got um, invites or something. It must have been as well. Yeah, just uh, an injury replacement or perhaps just filling in that that regional wild card. Um, yeah, okay. And which I guess can be spiced up at each event depending on if people are able to attend. It could be injuries. It could be sickness. And here we have with Yahagi. Nice stretched out carve and sets up for this little inside track small board there. So you can see the size. Oh, goes for that explosive layback, unable to ride out. And it's yeah, it's a shame he only needed to replace the 3.30 there. I think he went maybe for maybe for a bit too much. Um, well, hopefully that one doesn't come back to Horny, but maybe perhaps he didn't think that he had enough in that end section to get that three, or he just straight out didn't know. And we got a bit of downtime, which is kind of rare in a four-person heat today. Because uh, we have a lot of people to thank the Tingong party list for holding this event. The uh, OOPSA, Department of Tourism, the Philippine Sports Commission, and the Philippine Olympic Committee will be watching this event with a lot of detail. Uh, this is a WSL event, and it is one of the um, one of the tiers. That's the first tier of qualification for these surfers. The ISA being the second tier as well. Uh, Bagong, Pilipinas, House Speaker Martin Ramoldes, the local government of Belair. Senator Sonny Angara, Congressman Ramel Angara, Mayor Red Angara, great speech last night. So it's the full family affair with those guys. And Department of Tourism Region 3 Director, uh, Richard Danos, and the BHRROA, and Coastal Pacifica, where we're presenting this right now out the front of Sabang Beach. We're in the uh, Aurora Province, and this is in the beautiful area of Belair. So we're surrounded by... Um, a big valley and there's a river behind us. The drive here was gorgeous through a nice, nice winding roads. And as one of the photographers told us, told me on the bus, he was next to me. He said it was a series of cutbacks before we get into Belair. And I, th I <laughs> laughed until we actually did it. And he goes, "No, no, seriously, it's just like you're doing figure eights the whole way." I looked at the map and he's uh, got it spot on actually because yeah. I was sort of watching our progress as we uh, went through the mountains and came down the hill, thinking. You know, distance-wise, I knew we weren't that far away, but we had to do a couple of cutbacks to get back into the power source yeah. and uh, oh, there we go. find the straight roads back to uh, back to Belair or Full into of cheese Belair. ball quotes here for us. <laughs> cutbacks on the road and cutbacks in the water. Uh, thankfully, we didn't get any air like some of these surfers today. Um, Our drivers were fantastic, to no be honest. Outs. I didn't freak out one single time, although I must say... I couldn't see out the front window, and I, I don't, you know, I guess when I'm on buses, I don't like to look out the front window, especially in mountainous roads. 100% right, looking over the edge of what's there too, but uh, everyone got here safe and sound, all competitors, no hiccups, no sicknesses, everyone seemed to be uh, on song and ready to go and compete at this event. Everyone relishing the opportunity to be in a new surf town, um, some great bars, um, we played pool in one the other night with Marcos, one of the locals who's going to come on and have a chat with us Tomorrow. tomorrow, he's coming tomorrow. He, so he had to go to work and sort out a few things. But Marco is going to come and have a chat tomorrow about what it's like being a local, what it's been like for the lo you know Marco's I think forty eight or forty seven or something. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if I get that wrong, Marco, but approximately that. And so he's been surfing here for you know thirty five years. So wow. he'll give us a really good insight. Oh, someone was going yeah, high. I that did. was Manojo, um, giving it a wrap, but he didn't quite pull out of that one. Sadly. Um, he got a first place in the Hayanga Pro, um, which is one of the Japanese events. Yep. Uh, I think it was only a 1,000, but um, still to write, equal ninth in La Union. So um, he has the ability. He's only 20 years old. He's got a future, that's Youngster for sure. Youngster, for sure, yeah. And uh, he comes in ranked 21. So he's going to need to really climb up the rankings right now. Uh, but I tell you what, his weapons of choice out there are looking fantastic. Um, he was chatting earlier to... A couple of his competitors, and he was stretching there on the beach, and I was having a look at his boards, and uh, those JS boards are looking great, uh, fast, and hopefully he can land some of those airs. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got. Absolutely. He's sitting there with the highest score of a 6.75. I'm not sure if we actually saw that wave, did we? Might have, might have happened during um, the interview, interview yeah. before with Joe. Um, so that's the highest score. He's holding on to a 3.3, which I'm sure he'll get rid of. He only needs a 4.4 to go through into first place. Um, the others, um, Iwami and Ito need a, a little bit more there. Or he's um, oh. Iwami right now, off the top. Foam climbs. Can he get around? And is there any section if he even if he does? It looks like it might line up just a tad. Oh yeah, he's going to be able yep. to finish it off. Okay, nice. that was a really nice wave. Only six point six. He's 
hasn't finished it off yet at all. There you go. Um, it could be close to the number. Yeah, polished surfing there from Tenchi and uh, really enjoyed the speed that he carried through on that wave. Uh, certainly from Chiba, I mean, Shonen, which is also where uh, uh, Monojo is from, Shonen, gee, very small waves in Shonen. It can get fantastic, though, in typhoons, but generally speaking, you do have to travel. You can't surf there every day if you're a short border. And Yahagi, there he is. He's no stranger to onshore waves like this. Um, yeah, and, and Tenchi Awami, he's from Chibra, slightly more open, uh, a little bit more swell. This is a, a classic Chiba day right now, typical afternoon surf there in what they see, in, what they get in Japan, the um, west coast of Japan. Oh, it looks like an afternoon day in Cronulla, to be honest, as and well. And that too, Cronulla, not a lot of protection. This looks like a, uh, a south, southeast wind in Cronulla, your typical 1 p.m. onshore afternoon mm. wind. No, in, well, in Cronulla, the onshore would probably be a nor'easter wind more no, than a south. Yeah, sour but this east. is like blustery, you know, like it's coming from the right of the screen. Yeah, oh no, that's exactly what it looks like. So yeah. this kind of looks like we had a southerly yesterday or the day sure. before and this is the leftover the south leftovers. east. So in the morning you got a bit of south west wind. Yeah, yeah. Same as here in the morning, a bit of a south wester and then it will come across to the south east or east south east which is what we have right now. If yeah. we were tucked up in the corner, we wouldn't really have a lot of waves. It is a straight east swell but it would be a lot cleaner over there uh, but still we need to have a little bit more swell uh, here because we are, th as you get further south, it's tucked away a little bit more. Uh, further north, a little more exposed, but it is an east swell, so we are actually roping in the majority of swell right now. Yeah, I noticed it wasn't, it's certainly to the south here, it's smaller, but up the beach didn't seem to be any bigger really. Yeah. Um, oh, nice effort there. But uh, Marta just couldn't pull that off, and now we have Riaru been quiet in this heat so far he was surfed his previous heat fantastically actually and um this looks like he's got a booty, booty on. on yeah perhaps a little injury on that front foot and doesn't seem to hinder him too much on that heat can you remember uh, how he what did he string together in his earlier heat he did a couple he was he mostly got his uh, points on the right hander um and he just did a couple of nice big backhand hacks and and put together a couple of combos and i think I think he came second, mm -hmm. but it was he and his Japanese compatriot that kind of motored away from the, the crew, if, I, if I'm correct. Sure. There. So I'm just having a look on those results earlier on. And yeah, uh, and anyone can go to the WSL site or get the WSL app, and you can see, you can see this live on the app or on YouTube. Um, and that's what I'm doing in between my heats. I'm listening to you guys. I should be relaxing, but I, you know, I'm too keen to see what's going on. On the edge of your seat, so to speak. And I'm looking on that round of 48. Just go onto that app, tune in. We'll see, he must have been in one of those fifth heats. Unless there's two blokes named Riaru. No, this is the round of 32, so yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. Well, seated into this round, it was a very similar surname beforehand. And that one would have been... Um, I think the first name was the same. Yeah, yeah there is... Uh, <laughs> we'll catch up with that very shortly. Yeah, well, I apologise about that. I mean, I've said it 20 times. Uh, a yeah, there's Aoi, Aguri, and... Just looking through that draw, there's been so many different nationalities that we've had. To, and there is... Yeah, Roy uh, Kanazawa, which is easily... Um, no, it's, no this, this is another dude. I swear, I swear. I don't think I was dreaming. Maybe I fell asleep while I was watching you and, and heard the name. No, I did it. I sat here with John uh, Carby and he a couldn't a get the... Aoi Aguri? No. no, no, and he couldn't get the name right. I'll find it. Don't okay, worry. we'll it's find it. the last it. thing I do. I'll find it. We'll find so it. I'm going to look pretty the, the, stupid the, the otherwise. The missing Ito. So 566 six required right now. And there goes the Indonesian surfer. One of three coming up at the next heat. You can see Danny Widianto right now. He's got that Flanagan shape under his arm, that epoxy swallowtail with a carbon strip in the middle. He's got the Felipe Toledo fins in there at the moment, the FCS2 system, FCS team rider as well. And Yahagi currently in second place, a 4.4 required. And a combo, third turn, throwing a fan of spray and snaps that one. So that will have to say a 4.4 with that combo going through and coming up the next heat that is Toby Espejon he'll be the uh, one of the Shargal boys going out on one of Tenchi's boards the star 
you can see there. So Tenchi, the surfer in this heat, uh, down in third, donating one of those boards to the Happy Islander crew. And that was Toby, who was the, one of the beneficiaries of those boards. Ketut Agus, uh, he's coming in here ranked uh, very solidly as he lines up for this event. So he had a great uh, performance. He took out the La Union event the year before last. Okay, yep. He came second, Shargao as well. Um, but he's got a lot of experience as well, having surfed on the Challenger Series and surfed on the QS across many different countries as well. Uh, Happy-go-lucky surfer, halfway beach, Cooter as well. Oh, fireworks that next heat. I'm still looking for Riari. <laughs> We've ca called a lot of heats. This will be 20 heats today, so you're forgiven for thinking. You might have been watching your replays or perhaps doing your homework, but that's okay. And blue up and riding. So here he goes, Ito now. Riaru goes to the air, and he does an air reverse. So, I mean, highlight reel. Of yep. this heat, that one will be there. 6.56, six, we'll have to wait and see. The judges are dissecting these, slowing them down, really looking at the technical uh, difficulty in these airs. And here we go. So races down the line. Yep, hits the lip, boom. Plenty of height, plenty of uh, amplitude. He got out the front of it and he landed really nicely. So. Amplitude, wow. He's, he's got the, uh, the, the air lingo down, I like it. <laughs> um, and he's got the name right. I'm making up for Riaru. That's fine. Well, that was Riaru there anyway, so a double mammy. <laughs> Uh, that was epic. That was epic. I think he's going to go close to the score. Yep. They've got no option but to score them on single manoeuvres mm -hmm. because they're not really getting down the line and finishing them off, yes. although they rarely are. So, um, you, you let's know what see. could be really interesting right now is that Ariana's into this heat, and heat seven and heat eight. So in the next round of 16, we could have three Indonesians matching up again like ah. in the next heat. So, yeah, very unique prospect, and I feel sorry for some of them. But that's the way the game goes, the seating. And Yahagi, he goes to the air now. And you know what? Minojo Yahagi, he went off to a ninth-place finisher in the World Junior Championships. But when he was in his opening round, we actually, on the first day competition, named him Yahagi Airlines because of his air game well, on his forehand. Well, that was pretty impressive, I've got to say. Look, it wasn't as good as uh, the previous one which has come in at an 8.65, by the way. So you were right. It was solid. It's a, it's a highlight. Um, and he's got to be very happy there. So, so I just called it earlier with Ariana, perhaps the Indonesian uh, Made. He's going to hear that requirement now. You can see him. Two minutes 30 to go. White listening to the beach announcer, this very important and crucial requirement. The wind on shore, difficult to hear the sound for these surfers, especially if they've got any surfers here like myself or you. Absolutely. So an 865 pushes Ito up into the lead with Minojo looking for a 4.4. And I'd have to say it would be pretty close. I like, yeah. And I it like is. 5.15. Okay, so he's moved into second place. Um, and and Ito looking a better 4.4. Up and riding now. And he goes vert and unable to complete that. So Awami now needing a 7.5. Uh, Ariana needing a 5.86, 5.66, sorry, and he's in priority. What's he looking for, Jerry? Well, I think he's looking for a, um, an air. I think he needs to boost a big air. He's just seen both of his competitors overtake him with big airs. Yep. So he's got to have heard the, the uh, beach announcer, and I think that's what he's got to do. He knows mm. what is needed. Can he do it? Well, he needs the wave to come his way, doesn't he? He's got priority. Um, so fingers crossed for him, I've got to say. Yeah, you can see that rip current to the, to the left of the screen there. A couple of longboarders practicing down the beach. Uh, the beautiful Sabang Beach here in Belair, the Aurora Province. And we thank the Department of Tourism. This is the Region 3. And this is a, a phenomenal area. And to all of our sponsors, thank you for, for allowing WSL to come here. And a great collaboration between uh, Oops, who are doing a terrific job in the background of these events. Great volunteers and a great setup. Uh, the Tingong Party List, uh, the Philippine Sports Commission, Philippine Olympic Committee, uh, the Department of Tourism, of course, and the uh, Regional Director, Richard Danos, Congressman, Ramel Angara, Senator, Sunny Angara, House Speaker, Martin Ramoldes, Bagong, Pilipinas, uh, where we're sitting right now, Coast of Pacifica. Okay, nice little wave there um, by Marde. Um, but didn't ride out. No, he didn't ride out, and uh, wow. I didn't see what happened just before that, but um, wow. he's now in trouble. Um, 30 seconds to go. He won't have any kind of priority. Um, I, I think he's wow. played his cards, and they've come up double uh, Yeah, well, a 6.25 to kick off this, 
this match and then straight into a 4.9. He was leading all event and he just mm. won't believe his luck. In the last two minutes, goes from first down to third, but it was Ito with that extraordinary air. And this is that replay right now. And he go and he bogs that bottom turn. And unfortunately, it was 2.2 for that wave. And he was looking for the 5.66. And Yahagi just making sure that he can consolidate his second place. And gets the foam climb there. And he's carving that one around. He gets a little rip ball. So it's the Japanese surfers flying through this heat. And unfortunately for Ariana getting knocked out and Tenchi Iwami. You'd have to say both those surfers being the favorites coming into this, but it was out of nowhere. Riaru Ito and that guy on screen, Yahagi Minojo, Yahagi Airlines. Yeah, he's, he's done well and um, he'll be very happy with his day's work. And uh, with that, I'll say see you later to you and we're gonna go to a Final break and we'll be back for one more heat with Johnny Carby. Don't go anywhere. WSL Bel Air Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organized by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Bel Air and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognized by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission. Okay, welcome back. Um, we have Danny Widiata already up and riding. This is re Heat 8 of Round of 32. Um, and he's going to kick off his account. Oh, oh, that was a sucky little section there, wasn't it? a little inside bank. We um, must be getting close to low tide. Here we are. We are getting close to low tide. John Carby has um, jumped back in the booth after his duties out there as um, co-event director. And it's been a pretty good day, John. I can't complain. It's what it. Yeah, I definitely. I have no complaints. Basically, you know, every, everyone, stop. everyone would rather it be four foot and offshore and you know whatever. But nonetheless, I think we've got a far better day of surfing than what I had expected to happen. Well, when I'm walking back towards this uh, commentary booth and I hear an eight point something being dropped, I know that things are going pretty well out there. So yeah, I oh, so you didn't see it. So what it was was big air. Yep. Um, one manoeuvre, but a really good air landed. You know, hit hit a real hard lip, landed in the flats, was high up and over the white water, and he got paid off what, for it. What was it that he got? 8.5. So same on par with Kian Martins. I wonder who got the wave manoeuvre of the day. Mm. I wonder, I'm sure we'll see that in the highlights. I didn't, no, I didn't actually see Kian, so... Um, it, was, it was sick, and it was also at an 8-something. My memory serves me poorly, Loki. Yeah, Who's yeah. in this one? Who's in this one, Jerry? Okay, Last so we one got of the day. Kutut Agus from um, Indonesia, who scored a 4.5 on the first wave. Danny Widianto, who we must be waiting for a wave because we saw him catch a wave. This might be Kutut's first wave that, in replay. Oh, oh. Nice, nice tail waft off that one. So he's got that 4.5 on one manoeuvre. Uh, Putra Herman, Hermawan, great surfer, long-time visitor of the Philippines. Um, and had some pretty good results as well over the years. He got an equal fifth in 2014. He's been coming since then, 10 years. Well, um, finished season. it off really nicely as well. Um, we have Danny Widianto, who he said, and Toby Espihon, who you're very, very familiar with. This is Toby right here. Uh, this is a replay of Toby's. Nothing major yet, just getting through the motions. Three sort of foam climbs, and unfortunately nothing or too critical. So blue here was Danny's... Uh, you can see him about to plough over two competitors, which is always nice in the lineup. Yeah, well, if you get pretty competitors that way, it makes life a bit of ease. If you can run both of them over in the one wave. You can get two interference calls, and Danny's was also. So out of that exchange, it looks like Katut will probably get the best of it. That that wrap into the snap was really nice. Combo, 4.5. Um, looks like Putra would have got second. This is his second wave too, so... 
busy surface out there, Jerry. It started off with a flurry, hasn't it? I mean, you sometimes you sit here and wait five minutes, everyone's hanging around, but these guys aren't wasting time. They've watched the other heats. You know, I think, I think you take off on everything you can get. You don't worry about the priority, and if you find that section, you hit it hard, um, and that's what you do. So I believe we've uh, got Matt coming up with Riaru E2, the winner of our last heat. Go for it, Matt. Just talking about boards, Riaru, he's got that Brett Warner shape from Brookvale, Australia. Was this board made in Japan or is it in Australia that's been shipped over? Yeah, uh, Japan and Australia too. Combination. Yeah. And uh, you've opted for a PU board, the round tail, but that 8.65, it was the wave of the day, uh, that big air. Is that something you're looking to go out and achieve or you knew you were behind and you needed a big score? What was the thought process going into that? Um, yeah, uh, this board is new board and feeling is very good and yeah so we have so pretty pretty fine <laughs> and wind so air section air window is yeah so lucky <laughs> to the next round yeah and do you do airs very often your free surfs do you think in your head sometimes in the free surf like Okay, I need excellent range score. I need to land this because it looked like everything just went perfectly. Yeah. Um, first, uh, not the end. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe need uh, six point. I think uh, six point. Um, yeah, only one air is okay. <laughs> Good. Well. Yeah. An 865, excellent range score. Now, moving on for the rest of the event, you need to climb up those rankings. Is your intention to get onto the Challenger Series and maybe this time, next year, you could be at Pipeline? Yeah, Pipeline. Yeah, it's so very good. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> well, a man of few words. We know he can surf the barrel. We know he can surf the air. We're going to carry that round tail Warner, his lucky board, into that next round. An 8.65, you've got the wave of the day so far. And Kian Martin, 8.25 for his second, uh, coming down into the second. We're going to go back to live action, and we're going to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, the Waxhead, good interview. Thanks very much, and congrats, Riaru Itu, on your um, qualification into the next round. So good stuff there. So we, what have we missed, John? Have we missed anything exciting? It doesn't look like it. Putra got a three point one zero. That matched his. That matched in. It met his four point zero for his opening wave uh, into the first. Uh, we're looking at someone's foot there on the ground. That looks like he's got a bit of an injury too. So. Oh well, he had he down. had a booty on. So I guess probably um, the waxhead asked him after the heat, what was going on with the uh, with the foot injury. So. Um, yep. well, I guess we'll find that later. We'll have a chat and we'll, we'll know tomorrow if he's still injured and what's going on. If, yeah. we, if we run the short boards tomorrow, we'll, we don't be, really know, do we? Could be maintenance. We don't want to make the call yet, likely with the forecast. I'm not going to say too much, but we could be possibly in for more of the same. But okay. don't put me up on a cross don't on that quote, one. Because don't quote you on that yeah, one. Yeah, because there's nothing official yet until we look at the conditions. We could wake up tomorrow morning. It could be perfect longboard conditions. So yep. we don't know until we know. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be pretty glassy in the morning, considering the wind hasn't gone crazy today, um, and it's similar yesterday. So we woke up to glass this morning, which would be nice we to wake up, up to glass. We woke up to glass, and then we then we got a kick in the face with a twenty knot straight which happened on shore. pretty early, yeah. And the rest of the day has been wonderful. So out there at the moment, Putra is in first with his four point zero and his three. Uh, Katut is hot on his heels, and the Indonesian there is Katut now also a seasoned competitor. Very smart surfer and has an array of tricks. Can blow the tail out of the back of the waves and also throw some really nice, um, like, delicate things in there too. To sort of yeah, well, that was a real nice um, exclamation mark at the end of that wave, and I think the judges are going to like it. Yeah. So our Indonesians are top three at the moment, and Katut, I dare say, is going to jump into the top, getting rid of his point six zero. Toby's going to have to get to work soon before these boys run away with it on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's desperation times if you've got, you know, 10 minutes to go and you need a seven point something. And although Toby's got an air game, correct? He does have an air game. He's he's more of that smooth style. He's got a bit of power too, so hard to showcase that in these waves. But he can, if he needs to, take to the air. I wouldn't say it's his, his massive strength, 
but it's definitely there in reserves. So percentage-wise, you'll probably see Toby stick to the wave a lot more. Okay. Um, and he'll get lots of completions, lots of smooth, beautiful surfing. Um, the airs he will pull out. He's working on them, uh, and he can definitely send them, but, yeah. If I was going to put money on it, I'd be saying he's going to go to turns, and you'll see those wraps he can do, which look really good. Yeah, well, Danny did two, put two nice turns together there, didn't finish off. So Kadhook got a 6.15 for his wave, so he's got a total of 10.65 now. Um, pretty nice position to be in, although I will say that last heat, Marday had started with a 6.5 and didn't get through. Like, he held the 6.5 and the lead for an awful long time, and it just simply wasn't enough. So although Katut is in a nice place, he's not in a safe place yet. No, and uh, that last heat just showcased what surfing can do. From first to third within one exchange, it's almost heartbreaking. But Yeah, I've seen a couple of hearts broken today in that yep. exact same way. Yeah, but you need to maintain your lead and you also need to make sure you're increasing it and making it hard for everybody throughout the morning or throughout your heat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But 15 minutes to go for the day. Um, then we can have a break, John. Maybe. What's up next? 4 o'clock. That's a pretty good day of surfing. 7.30 down to 4 o'clock. That's almost a normal day's work, Gary. Almost a normal day's work. We've only done half of it each. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're getting there. We're on our way. I'm not saying we're there. I'm just saying oh, it's nice to have on our way. It's nice to have a good first day and feel like you've, you know... Uh, built that mountain a little bit, you know, you've got a really good base, a good foundation for the event. Um, here's uh, Toby, seeing what he can do. Gonna oh, okay, that was nice. There yeah, almost foot came off the board there halfway through that. I don't want to point it out to the judges, but I've noticed that in Toby a lot. He gets that front back foot so loose, it often comes off the board. Mm. Um, I don't know, It's if he's getting the job done... I don't yeah, think but if we, if we see it, the judges see it, I'm pretty sure. I mean, maybe you get more points for taking your foot well, off the board. Well, that's it. It's a technically a one-foot air reverse, so not many people are doing that. <laughs> no, there's no one doing that. So, <laughs> But that's definitely going to put him back okay, into let's the conversation. Have a look. Here's the replay. So watch this opening wrap. This is, this is Toby's game. Like, you just see that rail work. It's just smooth, fast, and that's the Dodo SP on in him. And then a nice air reverse. Pretty smooth, pretty confident, got clear. So welcome to this heat. Toby SP on, that's going to be a, a decent number. Well, there you go. Yeah, six point four zero. So one footed hair reverses. They liked. Kept. They liked the foot off. <laughs> I think it was that combination. So that little speed wrap into that section was pretty smooth and pretty nice and well sent. So that's put Toby up into second place, wanting to throw away a two point four five. So the judges didn't hesitate there either. That score came up really quickly. And that's when you know they know it's the end of the day. They know where things are by this stage. They know what scale it is. Uh, unless it's a heated exchange, then they definitely don't need to look at it. They will just punch those numbers in. And across the boards, that would have dropped in uh, around that same line. And it went from a 7 down to a 6-3 was the spread. So um, Pretty uniform. Pretty uniform. One of the judges obviously loving it. Um, and three of the judges sort of sitting there going, yeah, it was good. Maybe they didn't like the foot. Who knows? Who knows? I like the foot. <laughs> I think he should try to get two feet off next time. Uh, like Kean, it worked yeah, an eight point yeah. two five. That's exactly what you get for two feet off the board. Well, they know what they've got to do now. Looks like a bit of a storm there behind the town. I caught up with Kean just out there in the area. There's a nice little some food food places showing up in there, Jerry. So I know you're a foodie. Here's Putra up and riding. Can't quite get opening on that one, and it looks like Danny's going to get on the wave behind him. And Red's kicking out behind him. Air reverses. Yeah, it's the call of the day. I mean, you're getting points, you're getting scored for. He's going to have an inside section too, which tends to change everything. He's, oh, I thought he bit off more than he could chew. He didn't. So, um, okay, and a finish. I think that was a pretty nice wave. It'll be up there. I didn't like the air quite as much as the other one, but he did too. Yep, and sort of a different variation. So he went a little bit flatter on that first air and then threw that tail really high on the second one. Uh, more of that nose pick style reverse. He's good to it. Caught a little rail at the start there. He's going to go in. What do you what do you predict here, a reverse? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> How did you know? How but like I you know? say, like... If the recipe's working, these surfers are going to lock into it and they are going to... Yeah, they've been watching the previous heats. They yep. know what the judges are scoring. And they know that, you know, the reverse is the staple these days. And there's no one, pretty much no one in this event that can't do one. Well, imagine we're back 20 years and we don't have that reverse. Look at that beautiful town. 
Well, yeah. Aurora, what a part of the world. You've got mountains in the background. I'm sure we can go climb one of those one day, Jerry. Maybe yeah, I don't want to. We'll I get up to the top I, of a mountain. I don't want to climb a mountain. <laughs> My wife is here. She'd climb a mountain. A uh, mountain, as uh, Fratu would say. So mountain. hello to David, first stalwart of uh, Shargau. A Frenchman. Um, I don't know if you're watching, but we're thinking about you. Yeah, he's probably swearing at us right now. He could, he could go out there and take on these guys, actually. He's a good, whippy little surfer. Knows mm. how to throw a board around. I know he... Even big waves, no problem. Big there claims. You go. So Danny's wave a seven point five. Yeah. So the variation, I think that nose pick reverse style, the judges liking, and he did it in a spot that we were looking at. How how could you do it? So judges obviously liking the commitment to a and, small section. And Toby a six point four. So um, that's okay. Is that? I uh, know Toby had that six point four. Yeah. No, in. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the other score was Katut. Uh, two, two, a two five two, two five. five, yeah, yeah, okay. And yeah. Petra only a one six five, so not too much for those boys. It seems to be that Danny's just with that seven point five has jumped into the commanding place, and he's only holding a three point two five. So you've got to be thinking that's got to go. Um, but you know, if he can pick up a five or something, here we go. This is it. So let's have a look at it again. All right. So this first air reverse, it's not just. Like, looks good. He also got functional. So he got down the line to this next section. And at this point, I was thinking, what's he going to do? And he managed there, that nose pick, getting the tail nice and high, coming down tail first. And, and he wasn't finished. Super smooth and gets the completion. So a little bit of body language going. I liked it. Yeah. And the judges did too. All right, so just under 10 minutes remaining. Um, again, this is the last heat for the day. We uh, will be surfing tomorrow. We don't know who's going to be surfing tomorrow. Well, we may be surfing tomorrow, Jerry. It's on the waiting period. If we wake up and it's a 1,000 knots, we might give it a miss. Well, that's right. It's never guaranteed, but you know what I want to do. I want to finish it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Have five lay, lay days afterwards. Exactly. Then we can go and climb mountains. <laughs> It sounds like I'll be climbing by myself. <laughs> you will be, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't even want to walk through the mangroves with you anymore. <laughs> well, I'm not walking through the mangroves with you. Without you, we did just fine. Yeah, well, that's because we forged the You uh, told path. me your instinct was really good for this <laughs> sort of thing, and turns out it wasn't. Well, you actually walked the wrong way the first place, mate, so <laughs> settle. <laughs> We didn't do well. Put it that no, way. No, we didn't. So Katut just needs a 4.61 to move into first place. Uh, Toby, only a 4.25 to move into second. Ooh, good set. Surfing and green. Oh, close out. Uh, Throwing so away was priority. He did, and Putra needs a 6.65, so he needs um, a pretty decent wave, but again, we know that can happen with one move. And is this him again? Danny just had a look at that. I don't think it was a committed paddle, though, but I'm pretty sure the other boys will be out there looking at their priority board. Yeah. Pretty excited going, he paddled, he paddled. He did. Um, uh, he didn't paddle, I don't think, he just had a look. And Putra seems to have semi-slumped shoulders, but he's still got plenty of time um, with eight minutes to go. Yeah. So, like I said, all he needs is one decent air or a, a wave that links up and gives him a, a couple of different manoeuvres, and um, he can be back there. Definitely anyone's game at this minute with the eight of them to run. Eight minutes to go? Yep. And the boys are now starting to, yeah, here we go. Danny, current heat leader. Almost a mirror image of what Toby did on that last one. Yeah, and he gave away his priority as well there. So, um, again, I don't know that priority's a super-duper heavy issue at the moment. It seems um, to be rotating through quite consistently. Yeah, and everyone but, who's yeah. taken a pick, it's those sort of waves that you have to go. Yeah. Because you, you don't want your competitor to take yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and you don't know what's going to happen. They're not waiting for the perfect wave. It's not like they're sitting at pipe and they can see how it's coming from the west and it's going to, you know, whatever. This, these are coming straight on and some are holding up, some aren't. Some are giving you space to do something big and some aren't. So yeah. I think you just pull the trigger every time like he's doing again now and um, find some air, which he did nicely there. Yep. Similar to his previous wave, uh, well, the previous first air on the previous wave and <laughs> see if he can do another one. <laughs> Worked for him. Oh, just a nice finish. Okay. Yep. I think that's going to um, be very, very beneficial for him. And a reverse, Jerry. Oh, with a grab. Oh. Front side grab. So given a little different flavor to that recipe, he's just added some cinnamon. So he added some cinnamon to that. Um, and I like that Danny's going to get rid of his 3.25, and I feel Katut's going to get rid of his 4.50. So they're going to start making it pretty hard for Toby and Putra. Yep, and those two were both... Uh, I think Katut might have been in, in priority, but 
Um, Danny, Danny certainly, certainly wasn't. wasn't. No, no, so he found that on the inside. So Toby sitting out there now, and this is about to jump out a little bit further for him. So 4.25, but two, our first and second Danny and Katut are about to drop, I'd say, two reasonable numbers to make things a little bit trickier. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of time to go. There's gaps with the wine already. <laughs> Some people finish early. Media, what a job. Yep, yep. And great job, Gabs Batalones. Um, setting a standard here, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so Danny's coming in with a 6.6. .6, so he's motoring away at 14.10. We don't know what Katut's wave is as yet. Um, they're just checking it out, trying to figure out, compare it to the other waves, look at replays. Um, he's nearly back out in the lineup as well. So there you go, it's coming in. It's going to be a mid range wave, but I think it's going to help him. It certainly is. One more, there you go, a 5.40. So uh, getting harder and harder, but Toby still, he only needs a 5.15 to move into second place. And it hasn't changed that much. He'd feel good with that 6.40. Yeah. So he's got, apart from Danny, he's got the highest score uh, with, the, with the guys who it really matters with at the moment. Yeah. Um, so as long as he can settle in and pick that next wave well, then he's definitely a danger man and also is Putra just needs to get that he hasn't sunk his teeth into anything yet. No, that's, that's it's, really he's not in rhythm. Something's no. going on there because the previous heat he was, um, but he doesn't just seem to be in rhythm at the moment. Yeah, but that can also change, as we saw in that last heat, that he can go from fourth up to first with the right manoeuvre. From zero to 100 in zero to 100. two seconds. Yep, a little bit harder for him. I think he might even almost be in combo for that top score. But 7.55 to get into the second, so he's probably wanna, gonna want to get something really soon. And either do really well or just increase and get rid of that. Yeah, and you can, you know, in four minutes you can get two e two waves easy, maybe even three waves, but because it's not a long paddle out, and you can turn around on the inside. Yeah. Um, but the waves just have to come your way. Exactly, and it still looks like there is plenty of waves out there. That's pretty impressive. Seven five zero and a six six zero from Danny. So they're out there. You're going to go for a surf in uh, four minutes, John? It's either that or paddle tennis, but there's a good chance I might just sit in my room and watch some highlights from today because there were some good ones. There was, there was. I'm going to hit the pool and do a few laps. I might. Pool's not a bad idea just to wash the... What's yeah. That, that horrible W word that we're doing at the moment? Yeah. Wash well, that office. Doesn't bother me. I don't do much of it, so... I'm, I'm not going to do laps, but I'm going to get in your way, that's for sure. I'll, well, I'm sure that. You I'll will. take my beach ball or my floaties and, <laughs> and get in your way as much as possible. I um, can't promise the budgie smugglers either. I'll let you... Oh, I, shan't be, I shan't be budgie smuggling. Can't wait to that, I can't wait to hit that age, Jerry, where I think that's the last part of you caring about anything. <laughs> oh, look, that, but, you know, I think it's an age thing. Not an age thing, but it's, a, it's Culture, a, an uh, era yeah, thing because, era you know, back in the 80s, I knew guys, I don't know if uh, Gary Hughes, a famous Cronulla surfer, is listening to us at the moment. He's a, he's a Hawaii specialist. He was on what was then not the CT, but it would be the equivalent now, and... And Gary used to surf out Cronulla Point in his speedos all the time, and no one even batted an eyelid. <laughs> and everything. Well, I think it's back in too, so... I think he was kind of proud of what he had in his speedos, <laughs> by the way. But, um, yeah, he was. All, you go there and you think, oh, Gary's in his speedos. So, good on you, Gazza. Oh, well, yeah, I think the speedo era is coming back in, thanks to the blokes of, like, J-O-B, making oh, yeah. it normal again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick to my... I don't own. want it to be normal, really. I'll, I'll stick to my knee-length boardies yeah. until I die. It's sort of my thing, I guess. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Not priority, much changing, is there? Priority is with Toby. I'm pretty sure a lot of people back home in Shargao are watching right now. Shout out to the Shargao crew watching young Toby Espion against this Indonesian storm, so to speak. Mm. Um, trying to oh, get one in for the Philippine crew. And let's see if he can keep his composure for this last two minutes. And, and well, let's hope a wave comes through. Yep, yeah, that's what I want to see. Just keep your composure, make the right choice. It's one of those things. Yeah, look, I think he's getting to that point that he's not even going to be able to make the right choice. He's just going to have to take a wave. Yep. Um, let's see what he's going to do. Here's one, no. Danny's going to have another go. Under priority, no danger here. Okay, Toby's not even looking at him, which is good. He's not, not stressed by what's happening or what the others are doing. Um, he's just waiting for that wave to march through with, to give him enough section uh, to do what he needs to do, which is probably go to the air or a wave that lines up for him. Yep, he's off his board at the moment. He's just probably just doing these little tactics to just de-stress and oh, sort of... I think he's praying. Yeah, definitely. He's, uh, he's definitely a kid of faith. So uh, he'll, be, he'll be 
asking God for these waves. He'll be trying to relax himself to when it happens to turn that brain off and let the surfing do the talking because we've seen his 640, the surfing's there. Okay, it's just a little lump there. Good. He's having a paddle, so I think he's going to... Nice well, there's one behind shot. two. Yep, he's going to okay, let that one go. Be... There's three potential things standing up here. I don't think this one will be one, but will this next one give Toby an opportunity? A lot stronger on his forehand, so he's right, the right he'll be looking at. We didn't go. No one went. Oh, a little glitch in the matrix. Uh, 50 seconds. It's getting hot in here, and you can see Toby's now starting to move around. He knows that wave that he's looking at is the one he has to go. Yeah, yeah, no, he's got no choice now. Um, he just needs to get on anything. So it's this next one is essentially his... Oh, there's one out the back that might be more than 30 seconds out. There's a 10-second interval. The one out the back should be doable. Is he just going to try to go this first he one? He is. No. He's actually aiming towards that big one out the back. He's actually making a move towards it. Yeah, is he too deep? Big wave. Yeah, he's too deep. He's going. It's not too deep if you're no, an airboy. not. Yeah, okay. So do it. Do it. Um, foam climb. Oh, give he him a really wall. needs this thing to stand up. He does, yeah. As of this moment, he's not there. No, if but we get down this next section, pump, <sighs> see what he can do. There I think go, he's going to struggle on the size of this anyway, but his yeah, foot came foot? off again. Um, okay. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for Toby. He needed a 5.15. We're not judges, but we don't. I think everyone out there listening is going to know that that wasn't a 5.51. Yep, and I think Toby himself knows that that wasn't going to be. Just waiting for the the dance that never happened for him. So Correct. the judges are going to... Well, there you go. It's been called. Take their time. Uh, so Danny uh, Wiriato wins that one with a 14.10 total. And Katut Agis um, is also through that heat so that's the bit of a wrap for today john we've uh, got through 20 heats which is really nice um it's a good solid day of uh surfing we saw some great surfing we've seen pretty good waves and and the, those pretty good waves surfed really well um that's john there that's i'm jerry, jerry there. here um <laughs> but it's been a pretty good day and as the um co-event director what's your what's your thoughts on today happy like down here in belair we were all a little bit with the forecast not really sure what the wind was going to do throughout the day so having basically pristine conditions for 90 percent of the day apart from a few of those squalls yeah and the scores that have been locking in i can hands down say great job john we made the good call today running the shoreboards uh plenty of waves ridden by the entire field uh the women were out there this morning it's been it's been a good day of surfing so yeah, it's been a solid day you know it's a qs for a qs it was, it was pretty good waves uh, you know, we do want bigger and better, but we've got what we've got, and, and I think everyone's relatively happy. So, um, yeah, successful day. Good on you. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take some credit, but Jeff um, is also have I got there two chins here? I don't, I don't like that angle. <laughs> That's a shadow. That's a shadow. So, speaking of that day, we have had some pretty epic surfing. There's some great highlights. I believe the, the crew's put a package together for us to get the highlights. Um, this is the Belair International Pro. Thank you. Stay tuned for tomorrow as we go to these... Um, highlights, uh, be back tomorrow, uh, probably similar call time, I uh, will confirm it to those at home, but keep your eyes peeled for the Blair International Pro Day 2, here's highlights from Day 1. All right.
WSL Belair Pro 2024 is sanctioned by the World Surf League and organised by United Philippine Surfing Association in collaboration with the Municipal Government of Belair and the Association of Surf Riders in Aurora, Inc. This event is sponsored by the Office of Senator Sunny Angara, the Philippine Sports Commission, the Office of Congressman Ramel Angara, Philippine Airlines and Costa Pacifica. This event is also recognised by the Philippine Olympic Committee and the Philippine Sports Commission.